Oh my god. What is happening? Dude, those are like 12 year olds, holy. <clears throat> as well and that's what all of those players want to be hoisting above their heads oh, when it is all said and done here this weekend like lanex mentioned before we've got two days of competition here for our mobile masters so we'll get through five matches here today then we'll go into our semis and our finals tomorrow more information on that we'll break it all down for you guys as we get to that point but you can hear <laughs> our stage host in Brazil starting to kick off all of that action, getting everybody hyped to dive into our first match. And that will come here in a little bit before that. We still have lots of stuff we have to talk about with all of you at home. And if you're just joining us in the stream, while we're waiting for some of the stuff, I want to, I'll ask you throughout the day, throughout the show, but I want to start hearing from everybody in chat who some of your favorites are, whether that is teams or players to win the entire event. We've got lots of squads here that we'll be talking about over the next two days, and I want to yeah. know where chat kind of stands and who you're supporting <laughs> heading into the, the culmination of everything here in Mobile Masters while that opening ceremony starts to... Uh, Get everybody ready notice. live in Brazil. We'll hang out here and we'll chat all things Call of Duty Mobile and start giving you guys a little Are bit a of a lay of, of the land too. as well. So yeah. starting it's off, we have to land. explain to you what is going on here. This is a little bit of a recap from things that happened leading up to this event. Oh, I should The only players in Brazil going to be playing in Brazil or worldwide players. It's it's a Masters. It's worldwide. It's literally. It's it's uh what do you call it like? It's like a mini champs basically. It is a clean sweep in the control for Q9 Club. A clean sweep in their opening best of five. <laughs> little bit of a hype reel there to get everybody prepared and also kind of refresh you on some of those uh pop-off moments that we got to see in our challenge seasons obviously it's got, like not playing they had a uh, visa Mobile issues masters and uh for anyone on the english stream who might not be familiar we've got lanix here as our resident brazilian expert kind of bringing you all that latam knowledge for today what were just quick hits like highlights maybe from for, from latam that our viewers might not know which teams came out on top the performance that things like that yeah Laurie, uh we know that these two teams that initially were gonna have represent uh latam and brazil here i'm talking about specifically galleries and amigos they came from a, a very uh a tough i would say competition on the last season they have um <coughs> actually had different ways galleries they have been establishing themselves uh, since last year. They dominated the first semester during 2023, being a very, better. very uh, winner team on the region uh, as a whole. And then they fell a little bit during the second semester. I'm uh, their so sick now. Level, I would say, suffered a little bit when it comes to converting uh, you know, maps and games to results and titles. And then we could see Inco stepping up, and Amigos especially. Amigos, they managed somehow to stabilize their roster in the last months of the last year. So finally, they stepped up and they maintained their position inside of the Elite in Brazil and, and, and Latin, I would say. So we can expect a lot of uh, uh, confidence by them, of course, playing in their homeland and trying to bring the best uh, to the stage. And then, of course, Brody, we obviously did weeks and weeks of it, but we, we covered both NA and EU. <laughs> so talk to me about a couple of highlights for you from that challenge season. 
Oh boy, there were a lot, Lauren. Uh, we'll talk about it in, in depth here. I mean, like, there were so many Who's moments for oh both of those where we were just like, oh my god, we're going to see some massive upsides. I mean, we go towards Europe, for example, right? And I think it was the very first. What's well, the difference between Shumi and Shumi? It's it was different like games. Kings versus Omniscient, if I remember correctly. Shumi well, yes. took them all the way to a game five, something that we didn't expect whatsoever. Wait, sorry, stream, and yeah, stream kind of A is Q9 against Inko, Kings against Galoris, Stream B is. From the lower bracket, they up against Amigos, in the, uh, in the against finals, Rejects. Two exclusives. So having to go through uh, Omniscient in a game five once again, having to go all the way to game seven. Kingsland and Galories. Yep, oh, and this these is teams are going to be the ones playing for our... What they yapping about. Almost exactly what we got, right? Nobody expected anything different. And we saw really competitive games. Uh, rejects, they got a lot, lot better. Team Mayhem, of course, stepped up in playoffs as well, but that's the whole thing that I guess we're not going to touch on too much. Um, there's a lot there, but ultimately it was seven on rejects that come out on top. Yeah, and you guys at home will start to hear kind of more tidbits about those storylines as we start to get into the games, as I'm sure they will weave into the storyline story we've seen here in Mobile Masters. But now that everyone is here, what are they playing for, right? Let's start talking about some of the important information prize pool. We talked about it time and time again during our challenge season but now it's finally here first place taking home ninety thousand dollars two hundred thousand dollars in total on the line here today for, for mobile masters i mean this is an epic amount of cash here lanex Precisely to $100,000. As you said, it's a large chunk of money, especially when you think uh, on re-eyes, okay? So for the Brazilian teams, uh, we're looking at five times these figures. They are precisely fighting for a Ooh. million re-eyes. Uh, so the currency is gonna motivate, motivate surely the Brazilian players to deliver their best. And let's see what's gonna happen. As we've seen, Lauren, uh, such a nice international recap with some of the best moments. And I'm sure that the international audience is gonna uh, be thrilled to learn more about other regions and other teams, especially the Brazilian and Latins, who are going to have the majority here, right? Uh, we've, we knew before, got like, uh, was invited that we were going to have like two teams, as I was trying to say before, and then we moved into three teams from Brazil, dash Latin. So, I mean, this region is totally excited, I guess. Yeah, and, and uh, a little bit, not in a bad way, but obviously first place, $90,000 goes down to 40000 for second place. <laughs> from there. So you know everyone's going to be fighting to try and get into those top spots as much as possible. And with the level of competition being as high as we expect it to be, now that we're here on this global stage, it's not going to be an easy journey for any of these teams. It'll be interesting to see what type of a leg up some of our teams get, putting themselves in a little bit of a snowball situation, starting off really strong strong on the first day because that will be one of the most important parts of this entire competition but now that everybody at home knows exactly what is on the line for <clears throat> these teams what they were fighting to even get to let's talk about the teams that are here with us at this event we'll take a look at the groups participating in the competition here today <clears throat> this is group a brody and talk to me about some of these squads wait if this, yeah, is, this is a really a. exciting group i think you know a, a lot of people's eyes b. would immediately be drawn oh. to q9 of course the team from china that did spectacularly oh, well no. at champ the made it all the way towards the semi-finals but it's not just them in this group of course uh Galaris from latin america from brazil they are going to be a supercharged team now that they've got lucas in on side and i think that's going to be a team that we'll have to watch out for within this Galaris. group they are joined by king's clan from europe Gal which i think a lot of people have had kind of issues with if only because of the fact that europe has been relatively disappointing internationally over the last couple of years and then of course the team that was gifted the that's lifeline true. in inco <clears throat> gaming Honestly, I have a lot of queries about Inco, and the biggest one is going to be without Lucas in, where are they going to be? Because Inco, again, just like King's Clan over the last couple of years, have not performed that well. That is true. Yeah, important to keep our eyes on a lot of these squads. And then, of course, we also have the other half of what we've got going on. We've got Group B here, Lanex. So talk to me about some of these standouts. Yeah, we could say that Group A would be kind of a Latin group with two teams from the region, and now this will be the more American-ish group since we're going to have Seminole and Rejects together on Group B. And it's going to be uh, also a very strong group, I would say a more balanced group when it comes to expectations <laughs> on which uh, of these four uh, squads are going to move ahead today to Lauren because we are act automatically looking at Seminole as the strongest uh, team from this uh, NA region. We have also Stalwart 
coming from the Asian Pacific, rejects Papadov, uh, proving trust. themselves with aggress aggressiveness and uh, rejects. They managed somehow to find their ticket to uh, São Paulo, Brazil, after whatever happened to Mayhem. And we're going to see also Amigos striving to step up their level of gameplay to an international basis now. So it's a very blended group and a very hardly predictable group, I would say. Yeah, and lots of experience as well from many of these teams having not only competed on this international stage before, but taken home that trophy. I think quite a few squads want to try and reclaim some <laughs> of that glory based off of uh, what we saw even in just the challenge season alone. So I think we're in for some really exciting gameplay here today. And now that everybody at home knows which yeah, teams have qualified from their respective regions and how they're broken down into those groups, still we'll kind of get to masters, talk to you guys a little Warzone. bit about what you like, can expect like when it comes to the <clears> overall <throat> gameplay. There will be some matches that we won't catch, but if we miss them, We'll make sure to be keeping oh, wait, you guys updated doing, like, on anything that players they've been in major tournaments before and they've absolutely <clears> shown <throat> what they've got and what they have in them to be able to reach in this far into the tournament you and guys you know see what happened with stalwart so much in this tournament so let's see how they stand up but before we go to that let's see the roster on the side Holy of the lord it's absolutely crazy team and you can see here already Kali can you give us a rundown of the players on the side of Galaris? Yeah, I mean <laughs> Galaris got v Hawk, they got Falky, they got Hen, Plin Harris and Galaris Pop Zera will be on the starting roster so <laughs> not entirely sure where is Lucas then at at the moment but this huh. has been the main roster that Galaris has been rocking since the start of 2023 and fortunately they just could <laughs> not make it to the world champs but now, this year, they w, dominated Galories. the Latin America qualifiers. Wait, where's Lucas in, bro? Just oh providing God, all of those outputs will be coming oh, in for Mihawk as that captain, right? Just, ah, bro, there's a monster with that SMG that you got Pavzera able to always so light things up with that sniper. When he plays the search and destroy, this team is packed, they're balanced, and they're out there looking to defend the territory in Brazil. <clears throat> yeah, I'm actually wondering the same thing. Where is Lucasin and how is this going to play out? Because you know that one of the biggest combos here for Galari is going to be Minhawk and Lucasin. And without Lucasin, I'm not quite sure if it, this duo is still going to play out later on. Yeah, but it, yeah, it will be interesting because uh, they'll be playing first game, so we're gonna be we're going to find an answer for that just yeah. as fast as possible, <laughs> right? But of course, for these teams, there's definitely a lot to talk about, right? And uh, we have said already what said two hundred thousand US dollars that the teams will be fighting for. The lion share is ninety thousand US dollars, a lot of money on the line for the teams that will be fighting on this three days of action this weekend so you do not Wait, want two or three to miss days? out on the good ones here so make sure you follow our official live stream and our official social media pages for you guys to stay updated with all of the amazing contests that we provide for it yep definitely keep a watch for the social media because that's where we're going to be updating more information about the tournaments and of course future events as well but before we go into that kali i think Where's we just have to discuss about the themes that we're going to be seeing for match number one specifically here on stream b it's going to be q9 versus inco gaming for the first match yeah it's oh, going to be great match. and again uh, this, this, this wait, is so this is, wait, which stream is this? Gaming, where winning matters so what are you waiting okay, for so this right? is we're gonna be hopping into our first game of the day and it's let me see this one so it's gonna be fantastic it's gonna be a new experience for the fans uh, not only from brazil i'm sure and yeah they've been called uh, abroad as the first super latin team in history uh, gathering a lot of fantastic pieces so i'm excited to see them perform at a stage huh. okay you would think that wolves from China will be the ones representing That's crazy. Wolves the region is not here, itself. Bro. And Likes not here either. The top two teams from they Worlds are, going are here. Up against, like, uh, a look is in Inco. A, a look is in last Inco Gaming. So, really a lot of stories that will be unraveled here today at this first match. Yeah, definitely a lot of things can go down. Um, we are familiar with the players from the side of Q9. They haven't really had a roster changes since the last time we've seen them. And, you know, they actually also participated in Call of Duty Mobile Worlds 2023 where they were able to get into semifinals if I'm not mistaken and that was a really good play from them but of course you know we need to see them prove themselves once again here up against Inco Gaming now on the side of Inco Gaming we we're already talking about this earlier Lucasin 
not in the team anymore. That's going to be the biggest change for the team. And I'm just excited to find out how they <clears throat> adjust. Callie, what's your take on this? Do you think they're going to be able to play out as they normally do? Or will Lupusin not being in the roster be a huge this channel? change for them? It this is, is going my to be a huge channel. change. You gotta ask that, no, right? Because uh, this is a team that relied on Lucasin to create most of the plays, and they did try to compensate with the removal of Lucasin into and and into this one, right? And just adding in uh, Vigodera, Leozera in there just to amplify their power. Power, <laughs> but now we take a look at Kenju Club and see what's up because this team just dismantled Wolves Gaming in the qualifiers, and they managed to just stay here and try to get the crown for themselves. Let's take a look at their head to head between Q9 and Inko looking at the kills a lot more on Inko's side but a lot more deaths now on Q9 if you take a look at that <coughs> I'm dying yeah definitely a better KD rating on the side of Inko here so hopefully that will help them to um build their sports streaks a little bit better and rack up those operator skills that they'll use in the long run that. but you know, we also have to take into account that Q9, they say, have actually have been improving oh, a lot, becoming stronger I think Q9 and takes it. So we'll Three, see two. how Wait, that works out as well. Yeah, we got Kinjo Club right on Q1. your screen. Oling, Sun, Sinan, Yangi, and Wait, that's Sun? Now, the question for Q9 bro, heading into this I don't even recognize them, bro. What's the response looking like? Hardpoint I and recognize the Mati, Uling, has just been unstable for this Q9 squad. And the only Yang. reason they made it here is because they managed to outlast when did Sun look on like the that, trailing bro? SNDs, right? So maybe a lot better touch up on the summit in the Shanda Hardpoint that so they might just be playing here today. And you gotta expect Uling to lead that team. When he plays on the land stage, his performance performance just gets a lot better but when you're on the S and D side you need to see sun shine and not succumb to the like darkness because he's the one that always light things up with the search and destroy as the sniper as their main sniper yeah definitely we need to see sun pop off especially in that search and destroy mm. match but now we are going to be taking a look at the roster on the side of inco gaming as well and you know these players they are going to be big inco's well. freaking op bro limbs bad rafa leo zara and uh, Pronzin here playing for the side of Info Gaming oh, tonight. Without Lucas and oh, you know, we have um Kali, uh, which one of these players do you think really needs to step up their game if they want to have a chance on beating the players from from Q9? If you're looking for the SMG, that really has to step things up, right? He has uh, the, 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 he's the glue guy for Inko Gaming to say the least. If he plays great, the team performs a lot better than expected. If he performs very bad, things <coughs> can just spiral out of control. And uh, yeah, I, I guess that being the only player back at the former roster along with Rafa, they need to have that mental restraint just to be able to pull it through. Yeah, definitely we have to see how that goes. But um, we are going to be taking a look at the stage. We will be right back. What are we taking a look at now, bro? What did she say? Don't translate, bro. Agora sim. Então recebam com essa mesma salva de palmas. Wait, the stage is crazy, bro. It's like champs last year. Com vocês, equipe da Galleries e Kings Clan. What the fuck did she say? I heard Galleries, but she said it like Galleries. Dude, my eyes are going crazy, bro. I'm having fucking epilepsy over here. Oh, it's Marvel. Wait, it's the lower bracket. Yeah, Brazil. Yeah, yeah. The Lori's cheerleaders. Let's get it. Os confrontos <coughs> Who's sitting in the middle, bro? Os equipes. Vamos continuar nessa mesma energia para receber aqui ao palco a equipe da Q9 versus Inco Gaming. Yeah. Okay, who the fuck is coming out? Oh, Q9. Oh my god, the Chinese goats. Simplesmente a equipe da Kenobi que foi a campeã do qualificatório goats, chinês bro, versus a Inco Game, que também é uma equipe brasileira que reúne diversos títulos e pegou a terceira vaga brasileira do campeonato. Yeah, it might just be another language, but it feels like she's talking hella fast. Galera, is this the best quality there is? Times, what is this? Galera, they look like blurry. Com esses times aqui no palco, 
All I can understand is team name. For real. Oh, Glories! Glories! Oh my god, Glories. The best team in the game. Besides Wolves and Godlike. I do not know like the players on Galories. Maybe because I've seen I haven't seen them at land. All right, what a lovely intro from our amazing stage host. Again, we are live in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and we got Q9 on stage going up against Inco Gaming on stream B once again. This is where you are Dude, watching how you right now. Do? Oh wait, no, best of five and awaits them. It matters Taking, that sorry. they start the day sorry, off sorry, hot sorry. because Ignore you don't want to go down at the lower bracket and just fight for your life out there. Now on the other side, you also got the stream A players, right? Galoris, the team that we've been eyeing out for, the super team going up against the only representative of Europe in Kings. So a lot to unravel in this two two gameplays that we're gonna be providing you guys at both of the streams. Yeah, so the fa the depending on which team you want to support, oh. go check out Stream A or stay here with us in Stream B to see Q9 and Inco Gaming play. But guys, you guys we watch? are actually also going to be having a poll shortly to see your predictions on who you think is gonna win. Will it be Q9? Will it Wait, who do you guys want to watch, bro? Watch Q9 against Inco or? Wait, what? What's the other one? The lorries against. Ooh. <coughs> you know, some of the, what the players fuck is this? looked really stressed almost you know like the anxiety of of kind of getting the event kicked off and started because we know how important a strong q9 okay bet to hear for these Wait, which one's q9 i will see a little see. bit of a, a, a this one q9 view here is our team start those pep talks heading into the matches too and i love when we get to see this side of our players They're because praying. when we are online for the challenge we miss all of fair those. enough yes uh you nailed it uh fantastic footage of <laughs> galleries getting ready and those guys they are just so thrilled i mean they've been playing together for a long time and look at see now is a fantastic addition as we get to see also i'm assuming the guys from kings <laughs> uh, a lot of these players you know coming down to this moment of delivering everything they have been working for in the last months and years so it's a very special moment for them all and uh, everything's got to be right you got to have the right even chair position, Lauren. You have yeah, to even have the, the, right nice, chair position. Uh, the nicest spot as you can. As we see, Lucas in also the beast, one of the players uh, that is most famous, I would say, worldwide. And sure, it's going to be a, a massive, a massive addition to galleries at this level of the championship. All right, well, we're seeing them up here on the screen while our players are starting to get prepared. Always the pillows Summit in tow, slums. making yes. sure that they're comfortable oh, wait, it on is their devices. Best of five. But okay. We have the picks and bands through as well here, Brody. Is a single Elin? All right, I guess we'll just go back and forth. Whoever starts first will watch, and then once Q9 starts. Are all matches happening at once? No, it's two separate streams. What's your HUD? What do you want me to say? So I got my uh, shoot button on the top right. Like what? <laughs> okay. Passy, Express, Crossroads, Apoc, Far. Fuck are these maps? These are horrible. Well, besides two. Wait, let's go back on the, these maps. Wait, no. These maps are buns. God. Oh my god. They just need to be What is bro saying? Oh really? Uh, they just need to be Actually, I think Q9 takes it 3-1, bro. Off, especially cool, getting clapped. the level of tournament that we are at right now. Yeah, we're looking at our map badge picks. We got Hatchet <laughs> and Hardpoint, our map number one. Express coming in at map number two. Then Control Crossroads Strike will be our first three maps. If we do see the 
if we do need to see the long distance, Apocalypse will be coming in as our fourth map and firing range to top it all off. Now, I want to see that map number five just get activated just to see <laughs> how far has the Chinese Frick region Apoc. has done in that firing range because we all know the sniper is down there. It gets a little bit crazy. Yeah. Wait, I, what do you mean down there? I kind of wish we would see firing range before Am Express I, I for that search and destroy match because you know you're I'm absolutely sick. right. It's going to be absolutely fun to watch these snipers go up against each other, especially Sun if he pops off in the game. But then again, we'll have to get through the first three matches, first four matches before we do get into that firing range match. Yeah, now just a, a great brief background, right, for Q9 in your history with Hashen back when they played in the China's qualifiers. Only played this map one time, they lost it up against Standpoint Gaming. Inko Gaming on the other side has played this map five times, winning up against GT. Yeah. And Amigos, which is another qualified team that will be playing here later on. So they're currently under... 50% in terms of that win rate, so this one will be going into a 50-50 battle, so it will be amazing how will the ARs look like, right, for these two squads, because I already know Uling with that AR can just hit like a laser beam, and Nico Gaming needs to be able to supply the same amount of gunfight and shots <laughs> that he's going to be able to put off so that they can get those, those map controls inside of those hard point and also controlling the spawn points that will be located inside of Hashen, the hard point. Yeah, definitely. Did they stars? Wait. This is Galories, right? Yeah, this is Galories. Galori's taking this 3-1 and then Q9 taking this 3-1. Nah, 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 nah. 3-0, 3-0. Nah, nah, nah. 3-1, 3-1. I'm tripping. <laughs> I'm tripping, sorry. Let's go, Q9. Uh, bro, sounds so sick. Yeah, I'm sick. I'm getting better, though. Better than I was, like, the first day. Q9, Six my goats, times. come on. And uh, their only <laughs> loss, again, once again. Why is this so loud? Up against Standpoint Gaming, another contender down there oh. in China. They have an 83.33% win rate. And trying to compare that up against Inko, who has played 17 games. Yeah, they're having two streams going at once. With a 47.06 percentage <laughs> in that win rate in hard point. So looking uh, like it's uh, gonna favor we're going for q9 and glory because i'm bad anything can happen it is going to matter on who is more prepared as a team to dominate everything here today yeah you're absolutely right you know lan is just a huge it's just a whole other uh, playing field here, you know. There's so many different factors that the you have. Where she was to looking for was ball when you're game. You're in a LAN event it's compared okay. to where you normally play your tournaments or where you normally stay in when you are in uh, when you're competing. But um, we'll have to see how these players adjust to that, especially with the fact that there's a crowd watching them. Yeah, and uh, I guess for Ingo Gaming, right, being the home court, you're going to have a lot of confidence just trying to defend that turret. Here is your prediction. It seems like Ingo Gaming will take most of the percentage here with 62% favoring yes, them sir. to win this best of five. Oh, wait, what? Against King Jukong, against Q9, 62%? Who the f... The Latin Bro, Inko, Inko literally, what? Inko lost Inko Lucas and they're not beating Q9, no way. If they beat Q9, I'd yep, lose my let's shit. Let's see if Inko Gaming can prove to their fans that they are going to be the top of team in this tournament. And I'm pretty sure, you know, a lot of the fans are looking at Inko Gaming here, especially considering that the tournament is being held <coughs> there at Brazil. And of course, we would love to support our players from the side of Inko Gaming. So let's see if they really are able to prove themselves going into this first couple of matches. Well, look at them yeah, play for Galories. He's on the bench. Here. We all know him as a key player Fuck. back when Inko Gaming had their run back in the 2022 Cotton World Championship back in Raleigh, North Carolina, where he was a major factor in playing that SMG role for the team back when they had uh, Lucas in just using that SKS back then. So Me personally. he's back here with his former teammate in Rafa. So that's going to be feeling great for him. So it's just all about 
clicking Why right is he binge? I don't know. Pick a food so I can eat today. I'm trying to get good at cooking. Q9, mm. who has been sticking their roster since the start of 2023. What's something easy to cook? So yeah, chemistry wise, it seems like right now, for the moment, Q9 has that mm. edge. But again, home crowd flat like kicks in. Mexican food. And, uh, we might just see Inkle just pull off the <laughs> impossible. You like yeah we'll have to see how, learn how to make like i mean you know in gaming they have a really good reputation for themselves as well here in snapdragon pro series um we've seen them uh pretty recent in the latin america season four where they were actually able to get third place now that's not easy to make spot, and delicious unless they're still able to do pretty good for themselves unfortunately Instant ramen, we boy. did not see them in worlds 2023 but hopefully you know they've made some adjustments with the roster and they've made some changes oh. so hopefully we can see a little bit of a better play here considering the stage of the tournament that they're here. They have another chance to play. East I love quesadillas here, or do tacos, but yeah, flour tortillas. I don't fuck with corn tortillas. Last year, right? 2023 World Champs, but they did not make just cheese playoffs. tortilla, yeah, yeah. boy. Yeah. No, so, 15, 16, so has some there. filling. Yeah, yeah, it's just difficult. Because like, I don't know, whatever protein you like. Uh, year with Lucas looking like in his prime form, dominate that world. Cilantro, onion, not just get tomato. Past. The group stage, mm. which speaks a lot on Corn. Uh, the improvement that needs to be done, the especially goods. by Inko Gaming. The SMGs were not doing it for them. And uh, same thing happened in Season 4, right? Third place for them, just like what you said. And uh, <coughs> definitely mm. something that uh, needs to be touched upon because they got here through subbing in for Godlike, right? So. They did not expect it. They did not expect <clears throat> it to be here, but they're going to compete with teams with the teams that have been competing for so long, and <laughs> here they are with a brand new roster, just trying to fight, right? Yeah, it's definitely a oh, huge. Did they start? Huge did the other game start? Them, but I'm. What's going on? Oh my God! They're not starting either because that'll give them a nice amount of momentum but we are still waiting just a little bit for a few more players to be 100 percent ready to oh go oh my god you corn on a quesadilla what the fuck what's wrong with you veil never say that shit to me ever again bro you disrespect why did they use an earpiece and a headset so they can talk to each other i don't know bro why is Uling vibing? This is like life More or death right now. This. You, do you really believe that Wolves should have been here instead of them? Or do you think they have a I think China should have had two slots. What is this? Yeah, no, no, do get this. It almost, for me, at that time, it felt like Wolves being the big brother just let Q9 take it right. But no, it was <laughs> not the case. It was not the case. Q9 was just a lot better at the time. They had momentum heading into the finals of uh, the qualifiers when Sen and playing they, after they these two matches walls, just like you said not once but twice winning their first match up against let's Wolves, go and go four and seven then i show what i said and i stand by it what the fuck? one on the series on a best of seven format right so they didn't win it by a flip they earned it they managed to dismantle wolves using their SD as their main weapon because to think about it right now they oh i think they're starting they had more search and destroy look he's playing compared to response in their their cdm format right so there's a big it's going to be a huge jump because here in the mobile masters 2024 for call of duty wait Mobile, they started there's three spawns compared okay. to three back where they're playing S D. but now we start a day up with Enko gaming and king club here at stream b and here we got let's go to nine my coach and the game has already Injo started on top. you can see q9 holding down the first couple seconds in that oh my god hill. yang's so good it's just a matter of control is it young floor, getting full like control cheap of the hill as well, in mandarin to be able to keep young info out of the game and so no, far, no pretty consistent info gaming not finding a break just yet yeah, 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 again the youngie <laughs> Able to improve That's unfortunate. the gunfight department, especially when he is rocking that third SMG role. Needs to play it faster and get involved in the gunfight as fast as he can. It's already it's over. Score. It's been and one point, bro. Separated here, thirty-four to one, and this is just the first. Oh my god! Where it's supposed to be contested. Q9 is making it look too easy. 
Why should I go delay? You're absolutely right. It's not looking good for Inco Gaming. Now, if they want to have a chance of winning out this game, they have to hold down mm. that second hill in the garage by the by the car where um, this is usually a money hill for any Ooh. team. Now, if Inco Gaming can play this right, they'll be able to... Oh, yeah. People use an Odin. Like, what the fuck? What did like I miss? They are going oh, my God. Push right now, trying to take the hill from Inco Gaming, and they are going to be successful What's your in doing so. I got yeah, pears. Over at the statue I'm sick, so match. apparently I can't eat anything that has sodium or MSG. Or oil. Or flavor. Like what? Coming in from checkers. And we are going to finally see Inco Gaming. When I'm sick, all of a sudden, I'm getting like fucking but they are still away from food from the Q, uh, Q9 right now. They have to go to the place here and hold down the area. So far, they've watched and they've been able to lock down the area, Lamborghini, and hold down for a couple more points. But the consistency is just not there. It's Inco's not, not terrible. To stand up against Q9, who's Q9 just less in pushing in. Better. Yeah, now we got that. That's this final hard point just being scrapped by King Ju Club. We're battling for the next hard point rotation, and King Ju Club Yangi is the first one to move over towards the fences. Now we got Inko Gaming with that early rotation. They got number two holding down ten. They also got oh my god, imagine he lost that. Number three in blue and close it to hold down wells just to secure those spawns, and <laughs> they got themselves an early <laughs> rotation and they win the first. Holy points. fuck. Inco Gaming going to take the early rotation once again, and they are catching up. This is looking a lot better from their side. They finally got the hill to their side, but just as they say that Q9 Kim John right at the back, we're going to see winning. Yanni starting to get You're hilarious. Do you know that? Playing a little bit more streaky, but gets knocked down. And Sun trying to go for the revenge. He's a little to comedian. Take that back, but gets eliminated from behind. And we are going to see a quite mm. a back and forth for this hill. Oh, oh fuck this hill. Wrap up, but the equalizer will not find anything, so that will be going into a waste. King Juke Club still <laughs> able to get a solid control and a solid contest in the fences at the moment. Well, what was the whole point of spring? Trying to just fight for their life inside. <laughs> now, again, five seconds left inside. We're this running the type 19. What am I missing? And it's going though? to be a pinch maneuver for Anko Gaming Capture if they do get that attack happen on the feedback, but they lose that player in Rafa and Mount just lights up a three piece over towards the Why are their profile pictures the same? Because they're their team. Oh my god, Mauchi with the double fucking hunter killer. Crazy. Wait, let me just double check. I'm like up to date. Oh my god, I was delayed. Nice. Nice. Nobody's commentating. Crowd commentate. I go, Dara. Bigo Dara. That's a huge operator investment. The spear fire for Bigo is just going oh, to be okay. worth it because they're able to stand the ground and just force Q9 to play that reset. But again, the spawns just a lot too good. The gunfight <coughs> and the map control will just be provided here by Sheenan for the squad of Q9 just to get that final 10 seconds of the hard point. Now we're going back into a reset. It is going to be a 60 point lead that King Ju Club will be having heading into the next hard point rotation. And Inco Gaming needs to have a lot better mid map control. This time it's Crozen with a Type 19 holding down one of the second floors just providing that high ground. Yep, we are going to have the reset of rotations now back into the center of the, yeah, of the map. Down by 60 is rough. The fountain is at, and as, as we saw earlier, Q9 was really, really mm. good at holding this down. Now the question is, will Inco Gaming find a way to turn things around now? Because they are falling behind by a lot of points, and it's going to be a very, very hard catch-up game No growl. Well, growl's not meta. Hill, do I don't Q9 even play the game, and I know that. Yeah, Yang Yi just finding two piece on that second floor just makes it a lot easier. Growl's not meta. Inco Gaming because now they're forced Inco to got... their reset. No, no, Q9 got type 19s. Inco got Odin's. <laughs> just playing a lot of kills here. He's got what himself the fuck's going 22 on? highest in the lobby right now, just providing so much of that cover. 73 to 1 to wait before we head into the next hard point. Inco Gaming needs to get that early rotation settled and win the battle inside of the garage.
And now we can see the players on the side of Q9. They've gone for that early rotation. They're holding it down. Sun here anchoring it down. But Inko Gaming just coming in for the push now. They are going to be a little bit in a split here. Pushing from multiple angles. And it's going to work in their favor. They take the hill. They invest <coughs> into operator skills but get knocked down. And it's back and forth. But Inko Gaming, they have the spawns in their favor. And it's just a matter of getting into that hill and facing up against Q9 together. Yeah, now San just brings out this power, finds himself a four-piece, and that just makes it harder now again for Inko Gaming's talk inside of the spawns. And here comes the spawn read for San. He's got himself an eight in a row. Make that turn. Oh my day. Stat is what, 11? 12? Bro, this map popping off. This what the fuck? Just tearing Inko Gaming up. Holy shit. Hard point number two. Ooh. Finally, no play caught him no more. He got himself. I haven't in a while. And his teammates a lot mm. of time inside this hill to force this into almost a hundred point lead, Savvy. Holy huge, shit. Huge lead for the side Yo, they kind of got smoked this hill. They are looking to end the game as soon as possible. Not giving a chance to Inco Gaming, but Inco Gaming. They are still trying and they to have two out. new they start rotation towards the next hill. But Q9 is going to be the lucky Oh, shit. They get the head start. Oh, sh oh my God. Ooning with the triple. Power position here and keeping They're actually the cooking, bro. Oh, L flank. Q9 has every single angle watched. And Run. They are really stopping oh, he's the dead. Inco Gaming from getting even even close to the hill. Wow. <clears throat> and nice shots for Inku Gaming. Just spawn King Juke Club at the boat house. Only one angle to hold on to it to just dismantle the first wave of gunfights here oh, for machine. this fences art point. Inko again still able to maintain a lot of these eliminations <laughs> and just forcing Q9. See, like, to the kills are pretty even, realistically. Point, but again, they I guess, like, their life out there, and with a war machine Q9's doing more valuable kills. For them to maintain it inside of the hill. And we can see Oling now using operator skill, using the war machine to clear L, out the area. L operator. Not going to be really successful so far. Still some contests, some players in that area. Sina now holding it down, but gets knocked down in third. And now Q9, only about 50 points away from closing up the game. And Inco Gaming barely hmm. hitting that 100 point mark yet. Push and they are just struggling so much here. Hopefully, we'll see some improvement as we head into the next matches. But right That's now, crazy. He lost that. What they can do. They have oh my god, I'd be very, pissed. Very consistently if they want to have a chance of even slowing yeah, down name. Q9. It's just the mid map control that's lacking here for Inco Gaming, especially that map number, this, this first map, right? The first hard point rotation. And uh, again, it's just the same thing repeated in the second set. Now, hard point number four gonna be opening up. Inco Gaming will be able to win the first contest. Spawning King Jukla It's like, how are they in the hill already? Again, what the hell, bro? Just cannot find a lot of more effort and just putting oh, some big members sparrow. inside of that point finally lens is able to step up there along with crozet to pull out two operator investments just to yeah he almost turned on equalizer and this is just a big burn what he got, just wall, he got killed behind the wall i don't care he got killed behind the wall Yep, Inco Gaming, you know, their investments is just not enough. And, you know, we see them use those operator skills once in a while, <clears> but they're <throat> never able to take full advantage of it. Oh, just as wow, Kunai good triple. Do nice. so. But look at this, Krozen with a huge triple kill to clear out the area right before the timer goes down. And we have the reset rotations. We head back into the <clears> first <throat> hill. Now, Q9, they were slowed down. Inco Gaming finally getting some points to their name, but it's not much longer before we go towards and maybe ending this in second or third hill but for now we just need to see what's in post gaming strategy to slow things down or maybe even get a couple points to their side yeah nice break on the second floor now for Inko. all that's left is needed is for them to just dismantle the guy inside of the path which they do so i'm not really as making that like three on the kill feed things has no chance Sun, again he's just been i'm not even watching that game bro in this the second floors right don't and spoil it uh, we'll go back and Inko watch gaming ever since the start of this hard point agenda Inco's wait, what's the score right now? Mm -hmm. the After this game's done, we'll watch the other game. There. They're still going on. If not, then we'll team just chill. The next hard point rotation. You got number two in blue and Rappa, <laughs> holding down garage, but you need to stay out there on alert because Mauchi will be able to cut that down for you. And if he finds those kills, it might just turn for worse. But Angle Gaming wins those fights. Because we'll be on a 50 right now, facts. 
in cold gaming took some time to warm up but definitely doing much better now finally getting closer towards that 150 point mark and they might actually have a chance oh shit playing a oh what the fuck 200 points and now we're going to see q9 trying to push in but their operator still is going to go to waste as in nice. wait so inco come back inco come back passing on to those predator missiles gonna keep q9 out and away wow. killing out every single player there Big. with a huge drone kill there and we see uh, the war machine come out as well Brazil. Call this like is going ago. to be yeah. Hill, their opportunity to get to that 200 point mark and they are taking full advantage of it all the utilities were played perfectly there by Inco Gaming, the but they still need to survive. What the all fuck? The operator skills Ooh. coming in for Q9. It so broke a 12 second hill. No boy, no. 10 seconds that's needed for them just to close it down a little bit more. Just need 20 more points to win here if you're Q9. It's a race to the next hard point rotation. Inko needs a hold of a lifetime. Should they this want in to India? This yeah, if God like was in this, it would be fucking. Yep, like... this is their opportunity for that comeback, but they have to play it absolutely perfectly. No room for mistakes here. And it looks like Oling is not giving that chance to them. I think it's done here. Yet. They're going to hold down the area, but Limbs, he's going to pull out the sparrow, gets shot down instead. Not going to take oh, advantage yet. of that operator skill. And Inko Gaming's fighting oh, for their lives now. Q9 only needs eight more points to close up the game. Yeah, it's still going to be big here if Crozen stays alive, but he gets shot down there by Yangi, who finds a double inside of the hard point. Kingju Club now managed to get inside the hill. Crozen going to be close, but will be shot down. No one clear. And Kingju takes map number mm. one to start the day off w. in Snapdragon Mobile Masters 2024. That was an absolutely crazy game. I mean, the. How's the other game going? Oh, they finished? What? Damn, they were getting fucking shit on, dude. <clears throat> Holy fuck, Galories is 256. Galories is on a different level, dude. Oh, wait, Lucasin is playing the GOAT. The GOAT. Oh my god, wait, Lucasin was playing? <clears throat> okay, we don't need to fucking zoom in. I just want to see if Lucasin was actually... Wait, where was he? I didn't even see him. Holy shit, dude. <clears throat> Wait, is that him? I don't know. Oh my god. They got... They got bootied. Why are they all rookie one? This is a esports version of the game. Not global. Oh. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck? Number one. Uh, let's start... <clears throat> yeah, it's better we watch this game. Yeah, I think we should stick to this. Funny enough, to really take full advantage and win over Q9, but nonetheless, it's a very good start for them. You know, it's only a first match, it's a warm up. So hopefully, they step up their game going into Search and Destroy because this is where Info Gaming, I think, has to watch out because Q9, um, the teams from China in general, they are known having absolutely crazy plays in search and destroy but you know taking a look at the statistics right now on the screen you can see that kill wise it's pretty similar across the board yeah it's just the hard point difference that was unfortunate was factor <laughs> there right i mean losing out on two p1 hills is just yeah. big right and kenju club made the most of it and had a great start and just managed to snowball sun oling obviously there scoring the, the second the top frag consistently now you got mount chi as that third fragger for them but again still not convinced for q9 here because yang yi needs to step a little bit versions. further right i mean he did play great here today finding out a lot of multi kills just to provide them so much of those points and uh, yeah just provide a lot more for king ju to win everything here on this map one yeah, and actually, if you take a look at the statistics right now, you can see that Q9 definitely have had a lot more captures in total um, in comparison to the players on the side of Inco. But nonetheless, it's still pretty similar. It's more of, um, I guess, a timing of their operator skills and score streaks that Inco gaming kind of struggled with as they weren't really able to take full advantage. I mean, we saw so many good plays from Sun, from from Olin, from Maoshi with their operator skills. And the same cannot really be said for the side of Inco as majority of the times they were knocked out.
And look at it, the start, right? 8 and 47 to start that P2 in the replay. It is just kind of difficult for Inko Gaming to come back, but they did bounce oh, back, but actually it was cooked. just kind of too late. Kenju Club was just running everything They're down, fine. starting the first set of hardpoint rotation. And mostly it was Uling and Sonda was doing most of the damage, right? And yeah, the spawn reads were just so quick to tell for Q9, just because they were able to find more of the multi-kills on the kill feed every time. Yeah, definitely. And you can see here some highlights as well. Um, I think this was about second reset of rotations where Q9 still had a huge lead. There was even a point where the lead was at about 100 points total between Inco Gaming and Q9. But the recovery from Inco Gaming was absolutely amazing. It just came a little too late, just as you said. Yeah, so, so far, again, for Inco Gaming, right? Mm -hmm. I mean kind of hyping a lot of pressure from the snipers on the defense, right? And you've got now Lucasin coming in, who has played that sniper on the past, primarily sniper player in Search and Destroy previously. We had Pabzera and Henry Cap doing that uh, for Galarist. So do we see kind of Pabzera and Lucasin now taking that role? How oppressive is that going to be? Yeah, so I'll say uh, that Galarist likes to play on the defensive side, mostly on Search and Destroy mode. Yeah, very oh, wait. That all those factors are going to play uh, as much as Kings. Kings are going to have, again, to be extra aggressive because they're playing against... Well, not the best anymore, Brazilian nah. and Latin team in their own hometown. Yeah, definitely. I think this is going to be a really interesting matchup regardless for these teams. Again, a reminder that that map number one was a big one for King's plan to lose. We talk about the strength of the better map set here for Galaris, how good that they looked. And, uh, you know, getting the slum search and destroy, arguably their strongest search and destroy map going into map number two. Getting a crossroad strike control, which is an interesting kind of... Uh, conversation right uh, in terms of uh wait what map in terms of uh, european and north american teams apparently just really like right control and getting those two maps into the next five the next half of this best of five that is really peculiar is so, this uh, mic good bro uh, i have we'll, no idea what uh, we'll see kind of what's going on here is kind of the next couple of maps apparently i sound kind of bad i don't know what's the robot or something uh lennox right, yes funny. uh we're gonna see we're gonna see all that uh, playing out man as you said and we know that Kings they have worked on their psychological side as well. We've seen Marvel talking on uh, socials, especially on ESL profiles, stating that their greatest strength is going to be their mindset. They're really, really nice excuse me to never step down, to never give Bro, up. And what they the were mostly anxious say? to face Q9. Let's see if that's going to ever happen from Watching now Brazil. on. But it's again, a Brazil teams are also ready clusters. for longer matches, for long series. <clears throat> so let's see if it's going to be the case today as we, we already ready. started. We what the fuck? Rolling on, so you guys are gonna hold my hand, you're gonna hold Brody's, and let's see what's gonna happen. <laughs> oh my god, wait, the, the round's already, already over. Happening in a very fast pace, I would say, mate, with galleries. <laughs> hmm, what the, the fuck? numbers on their that side, that was just massive seconds. losing, not, just not one even, bro. player, and we are looking at already one new. Uh, and that's Wait, a big round is gonna for Galaris to take, ultimately, right? You talk about how defensively this sided, this um, map actually is, and uh, winning offense is like gold dust. So for Galaris to come out the gates and do exactly that is really particular. We'll see whether King's Clan can respond in kind. That's a nice start coming out from there. Emma's is Grizz and Ray going to draw double first blood, and I love the aggression coming out from Grizz as well. He is going straight for these kills. A lot Lucas of players. Gets cut short. Mikork will trade on out, but the numbers here used. definitively in favor of King's Clan very quickly. It all falls apart. Pabzera, one versus three, and this is very difficult because I don't think King's Clan are going to give him anything for free. I've never yes. seen Pabzera lose. Only Pabzera to deal with Thomas this um, problem, right? Uh, three opponents in this uh, clutch situation. And Kings reorganizing themselves and creating a very smart from line delayed. from uh, B to A to try to reduce the space the galleries had to work with. What is this? With. And Poppy Zero is very, very strong on this kind of play. He's going to try to, of course, uh, manage the cover and try going for the scope against players from Kings. And Poppy Zero, uh, especially with Tundra, very, very deadly. Uh, I don't know. Let's see how he's going to manage also to use the weapon itself using the core area of the map and try to come for the right flank using of course the uh the grenades here trying to uh, cause that preliminary damage that allows you to not have to face your opponent always but there he comes coming to oh the God. middle of the map tundra again on his hands trying to uh, use the best he can the time uh, as well because clock is ticking brody ah. 
there you go inferno's gonna take him down so nicely done from king's clan and yeah that's much more standard what we kind of expect when it comes down to these defenses you expect teams to be drawing those first bloods and mm. uh, galaris here to be stuck i'm not gonna lie i don't even know what one of the casters is like saying towards the Can't offensive lie. side like those first bloods are everything here on the defense Let's see whether or not the same thing can happen once again. You're seeing aggression coming out here. Henry Catton towards the middle of the map needs to draw that first blood. He does exactly that. Grizz goes down. There goes Saze as well. And Galar is coming out the aggression. Oh. But Raiden Marvel, they answer back. Ooh. Oh. Marvel, double kill. Yeah, fantastic mm. work by him trying mm. to oh, see it. what else is going to happen. Mm. And Inferno coming for this battle here in the corner of the map. 3v2. We see Inferno <laughs> trying to, of course, uh, do this gap closing against uh, a Galaris players. But Lucas <laughs> comes and steps up. We're going to have to see how that's going to be played out. 2v2 for a very interesting round number three uh, after the equalizer. So both sides very, very spot on from this moment on. And the C4 is right at the core. So it's going to be hard for Galaris to get close to it since the protection level by Marvel is very, you, very Sky, there. And Raid is also I close like to it. him. So I would say King's looking very uh, much different from the beginning of the map over here, Brody. Yeah, Galaris have done basically a full uh, 180 of the map at the moment. Marvel just laying in wait in the middle of the map here, trying to be all sneaky like, all cheeky like. I think the players might have just run straight past him. A little they bit of time Marvel the maybe hasn't seen them exit through garage, and that's not going to work in his favor whatsoever. But he is actually going to get over towards A. Spidey senses tingling, unfortunately, again, the cop timing <laughs> not in his favor, and Pab Zero will win that one versus one with the snipes. Man, what beautiful. What a close. What a close elimination by him. He It's dark. It didn't even start, bro. Why is it so laggy, bro? <clears throat> Four again, so very balanced round when it comes to the lives. Okay, bringing the C4 down to the ground, and Marvel's gonna be the closest player to get uh, over there when it comes to looking at the objective. Mihawk is behind Find the cover. Many, many battle oh my situations God, what happening. Was that? And Kings also killing, also delivering the bullets in a very interesting way. They're not uh, offering, uh, offering their let's say most uh not focused sides here. They are trying to fix some situations, Brody, as we see mm -hmm. the two v two rounds now. Yeah, I think just in that round there, uh, Galaris, they managed to get the bomb down on towards A, and they kind of pushed back through blue, intended to keep an eye on it from there. But as King's Clan do get a couple of kills, they get the numbers. They oh, what was that, to Jump onto the fuse, and well, it works out in their favor. So 2-2 two, two now. Galaris once again looking to draw first blood by playing aggressive. That's how they've won their rounds in the past, and it happens once again here. A two-for-one trade off the start now, make it three-for-one. Oh. It's just down to the snipers <clears throat> left alive for Kings. Oh yeah, Galaris already hopping into B. And what is so happening he here? the boss in this region of Slums. Inferno coming for this battle. He's going Damn. to try, but Bobby Zera delivered him right on his face. This very, very precious bullet. And uh, King's now totally low on numbers. Just Marvel against three players. He's going to have to be extra smart also to uh, understand what is going to be the play by the Brazilians. How they're going to do this one. And he carry already a plane on the B. What the and we hell? see Lucas... Eliminating Marvel for another a wrap up of a round. So, Galleries 3 2 looking fantastic, looking cheating. strong. But Kings are also offering a nice challenge. They are doing what they should do, Brody, and always stepping close to the Brazilians. Uh, honestly, I, I'm going to go ahead and say I'm not happy with Kings at the moment. You know, you're losing three offensive rounds or three defensive rounds away to Galaris. That should not be happening on a map such as Slum Search and Destroy. See an overaggression coming out from Grizz. Slums? There, the like, be one out you gotta play Bokeh, patient. What? Second as well, and that's just egregious coming out from Raid. Inferno will fall to. And now Kings plan they lost four the rounds on players. And again, it feels like so many of these open engagements are going Galaris. What the hell? Damn. Outclassing them at the moment. Lucas in gonna cap off that round. Dude, what the and hell? My, oh my, as we switch sides here, Galaris four off, off offensive rounds there. Dude, Galaris is looking like that's me. insane. That's mm -hmm. insane. It shows how much Galaris understood their mission. They needed to be ahead. They needed to have better numbers when it comes Never to some side things on the first half, which was uh, a very, very uh, mainly see it in mobile, come. mobile beginning of slums. A lot of movements, and now Kings course setting up a line and trying to be patient but 4k doesn't let that happen he comes for greece he's gonna try to double it up 
taken down by Raid. We have already Mihal coming to the middle. Nice battles over Raid. here to see how this round's gonna end up. For a and sec, yep. The DRH trying to also get close. Kings trying to make a decision. Uh, I would say they're more leaning towards the D. But again, they're gonna face yep. a, a very nice challenge because we're gonna see two. I think Lucas and Bean on a team that can keep up with him. Lucas takes uh, his Infernal full potential. Down right oh, for now sure. For a because you can't possibly be carrying uh, every match and losing, a, right? A very interesting moment where kings need the round. Yeah, uh, this is now awkward for kings. I think, you know, it's just one of those situations where this is why offense on Slum Search and Destroy is so tough. You rely on the fact that Galarus are going to peak you, and I don't know if they're going to do that. And Marvel, through the smallest of gaps, is uh, hoping to take Lucasin down. I don't know if Lucasin's going to give him anything for free here. Stun check going out from Marvel. Nay, actually, excuse me. It's not actually going to be. Lord is looking really good. And these guys are yeah. kind of forced into this awkward situation with 40 seconds Ooh. on the clock to try and take individual oh, one-on-ones. And Henry Cat again, going to win that one versus Marvel. Says now no choice but to force send it through the middle of the map. Does actually manage to make it through Graveyard, but might as well go back there, bud, because you're dead. Damn. Yes, Lucas again, uh, wrapping the round, being the man to bring the kills. Fantastic work. Fantastic job by Galleries to not offer space, not offer any margin of comfort for Kings. Rose on 11. As we see that they in are seven rounds, bro. Spacing. They're not deciding. They're not uh, pushing to the bomb sites fastly enough against the Brazilians. Let's see how that's going to keep playing out. Again, five versus two rounds. And Gallery is looking very, very sound and solid to potentially drop the map. Only two. Oh, rounds they're pushing? Oh, that shit. And right, is right in the core of the map. He was taken down. We see. Oh, boy. 3v3. Mihawk coming up. Pop Zero helping him. Marvel again. What the oh, hell, bro? And Mihawk brings a pair of kills to show who's the big dog and put galleries in a match point bro galleries yeah. gotta chill <laughs> this is how defense should be playing they're getting right three out bro no, no way to get through the middle of the map because galleries are there watching with those snipers that we were talking about before we got into the map oh boy backs against the wall now galleries one more round they take this search and destroy and you're already starting to see them flying through the <laughs> middle of the map here flying towards blue over the wall fuck is gonna pick up one kill towards blue side immediately traded by marvel there he was able to catch mihawk off guard so four versus four we go, but King's Clan have made no movements towards the middle of the map. And if Lucasin picks up Raid as well, things could go from bad to worse. Yes, that's it. Ooh, Let's see big how kills. King's gonna manage this uh, advantage now, working with four men versus two. That's oh my god, bro got jumped. Make mistakes oh, anymore, but fucking double oh my god, they choked the 2v4, they choked the 2v4. They choked the 2v4, bro. They choked the 2v4. Oh wait, no, they didn't, not yet. Lucas probably shouldn't have peeked that. Oh, it's done. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. What the fuck? What the fuck just happened, y'all? What happened here, bruh? What do you mean? Oh my god, they're trolling. Nobody fucking wants to watch these guys get smoked. We want to watch uh, uh, Inko against Q9. The strongest search and destroy maps that we see from Galaris as a roster. And that's pre Lucas in as well. That's pre adding another strong sniper player to the lineup. So, yeah, I think, again. Sniper player, so player AR, AR bruh. It's a nasty Sweet. AR. If you go into a switching side off the back of a defense and you've given away four offensive rounds to the opposition, you already know you're going to have no an problem, battle Sky. when you yourselves are going to go towards the offense. And that is almost exactly what happened. You cannot let Galaris get those four rounds early on. Yo, 12 and 3. Galaris winning a lot of rounds and Kings Fuck. only, they just could not win the map anymore. Uh, at some point on, it was not just possible physically speaking anymore. And look as he managed somehow to bring this 12-3 eliminations. Fantastic KDA. What a player, right? I mean, Galaris anyways would have uh on my opinion won this one against kings without lucas in because they've shown a lot it's not only about lucas in but it's about about what what other resources Imagine if Odin this gets squad, banned too. <laughs> uh, showcase to us and they have done this massively on both halves of the map i would say even that galleries uh, they never offered a real <laughs> chance for kings and kings on their side they never managed to dominate the scoreboard uh, brody the most we have seen yeah. from the europeans was a, a equalizer like one one in rounds and that's mm -hmm. it because galleries they were always ahead they were always 
making the right decisions and not having to change a lot from B to A. That's also an interesting thing to say because they were massively uh, close to the B and of course focusing on trading. Lucas doing so, Lucas again, and things. Combination Bro, of what the hell? Objective control and eliminations. Since seed, when was Glory's like cracked? Like, oh. uh, she know they've right. been cracked. I lied. Since when Glory's like on steroids, bro? Look at that, bro. That, that was crazy. Away, and, and very often it does Isn't DRH banned? DRH twenty five OTM. Like OTM. Uh, can you get towards the middle of the map? I think thirty Kings OTM. Back in your offensive spawn. They're just running again, DRH with no OTM. Over where Galar is able to win those first bloods, and the response from Kings is just not good enough. And honestly, the the, the what is it? Three rounds, two or three rounds that uh, Kings managed to steal away from the start. Some, at least yes. one of them, uh, maybe a couple of them actually did feel like rounds where maybe Galaris should have won anyway. I look back towards that round, mm -hmm. I think, early on where Galaris managed to get the bomb down over towards A. They retreat back through blue and effectively give up the bomb site away to Kings. That could have been oh my God, a bro, talking worse shit. map than it ended up being uh, for Kings. But regardless, it does go more or less the way we expect as Galaris now winning 2-0 in this series. They come out on top in an indomitable slum search and destroy following an indomitable uh, summit hardpoint as well. So... If you're a Galarus fan, and if you expected them to do this well, well, hey, it's going pretty much as you expected. But if you're a Kings fan, you've got to be pretty down in the dumps at the moment, mate, because uh, Kings are not having a <laughs> go of it whatsoever. Yes. And also, Bro, what's uh, happening with 2-9 Nico? just said, on an individual mm -hmm. level, man, we can very well say, like, the stability, how regular... It's too much. Q9 just needed a little bit more just to finish things off and claim everything up. Now, uh, I guess for the Search and Destroy <laughs> Express, it is bounce back season for them again uh, if you guys lose Ricky your Jax first is series, actually a good lineup though far from over not you will just get lineup. sent down to the loser's bracket then there you have to fight for your life now nah, drh without the otm is still good losing means not getting a spot at the playoffs you just don't have yeah, the definitely. headshot and, multiplier you know, even if um you were because it's still a, you still have still a three shot chance. AR. There is still a lower brackets. I don't think any of these teams who want to be sent to the lower brackets, they don't want to risk being at a situation where they have to fight for their lives because that is very, very stressful. And of course, you don't want to be in that situation. So let's see which among these teams are going to be able to maintain their spot here in the upper brackets. Yeah, but, but you know what? Speaking of teams that were sent down to the lower bracket, if you guys remember the 2022 Cotton World Champions in Tribe Odin Gaming, better than DRH. they got set down at the lower I'm bracket not sure. and did one of the best Cinderella story run right there, right? From w dropping down is good to with that winning large everything. Yeah. That could ju just be a potential just not as for, good. for Anko Gaming, but... Are Wolves playing? Wolves didn't series, qualify. ...only for now because currently trailing by 1 and 0. It's going to be kind of third bracket because this is your first day. This is your oh, first can game. Can start? And yeah, it seems like for Rafa. Oops. Coming up next here, Galaris 2-0 up versus Kings. Can Europe reverse sweep this series and make a mark in Brazil? Find out after the break. No way. Why are there breaks? Oh, Seminoles against Amigos. Seminoles taking that, no. Actually, Amigos be kind of nasty, though. Nine in the early half of the game. And we already talked about this. Um, they heated up. They started showing more action in about the third reset, which is really, really late into the match. And that's Kilo is better than Graf. I think Kilo is more like yeah, and, uh, for stable. For this Express SND, it's monumental for them to not have any repeat here, right? Because... What we're experiencing might just be the best version of Eco Gaming. But again, we will be taking a quick break. When we come back, we're going to see this SD Express. Are you fucking serious? Are you serious? Okay, let's watch the trailer. That's cool. Why is there a six minute break, bro? Be so for real. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess we'll just rewatch the summit game all day. 
What the heck? But he's kind of locked. Well, a lot of storylines going and also to P1, the galleries seems to regain the reign over here invading and of course already locking the potential entry points. We see they're very dominant over here inside of the objective as kings are uh, pushed away. I'm gonna have to uh, see, we're gonna have to see actually how they're gonna uh, manage to retake this one, Brody. It's looking already kind of complicated. Yeah, I think P1 just uh, on the whole, it's always a very difficult hill to get a wealth of time away from. Uh, Galaris doing a really good job at it at the moment. You can see the kill feed pretty much consistently lighting up blue and uh, three players on King's Clan at the moment sitting on donuts. Oh, that's they awkward. They start to get themselves moving sooner rather than later. Summit's one of those maps that can really snowball away from you pretty quickly. And this <clears> is a wealth of time that Galaris are able to steal <coughs> away from the one. Finally, you see now a order. couple of kills now starting to come through from King's Clan. They might well have a shot. It goes back and forth. some time from Hill, but already you're starting to see why this Galaris roster is so powerful. You're already starting to see streaks on the board. Oh yeah, they already are uh, playing on a massive level. We can see that the prep for P2 is gonna begin to happen and Kings manage uh, to maybe get a hero organized here in the back line, but let's see how that's gonna uh, be able to be converted into uh, an actual objective control as galleries. Uh, yeah, it goes back ahead. and forth, I mean, exactly. They have not been challenged hardly so far in this No, you're sick of but talk more. I literally can't, bro. Attempting to get I, I, to I cough point, every time I talk. Again, fucking with this R9 is gonna be very, very deadly. To try to take down. <laughs> Did you just call him fucking? Brody. It's totally looking blue so far. Yeah, this is not a good position to be in if you're King Clan whatsoever. You're losing kill feed. You've got R9 control for Galaris too, and oh well, you've got map control for Galaris as well. It's all looking up if you're a Galaris fan at this point in time. King Clan, there's still 15 seconds worth fighting over in old, but you cannot get it done. And now you're starting to see that snowball effect coming through. Hen sitting inside, has the purifier ready to go. Going to throw that hunter killer drone into the sky as well. Galaris are getting every single second away. I mean, Sazen and Inferno double chow for the hill, but Lucas in is tough. not allowed. We, Galaris are having a hell of a start to this game. Beautiful pair That's of good, kills. Omar. And we have Mihawki also helping him as much as he can. And Galaris is smartly already locking in the response and locking the objective itself as Kings are going to try uh, this challenge here with Marvel. Nice entry by him. And Inferno also managing to gather some eliminations. Kings finally stepping up and obtaining some points as we have oh, him shit. inside of uh, the point himself. Uh, managing to also protect this region. Interesting by Harry Caddy with the uh, Fennec, as we can see, and protecting also this open end area. Yeah. Galleries managing to get to the first 100 points them. here, Brody. Such a fantastic and massive ride so far against Kings. Yeah, See, that, like, Galoris is already pushing the out to new, is just but Kings keep going back for old. Kings clan. Lucas in gonna and then again, 24 and seconds, and I'd go back for old too. Fuck. <laughs> Kings can't need this. They need to hold every single second here, or this game is going to run away from them. Mm, let's go shark. Look, Kings need need you, bro. One in this series, a series that the EUs are struggling. Pretty stacked in Galaris' favor. Now, though, Galaris around the back line already. Couple of players here. Henry Cat, can he get the slide challenge? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Down from the sky as well, but the, uh, the SMG Geo here. Wait, did they start the SD? Or not the SD? The moments that we want to see from control Kings in this series. It just it what about this one? Feel like that same kind Bro, of venom, that same kind of fucking Kings and the Lorries is on control already. Two nine hasn't even started their S and D, bro. The What's going on? Yes, I don't know uh, what I think. What I keep thinking, actually, Brody, when it comes to this point of the series, this is crazy. Is uh, they have not been very lucky also on the map pool or on the draft side of things. And lately, as we know from Challenge Season, they have been so again speaking, the best maps for them. Also the huh. All right, we'll watch this control. And it seems pretty much the case here that, control. again, this is happening. They have not I think, so I think Galori respawn is better than their S&D, though. The map and showing that, okay, this is our map now. Let's just create some level of uncomfort to the Brazilians. So, Galleries is looking very comfortable and they are at their peak. The players were, of course, nervous before, but that's... How to join uh, the championship? Stage 1 is happening in April. Here. So now let's see how they're gonna bring all this inside of Crossroads Strike. Which Just look again, out in-game. As you said, it's not a pretty much uh, frequently played... Yeah, Sita, uh, thank you for the Greg, appreciate it. ...out of Latam, but in Latam has been dominant when uh, we look uh, to, to, to the control mode. I mean, if it was raid control then things could <laughs> go totally sideways so i hate caught i'm seeing so many raids and long teams are usually on this combination brody
Yeah, you know, I, I imagine I, I would have liked to have seen the picks and bans uh, for these teams because I would have found it somewhat funny if Galaris did do their homework and they did ban Rage Control uh, in preparation for what King's Clan would look like on that roster. Of course, it is important to note that pretty much all uh, European and North American teams are great at Raid Control. And I don't think King's lost a single Raid Control throughout the entirety of Why don't uh, I play World four. Championship? So, uh, yeah. I'm a I content think creator, it is bro. Good for them to get crossroads strike comp, control. Comp takes too much series. time and I'm effort. I'm excited to see uh, what Galaris look like. Not moving doing all forward, that uh, in towards this one because at the moment, I think just looking on paper, this looks like it should be a <coughs> 3 0 here for Galaris. Oh, yeah, facts. And I think, uh, given what we predicted, uh, Lanax, we both said 3 0, right? So it just oh, means they that started. The gods are predicting. We know oh, good. my God. Who cares about the glories and kings when you can watch Q9? 1v1. Backup still waiting. Oh my god. Oh my god. Who said it was a 1v1, bro? What? Where were we after about? That was a 1v2. But I, you, you saw there, right? The, the patience for Inko Gaming, they let that bomb to be planted, but they could just could not convert the final set of gunfights, and Q9 takes the first one. Yep, uh, pretty good trades from the side of Inko as well as Q9, but it's just a matter of how they're able to close up each round. For that first match, we saw Q9 definitely take the advantage here. And Maoshi going to open up round number two with a kill, and it looks like he's going for seconds, but gets taken down in turn, and Inko Gaming now has a numbers advantage. And performance speed, just goes up again with Snapdragon Elite Gaming. Experience the FPS. With Tad, Q9 yeah, now. plug, hashtag Yangi, I mean, experience the... Trying to bring an what are we experiencing? On the long -range gun fight. He's gonna pay the price for that. It is now a 2v3. And we are going to try and see if Olin can spot anyone out. Sinan as well. They are quite far from the players on the side of Inco Gaming. But they have to pick up that bomb that's dropped onto that B side. And Inco Gaming just has a, such a tight defense. But look at this. Krasin gets knocked down by Olin. And Eliozera goes in for the trade here. It's a 2v1 situation now. Yeah, the Tundra that's being held by Leo Zera is just going to be a chokehold there for Sheena, and it will make things difficult, <laughs> but now he managed to close the distance down, but the backup is there, Big Odera, Ooh. and the sniper from Leo will be able to take it home, tying things up, and the problem there for Q9, especially the round number two, was they just kind of let their bomb planter just be too exposed in the hands of Inko Gaming, you do get it, they push over towards B, but they lost the gunfight and the bomb was just dropped and all it takes for Inko Gaming was just to hold the the uh, the entire ticketing booth. Yeah, it was a very good defense play for them, especially after that bomb drop. And if they're able to repeat that as the players on the side of Q9 go towards uh, B side, they might just have a good chance of um, taking another round win to their side. But Q9 goes in for the plant right now, putting time pressure onto the players of Inko Gaming, who's trying to push in right now. Oh, Linz is playing on a contact position here. Needs to be able to find some information. He spots down Sun on the elevators, but yeah, there's three man stacking there. Mauchi and Sun combining for the complete obliteration of that mid map. Q9 Ooh. takes round number three. Absolutely great defense from the side of Q9. They were just slaying every single player on the side of Inko who tried to push in, and they did. A good it's kind of unfortunate, well. I mean, bro. All of them in unison was pushing. That into round the was point, pretty one-sided. Unfortunately, those gunfights were just not in their Ooh. favor. Now, trying to change things up, they're gonna go for a heavy defense on B. But just as they do that, the players on the side of Q9 go for a rotation as well onto that A side. Yeah, Rafa is the only guy alive there at the lockers. He needs to stay and play with his life. Do not let that numbers disadvantage go through, but Q9 just going in for a blitz all the way to the enemy spawn, <laughs> and the attack is just working. Four members already shot down in the first 30 seconds, and Linz, last guy standing for Rinko. This is going to be Dude, that's a tough. really, really quick game if Inko is not able to find their footing. Yeah, Q9 already. Three points IQQ up, phone. and uh, they, they are looking to continue the streak as they are very, very aggressive attackers. That's one thing this, about mobile gaming; uh, they gotta chill they with all the phone changes. Side. Um, they do like little, I guess monsters. Uh, they do but damn. play a little Must bit fucking suck. The defending side. Sometimes they have to pay for that as well. But in co gaming, they are struggling right now. Yeah, the snipers has just been uh, dominated here by Q9, right? Uling, Sun, combining for 13 <laughs> kills. Leo Zero and Rafa. Going to be the last two members alive for Inko, but Mao Chi finds a double. 
Takes Leo down. Rafa, last guy standing on a 1v3. We're gonna see if they're going to be able to clutch this up. Mauki is gonna try to go in for the plant right now, but Rafa is so far out. I'm not quite sure if he's going to be able to go in for the retakes, but what's important here is to play for those uh, picks one by one. And it looks like Oling's gonna find the last kill yeah. onto Inko and Q9. They just have a huge lead here. Three round lead over the players on the side of Inco, uh, over Inco Gaming. And it's not looking good for Inco Gaming. They're not able to find their footing. They're not really able to stand up against Oling and Sun, who's been playing the sniper role here. And they Ooh. are having a very Ooh. difficult time up against ass. those snipers. Yeah, there's always been this what the fuck? He got jumped. Six rounds, right? Always the first blood with a sniper. Makes time 19 better than the crowd. I have no idea, bro. Just always getting the number. They said Vantage is giving Q9 so much confidence. I don't really use up. either. Rafa able to get out alive, finds himself a two piece. Now he can play this one. I don't remember who it was. I think it was Envy that came into my chat and said like the, the B site, the type 19 is like cracked. Area where the R9D can just hit like oh, a freight train. You know, trust the pros, not me. And uh, the bomb finally gets planted on that B site. Sun gets uh, the last kill on to Rafa once again. Five points for the side of Q9 already. We are gonna have the switch of sides this time. Inco Gaming going to be on the attacking side and Q9 on the defending. Now, I'm not quite sure if Inco Gaming is going to be able to put up <laughs> the same aggression that Q9 was able to bring as an attacking team and how this will exactly play out. But one thing's for sure, Q9, even if they're in the defending side, they are very, very aggressive. Yeah, just count how many first bloods Q9 got on this map so far. <laughs> <laughs> Always been the sniper doing the dirty work for them. It's not Sun, it's going to be Yuling right now. Inko doing a great job trying to play, but Yang, you mm. already making that rotation over towards departures. Still going to be trades that will be made. Leo still about to make his fifth kill here, trying to work on that mid map rotation. Bomb is still going 3v3. to be in their hands. Still not trying to rotate at A. Q9 already at departures. Oh. Look at that flank. Standing way behind enemy lines. You hear him, right? Now we just have to see. Oh my god, he saw everyone. Limbs right Ooh, now. Big. He is going to be one of the players that Ooh, has big. to be able to clutch it up. He's going to be able to get two Ooh. big kills here. Doesn't spot the third player, but Esinan going to come up from behind. Rafa knocks him down. And finally, Inco Gaming turns things around. They break the streak of Q9 here. I believe in the Inco comeback. Now they have no room for movement here smallest and slightest mistake can cost them the game as q9 is only two points away from closing up the match so this is where inco gaming definitely has to step up if they want the chance of winning yeah lin just needs to be able to put himself in a position where he can make a lot of uh, gunfights and plays right right now on the last two rounds he has created three kills for this squad now, right now, they got the numbers advantage. They can swing the bomb over at the A site and put that bomb down. How many rounds do they play? Q well, Q first to seven, but there's overtime. And just put so much of that pressure in. And then you win by two. Yeah, oh, definitely. No. But now the bomb gets planted like onto six, the A six, side. Mouty like trying to go nine, here seven. and uh, go, uh, defend oh. his teammates as they go in for the defuse. But look at this. Absolutely <laughs> amazing place with Sun with the sniper. Yeah, they get work. that defuse easy. And now they are up at match point. Inco Gaming has no room for mistake as Q9 is a point away from winning up and closing the search and destroy match. It's just down to this round now. Yeah, what's crazy there for Q9 was that the Wanna snipers Q9 versus were the Glory ones that initiated the break, right? So it was definitely interesting to see Sun and Oling just create the place at a long range. But now again, trying to end things up here is Q9. When it has five, able to take down two, yeah, ADS up. is not everything in comp. Because usually Ooh, you're not gonna look at this. be we're running going down and then, to the like, last and final ADS. Player on the side of Inco, no. but you're gonna be already propped up holding an angle. Right. Well, game. Very, very Q9 just fucked Inco, match. Jesus. What about this game? Oh. Oh, well, we're about to finish here, too. 13v7, looking very solid to wrap this up. And King, King's they, I mean, they're being attacked on both flags at the same time. That's a very complicated position to be at as Marvel's tries to get close. Yeah. So, okay, he managed to Damn. obtain the kill. Let's see what else is going to happen. Mihawk bringing the hunter kill and that's over. 3-0 rounds 
Oh my god, oh my god, people are losing it. Oh my god, they're losing it. Since the Brazilians managed to fantastic first appearance, dominating the series as a whole, and being they're losing their mind, bro. Much more stronger than Kings in the very last map. Look us in with the Brazilian flag. I mean, this, <clears throat> this footage is gonna roll over the next week. I'm sure of that. Yeah, for sure. That's the start that you wanted. If you're a Galarus fan, again, we didn't know what to expect necessarily from this Precisely. new look team with Lucasin joining the roster. We kind of knew that Lucasin was a very strong player and that he would definitively Probably even get to see the like team. But you've always got happened. kind of that thought at the back of your mind, right? That maybe uh, this could be something yes. that ends up not benefiting the roster, despite the fact that Lucasin is as good as he is. Maybe the lack of preparation stumps them a little bit coming into this event, but it doesn't look like that whatsoever. It looks like this roster has been together for the longest of times. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll not be kind about it. I think uh, Lauren and Tan know how unkind I can be sometimes. That was a stomping. <laughs> Europe got absolutely yes. pooped on uh, in that first match of the day. And I think- Look at the crowd, holy well. crowd. They've got another chance. They're so hyped. The way that this tournament, tournament uh, is set up means that we are looking at GSL style groups. So there is a lower bracket here within the group itself. But <clears> I mean, that's not the start that you <clears> wanted <throat> whatsoever. Yes, fantastic numbers uh, on both sides. Now, 45 and 11 at that uh, aspect, as we can see, right? Marvel being positive. I mean, the team played well. They tried to, of course, uh, Thanks, get out it's of the, the Brazilian traps hype. Set by Galleries, Dude, Brazilian hype is crazy, yo. On, that was just not anymore possible. And Galleries did whatever they had to do. Foke stepping up, dominating the kills. Lucasin being. Let me see if they started. <clears throat> block to uh, secure the win in this game. Yeah, the first bloods are key to winning those search and destroys. Q9 yeah, had Wait, seven what? compared to Inko, who only had two on this nine rounds of action. So you can see the confidence from Q9, especially when they manage to score the first blood, right? They immediately go for the blitz, which has overwhelmed the players at numbers. And even that, you know, they can really play it slow and tactical just playing through their snipers, which has been uh, the, the topic and the main talking point for this Search and Destroy Express. <clears throat> Leo Zero, he was not able to absolutely show up here. Son and Uling was just a menace, you know, were just a menace on the long range engage. <clears throat> yeah, unfortunately, it was just a little bit too much for him to handle. I mean, one sniper on the side of Inco versus two on the side of Q9. It was, of course, a very difficult feat to come up against. Yeah, well, again, make sure you grab your Galaxy S24 Ultra and your monster, right? Unleash the bees. And again, Snapdragon Mobile Masters 2024. This has been amazing so far. We are seeing a different version of Q9. I <laughs> mean, I kind of said that the hard point was just kind of Die? basic for He's them, but they completely wolves. showed up at the first game of the day, dominating that up against Inko Gaming, then showing us a very dominant battle to just pull it through, right? 7 2 on the Express SD. And with the amazing factors just kicking in, right? <laughs> Having Sun and Uling as your sniper duo and letting Yang Yi or Mao Chi sent out to play that lurk and get those flanks for you. Everything is going great so far <laughs> on the first two maps. But here is the bad part, right? The bad part here is we're going to be taking a quick break. Ah, me Bro, we're what? Take a break. When we come back, we're heading Are into you serious? <clears throat> That's crazy. I guess we'll rewatch the control game. The very last map. It was very fast. Bro, what? Why are so many? We're gonna breaks? see all that being played out by both sides as Galleries already steps into B, trying to bring a heavy stack to this region. We see Mihawk being the only <clears> one kind of isolated from the rest of the team. But again, the house control is paramount to Galleries. And that's precisely why we get to see two, three players on the core portion of the map as the kill feeds looking more Brazilian right now. Greece tries to rebalance that and Kings are going to have to respond on B. They're going to have to come here and try to push the Brazilians away from this region. And they managed somehow to do that. But again, Galleries is very close to converting this B already. 
Yeah, it's already been a brilliant start from Galaris. I will say here, while they are about to capture B, and I don't think anybody from King's Clan can do anything about this. It is important to note that King's Clan, technically speaking, haven't given away anything uh, over towards A just yet. As I say that, though, it's time to fuck A to get on towards the point. He has lost his teammates around him. So relying now on the coverage from Pabzera and what he can produce with the R9, that's not going to happen here. Raid's going to find him. A couple of kills now starting to come through from Galaris here. So maybe they're going to be able to get out of this spawn trap, but now King's an opportunity to put that said spawn trap together. Oh yeah, King's totally reversed this one with a lot of uh, quality and I would say ability, surprisingly yeah. perhaps <laughs> to Brazilian fans, <laughs> but they come, uh, somehow, excuse me, overcame uh, coming from the back line to a more of a mid-map positioning, dominating the Brazilians and showing that, uh, I mean, the round's not over until it's really over. They got the numbers, now things are looking more equalized <laughs> as we have Gris trying to eliminate Foki, he managed to do that, Inferno coming as well, kills again. Favoring Kings to this point, as we see that the Brazilians are trying to may maybe create some havoc on the back line of Kings. I don't know if that's gonna be even Dude, first round was close. But we have also the clock ticking against I guess both Kings chokes. Five v five, very very interesting moment of the round. And again, all the Why is my glorious Pookie here is not talking. I'm sick. I'm sorry. We are talking about an international match over here, Brody. Yeah, indeed we are now coming down to a two versus two here in this first round of play. Now just down to Inferno for Kings. You don't really want to lose this defensive round. Habzera and Foke have a couple of options here. Do they want to hunt that player down or do they want to go straight for the point? Inferno is playing as if he's going to be hunted down. Now is he ready for this double child coming on through? Switches to the melee and oh goodness me. Oh, I don't think the melee is going to beat out Foke's R9 there as the first round goes the way of Galarus. Man, he even beautifully that managed crazy. to slide away, but then for a second, because no more than that, it's Foke we're talking about on the other okay. side, and he managed to <laughs> bring this one to his team. That is pretty Gallery goofy. Galleries uh, does dominate in the attacking round, and that's going to be very, very good for them. Since they're going to play on the defensive level now, Pabu Zero already breaking. Uh, again, in, against Inferno, we see the level of uh, lives, I would say, overall, uh, Brody, very, very similar. <laughs> When it comes to killing, when it comes to trading, both teams are operating on the same basis. But again, Galleries, they somehow got back on track. They were almost defeated on round number one, but they managed to bring this one based on killing eliminations, oh uh, based on their ability to face opponents. And we've seen Lucasin manage to build up, you know, piling up some corpses over the map. Fantastic kill feed control by the Brazilians. Totally coming and escalating oh. over here to a massive uh, lives amount. Oh no, this is the problem again. When Winning early rounds so important. The start in which they did, they've already got some of their operators ready to go. And and Fokke is causing yeah. so many problems. Dude, bro's just spawn trapping. He's watching them spawning and he is taking every That's single player down. Up. Finally, he himself will end up falling. But the damage you have to feel is done here in this round. We're in a six versus eighteen. If we're talking of this from King's Clan's perspective. I don't know if there's any way back into this round. Generally speaking, as a caster, you always want to be in a position where you can say, hey, look, Team A can beat Team B in this situation. Yes. But honestly, mate, uh, I don't know about if I can save this one. <laughs> Raids, 1v16. I tell you what, if he pulls this off, best play in COD Mobile you've ever seen. <laughs> uh, we see Raid <laughs> coming with 15. the Fighters to uh, uh, try hands face. But yes, Brody, it was, I would say, a very interesting round, to say the least. With two halves or two chapters instead of the same history, we've seen a very balanced first half of the round number two. And then Galleries just pushed it up against Kings. They managed to, you know, stack eliminations and then move the line ahead. Beginning even to do a spawn trap and put Kings on a very complicated position here for their first matches. We see 2-1 and... Kings are going to be forced to do precisely what you're doing now. Kings like is getting out, pull out okay. all the operators you have. Can Fukied. you buy additional operators? Can you land? Can what you go to the market and bring so some more? Because we need them. Oh and my that's God. what Kings need to do. That was they bring a crazy the damage point. in the right moment. Let's see how that's going to last against Galleries. All right, well, maybe a way back in this game is starting to use some utility right off the rip okay. here. Raid is going to land that that's a good missile pred. down on a couple of players. He's also still got one they of those They had the man advantage for two now, rounds, and they lost both of them. That will move away from him, but the problem is that Galaris after the first couple of they rounds glitch. in the dominant fashion in which they've won them, they've also got utility ready to go. A couple of Predator missiles coming down from the heavens to re-establish map control for Galaris. 
And they've got players in multiple key power positions as well. Hen from afar is going to get that pistol kill, making sure that B is being covered while Pabzera is starting you know, to I make hit that progress. I mean, look, it's relatively even. In yeah, no shit. Life, it's a tournament. Galaris is daunting if you're kings. Yeah, it's getting complicated. <laughs> Says is trying. He's doing his best behind that box. Let's see whatever. What else can they do? Let's see. Marvel Ooh. also trying with the Annihilator, but he was taken down quickly. Yeah, it's Galaris done. with this uh, already. Uh, 13 <laughs> v7. Looking very solid to rock this. They start up. here. And King. Kings, they, I mean, they're being attacked on both flags at the same time. That's a very complicated position to be at. Formed the same level with this new team. As well as Inches did with Galaris, for example. So those lines they begin to be comparable from now on. Uh, from side to side. Oh, they're starting here. Push for a game number four. But then again, we'll have to see how it goes down as we know that Q9 is definitely at the top of their game when it comes to um, Gango's kills. Gango's gunfights one to their side, and Inco Gaming is struggling with that as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's just the overall communication that needs to be touched up on by Inco Gaming heading into this control. They're fighting for their life, right? They gotta be playing perfect if they do want to come back before we even try to take that comeback topic, right? They need to win their first map on this best of five and that uh, control crossroad try coming right up next. They're gonna have to feel pretty confident because this was the only map that they played at the qualifiers where they went perfect, right? I mean, they played this map four times. They won it all. 100% win rate compared that to yeah. Q9 who only played this map up against 10 point gaming. It was one in a, one in zero where the score had to end up into a four and three. It was very close, and just goes to show to you still how much that needs to be learned by Q9 when it comes to playing control, especially in a map like Crossroads. Yeah, definitely, and that just comes to show that if there's any game or any map that. Uh, the players in Inco is going is likely to win. It's going to be this one. This is yeah. the map that they have the best ch chances of taking a win up against Q9. And we definitely see, would sky. love to see oh that my God, for my them, voice like so that we can finally go into a game four and put, see another hard point match where hopefully they can recover because we did see them um, heat up a little in it, a little bit on the later half of that first hard point game. I agree. We saw it, right? There's certainly potential there. It's just that the mental game wasn't just too strong following up on that search and destroy express. And it's because again of the sniper duo in Sun and Oling from Q9, who, who <laughs> took majority of the first blood on that search and destroy. And again for control, just starting on a defensive side of gonna you know, work pretty well if you're Inko as you're gonna have the, the better position around the map itself. But yeah, looking at the stats, I feel like Glynn especially needs to stay strong, right? I mean, you had a very bad game, underperforming on uh, that map number two. Yeah, why are you calling them out? chance for redemption, right? And it is redemption time why for do this that? map number three and trying to give Inko Gaming their first Was that Lins, win. you underperformed. I'll get that yeah, and that's actually another Enough point King. that I'd love to talk about. You know, momentum on the side of Q9 <clears throat> is already built. And we know that this team, they rely on it a lot. If they have a bad start, then the rest of the series... What? This is bad for them as well. But considering the start that they had in this uh, game... In this who do I want to win? Won two games already. They have Q9. this great momentum built. And I'm sure that they can carry this over into that control match and hopefully um close up the game but then again inco gaming has statistically the better chances here now i want to bring this up right before we start this map number three is inco gaming without lucas in you know kind of uh the, the, the difference on the performance is kind of too big or mm. it's just some minimal uh, what do you think savvy um, there's definitely a difference there, you know, you can see that they're definitely struggling a lot more, especially in those respawn game modes. But then again, they are trying to find their footing, they're still adjusting to the style and the gameplay. But we are heading straight into the game already, control has started, and you can see that the kill feed pretty even between the two teams, Inco Gaming and Q9. It's just a matter of who among these teams are gonna be able to stay alive longer. It looks like they're not gonna be playing objective for now, instead focusing 
focusing on those kills. Yeah, yeah Kill Nine Club again. It's important to mention when they play on the attack side, they don't want to step inside of the objective. <laughs> so, Oops, I don't why know is it if like... we're going to see the exact same thing happen all over again. But at what's happening currently at this round number one, right? They are. Ooh, we're seeing a tundra response sniping. And so far, Sun will be able to get that first segment going now for Q9 Club. Inko still trying to provide themselves a little bit more ba -ba. presence. Oh my god. With Crozen, able to Ooh. win that gunfight. Holy Fight shit, that was nasty. All right, now we're talking. Yep, a very Dude, the audio good delay is fucking me up, bro. Gaming definitely keeping up with Q9, but Q9 starting to get the advantage here as they capture that A side, trying to push for an additional minute extension, and they are bringing the numbers of Inco Gaming down to eight lives left. Now, Inco Gaming, they have to be a little bit more defensive here. You can see they're going out in the open, and it's not really working for them. They have to change their strategy. Yeah, five. Yeah, I'm killing this, like, kind of frying on needs offense. to find two before getting taken down. Leo Zero, holding it down, top fire. We'll be able to spot down some information. Ooh. Q9 Sun, provided an oversight in the long range. Just letting his teammate claim the they're time on, it. on, on it. the B site. Uh. One segment will already be done. Clock is paused at the moment. Inko cannot get any angles covered, but they gotta have to rely on number two in blue and wrap at the finals elimination. He finds a two piece. Bigo finds Ooh. Sun. Now it's a 3v4. A lineup on the long range here for Bigo with the Fennec. We'll be able to find what? up against Yangwon, and the siege inside is complete. Oh, it's but done. will be there to shut him down. Oling trying to go in for the capture 2v1, but the capture goes. Oh, Glory's new super and team. That is going to be yeah. the first round going to the side of Q9. And it was a really. A I really, really wish God like the wolves were in this. this so you could really see the skill level game, of Glory's. As you saw there, Inco Gaming had actually a chance to make a comeback from that, but they didn't have enough time to stop the capture from going through. You know what, Q9, this is the different version of them, right? We just saw them step inside of the objective on that first map, or the first round itself. Now, we're going to switch aside, mount you with a nice rotation around the back to get a three-piece one-ball combo. Yep, this is it. Inko trying to break free. Oh, shit. Got the numbers advantage, but Sun investing in that war machine just completely ties up the numbers in the life department. Yep, it's going to be tied now, but look at this, a slow capture on both A side and B side from the side of Inco, but it seems that they've been slayed out and they're not going to be able to continue that capture, pushing them back into their spawns. Now, they I are like just playing. trying to uh, hold down that area to they themselves, but Q9 is aggressively pushing in, trying to get all the kills that they need to slay off the players on the side of Inco Gaming, and look at this, we are going to see an operator skill being invested in, but a couple of them gets knocked down but the guy are going to be able to take advantage of his operator skill to slay down the players on the side of q9 and try to even even out the numbers here yeah lin just needs to stay inside of this area on the map right just Ooh. to provide that high <laughs> control but china will be able to take him down 20 seconds yeah, left. The Not much time now for inko to make a play on the side how do you get on the boxes the what the hell just being overtake overrun by king i didn't even know you could go the up moment. there and it seems like the time will be expiring. Inko needs to make a move. They need to push in one of the sites. And yeah, they're choosing A. But number three in yellow and pulling around the back will be able to make that massive flank over. Ooh. Then Rafa, last guy standing. Clock runs out. It's over now. Kendra Club 2-0. Not looking good for Inco, despite them having the statistics in their favor. It seems that Q9 is just too strong and too aggressive for them to deal with. Yeah, statistics have, don't mean there shit. There have been situations where we saw Inco Gaming just <sighs> stuck at one of the warehouses, not able to really escape, not able to go out, as the players on the side of Q9 have been swarming them with attacks and showing a no, uh, showing no mercy towards the players on the side of Inco Gaming, and they continue to do the same thing here. This is where in q9 is going to try to close it up as they are in match point already yeah still plenty of chance for inko to come back again starting on the defensive side if you can just turn this one into a reset you might just have a chance to bounce back and force a map number four lin has been playing absolute so far with 16 kills but this time it is cruising that just has been underperforming with scoring only Ooh. nine kills in the first 
two rounds of action. Q9 slowly getting themselves an opportunity to push out and get and maintain the mid map control. Machi sounds like taking over the inside, <laughs> scoring most of the points, and stopping the clock. And we are going to see Q9 actually dwindling down in the numbers, not looking very good for them. And this is a chance for Inco Gaming to actually get a round win to their side. And it looks like they're trying to take full advantage of that Q9, <laughs> even struggling to capture A side for that one minute extension. Oling here just holding down a power position, trying to get a couple kills to their side. But it's not looking very good as they're down to 11 players remaining. Yeah, Mauchi, they are just trying to push up right now and just trying to even up the live count department, but it's going to be difficult with Bigo. She's able to get some shots in there, right? They got the numbers advantage, but right now what is important is for this team to just top Kanger Club from taking over the A site and giving them another minute added into their time and giving more chances for Q9 to reverse oh, the odds close. round number three. 8 to 7 lives left. Now it's pretty even here, but Q9 just has to be able to play oh, I think they lost numbers this round. well. Because if not, if they get spotted by Inco Gaming, their numbers are going to start dwindling. And now they're down to 4 left, but Oling tries to even out the playing field. He's going to get a 1. Backs away from another fight. They are just playing as defensively as possible. But Inco Gaming going for a more aggressive approach. They go head to head up against Q9. Yo, they're just Wait! Oling just finds a double for him. It's oh my god, imagine. Three. Finally gets that would've that been crazy. Son, last guy standing. Uh, we'll be able to connect with that equalizer in Inco Gaming. Finally able to get a grasp onto Crossroads. And that's the thing, right? Now what you need is to try to take over this attack side. And once you hit this King Juke Club with that 2-2, two and two, we're going to be forced into an overtime where you're starting on the defense once again, where you played absolutely very well in that last round. But again... Kenju Club might just be able to take it home with them starting on the defensive side this time. Let's see how this one plays out because Q9, I'm not quite sure if they want to be in a situation where it's 2-2. Two and two. I think they want to close it up now and so far the numbers are in their favor to do so. Inco Gaming, they were able to win that one round but now as the attacking team, they are struggling here. Lin's going to go in for the backup, gets a kill here, going in for a second but Oling is just too good for him to slay down and we're gonna see the e annihilator come out as well from oling he's gonna be able to line one up but not able to find another just yet connects the dots gets another and it's looking like inco gaming is gonna lose this match as they're oh, down no. to nine players remaining and the equalizer here slaying them out oh, dude, 4v22 that's tremendous fucked. oh no this is the worst way to get the you know completely <laughs> run over in crossroad strike right the the the, the upper yeah, they got equalizer cooked. at the spawns to just completely dwindle your life as soon as you get a chance to step foot you get absolutely destroyed by the overpowered Equalizer and that right there closes it up. Kings Club takes their first series win, advancing at the upper bracket, taking this win, sweeping Enco Gaming. That says a lot on how much preparation Q9 has been doing just to have that kind of dominance. Yeah, that's especially unfortunate. In crossroads strike control. Yep, you huh. know, the first hard point match, it was <coughs> really, really close, especially... Let's go, you called it 3-0? Uh, yes, sir. Destroy and control. I called 3-1 first, the and then I, I double back. Really, I was like, really nope. Alright, let's watch this stream. Oh, it's well, the um, NA kiddos. I mean, these guys can turn it on. And Blink of an Eye, a very, very great... It's a fantastic team all around round and i'm interested to see oh how they God, can the do on this stage of course you know we've seen in previous iterations maybe not doing as well as they would have potentially liked to but at the same time they have more potential here than i, I would say any of the other teams i want to say from from the west <laughs> in, in comparison to what we've just seen there uh, mm -hmm. in terms of actually from north america and from europe i should say these guys are one of the teams that are there to potentially be beaten definitely uh, uh one of the favorites here in yeah. the competition a little bit of a redemption arc for them here at lan as well but then going up against them as we get an opportunity to put some faces to some of these names here on the squad uh we have yeah, them going up against amigos lanex and they were the ones that had to beat inko to make it here to mobile masters so this is not going to be an easy road for either of these teams 
It's not gonna be who's winning? Who's winning, y'all? Of them as you said, amigos, proving themselves also on a playoffs stage, and they did not have much of this chance happening last year uh, along many competitions, but finally they found their spot to be here. And again, who's winning this chat? Tinko, who were the favorites last year with Lucas in? So also, score and, predictions. As would say, yeah, no tech, bro. Fat out. With Lucas in losing, <laughs> and then now uh, amigos stepping up, as I said coming to face the best teams now the best team excuse me from na resembling of course the best days on luminosity side and bringing that tradition of a very dominant team and squad i would say three uh, one three oh last years yeah i'll course, say three oh seminal with cartels let's see how he's gonna play out with the team now how he's gonna be able to Dude, this is a uh, good matchup uh, though i don't know cause an impact over the series as a whole and from amigos side mm -hmm. uh, they're gonna have to be extra Cautious as we see the Brazilian casters. Hello to them. We have Brenda on the left side now, Joy and Bruno Clash. My friends from Brazil, of course, covering Portuguese the event out of uh, Complex Studio, Lauren. But again, back to the game. I think Amigos are going to have to uh, struggle uh, with an eventual, uh, I would say, lo uh, loss, of, loss of concentration during the games, especially on hard point, because when it comes to search and destroy mode and control, both teams look very strong and very similar on the map pool. So maybe uh, from mid, from the midpoint to on, on the series, this game is gonna get even like <laughs> more complicated. It's gonna get sour. Yeah, and of course we had an opportunity there while you were chatting to see some of those highlights uh, of when Seminole qualified. They had to be Team Mayhem to really get through to that point anyways, and those were some really fun matches to watch during our challenge season. If you guys miss that at home, whenever you have time, you can go back and check out some highlights from those challenge seasons because there were some really, really special moments, but you gave some really nice points there talking about Amigos. I think the girl holding is Samson was looking like the Joker female version. A really nice flash of two potential titans of these individual re regions here, Tan, and some of it could just boil down to the experience that we see even on the side of Seminole. Yeah, of course. I, I think that is definitely going to help when you come to this LAN environment. I don't think it matters what game you're talking about. Having that experience does make a really, really big difference. And whether or not they can use that experience and compound it into a result is another thing, though. Uh, look, I, I think if you are Seminoles, you're going into this believing that you can win the tournament. That's got to be the, the goal for every single play, uh, team that are here, of course, at the Mobile Masters. But yeah, for them, the experience is definitely going to count. <laughs> We'll just wait here for an opportunity to start uh, getting an image of those individual players when it comes to the Amigos roster as well. Do you think that there is the potential for any single one of these players when it comes to the Amigos roster, Lanix, to be the MVP standout player? Like, we obviously just had the first match we saw at the end of it all. It was Lucasine that ended up getting that MVP uh nomination i guess if you well, will of course no Who way would you pick if big you shocker pick there someone from the amigos roster to potentially be that person yes i see i think i would say uh that we could have like three potential candidates on amigos Ooh. side and they would be <laughs> precisely zeus the sniper one of the most experienced uh players we have from the brazilian side as uh, such a, a leader <laughs> From this yeah, squad, I literally don't decisions. recognize anybody but here. Also, GTO is a very recently appraised player coming Stalwart from or Seminole? Tier two to tier yeah, it's one, uh, against for who? a while, and he has been proving himself as uh, himself, excuse me, as a nice captain okay. to this squad. So he could very very well be also the MVP because he's also uh, has he also has shown an, uh, such a nice and massive impact on games. But on the other hand, I would say Insane can do that as well as in our a nine players. So we're gonna have a lot to see here because Zeus as a sniper could be decisive. He could like oh, uh, yeah, bring the check game the brackets. to his own uh, position into his own side. But then the other two guys I mentioned, they can very well be the MVPs. So it's a very very I would say balanced. Saw word against Rejax. Squad, uh, uh, probably watch Seminole. Actually, yeah, Solar against Rejects would probably be a better matchup. But... Do you think, Tung, oh. two matches in a row, will it be Latam that, that continues uh. on this insane <clears throat> start? I know this is what Lanex wants here, but they're going up against Seminole, you know? Like, what happens? Look, it, it's a different story. I want to say, look, Seminole are a very, very good team. Uh, they will be coming into this, and, you know, they're not going up against the number one team in Latam. <laughs> so, I mean, there's got to be some sort of positivity that you've got to take from that. 
at the same time, you know, we we have seen some very, very close games towards the last stages mm. of that last time side of things. So, look, they're all very, very good squads. None of the teams here are a bad team, although Kings are looking at this now and saying, well, okay, we look pretty bad there, but they were going up against one of the best teams. There's still a lot of competition to potentially come through. And I always kind of try and sort of say it, that losing is learning. You're going up against some of the best teams in the world yeah. time and time again here at the Masters. It's the time to try and take some things on board from what's going on against you and try and move forward in the rest of the tournament with that knowledge. Yeah, that's why, you know, we were saying it's just it's one of those things where our players have to try and either really smash it coming out of the park or in this case of kings whatever you did wrong in that first match just instantly try to 10 minutes bro apply some minute minuscule okay. changes that you can to try and boost your chances of winning that next match when it comes to moving on through this bracket chat i asked you for the first match i'll ask you for this match as well some of you even nailed the score line when it came to match number one i want to know who you all at home think will be taking home match number two will we see another latin american win okay will it be amigos or will seminal start off their competition with a really strong win and if you are so inclined give us those score lines as well because i want to hear your thoughts on this one there's lots of potential say for this three zero the distance no. depending on how some individual players and just the team as a whole Currently cartels is IGL. against each other like, i know you're lying you you're totally unbiased prediction you're lying this no shot it's going to go I would say that Seminar is going to uh, bring the first map to their side and we're going to eventually be seeing like a 3-1 on maps. Um, Amigos, they could do a lot, again, on search and destroy and control. I think that's going to depend on how both sides are going to begin the series, but I am actually inclined to agree with Don in this one. I think the, the Americans are going to be looking stronger and they're going to be maybe producing more. Uh, but Amigos, I mean, they should just remember that Inco have just lost to Q9 and uh, Galores have Ooh. won. So, I mean, as a Brazilian, you need to step up. You need to show uh, who's the owner, who's the host here, or who's, who's the owner of the homeland itself. Yeah, that's a, that's a good call. A little bit of a final update there. That series no, no, did go Texas the way of Q9. What so the fuck? So oh, shot that win, which is going to be a great start for them. Inco will drop down what? into that potential elimination match. So that will be uh, up against Kings. So we'll keep on top of where that goes, which means Q9 will then be facing off against Galaris. So things are already starting to heat up for some of our squads. We're just waiting for our players to get themselves ready oh, no for way. these walk-ins where they are live in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Everyone looks like they're having a great time too. They had that outside desk set up ton in the gorgeous you weather. Know. I mean, that looked quite cushy. <laughs> Yeah, we couldn't do that in Poland um, <laughs> during the winter. That would have been a little bit tough, I think. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's one thing to be sitting here in my bedroom and looking at all the palm trees and everything going around there in Brazil. It's a beautiful country, I've heard. I've never got to visit, and it looks like I won't ever at this stage, Lauren. I, this was the perfect opportunity. <laughs> well, we'll we'll have to organize something. Maybe Lanex can can go with us and take us around, show us because yes. I've never been either. So you might have to play tour guide for us here, Lanex. <laughs> No problem. It's going to be a pleasure. Come to Brazil. Let's go to Brazil, to be honest. I'm not in Brazil right now. But yeah, Laura and Anton, it's going to be a great to see more events happening also in Brazil. As uh, we have to stay taking this chance to say this, that uh, ESL Mobile Master... So, oh my God. No shot. At the Latin region, it's just very, very special. <laughs> it's the first time this kind of uh, choice happens when it comes to organizing and setting an event at this scale. So, again, uh, much of uh, appreciation to ESL and Activision to provide this along with all the other partners, of course. Such a fantastic chance to see, you know, players and teams coming from all over and gathering uh, at Sao Paulo. I mean, the city is totally, is totally uh, looking pretty, looking uh, actually tense when we saw the live uh, footages, kind of a cloudy weather. But again, inside mm -hmm. of the arena, uh, that doesn't matter much. You have to just do whatever you got to <laughs> do inside of the maps. 
Yeah, and we've seen just how amazing the Latam community has been for Call of Duty Mobile, just how much everybody really loves the game, how fantastic the level of competition has been in the region, and that's just illust illustrated by the very Master first like match messy. that we get a chance to catch what? here on the A stream right out oh, of the gate. So it's really exciting for Mobile Masters as it continues to kind of move around the globe in these different locations mm -hmm. and just continue bringing Call of Duty Mobile to all of these different countries in these live LAN events, which is a totally different vibe and experience, whether you are a spectator, whether you're the commentators or you are the player yourself being on stage in that live atmosphere is just, there's nothing like it done. Yeah, of course not. I think, you know, as as talent, we, we love being in the, in those kind of venues, right? <laughs> when you've got the crowd behind you and everything. There's there's nothing better as a commentator, as a fan, you get to see your players there. As the players, you get to feel that energy from the crowd as well. It's it's one of those things though, where you can sink or swim though. It's, it's about the mm. pressure on, on you. It's about all these eyes who are in the venue. People might be giving you some steak. I mean, that's especially something we can kind of talk about in terms of these Brazilian teams have that home field advantage. A lot of people will think, oh, well, you're just playing COD Mobile, you're right? It's not, it can't be that much of a, no, it will be. I, I mean, look, if, if they are screaming every single time you get gunned, then yeah, you gotta zone it out, bro. In. You start trying maybe just a little bit harder. So yeah, the home field advantage is definitely there and it's definitely a real thing. So guys, we're just waiting for our players to get ready for match number two. If you're just joining us here in the A stream in English for the first time, we're waiting on a Seminole versus Amigos matchup, our second matchup of the day. And this is going to be a really exciting one between some of our top teams in some of the more dominant regions. Definitely Seminole expected to be a potential finalist here playing in that best of seven grand finals. I don't even know if we've talked about that too much. If you are also just joining and you don't understand the format of this, all of our series up until the grand finals will be best of fives. So obviously first team to get three wins will be the one that takes that home. We've already seen the first match of the day, which did go the way of Galaris. So they are now in that winner's uh, match situation, trying to get into semifinals. They're, they were waiting to see who they'd be going up against. Q9 won their match up against Inco in this group phase. So that means that Q9 and Galaris will be facing off while Inco and Kings, Kings being the one that Why lost is Galaris, both spamming, will be bro? facing off in an elimination match. And then when we end up with the winner of that and the loser of our winner's match, that will be the decider match for Group A. That's how it works for both Group A and Group B. I figured I might as well give an explainer while we're sitting here waiting for our players to get ready for match number two. And now that you guys know how it all works, that's how we'll get into our semifinals, which will also be best of fives till we hit the best of seven to close the whole thing off. 200 thousand dollars on the line here we got a chance to look at the prize pool earlier ninety thousand dollars going to first place forty thousand dollars for second place 20k down after that and these teams are all the best in their regions and they competed for weeks in their challenge seasons to get to this point we talked about it for what feel feels like an extremely long time just how important yeah. it was for all of our teams to get to this stage of the competition ton and now that we're here it just i feel like you can tell which teams put that time in between the end of the seasons to now yeah we talked about it for, for an entire six weeks actually and then it, it's it's felt like it's been such a long time since then as well so all these teams have had a lot of time to prepare I think, you know, from, from our standpoint, Lauren, especially coming in from the European and NA regions, we knew that they would all have to step it up. I know Seminoles are going to come in here as one of the teams expected to do, right? yeah. especially for a team like Kings. You're expecting them to come in and try and find something there. Uh, I'll be right you know, back. Just a little bit extra I'm to try for and push on. For all these teams, though, it is about that improvement. And look, I, I think for, for Seminoles, this is the start of a hard road. But look, this is the best what, eight teams in, in the world. So... Mm -hmm. you can't mess around you you need to be on your a game at every single point you possibly can be you need to bring it every single game yeah it's it's uh probably one of the hardest things that some of our newer newer players will have to deal with as a competitor is moving into this 
high level competition and trying to deal with everything that comes along with it. I believe we just got some interviews going over on the actual land stage that we're just waiting on before we get into our second match. And just for clarification, we've now moved into group b when we're talking about amigos and seminole that's the other group of teams that we're taking a look at the remaining two squads in that group are uh stalwart esports and the rejects so those will now be the squads we'll be keeping our eyes on moving into uh this next match we'll also be able to provide you with then those score updates coming out of the matchup that happens between stalwart esports and the rejects and uh, I just want to get some thoughts from you on that one as well, Lanex. Even just quick thoughts on what could potentially happen between Stalwart Esports and Rejects. Yes, again, uh, I think Group B is one of the most balanced ones. And Seminole surely are going to keep being the favorite to grab one of those spots today too. But just like you stated, we're going to have other three teams to talk about and to talk with. So Amigos, Stalwart, and Rejects. As we see, pretty footage from Sao Paulo. Live footage, guys. So yes, I think when we look at the other game, at the other match, Stalwart again Rejects, we have to know that these teams, they are used to fight. And they are resistant. They endure in long series. So Stalwart, trained by the Brazilian coach Zampes, I would say they are pretty much uh, used to having a lot of combinations on Mira and on informations based on whatever he learned on other teams that he trained. So it's another very talented coach uh, from Brazil exported to the world. And Rejects uh, coming again, uh, since Mayhem were not able to come to the event, Rejects, they stepped up and managed to also do what Amigos did during the playoffs, uh, originally speaking. So. We're talking about Amigos and Rejects here, here as teams that stepped up when it was necessary. They did not miss the chance of uh, grabbing their spots and they did whatever they needed to do. Losing first matches, but then recovering during the series. Yeah, and that definitely provides an opportunity for those teams to learn early on maybe some places where they can put some work in heading into this type of a LAN and now uh, they've gotten themselves, at least like Tan said, into the top eight in the whole world when it comes to this competition. So that alone is a feat in and of itself. Making it here means not only do you prove you're one of the best in your region, but you're literally one of the best in the world. Everybody will go home with a little bit of cash in their pockets. So at the end of the day, even if you do lose Tan, it's still an accomplishment to have even battled oh, yeah. this far through. Like, uh, I mean, you had to go so far, right? You had to play through the entire open stage to get into to the pro series you then had to win every well you didn't have to win every single game but you had to do as well as you possibly could do in the group stage then you got to go through the knockout if it was europe there was only one spot if it was NA, there was two there was so much to have to get through and i've missed stages out in there lauren just for the sake of time <laughs> to, to get at this stage i mean it sounds like we've got plenty of it but irrelevant of that it, it was just it, it was such a long drawn out process for these teams to have to actually get here and a process that doesn't leave anybody out. There's no selection uh, of certain teams that get into the Snapdragon Pro Series. It is a case of fighting your way through. So the fact that they have found themselves here is a definite top eight teams in the world. Of course, at least the best from each of the regions. So it's going to be super interesting to see how it does all pan out. I think we all have ha kind of got a, a decent idea of what regions are on top and which ones are not. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be getting uh, some good answers in this game. I think, you know, the, the previous game doesn't didn't, didn't really offer us anything that it look at. We all kind of knew that was potentially going to happen with this one, though. There's more question marks. All right, chat. We appreciate your patience and bearing with us while we're waiting to get the second match started of the day. Uh, we are preparing, if you're just joining us, to get into match number two between Amigos and Seminole, a match that's definitely going to be a very, very fun time. While we're waiting for that, though, match number one on the day, if you missed it, was Galarus versus Kings, and Galarus came out of the gate incredibly incredibly hot not to mention lugazine specifically had a phenomenal performance also being named the mvp at the end of it all well one of the good things about these events is that it gives us an opportunity to start to get to know our players even better than previously and even more outside of just the game of call of duty mobile and we had a chance to catch up with lugazine before the event so let's see if we can take a look 
at the video and see what he had to say about competing on a global stage. I think uh, the reason that Lucasin is made out to be the greatest player and one of the best players actually as of right now is definitely due to his versatility. You can get whatever in his hands and he'll fry with it. Ele sabe ser um Alper, ele sabe jogar de R, ele sabe jogar de sub, sabe jogar de 12 até, não duvido. If you talk to anyone who's ever played with Lucasin or played against him, he is a strickler when it comes to how you play the game. He puts his 100% effort in everything he does and I think that's one of the reasons why he's able to excel. He knows exactly what to do and when to do it at the right time. Eu já tive uma experiência com ele e depois perceber que ele chama muito o time, ele sempre tá fazendo o time falar. Ele dentro e fora de jogo faz total diferença dentro da equipe. Dentro do jogo é sem palavras, o cara mata muito boneco, então tipo, facilita bastante o jogo da galera. Fora do jogo também, tem uma personalidade muito forte. And on top of that, the way he plays, it's a mix of being passive and aggressive. O que eu espero do meu legado é conseguir marcar a vida das pessoas e dos meus teammates e das pessoas que eu joguei contra como um jogador excepcional. So what it takes to beat him is a lot of coordination. I feel like um, since the thing that we want to do on our time, not his. Cara, o Lucas se adaptou muito bem no time. Um mês de, de time, ele veio, pô, agregou muita coisa do jogador que ele é. Só trouxe o somaço, trouxe a agregar para nossa equipe. Muita gente fala de ser o melhor jogador do mundo e não ter um título nacional pesa bastante. Então é isso que a gente vai correr atrás, mas não é algo que, que vai manchar. Então não não vejo como assim. Uh, I think they're gonna do really good in this tournament. When we found out Lucasin was joining them, we said the Avengers picked up Thanos. That was how we equated it. So I think they're definitely gonna be a strong team. I feel like um, since uh, event is hosted in Brazil, Lucas is like the fan favorite. Everyone wants him to do well. He's like a hero from Brazil. Him having the home crowd, oh, most definitely. But I still have my teammates next to me, and that's pretty much all I need. And on top of that, my family's here too to, to come and support me. I don't really fear anyone. If it's me and Lucas and me or anyone, I don't really care. I'm just, I'm just here to shoot people. If it's just me and Lucas in, I feel real confident. I would. I want to win from everyone, to pass the car. I can't have this vision of camaraderie. Out of the game, it's easy for us to trade ideas, be friends and so on, but I think here in the campeonato, we have to have this type of vision. I focus on winning from any team. I noticed some serious confidence from some of those players when it came to potential 1v1s going up against Lucasine, but also lots of respect being given to Lucasine about just the this mechanical ability and just general game sense when it comes to how high on the ladder of skill he really is, Lanex. Precisely, Lauren. It's a, such a fantastic video we just saw because it reflects precisely who he is inside of the pitch and out of the pitch as well. He has uh, such a great versatility when it comes to using the damage options. Uh, uh, just like the lad said, uh, he's able to big pock from a distance. He's also a very complicated burst player to face. Uh, no matter the weapon he's going to be using at, at any point of the game. So he's decisive. Uh, I have seen him and casted him in many occasions also uh, being the opener on rounds and also dropping them up. So he's a very, he's a fantastic, very, very nice player to have along this squad. And it's great also to see how Pop Zera, who faced Lucas in along all over last year as a rival, he's praising him. Not only because, of course, he's playing with Lucasin, but also because the respect, as you said, that Lucasin has built over his name over time. Yeah, we love to see that. And now we're getting an opportunity to see those walk-ins for Group B onto the main stage. So we'll let our wonderful team in Brazil do their thing. And when our players are settled, we'll jump back in. O que vocês acham que vai vencer aqui agora? Vocês estão torcendo para alguém? Porque a gente ainda tem brasileiros. Quero saber se vocês estão torcendo para o Brasil, galera! So taking the chance here, Lauren, Nivi, the fantastic Brazilian host, internationally known, asking the audiences if they're cheering for the Brazilians or not. She's being very, very excited on this communication with the folks present at the event. Such a fantastic, also experienced host, uh, managing to keep the hype up at this moment of the event. Com vocês, quero que vocês recebam com uma salva calorosa de palmas a equipe da Seminal versus Amigos. I love to hear just how much early on support we're getting for some of these teams as well when it comes to the audience. We even heard the players saying in that Lucasine video that some of them managed to get their families to travel internationally to support them in this event, which is just... That's
that's just another level of support in my opinion and now we're getting a first look here at our teams that we're going to be seeing in the next match around the corner of course we've got Seminole right there and right before that we got a chance to see amigos they'll be the ones at the bottom of the stage as we're now getting rejects coming in to start getting the third squad in group b in and then of course that will all be rounded out by stalwart when they make their way in as well love this everybody looking fresh ready to go for match number two here ton and now we just have to see how quick our players can get themselves ready <laughs> yeah well if we know a couple mobile players not that fast typically <laughs> Usually it takes a while. No, uh, we'll be good to go very, very shortly. Look, these four teams on the stage right now will all be very eager to get things underway. But for a lot of them, look, it's now realizing a, a dream for them to get to a stage where you will be fighting against some of the best teams online. It's an opportunity to eye up the competition from different regions that you may not have had a chance to play up against before. Very, very interesting games at the bottom and the top of the stage. This is true. This is strictly a, a, a fashion observation, but I do really like the baseball jersey style uh, jerseys. I guess for rejects. Yes. Kind of. Love them too. I, I'm just. I don't know about you, Lanex, but I'm feeling it. <laughs> well, I think they actually are talking to a more. Uh, I would say um, East style, right? On dressing, I like that. You know, I like how they show some style on that occasion precisely now as we can see in the image i really love this kind of uniform it's unusual right uh, lauren when it comes to sports teams uh uniforms very pretty again and i like the confidence they bring on especially having seen what rebelo said earlier today uh, being a guy that struggled a lot and is now competing on international level we also uh, saw a very familiar face, at least from our challenge season on the NA side of things. We saw a Hippo walking down to meet the Seminole crew, coach for a Seminole, and always someone that we have a really nice time whenever we get to interview him here on the, the stream. So nice to see that they brought the entire squad down to Brazil. I feel like that definitely is going to be beneficial for them when it comes to going up against some of these top squads especially starting off the day here against amigo so like we said now it's just a little bit of a waiting game as our players get themselves settled in at their stations get their tech connected seamlessly okay and they'll be ready to go for match number two i think that it's going to go fantastically we're getting our vetoes in here as well picks and bands Man. are up ready to go i love that love seeing that ton yeah nice to have them how point coming up first of course for summit session destroyed tunisia control raid actually coming through i mean obviously brody spoke about it briefly a map that was played so often across europe and and a apocalypse then coming in and meltdown search and destroy to finish things so nothing really to write home about i want to say lauren it's it's very much a standard map set when it has to come down to come mobile at least one we would see over in north america or in the european regions at least anyway very much uh, favored maps across the board all right well taking on uh the amigos side of things are there any strengths or any advantages that they have with this current map set lanex yes we could say and point out uh, especially summit hardpoint for amigos and uh, right raid control these combinations uh they were very well performed by amigos during the challenge season and i would say search and destroy can actually be a very strong point for seminal since they were 8-0 when it comes to performances in victory overall on the mob mode so maybe that's going to be the way that the draft's going to take and the series as a whole are going to take but we never know these two teams to be fair they are very overall strong on all the modes and all the maps uh, i would dare to say even that they have the most balanced map pools we have out of these eight teams over here in the event so i don't know what to expect uh, one thing is whatever we say before the game begins and after that uh, I mean, the gods of Call of Duty Mobile are going to uh, do their thing, and we're going to see how things are going to play out, Lauren. 
I mean, definitely an opportunity for uh, some of our two more seasoned teams to really just kind of give a, a solid example of what core Call of Duty Mobile is when it comes to now this uh, map set that we've got going on here for match number two on the day. You can see all of our players here hanging out with our admins and tournament officials just making sure that everything is good to go from their perspective when it comes to uh, their headsets, their their phones, making sure that they're comfortable. I, seeing less pillows this time around. <laughs> uh, I know that that is very, yes. very common. And right now, no one's using them ton. So maybe they just, they're just, they don't need them. They're that good. Maybe it's, <laughs> you know, would you, it, it's, it's a comfort thing usually, isn't it? But yeah, there's not even one, is there not? <laughs> They're not using it at all. I... Fantastic to see <laughs> on both sides. No one likes or loves pillows anymore, man. Why not? I would have thought <laughs> they, it would have been they... like. Yeah, it's just. Didn't they have sponsor? I swear that a specific brand that I don't know if I'm allowed to mention actually made <laughs> pillows for mobile gamers at one stage. I expected to see a plethora of them. That's a big. That's a different English word. I I, I don't want to throw anything too complicated in here, but that there is a lot. That would, I was. I would expect a lot of them. <laughs> They, they're starting to evolve past yeah past the need Lord. for the pillows that's where we're getting to you're getting less trendy <laughs> perhaps since words to now i don't know if pillows are like low on occasion but either way uh we're gonna see how they're gonna do in this new space right it's very very special to say and important to phrase that yes some mobile masters happening at this level again on on, on the learn format uh, personally speaking, gathering everybody together, it's very special. I I would say that even for a lot of these teams, it's their first time on a stage. Of course, NA region has already more experience on that back in the day, but now they're going to have to see whatever they can do. Seminoles, uh, they're going to be the guys to represent NA uh, right now, right? Even before rejects, I would say, but we have, of course, both teams playing uh, at the same time. That's going to be very interesting to see. Uh, which one of them are going to confirm expectations, which one uh, is going to actually step up and, and show that they can do more. I love, I love to see that. I think our players are prepared to bring a lot to the table here today, knowing just how much is on the line. You see Solo, at least one of our players from that top down that's still using that pillow setup for himself and like we said earlier these games will be running at the same time but don't worry we'll make sure to give you guys updates on what is happening between stalwart and rejects how that matchup is going uh with those two teams and who will end up in that winner's match versus who will end up in the elimination match and then as well as the other matches from group a as those continue on if we don't catch them We'll make sure to give you guys the score lines and updates for those as well. Meanwhile, we're just waiting for our two teams to get into it. And as I say that, we're ready to go. So, Ton Lanex, let's dive into match number two. Thank you very much, Lauren. And finally into this one. And, of course, she's cursed it. She's cursed it straight away. Oh. She said we were ready. I've, in fairness, in absolute fairness, wow. it very much looked like we were ready. But we will have a quick reset and we'll get back into this game. You can even hear the crowd were getting themselves all hyped up. And it was for nothing bit too early here yeah. Linux, to get yourself excited man i don't know that was quite a jinx right lauren but anyways um let's see what's gonna happen because that was precisely the first time we have seen the players getting out of the map so we must consider ourselves lucky to this point as we see players talking about what should be done and when i look at precisely vague you know it comes to my mind everything he lived with the team last year how words went down and of course the potential he's got to make a mess during these kind of games so yes if i was on into amigos steps and, and sides i would be very 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 careful to whatever vague is gonna be able to 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 pull out because he's such a player that can mess up with your mindset and he's gonna be one of the definitely most dangerous players on the side of seminos Tom. Oh, 100%. I, I think the entire Seminoles roster is absolutely stacked, though. I mean, these guys, 
I, I, I don't want to say they made things look easy. The, the, the finals were a bit of a strange one, actually, across the board. Uh, Mayhem coming in there and, I mean, really upsetting the Apple Cards to a certain degree. But then, obviously, the issue that happened with them, Rejects then getting themselves through. It was a strange old time in the NA playoffs. I remember it very well. It was like 7.30 a.m. local time by the time we finished. It was a long old night. Ask, ask Lauren and Brody about it. I was delirious by the end of it. Hopefully we don't go <laughs> till 7.30 in the morning this time. I'll be speaking more gibberish than I usually do. Yapping a lot more than I do as well, Lanex. <laughs> but into this one we go. Seminole taking on Amigos, and it will, of course, be Summon Hardpoint to take things away. Interesting to see, though, for both these two teams. Who can have a nice start? I think on land it does make a, that little bit extra of a difference. If you can have that good start on the first map, get things rolling nice and early. Bit of momentum behind your backs. Yes, we are seeing precisely now Seminole already dominating the core in the P1 and putting Amigos away. They so far have not managed whatsoever to get into the point as we see Cartels bringing R9, always dangerous, always deadly as usual. And Zeus tries to invade. It's going to be a necessary measure. Otherwise, they're going to be just as riders, just watching Seminole work over here. As we begin to see teams uh, prepping the movement to P2, and it's looking pretty much solid this map so far a ton to seminal yeah fantastic start by them 45 seconds on p1 there's nothing to turn your nose up at heading over towards p2 on the rails on the outside big gunfight's gonna come in over towards the top side washi gonna try and get this one cleaned up if he can do and he does and now starting to make the move down below as well but amigos a little bit of presence here have managed to keep them away do have the spawn to the p3 and that gunfight up top will help things out as well Big wins coming in from Sapuka. Can he find any more? Not looking likely. A couple of investments of operators already coming in here from Seminoles. Wanting to keep the wind firmly behind their sails. You can see a break potentially going to be coming through over towards the P3 side. Seminoles on the rotation already. Yes. Seminole doing such a great job and trying to keep unbeaten since the challenge season. Since they managed to come out of that phase of the championship with 10 victories over 10 matches. Things looking very solid for them against Amigos over here, who did not, on their hand, manage to get into the hill. And thus, P3 is going to be an obligation for them. That's precisely why Illusions are already holding on their spawn. But he was taken down fastly by Cartels. So, again, a very, very complicated match so far for the Brazilians who tried to step up, tried to bring more to the table against Semino. And Semino is already uh, with players inside of the next hill. So, vague. Precisely, they are trying to blockade this entry. Done. There it is. The response for Brazilians was fantastic. Nice movement by Sapuca with Zeus also bringing damage. And Sapuca is going to even spread that Sparrow out in this lane. Yeah, very well played. Find the break in through the back. Couple of kills. Fold on through. And then, of course, the investment from the Sparrow. Coming in and finding a break for Amigos. 40 seconds to play for here over towards the P3 side. Zeus now just trying to lock this one down. Spawns still working out for the side of Amigos. 30 seconds to go. The kill feed still lighting up yellow. And if you're Seminoles, you're trying to turn this one around very, very quickly. Illusion will find a couple of kills back as Banda's going to be able to find one time to buy. Looking like the break is going to come through from Seminoles, but the spawns have switched again. Amigos will be the ones who benefit the most. 15 seconds to go here for scrap time for Seminoles, which they will pick up. But that rotation importantly belongs to Amigos. Smartly by Amigos, as we could just see in this P2, they managed to obtain the points and get back on track without having to do a heavy commitment. That was very, very well played by them without losing a lot of players. And of course, without having to feed Samino too much. And after that, they rotated with a very, very nice pacing 2p4, as we see Samino having to fight better at this one. Semino went before, then Amigos to P2, but they did not manage to acquire all the possible points. And Amigos are looking even more solid now. It may be very well, a uh, very interesting turning Big point wins. for them inside of the map. Done. Big wins from Marshy. He's actually wow. found three. That's it. Going up the cliff side, manages to find a three to break it open, but Insane and Supuka oh. combining as well. They will answer back. 30 seconds to go. One spawn towards the back here for the side of Seminoles. Maybe they can find a route on through. They will be there to find one at the GTO. But just so far, Amigos are holding and holding strong. It's a bit of a mix-up, to be honest with you. Keeping an eye on the spawns. It's all over the place. But the gunfight's coming through for Amigos. It's feeling like for the first time, they're going to take the lead. A really decent hold over towards the P4 side. Back over towards P1 we go. A great first half for these two teams. Amigos, after that first start on the first hill, would you have expected them to be in the lead? Absolutely not. 
Yeah, and that's what they managed to do somehow. Let's see how Seminole are gonna take this one from this point on. As you said brilliantly, both teams doing a fantastic first rotation. And Ben is already inside of the machine gun. We have Migos trying to take over the top region with GTO trying to use well this window. And Illusion's gonna do the gap closing to try to help with the firepower. It's gonna be a necessity for Amigos to do more. And of course, pass Seminole eventually in the scoreboard. The kill feed uh, was very good for Seminole, but it has become more hybrid over the last seconds and minutes. Done. Yeah, you can see that in terms of the actual kills that have went down, it's pretty even, but Amigos definitely waking up after that. I want to say it's only really been the yeah. first hill that they really struggled on. After that, the second was kind of 50-50. They were definitely the beneficiary over towards three and four. Really good job from Amigos so far. Seminoles back into the lead, though. Some decent time over towards P1. G2 gives a quick jab in the face towards Band. Can't find the second. Cartels will find a couple of his own. Now heading over towards the next hill very, very shortly over towards the rails. All about trying to get some control over towards P3 once again. Seven of the first ones there at P3 on the last rotation of hills. Yeah, though, Ego. And can they be there again? But can they make it count this time? Yes. Amigos reestablishing themselves in P1, fixing whatever did not happen properly on the beginning of the map. It's very interesting to see them scaling up in points against Semino. But it's curious to me not seeing Sam yet bringing his R9, perhaps not confident to use it today. As we know, he's decisive with that weapon. And Big is taking a chance to bring up a pair of kills. Insane is also using the equalizer right now. Such a fantastic P2 as well. Marshy dominating with the R9 as well. Doubling it up. Big helping him a lot. <laughs> and Sammy now out of a sudden doing a fantastic job at this hill. Really good job. But it's about this rotation. Look like the gunfights are going to go the way of Seminoles, though, as we head over towards P3 in just 15 seconds. Very, very even game. Couple of kills going to come in, though. Insane will get himself a Predator Missile. It files this way through. Washi will get taken down. Spawns now a really good job coming in from Amigos. The 20 point lead for them. The rotation's looking like it's going to be theirs as well. What a wonderful time to get the spawns. Investment at the right time, the perfect time from Amigos. There's 60 seconds that could potentially be theirs. Well, what a nice rotation, mate. You just said it. Amigos uh, ramping up to 150 points and dominating not only the spawn, but the objective. Wow. Trying to set, a, set up a line against Semino and push them away. What a moment by Amigos stepping up and, of course, showing Semino that they still in. They also have bullets and have quality to offer against the Americans. Now, a combination of Annihilator and a war machine on the side of wow. Semino to try to regain this, but it was not enough. Look at this. They did not just last. And Amigos are very happy with it. 27 seconds to play for. Amigos have had every single one before it. Marshy trying to find a way through. And eventually, it's looking like the break is potentially going to come through here from Seminole. Illusion will find two. Cartel shuts him down. Zeos finds two more. Ooh. The spawn still Ooh. held, as is the hill. 15 seconds to go. The scrap time will go Amigos' way. Wow. And it's a race over towards the next hill. If you're Seminoles, you're going to find yourself at least a full 60 behind. They must find a good hold here. What a fantastic break it was from Amigos and an equally as good hold. Over towards the next hill we go. Cartels and Coke gonna have to lock this one down. They need some good time. Gigantic response on the side of the Brazilian stun to get back on track. And also, of course, put points against Samino, who are gonna have to do an almost perfect P4. We see them scaling to 150 but again amigos looking solid and dominating spots now losing some fights maybe that's gonna be enough for them to decide to rotate already to the third b1 the marshy is uh, opening this fire line here very interestingly as we see a nice camera on the left showing the brazilians very focused very still very cold to try to get back to the game because semino hey they just done a fantastic job then really really good job they needed that hole didn't they Yes. absolutely after what happened with amigos in the previous hill fantastic breaks coming through they find the full 60 seminoles are going to do the same pretty much in turn over towards the next hill and well where they have had most of their i want to say look most of their success p1 has been pretty good for them they're going to need to be good again if they want to retake the lead but looking over towards it now it is a 20 point game as we head into a third rotation of hills, Marshy though is going to find two with the Predator Missile oh. coming on through. The streaks are starting to add up now for Seminole. Getting some good time here over towards P1. Fantastic battle over P1, precisely as you said. Being uh, switched from side to side over here. And we're going to see teams prepping for P2 in a bit. But again, the side battles are also uh, 
you know, catching our attention, as we can say. Many, many battles happening at the same time. Very interesting game so far. And Amigos trying to put up with a nice performance against the best team on an A. We have Cartels getting in. Taken down by Insane. Nice movement by him. Zeus in there. Taken by the back position by Bennett. He comes up. Also eliminating more. The Americans looking <laughs> sound in this machine roll. Nice job by Bennett. Using oh the Bennett. Word. He's going for more. He's not over yet. Getting excited. Getting ready for the battle. Heading over towards P2, really big players coming in from Band. That was a big moment. He found three or four on his own. All of a sudden, after what was what, an 80-point lead for Amigos, Seminole find themselves in the lead by about 12. It probably won't end here over towards P2. It can be so scrappy, but if one team can get a decent hold, maybe something can get going. Marshy here with the R9s trying to get something done. Cartels is with him as is Band. Trying to lock this down, the Honda Killer drone doing the business. And now here come the Operator's Purifier out insane. Should be getting absolutely fried. It's going to be about rotations as well, but it's a very, very close game. Seminole's still 12 away. Amigos trying to get some sort of control here. 20 points away now for Seminole. Very even game, as we can see, Amigos. I'm going to need to do a fantastic wow. P3, as we know. GTO is already anticipating things, trying to use the Annihilator. They are scaling to 230 points. Amigos not losing the pace, not losing the confidence. Seminal inside of the hill as well. It's a dark battle. It's a blind battle inside of the smoke. And Bane, again, trying to push up for more. Cartels, the R9 beast, as we can see to this moment. But Seminal potentially managing to get very close to the rock here, Tan. Oh, it's the full rotation coming in from Amigos, though. They managed yes. it again. P3 has really been their moneymaker. It's going to make it easier if Zeus keeps finding two pieces like that. Cartels can find one to just ease that pressure. Amigos need 20 seconds. Seminole just need eight. Here comes the break, though. Coming in from Vague. Straight through the front door. The smokes are going to give the cover. Can they find the kill? Seminole coming in to clean up shop. It was a scary moment. But can Amigos find themselves a way through? Insane Illusion going to be able to do something. Marshy left to find a three. Wow. Phenomenal from Marshy. Seminole, map number one. My God, what just happened? Marshy rolling over the heads of Amigos and stepping to rob this map with the team for one new on the side of Seminole, showing that the map needs to be over to be finally called up. Interesting by them beginning very strongly and then feeling Amigos getting up and, and you know, fixing their mistakes and stepping up on points as well. And finally, Seminole, they just, man, they just roll over. I was not expecting for that. That level of confidence on a retake, on a regain uh, mindset necessity is, is very special. Yeah, honestly, I, I think after you've seen how well Amigos held on a P2 and how well they'd been doing at P3 over the entire map, you thought when they had the rotation over there, they may have been able to find something. But the break comes through. Marshy finding three to solidify yes. the game. A brilliant map number one for both these two teams, but just a little bit better coming in from Seminole. And we'll find a 1-0 advantage here in the best of five, and... It's a good start for them. A little bit of momentum on that main stage will make the difference. But here is the scoreboard to end the game. It's a huge one from Marshy coming in with 45. You look at on the other side of things. If anything, it was a slight outslayer coming in from Amigos, but not able to make it count. Yes. And I mean, they, they had their moments. They struggled. It was a very back and forth map uh, overall. And Amigos did a good job by dividing the time. Uh, or splitting the time, better to say, between them inside of the, obje of the objective, of the objective, excuse me. But Sam, you know, uh, they also, they had their chances to regain confidence and, you know, uh, adjust some hills. Precisely the B1 was the most uh, notable one on this matter. And then after that, they managed to simply undo the whole advantage, the whole uh, amount of points that Amigos, they have built up. I think, you know, Amigos really found some momentum, though, but it was all about the rotations for the most part, wasn't it? Whatever team were there yes. first, they were the ones. I, I mean, look, that can be the case when it comes down to Summit anyway. I, I think, you know, if you look at P1 and P2, very, very mixy, but P3, all about the rotation. P4, all about the rotation. Whoever was there first was really starting to cook and did really, really, really well. Every single time they had the opportunity, Amigos were very much... I mean, I couldn't see it, but I would presume they were they were talking their smack when they were up a decent amount. The Seminoles came back at a full 60. We head into another rotation. Seminoles do a good job of P1. 
they keep them at bay at P2, and then finally, for what feels like the only time a decent break came through was in these final moments for Cartels, for Marshy, who found one, two, and the third as well. The R9, ridiculous in that man's hands. Fantastic performance coming in from Seminole on map number one. They will take a lead in this series. And they're going to be feeling confident now, right? We talked about it beforehand. Amigos will be feeling confident about a map on Summit to kick things off. Don't get the win here. Does that put them in a really bad situation now? Or do they still have it in them to find something in this series? Todd, I think based on whatever they've just showed to us on Hardpoint, they uh, definitely going to have the power to get back on track. I mean, they've done this inside of Summit. They're going to have the chance to do that again in case Semino, of course, have a better start. Uh, now, from Seminole's point of view, I would have to say that they struggle a little bit with some timing decisions, not managing to get to the spawn before the Amigos, uh, and also not being able to make their operators uh, last longer than uh, whatever happened. Amigos, on the other hand, they managed to uh, smash Amigo, uh, smash Seminole down. Sorry on that matter. Uh, actually, acquiring some key positions and trading better over the hall. But again, in the end, Seminole, they managed to get back uh, to action and dominate and, and, you know, show that literally they, they would deserve that because of the individual uh, qualities that they have. As you said, Marshy, uh, we've seen other players doing a great job and stepping up and bringing solutions when the team looked kind of jammed. Yeah, look, I, I think it was just those moments towards the end, wasn't it? Finding those breaks that we hadn't seen. And Marshy's been that guy for them on so many different occasions. So they find the yes. solutions that they needed, as you point out. But heading into a search and destroy now, we're going to be heading over to Tunisia, if I remember correctly. How are you feeling about this map for both these two teams? Seminoles notoriously pretty decent at this one, of course. How are you feeling about Amigos? I think Amigos are going to try to explore the qualities they have when it comes to sniping, especially on the hands of Zeus. He's going to be trying to be the guy to stay uh, on long distance lines, uh, whatever, whenever they are possible for them in the map. Uh, and I don't know if Amigos are going to be feeling confident yet to this point in the series to change or swap quickly from bomb to bomb whenever they are mm. the attacking team. I don't know how Seminar are going to explore that. But again, uh, we also have to remember that Tunisia, Tan, it's a very interesting map when it comes to having, um, I would say, some short and narrow aisles. So the players are going to be exploring perhaps the shotguns. We're going to maybe be seeing Insane using the R9 for this time. I wouldn't say he's going to be, you know, giving up on R9 because the team is going to need him to do that. And he's a fantastic clutcher as well. So we can very well see him, for example, doubling it up or even getting three eliminations in the end of the rounds. Yeah, I, I think realistically, you think about the short lines, you think about the long lines. For me, the long lines on Tunisia is just so important. It's really about your snipers being able to lock down that B side on their own and having everybody else putting the trust in them over towards that B side. Of course, the defensive side definitely, well, at least in North America and Europe, feels like the stronger side. See which team can take more of an advantage from that side of things when it does come down to search and destroy. Of course, we do six rounds one side, six rounds the other you got to win by two or first to seven. You don't need to be updated on yeah. the rules, though, man. You know what's going on. Yeah, but I'm just letting. If anybody else knows, I think I think they would call this. What was it called? Yapping? Is it yapping? I'm not too sure. Uh, I wouldn't know either, man. I I I don't know. Let's see. Uh, but I just wanted to point out, uh, Tom, that it's going to be a very tricky map. Perhaps we have been seeing in many regions. Um, Tunisia Search and Destroy be explored in many, many, uh, I would say, creative ways and uh, in a very tricky uh, manner as well when it comes to using those covers and getting out of the covers as well. And we already see round number one rolling on with the players spread out and Amigos are gonna, gonna come to the attacking side at the beginning of this game and Semino are looking to protect equally, I would say, both A and E. Good stuff from Summers getting the first blow on the defensive side always helps out. A second, even better. Tom's just trying to lock this one down. But now it's a, it's an awkward one, isn't it? When you don't have the numbers on attack on Tunis yet. It's a difficult yeah. position to be in, isn't it, Lanex? It's very much one of those things you all just have to hit one site and hopefully you find the first gunfight and a couple more after that as well. Yes, and they are moving. Uh, I would say 
trying to sneak into A. They're gonna face a very interesting opposition with just two players on Seminole side, so that's gonna play eventually out to their side. And we're talking about Amigos trying to make this hit. Bennett almost saw their weapons, and no, they're not gonna try this one. They have actually lost the C4, so this last uh, minutes and seconds of rounds are gonna be better for Seminole potentially, since they're gonna play with a 5v2. And Sapuka is already there trying to rotate with Illusion. They cannot just leave the C4 behind. That's precisely why Sapuka is trying to put his hand over the objective. But there it is, big. Oh my god, such a fantastic multitasking by Seminole, taking down two Brazilian players at the same time. Done. What a patience, I would say. What, what, what a level of coldness uh, from the Americans. Very cold indeed. Very cold. Seminole. So defensive there. But like, it's just about finding those first bullets. Like, we know how much of a difference it can make. Especially if you're that defensive team, you have the numbers. Even if you lose the first blood, just keeping yes. that map presence. And for this defensive side, all you gotta do. Let's see now. Amigos not losing anybody early, which is a good start. Now it's about trying to find a pick and they found it. Marsha gets a little bit aggressive. Now they have the number advantage. Are they going to make a count? That's what you need to make sure you do. Yes, and Amigos setting up a line. Interestingly, not giving up on any portion of the match just yet. They're considering eventually a rotation to B. As we have Big looking up again, up top, trying to see if someone from the Brazilian side is going to come out of there. But we see Seminole doing the same work as Amigos, being patient Got and him. trying to set and trying to make the markations. Now Zeus taking Illusion also brought to the ground. We have Zeus coming up. Oh, oh she trying his luck. Oh my God. Many, many kills happening here in a row. As we see Amigos rotating, rotating sorry, to B right now to face eventual two alive players from Seminole. We have 4v2 and Bennett's trying to come closer with the DRH. Nice job against GTO. Taking down the brain of Amigos, who now are down to two players. Let's see this 2v2 playing out by Trenton. They find a couple of kills on the exit, but that bomb did go down. A little bit of information now to play with, if you heard it. Playing together, back to back. This first gunfight's going to be absolutely massive. Zayas will find Band. Now all of a sudden you need two different gunfights to go your way. If you're big, there's the first one, can't find the second. The trades are clean from Amigos. And we'll find a round nice on the done. attacking side as well. An important one at that. Oh yeah, just like I said, Insane bringing his R9 to define the play. Uh, that was what Amigos were needing on map number one. And I think he understood it. Now playing along with Zeus. Nice combination. Those duos helping out a lot, Amigos, to come back to the game with an equalizer, man. Important one. Any attacking round you can get a hold of is a bonus can be so hard against some of these very high level teams like Seminole to find these attacking rounds but it's about finding those picks and just making them count and they did things got scary for a second but not quite scary enough now on this defensive side Seminole not offering anything up I wonder if they thought to themselves right okay let's give it a little peek let's gain some information see what we can do with it the answer was not a lot he got to tie it up now just being very very patient First gunfight, it looks like it's going to come man's way. We're going to find any sort of pick, but so far, nobody engaging. Yeah, and that's pretty much the situation I like to call in a cast in Portuguese. The chess style round. They are playing with patience and uh, literally like holding positions, waiting for any decision on the opponent's side instead of just taking the bold move. We there see we Bennett getting out of the cover. Nice pick. Vega as well. We see a 5v3 over here, and Amigos are going to have to rotate, because this has been pretty much well read already by Seminole. They know that the Brazilians would just fall down from there and try to set up on A. They try to gather in the core of the map. I like this combination. Three men against one. Marshy was not able to hold them back as Sapuka managed to connect pretty well. We see Insane getting out of the cover. Insane trying to come up the ladder. He's going to go for this 1v1. Insane. What a moment. No Insane way. Try to win this one. Fantastic. Against Washer. Takes him down. Response is coming out in Seminole. Just like this. Stepping out of the jail, these monsters unleashing their beast mode right here to go for this edge. Oh, stepping out of jail. My goodness, what have they been doing? <laughs> Isn't it crazy? 
Nice it's a really good retake you know. though. Look, I, I think, you know, for what Amigos <laughs> did, a fantastic push over towards that B side. Got very aggressive, tried to take some control over towards the top 10 side. But if anything, Washi just survived as long as he possibly could. Allows the reinforcements to find his way over. Seminole just in a position to do something there. This is looking a little bit more aggressive though, but are they going to believe that band is here? Eventually they are, but they are going to lose one member. Forward Vegas there to clean it up. The numbers well and truly in Seminole's favor. Three versus two now, as they will be backed on down. Really, really good job from Seminoles. Find the first couple of kills in the first and the third and fourth round. Yep, we are seeing a three, v two, and again another slow round. Teams apparently are trying to understand better their opponent's decisions and are going slow to acquire information before making decisions. Apparently, I would say the Brazilians, uh, of course, needing to have patience, working low on numbers, and also trying to get closer to the C4. But Marsh doesn't let that happen. Insane was sent straight to heavens. We have GTO as the last alive man. Versus three now is going to be very complicated for him since he's going to have to, of course, take them one by one instead of just meeting the whole party at once, Dan. Yeah, it's, it's off on. Especially with the Tundra in hand. You can only shoot in one direction at one time. Yeah. I'm trying to hold it down here if you're GTO, if you can find anything, that would be fantastic. You find nothing. Wow. But the bullet of Cartel Sniper, 3-1 to one now, Seminole. Good position to be in, but bear in mind, they are on the defensive side. They are expected to find more rounds. Really, really good job coming in from Seminole. Amigos need to find an answer back. What would you say would be a good attacking side, though, from Amigos? I think two rounds is not too bad, right? Not too bad, no. Uh, I think they need, they need to do more. Uh... I mean, they need to work better with the objective. So far, they have been relying excessively, on my opinion, on the kills, on whatever one or two players can do individually. But like, I'm missing the usual team play. We uh, are, you know, very much, uh, I would say, acquainted to see on the side of Amigos. And now, uh, pretty much dance around again, since both sides are trying to make contacts without compromising so much. And Seminole are heavily protecting B, I would say, with three players. Marchi paying off again. His patience, you know, has been a blessing to the Seminole side. And cartels just like that. What a player again, ladies and gentlemen, bringing up two eliminations in a row with a body shot over there. Provocations beginning to roll against the Brazilians who are now totally lost. Just illusion against five men from Seminole. Really good job coming in from Seminole. Illusion now is under, well, none of them that he's going to find this one. Marshy, no. another kill for him. Seminole commanding position again. It is the defensive side, but they are cruising right now. It's never felt like any of the, apart from the round that they did take here, yeah, Amigos, it's never felt like they've had an opportunity in the others. Seminole very dominant in the rounds that they've won. But it's now over towards the top side. That's going to be heading over towards that A point. It's not going to hit anybody by the looks of things. It's a big push coming in over towards A. But look at this aggression from Seminole through B as well. If you can't tell, you've got to try and find something though because the bomb site is being lost. They rolled the dice. They took a risk. Hasn't paid off yet. Yeah. Gigantic first half by Seminole. Totally annihilating. I would say countering Amigos' decisions. And Amigos are going to have to do this one. Fine. They're gonna need points desperately as Ben tried to come through this corridor. He was not able to go. We see Vague taking sails down. And again, 4 1. Amigos are gonna have to fight better. Sapuka in a very strategic position. Let's see what he is able to do. And he's waiting. I mean, the patience now is gonna maybe play out on the side of Amigos. And finally, Insane taking Washi down as well. As much as Sapuka was helping him out. And again, Seminole. Dominating the game, not dominating the map, not only on a bullets level, but also when it comes to controlling the map. And then I love, I absolutely love how Seminole are patient, how they know to get back on track and change the facings, changing the tempos. Yeah, they completely changed it up there. They attacked, if anything, on the defensive side. They got aggressive through B, and that's what Zeus is doing now. Finds Marshy yes. straight away off the rip. Would maybe be expecting the push to come in through the A side, but it's going to be the players over towards B that are going to have to do something from Amigos. And in Cole looking to try and find a pick here. Sapuka is going to be have to be the one to hold this one down. Sapuka waiting also. Oh, looking at the side, but he was <laughs> surprised by Bennett. As we see that he was fast enough to make this connection. We're going to see 4v4 
And the bomb is on Cardo's hands. The question is, is are they going to be able to plant on B fast enough before reinforcements come to this region by Amigos? Cartels is already there. They are on their bullets. And we see Shot. Illusion taking back down in the dark. Nice smoke there to try to take information out of him. And we see Illusion again on the corner trying to operate <laughs> on the long run. But while she took him down, fantastic bullet as well from the American. The B is activated and Amigos are going to have a hard time again, Tan. This is a huge round. A seminal 5-2 lead feels a lot better than a 4-3 one. Washi finds yes. GTO as well in San Andreas, trying to find something. 23 seconds and counting. The shot from Washi, though, is clean. And wow. Cartels will clean up shop. Really good job. Coming in yeah. from Seminole. Looking so good so far. 5-2 to the good. They need two more rounds. Well, Brazilian fans looking <laughs> pretty much... Yeah. Surprise and having to think about something else other than the game right now because it's not looking pretty for amigos and Seminole they are just stinky they are just bizarrely good when it comes to being precise on the shots illusion double it up and we have Bennett inside of the bomb but now things looking better for the wow. Brazilians and illusion is a nice combo of efforts for another round on their side finally she's <laughs> cheering a lot and the Brazilians are happy with this round over here Tan. The Brazilian support unwavering. Amigos will find themselves around on this defensive side. They absolutely needed to. Seminole still in a good position here. But Amigos are on the defensive side. If they can continue to hold this down, then maybe they can find a way back into this game. Illusion finds a kill. He finds his way out. And now it's trying to find a push through the middle of the map. And the Seminoles is back to the drawing board for this attacking round. Illusion now trying to set the middle as we could see. And Seminole, I would say respecting a little bit, you know, uh, the level of defensiveness that Amigos can bring. Amigos set up a very nice line. They spread apart. They try uh, to uh, offer a huge. challenge, but Bennett comes into the closed position. Nice pair of kills. Sapuk is trying to go for him. Five V3 in rounds and Seminole again with another man on their side. Yeah, those numbers are totally good. Wow. Ben for a triple elimination already. Is he gonna go for more? He's an unstoppable beast. Be uh, beast, sorry, as I was trying to say, because man, he was just <laughs> really. I think you should it. run with beast. Run with beast, in my opinion. <laughs> the bomb's down now over towards A. How much of a beast is GTO right now? Can he find anything? Yeah. He's gonna find one on the backside under cartels. Makes this now. A two versus three. Needs to find one more pick to make this attainable. I just don't think Seminole are going to offer him anything here. I'd be very surprised if they do so. It's going to be down on Sepuka, who's going to be coming in from the flank. SMG in hand can get onto the site, but with 12 seconds remaining, bullets ringing in. This one ain't going the way of Amigos. GTO will find two more. Doesn't have the time. There's no way. Has the time. The shots are fantastic. <laughs> but it will not matter. It will not matter. Fantastic job from Sentinel. Yeah, I know. They're like, oh, yeah, give him it. Maybe give him some false confidence. Great shots coming in from GTO, but they might have very little. Wow. GTO, fantastic, right? As you said, Seminole stepping up and acquiring the round. Individuality has its caps, has its limits to help you on some occasions. And Amigos, they have just discovered that again against Seminole, who are already making a heavy rotation to be... You know, Amigos are going to have to bring reinforcements because, I don't know, Semino, they're looking very solid to put up this one. We see Illusion taking Bennett down. The round is rolling on their favor, but again, losing players and the Brazilians, yeah, they found the trading wow. power over here without losing no one. So it was a flawless round by Amigos. Really, really good job. They needed it. They needed it and they find it. It was an aggressive push from Seminole. They actually managed to find some decent purchase around the site, but could not get the job done. Really, really good job from Amigo still in this game. And on the defensive side, Insane now finds his way pushed up. Marshy will put some bullets in. We'll back on down. Doesn't want any of that smoke. Doesn't want to give away his life. Having a disadvantage in terms of numbers is... Yeah, it's okay, but... On the attacking side on Tunisia, it is less than ideal. GTO finds a few kills in that previous round. Can continue here as well. 
We're going to try and find some more. But 5v5 still. Seminole yet to find a route through. Yeah, fantastic job by Seminole. Working with patience here. And of course, you know, biting, biting pixels. They are waiting for Amigos to do something. But now, since the seconds are going to keep going, Seminole, uh, they're going to decide eventually for B. Now they begin to retreat in what is looking into an A hit. I would say that's very smart. They totally, totally messed up with expectations from Amigos. And they're going to come to A. That's going to be very good for them. It would be a very good way to close this map. And potentially it's going to be if they manage to succeed on these trades. As Zeus is already waiting for them. Let's see Marshy. Amigos are going to have to bring a nice firepower here to win this battle, Tan. Illusion finds Bond. Vague though, he's found his way around from behind two of them. Can find two, can break it wide open. Oh. Ace now open. Sapuka will find one. Marshy will find another though. And all of a sudden it's a three versus two. Washi finds one more. GTO left all on his own. Needs the one versus three to keep Amigos in this search and destroy. As the sniper in hand was able to find three in the previous round. Can he manage to find them all to try and find the round? Washi gonna have to try and lock this one down. They know exactly where GTO is. Washi just looking to back him down, looking to bait out where he can. Marshy is there to support as well, but GTO onto the side. GTO can find one, and Washi can't find the second. Map number two goes Seminole's way. Fantastic performance in the search and destroy. A really, really good takeover towards A to solidify it. And they find themselves in a commanding position here in this series. Due to the good. Yeah, I would say Seminole playing Magisterial. They just were tough, tough at all moments of the map. Honestly, Amigos, they never stood a real chance to step over and uh, pass Seminole when it comes to the scoreboard. I would say Seminole, they were really tough on the trades. They were always like playing together with a very tight position in. And Amigos, they just had one chance. They had one chance to make that perfect retake, as we could see on B. But other than that, uh, the Brazilian team didn't have many solutions to offer. So they were uh, constantly entrapped. Perhaps that's precisely what you're talking about at this point, because they're going to have to fix this to try to get back on the series as we're going to move uh, in a little bit to the control mode. Yeah, look, Seminole are really, really good position now and heading over towards Raid as well. They've got to be feeling good. But looking at the scoreboard again, it's not so much of a, a huge outslayer, but I think that comes down to Seminole when they won their rounds to where they were comfortable. When they didn't, it was close. So that's why the, you see the scoreboard the way it is. But Seminole 7-4 victory here in the Search and Destroy, a little bit safer than what we've seen in the hard point. Really good job coming in from Seminole, though, and very much the kind of start they would have wanted. This could have been a very, very tricky game. Still could be, but a 2-0 lead in this series. Got to be feeling good about their chances, about advancing through to the next round. Two to the good here. Is this where the comeback potentially starts for Amigos here? Because at this moment in time, it's looking like they're getting outclassed. Yes. It's going to be very hard for them, uh, surely, to get back on this one because it's going to mean that they're going to have to be able to execute a full uh, reverse sweep coming out of 2-0 uh, behind Seminoles, who are looking very, very strong. And I say in every aspect of the game, they were playing like this on hardpoint and then Seminole just brought the same standard, this way of working with patience, also to search and destroy mode in what we're seeing to be or to eventually become another three new over here ton i don't know if amigos are gonna be uh, able to overcome to this one because as we know control is usually a very strong mode on the north american scene and we're gonna have to see how that's gonna be played out yeah let's see how it breaks down for them got to be able to find something here if you're amigo so is it gonna be about seminoles closing this one out yes oh, okay it was a very very nice trouble kill from gto that came in there but it wasn't enough to find around fantastic job coming in from seminal though and as i mentioned th this could have been a really really tricky game it's not over yet it's not over yet but they are looking really really good in this series so far here lean Le and i don't know i don't know if i see a route back for amigos here now it's feeling like seminal may well walk away with this one pretty convincingly we've only seen three to zeros on the alpha stream so far and is that what we're going going to get again we will be heading into control very, very shortly. We will be sticking on red. 
What do you think of Amigos' game on raid control, though? Are you thinking positive about it, or are you just thinking Seminole are too good? I think they're going to have to take Seminole out of their comfort zones, because Seminole so far, they have been very successful into dictating the pacings and making the major decisions, and thus, you know, tossing the ball in a very unfavorable way, of course, to, uh, on to Amigos again. And Amigos, they're going to have to, you know, take the driver's seat and do more, and then, uh, you know, impose themselves since the beginning, eventually trying to go for a spawn trap, boldly, yes, against Seminole, but that could be the solution. They, they're going to need this map to be very fair to try to get back on this series. So try to do more and also try to combine better those duels and trios, uh, maybe the solutions as we have seen in Tunisia time, because again, we we were able to see GTO playing in a high level, but then Zeus combining efforts with other players. So these duels, they need to come up and help Amigos better. Yeah, let's see if we can do it. I mean, if there's any time to do it, it's going to be very control when you two to zero down, you need to bring it back we're gonna go for a very short break but don't go anywhere the conclusion of this series right after this down to mexico where i can make my own bliss find me a local who looks just like his farm pigs right where the city lies is where they all sit trying to cast their eyes on all the girls who visit no touch me in places i can see Lie down in the sand, getting bruises on our knees. We know what's gonna happen when it's time for me to leave. We say we just enjoy it, cause here nobody sleeps. Late nights in Cairo, no tomorrow. He got me loco when he goes slow. And I'm told he's on the down low. This guy that I know. From nights in Cabo Coming from the hacienda, calling all the girls down here to have us a fiesta. Watch out for white lines, is what they sell you. Yeah. Cause it's from some guy who claims to be son of a family. Ooh, hold me in place so I can breathe. A notch upon the bed, ghost and sweat between the sheets. We know what's gonna happen when it's time for me to leave. Say we just enjoy it, cause here nobody sleeps. Late nights in Cabo, no tomorrow. He got me loco, when he goes slow. And I'm told, he's on the down low. This guy that I know, from nights in Cabo. And you go like bond in the face like when dad has no wonder why all these chicas are jealous they can have him when i'm gone just to let you know this how quick he moves on he'll take you to dinner then to love his beat just say baby why don't we dip in the sea now say it. it's so wrong but somehow i can't Late help but in love Ladies and gents, welcome back to the Mobile Masters. We've got a lot going on here, but Seminole's looking so, so good in this series up against Amigos, the number one team from North America, looking to solidify their spot into the next round, two to the zero up at this moment in time. 
It's myself joined by Igor here, Lanex. This is going so well for the North American side, but not too hot for the Latin side. Yes, not very good for Amigos, uh, though we have to say, we have to state on that. This next combination is going to be also very, very even. I mean, if Amigos, if they want to step up and they want to have a chance, that's going to be it. They also play very mm. well, uh, right control. I think that's the combination of map and mode. And Seminole, as we know, they are very, very strong also in here. They're feeling confident. Apparently, they you know, have lived the last years in Brazil because they're not feeling the pressure from the crowds. I am just stunned on that. It's very, very nice to see how professional they are, how composed they are to face the Brazilians here. And Amigos, I would say they're missing any kind of celebrations, eventually, you know, some kind of uh, energy coming out, uh, you know, to to get together and, and you know, get their level uh, again on bullets because they, they got it. But again, against Seminole, it has been a, a quite a challenge, I would say. It's been a real challenge so far. It hasn't necessarily been a problem with, you know, slaying or, or kills coming up at any stage of anything. They, I, I believe they, well, they outslayed them in the first map. Amigos outslayed Seminoles, I should uh, just confirm. But in the Search and Destroy, mm -hmm. you know, that hasn't been necessarily a problem for them. It's those moments in game that you need to make sure you're making the right decisions, finding the breaks at the right time when it comes on hard point. Can that all accumulate into something here on control? That's what they need to try and find. There's still a route back for them into this game. We know that there is potential. Map 1 was ridiculously close. I think it was a 10-point game in the end, 10, 12 points, something along those lines. The search and destroy a little bit more one-sided, but there's still some potential for Amigos here in this series, but Seminole's still looking very, very good. Can they close it out here with a 3-0? I think a 3-0 for Seminole here would be a huge win for them. Heading forward into the next couple of rounds, they've got to be feeling good about themselves if they can find this 3-0 win. So far, we've just seen uh, three zero matches, right? We have yeah. not seen any kind of uh, reaction on the losing sides in the in the championship over here. But like, it's interesting to be able to compare those styles, uh, Tom, because Semino, I think they have been doing such a great job combining the the long shots, especially with two snipers. They have just shown yeah. this also with the R9. And on the side of Amigos, they have improved their bullets uh, when Insane just brought the R9 to Search and Destroy, as I was expecting to see him using already on the beginning of the series. But again, he did it, and the team appreciated it. He's going to have to keep on that uh, kind of uh, of choice, I would say, to try to, to get closer to the to the players of Seminole, who are feeling pretty much confident. And on oh, yeah. the top of all, of all that, Seminole, they never get out of the spot without knowing what to do they are always like very very conscious of, of whatever they need to bring out before getting out of the head glitch uh head glitch sorry so that's that's i mean that's paramount to me that's why seminar is ahead yeah they're just a very very well oiled machine and when it comes down to slaying ability it's very much there they just clutch up so many times too i am there's so many of those search and destroy rounds that were looking dead and buried and then they would find something they would find a route they're so patient when they need to be they just are such a good squad and, and we're seeing them come out here and and kind of prove that so far let's see if they can continue to do so though it's going to be raid coming up next if we do need to see it we will then see apocalypse so i'm, I'm interested to see how this one's going to go down it's it's a tough one it's a really really tough one i think if you are amigo still can you manage to find this one back it's it's very very difficult there's still potential in this series but I don't know. I, I think for Amigos, uh, as an overall in the tournament, uh, Lenex, what, what do you think would be a good result for uh, Amigos? What, where do you think they'd be looking to try and find themselves? Yes, uh, I want I want to take the chance to also, uh, you know, talk about whatever you mentioned about Apocalypse because, okay, we're going to have control, right? It's going to be even. But yeah, more than that, if Amigos ever win this map number three, we're going to be seeing them... Uh, you know, suddenly having another chance on this series because Apocalypse Hardpoint for Amigos is just fantastic. They play very well in this map, so that could be tricky for Seminole. And I say this because uh, Amigos, they managed to beat Inco, for example, back in the day in the Challenge season. Back when uh, Inco had Lucasine, they did beat uh, Inco, uh, you know, with a very, very small margin in the end of the scoreboard. So I'm talking about a, a fantastic... Uh, you know, uh, reverse against Inco, they did something like 250, uh, 248 or 249. So that's, you know, that totally destroys your mindset whenever yeah. you have a long series. So I'm very, very eager to see if, uh, uh, you know, 
we're gonna be able to see those two, two teams uh excuse me playing out apocalypse but right is gonna be very interesting again i think whomever uh is more aggressive and is faster to you know to bug the opponent to poke them into their bases and spawns uh, may may come out as the victor maybe it's it's difficult to say isn't it I, look i well, we're hopefully going to be getting to map number three and find some answers to all these questions that we are asking <laughs> um but yes. we should be finding out what exactly what's going to happen so far but how are you enjoying your time on the english broadcast i i think we've all had the discussion you're doing very very well your english is a lot better than my portuguese because my portuguese just doesn't <laughs> exist so you're doing really well to be casting in a different language good job Thanks, man. Thanks. It's, you know, it's, it's very lovely to have the appreciation from you, from Brody, from Lauren, from our crew here. Uh, yes, I'm, you know, I'm having a challenge. My mind has not been melted down yet uh, so far. So that's a good sign, right? I, I think that we're doing a good job. So thank you for the gentle words. It has been a challenge, has been very, very good. Again, I want to thank uh, yes, Seven Activision for this opportunity. But uh, let's go. Let's, you know, hop into the map and see what's going to happen here at raid control as we see Seminole on the defensive side and already trying to counter amigos apparently amigos did a kind of a b push and that was not successful wasn't successful at all no i'll continue to be nice to you lanex and i'll just continue to be mean <laughs> to, to infinity i think that's usually the way it, the it should really go he does deserve it at all stage <laughs> uh, Seminole, a really really good start though Lockdown B, and I think if you're Amigos here, you gotta just kind of count on going over towards A. You gotta give it up. If you don't find that first initial push over towards B, the second and third is just a lot harder as well. They can find one, can't find the second. Insane were able to find it, so they have been able to find this push over towards this B side. Can now start to get something going. Marshy though, he's found around behind. This is gonna be a problem now for the side of Amigos. The kill's starting to fall on through. They clean them up once again. Ooh. Marshy here with the R9. Now we'll start to put pressure on the spawn. They're still pushing over towards B. I'd love to see Amigos trying to make a beeline over towards the A side. Yeah, as you said, you stated very well with quality, of course. Amigos trying uh, the first round on B, they, they were not successful. They're going to have to change this strategy because trying again is going to just uh, eventually feed up your foe, and that's what, what they want. This round number one is actually looking like a disaster already when it comes to the live side. Again, Semino, who managed to protect very, very well all the positionings and all the regions of the map. See, they keep just cartels on the B, and even so, they managed to push Amigos away. That's a fantastic level of gameplay, I, I should say, man. Because Amigos not only are down on lives, but, I mean, it's looking like kind of late to obtain this B. It is a little late, isn't it? 13 to 5 yes. now. We've seen some things in Call of Duty history, but this would be uh, maybe at the top of the list if they managed to make this one count. 3 versus 10, 5 seconds to go. Can find themselves 2 ticks. And will pretty much be dealt with one player remaining two players remaining i should say gto sapuka can you do anything the answer is absolutely not a very very good defensive round coming in from seminal i think it was only two ticks over towards the b side that they managed to get a hold of so a really good defensive round coming on through nicely done yep over here we could see uh, i would say maybe a stubborn persistence on the side of amigos on trying to be they've seen what seminal were capable of on defending that border of the map and even so they kept trying to go there now let's see the sides flipping amigos are gonna try to defend seminal are precisely uh, reproducing the same strategy amigos just using the first round going for b but then going differently going also with the presence in the middle of the map as we can see washi and also ben trying to win some gunfights bennett very successfully takes illusion down so amigos needing to change needing to recreate themselves because semi wow. are not gonna allow any margin for errors yeah the equalizer out around kitchen is just a dangerous dangerous spot yes if you're the right position Seminole now just trying to get some pressure over towards money. Really good shots coming in from Sapuka. So all of a sudden, a little bit more control for the side of Amigos. But as you mentioned, they've already lost B. Now you can concentrate on A. And just for Cartels to be in this spot, it's such an awkward thing for Amigos to have to deal with. They have to think about the flank. They have to think about the players coming in off the respawn, pushing through the mansion or pushing through a bedroom as well. Good shots coming in from GTO, though. Can they keep them a little bit further back? Cartels can find one, gets traded by Insane. Decent holes from Amigos so far, but still a minute and 45 seconds to continue hold over towards it. 
yeah and amigos uh, successfully and smartly uh, you know getting back on track and managing to somehow counter seminal or at least i would say uh, buffer you know their intentions down. and energy yeah as we see seminal taking down nice nice uh, build up over here seminal finally taking down uh the region of a and controlling this whole portion of the, the pool as we see amigos now striving to cut back to the A, and it's gonna be hard for them, but Semino somehow are beginning to fall down, Sapuka. Nice Sparrow a play over here, GTO with the Annihilator. You know, Amigos doing precisely what they did on Hardpoint and Search and Destroy, trying to even uh, Semino during the game, and they may very well find this equalizer. The thing is, though, if for Amigos there, they've had to invest a couple of different, uh, different operators that they may well have liked to keep a hold of, but they had to invest yeah. them. They had to use them. And now it's 9v9. One minute to go. Seminoles have found a route through here as well. Vig will find one. A couple of body shots just to make sure as well onto Insane. One player inside of the pool though is going to be G2. Oh, can't find the second. Vig making sure to shoot the bodies here as well. Is he going to find a third? Not quite. Sapuka, insane combining though. Now five what versus seven. Amigos have managed to do it. Washi now has also invested something himself. It's the Annihilator and Ooh. it is crispy as hell. Finds two. Marshy can find another this stuff oh, coming oh in God. from one. Make it three in a row. It's a 5v3. They're under the point. Seminole could close this yet. Yeah. Washi suddenly gaining uh, wings wow. and flying over the map to bring this round to his side. What a player. My God. What a fantastic player we uh, have just seen executing Cody M. Man, amigos, they had the chance. Again, Tan, this is so complicated for your mindset. When you see Vague body shooting, when you see Washing doing whatever he just uh, did, you know, that's going to mean uh, perhaps uh, a defeat because Seminole are looking so, but so overly strong. Now, managed to find an attack and a defense here for Seminole. Marshy now getting things rolling with the Sparrow, just trying to slow Amigos down as quickly as he can. Full investment here actually coming through. On the side of Seminole, using absolutely everything to kick off the round. Marshy with the last hour will find a kill. GTA finds one against Band. So a little bit of breathing room here for Amigos over towards this B side. Isaios trying to get some control through the mid map, but plain sailing for Seminole so far. Not too worried about this push that's coming in over towards B. A couple of players now on, but here comes the equalizer. Out finds absolutely nothing with it from Vig, who's been shooting nothing but straight the entire map. Finds absolutely nothing. With the equalizer and amigos should be getting hold of b because of that you know what drives me crazy absolutely when it comes to uh, looking at how a seminal plays cody m it's like they're not even breaking a sweat they are right now just you know playing in a very express economical way perhaps if you want against amigos and they're not suffering they're managing to balance the cues though insane just acquires a pair of cues and they begin moving slowly but steadily towards a and dominate the Q feed precisely also using the kitchen potentially illusion takes another one down nice movement by him and amigos suddenly just like that they acquire a nice uh, number of lives done nice number of lives and be alongside of it seminal still have an opportunity here need to find a few kills unanswered if at all possible band will find one into illusion can't find anything else these lives starting now to leak for seminal as did b but they just need to hold on for another minute Zeus can try and find a kill around this outside. Washi finds one unanswered. But a good amount of presence from Amigos over towards this A side so far. Yep, and both sides uh, now at a very critical moment of the map. Seminole needs what needs to be done. They know what needs to be done to say better. And Amigos, they are trying to take the most they can of this situation. Suddenly, in their hands, the round needs to be wrapped up in a cool way. Bennett is already there in the money region, using that window very, very smartly. And we see a lot of players all combined in this corner right of the map as Zeus doubles it up and stays out of the basketball let's see whatever comes he's managing to build a streak what a moment by amigos nice combination of efforts and there it is getting out of the zero it was a very uncomfortable zero to say the least to what he managed to find something back yep they needed to and now they have a potential of finding something here is that the war machine straight off the rip from zeos doesn't find anything over the top there's that potential waste. 
Amigos looking to try and defend this one now as they find their own attacking round in the previous. They need to now defend. A huge investment coming in from the beginning of the round in terms of operators from both two teams. Amigos haven't really found a great deal. Red MSL coming in. Zeus will invest this to get the players off over towards B. Aggressive players coming in from Amigos. Lives all but even. But look at this push coming in from Ban. Now can find himself over towards the backside. Finds the kill into Illusion. And all of a sudden, the door may well be open over towards it. Smart enough, Seminole managing to, you know, take simply a War Machine down and a Sparrow. Uh, those operators, they were not uh, uh, effective enough as Amigos have wanted. And Seminole appearing appearing to bring a lack of commitment, but that's just, you know, that's just smoke for them. They, they are coming in heavy for A. As we see GTO trying to push the team up, it's a very complicated stage of the series as a whole. Amigos now suddenly managing to win some trades and perhaps reopening the series big kills coming on through washi more than aware of what's going on down this side though a couple of kills is all seminal need to break this one open looks like they've sent a bit of a split over both two sides b now yes. under their control players from seminal now starting to find a pushover through from the middle of the map big gunfight going to go down in the middle of the map actually it is going to be zeus to find that so the pressure starting to come in through seminal Really struggled over these last couple of rounds. The shots coming in from Sapuka, not that good, but his teammates are solid cartels. Can find one, not before he gets taken down. One player from behind, that's going to be Washi, who's actually found himself a bit of a flank here. The lives not working for Seminole. The time not working for Seminole, but they can find a couple here. Maybe they can get something going over towards this A side as the kill feed's starting to light up blue. They've got to do something quickly. Yes, they got to bring this one back. As soon as possible, we see also Amigos gain confidence, gain momentum when it comes to killing more and also trying to hunt uh, Seminole players down. We have Cartels Adelani again trying to hold this position, trying to create a condition for them to steal A and that's going to be looking as possible. It's totally gone, as you said, and now it's going to be a rotation to B necessarily and Amigos are going to have to play this one for their lives. This is going to be tough. Yes. Still a very, very hard break over towards this B side. Seminal do have three operators. Amigos also with the three. Which ones are going to be invested better? Do you trying to make the decision of which way they are pushing from? A couple of players on Amigos have found themselves very, very weak. And now they're finding themselves dead as well. Vague will find one with the equalizer. And here comes the push. Amigos, they held for so long. Illusion can find two. He may well just slow them down enough for Amigos to come in off the respawn. Five players now left. You cannot lose any lives. Van locking down that side of the map now. Of course, with the purifier, you don't run down that side. Cartels can find Zeus. It's looking like the three to zero may well get locked in unless the boys and Amigos can find something. Three players remaining, two remaining. It's a six versus two in Seminole. Mark their card unless Illusion. Can he do something all on his own? Not going to happen. Surely not like this. It's not going to happen. Seminole finally mark their card and find themselves into the next round it's a three to zero impressive win over amigos astonishing win by Semino, of course being patient playing well dominating the map and not allowing amigos to grow on confidence and i would say keeping that proportion that ratio was just crazy on the side of the americans a ton and by ratio i mean whenever they managed to use one player to kill like two or three on the side of the brazilians so you know these kind of combinations they uh, show that Seminole are a big dog on this competition managing to win their first one and amigos are gonna have to have to talk a lot about a lot of things here because i can tell they tried they offered some level of challenge and i liked how they were kind of homogeneous all over the series meaning uh managing to score and managing to uh, you know bug Seminole in the three modes but in the end of the day Seminole were the victors were the winners with a lot of merit of course they did very very well and i mean the north american fans i'm sure they're quite happy now yeah hopefully they're a little happier than the europeans were after their first game anyway <laughs> seminal a really really good job there and that's a big win for them to find right look i i know amigos are coming in not necessarily as is one of the teams that could potentially go on to win the whole entire tournament but they still would have been a tough one i, I think seminal's finding a three to zero win is a real statement going to be heading into the next round in their group where it's looking like they're going to be going up against stalwart esports who were two to zero up against the rejects that game looked like it may well have actually finished so we will get that confirmed which way that one went 
but a huge win coming in from Seminole. And look, they, they've come here to win this tournament. That's a good way to start it. Yes, yes, uh, you said it all. I think whatever they have shown uh, so far shows that Seminole are definitely among the favored ones to not only, of course, step into day number two, but also eventually raise the trophy. We see a lot of nice decisions by them, changing the pace whenever it was necessarily, and of course, taking Amigos by surprise, uh, making them cool off uh, and then surprising out of the cover. So Seminole knowing how to play and knowing how to manage and especially break Amigos' uh, expectations over here. Now, let's see how Seminole are going to keep working on the uh, on the event, of course, uh, thinking about uh, the second match. But on the side of Amigos, I, as a Brazilian, I would expect a little bit more of energy on their side to, you know, try to step up and try to bring more on the next matches. Just have a confirmation, actually. Star War 2-1 up now. Rejects winning standoff control 3-1. So we've got a series on our hands over on that side of things, but interesting to see how that one ends up playing out. But North American side and Seminole doing the job. Devastation in the crowd for the Brazilians, but Lauren, Seminole here to play a 3-0 in their first game. Looking real clean while they do it as well. So that's got to feel good for Seminole, a team that we've mentioned quite a few times earlier on uh, as one of those potential teams that could end up in those grand finals. No strangers to that stage either. So starting off their competition so far in a really, really solid fashion. I know that they will be happy with that. And like you were saying, time, we've definitely got a series going on over on that B stream right now, two to one in favor of Stalwart, but the S and D went to overtime 10-8. So that was a close one as well. So if you guys are trying to keep up with Rejects or Stalwart, you can check out the B stream and see what they've got going on over there because they're preparing for their next hard point. And if things stay as close as they have been in the last two rounds, that could be a good one. And Rejects need to get a win if they want to keep their hopes alive to continue on in that series. So lots of things going on right now in the competition. We'll try to keep you up to date with everything that's going on but that will be the opening matches for both of our groups now done and dusted which means it was Galaris and Q9 from group A that won their first matches now it is Seminal joining them and we're just waiting on that final match between Stalwart and Rejects to round out all of our teams and then we'll start to kind of see which squads are going to be making their way through to tomorrow once we start seeing who wins the winners match in each group and then we start knocking teams out in our elimination matches and that's when things start to get a little bit sad but so far some really really solid gameplay across the board out of a lot of these squads clearly they came to play here in our mobile masters so I've had a blast so far. Hopefully everybody in chat's had a good time. You guys crushed it on that cast, by the way. These uh, these are not easy matches to be getting through, and hopefully uh, you're enjoying them as you're going, especially with your first time here, Lanex. Yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled. It's been fantastic. You know, I'm learning so much from you guys, from Brody as well. So it has been a, such a nice run, and I expect the global and international fans to be also liking this whole uh, show that we are trying to put for you guys over here today. And just to bring back to the groups quickly, Lauren, um, so far, the standings, the results, they are proving what we have said before earlier in the stream meaning that the B group is definitely more balanced. You know, teams are closer on points, they're closer on mm -hmm. efforts, and the A group seems more defined to this point. So, I don't know, maybe the second round of matches is going to be more of a confirmation of expectations on the A uh, group, and on the B group, you're going to have to see what is going to happen. Maybe an eventual surprise popping off. I like that. that that's a, a really good point that you made there, Lanix. And that's why I, uh, if you're at home, you shouldn't be leaving anytime soon because I think as we continue on through these matches, they're just going to get even closer and everything will start to feed into what we've got coming around the corner tomorrow when we make our way through to semis and then, of course, our grand finals. So uh, 
just just stick around okay you don't want to miss a single second of it if you do have to step away of course you can check out our social media you can whether that's x insta or facebook for updates for our entire mobile masters weekend but now we have that the matches are done we have our set matches that are coming up next we now know game three and game four game three will be another look at Galaris and of course going up against the other winners in q9 and then a game four will be between seminal and stalwart where that what did it happen already what's going on oh, well, that's uh, i don't even snack. you know what that that's how quickly things change here now it's going to be seminal <laughs> versus stalwart that should be a doozy ton yeah that'll be an absolute banger interested to see if uh the number one North American seed can uh, avenge their other North American brethren and try and get a, a win back on Stalwart. But yeah, we've got our two uh, somewhat semi-finals there ready to go of the groups to get yourself out. Uh, very, very good games. I think especially the first one coming up next, that's going to be an absolute banger. So yeah, I'm really excited for both these two games. And of course, everybody at home, remember the winners of both of those next matches will be the first two teams to make their way through to semifinals tomorrow so they will at least have gotten that first hurdle out of the way and made it through to the next day where whoever loses will drop down and face off against the winner of the first elimination match so they'll have one more opportunity to try and stay in the competition which means every single time these teams are going to have to fight harder and harder to try and claim a spot on that podium if that's where they want to be so like ton was saying we've got some seriously fun matches coming up around the corner and we are getting a little bit of an update here as well star Wars, stalwarts not confirmed yet so we don't know if it will be Saul War. It will be whoever wins that matchup going up against Seminole, though. So it's still up in the air between Rejects and Saul War. We'll have to see what happens in their hard point. And then that will potentially determine what is going on for game number four on the day. Apologies there for that. But we will make sure that when it's updated, you will be the first to know. Until then, before match three, it's time for another quick break. So get yourselves a little bit of rest, get hydrated. And when we return, more Snapdragon Pro Series action coming at you.
En la pista bailando con pasión La química entre tú y yo una canción yeah, yeah. No puedo evitar que quiero saber más de ti Esa conexión es un misterio Yo sigo así Yo sigo así And I need the stars we dance so close Chemistry strong, I can't let go And I need to know What's behind your eyes And I need the stars that I'm as close Between us, it's so loco. I need to know Que oculta tu mirada, yeah Bailando juntos en esta canción Nuestra química es una explosión No me sueltes, no te quiero perder Esta noche dime qué va a hacer Tú y yo en este momento en sintonía Baby, nos vendemos Bailando skin to skin Sin miedo a lo que viene En la pista de baile Esta pasión se enciende Strong, I can't let go, and I need to know what's behind your eyes. Underneath the stars, but I'm almost close. The sparks between us are so provoco. I need to know que oculta tu mirada. Yeah, la noche se sigue a nuestro deseo. Bajo las estrellas, juntos somos fuego. Our bodies entwined, it's all electric. She's getting with mine, baby, midnight. Sin prisa, nos acercamos más. Tus ojos dicen lo que necesitas A fuego lento la pieza y grisa Juntos seguimos en la vida Estás bien so close Chemistry is strong, I can't let go And I need to know What's behind your eyes Underneath the stars But I'm as close The sparks between us are so provoco I need to know Que oculta tu mirada Bailando juntos en esta canción Nuestra química es una explosión Quiero perder esta noche, dime qué va a hacer. Yeah, baby, it's chemistry between you and me. Yeah, and I need yeah. the stars we dance so close. Chemistry strong, I can't let go. And I, I need, need to, to know, know what's behind your eyes. And I need yeah. the stars that I'm as close. The sparks between us are so provoco. I need, I need to, to know, know. que oculta tu mirada.
Yeah, yeah, we're rising up. That's right. No, nobody can stop me. Can't fight this rush. Fight. No one won't stop. Top three is the final push. Can't imitate how we be, but I keep it hush. But I can't hide this buzz. Cause we're rising up. Oh. Yeah, we're rising up. Oh. Yeah, we're rising up. Oh. Yeah, we're rising up. In the moment, stay focused. I smell the wind and it's potent. I remain the main component. Cause they all know I'm the coldest. So cold that they frozen. Overwhelmed by the notion. Pressure building, it's over. When you feel the explosion. Yeah, they call me the showman. The way I'm shining, I'm golden. And I bring the commotion. My spirit never been broken. Cause I got the devotion. No magical potion. You're just a drop in the ocean. I'm a tidal wave taking over. energy i am the force i am the opportunity breaking down the door yeah i am the life energy i am the force i am the opportunity breaking down the door i i i am the end to the means i am the final touch you need i am the means that proceed reputation tation tation i stay high when they want to go low no switch is sweet i just get up and roll no ai i'm the og me lol to the ones trying to rip for free yeah i stay high when they want to go low no switch is sweet i just get up and roll no ai i'm the og me lol to the ones trying to rip for free yeah ain't nothing in this world that's stopping me ain't nothing in this world that's stopping me ain't nothing in this world that's stopping me ain't nothing practicing and we decided to chill a little bit here oh just to relax a little yeah, yeah. I, I think you are sure right yeah of course just chilling just relaxing 
It's a beautiful day, friends. Oh, beautiful, beautiful day. I like the style of Brazilian guys. So, you are winners here in Latin, and now you are, um, I think people have a, a little, uh, some uh, fear of you, right? Uh, probably they should, right? You know, yeah, because we were Maybe. Latin champions, and we brought Lucas in, and some people are scared of him. So, yeah, I think some people are worried about our team. The people are talking about you, like a promise, a big guy. Yeah, what are you thinking about this uh, pressure on you? I just have the, the most best support in the world because my team is my support, my anchor. So, I don't know, I just don't feel that pressure. Well, congratulations, <laughs> okay. I'm hoping for you. So lucky because, okay, you are power enough. And you? Hello, I'm just chilling. <laughs> we also have the oh. two uh, Latin MVPs in the history, which is Lucasin on um, last year, right? Yeah. And Mihawk this year. So they're the two Latin MVPs we had in Latin. And so you are playing on a tournament in your country. And so what is it for you? I mean, uh, I'm feeling very grateful. And uh, I mean, it's a dream to play in my own country and to compete it. And I'm just telling you, uh, I mean, we are gonna do our game. We're gonna just play our game and yeah, no pressure. Just playing conflict. Oh, perfect. So I will leave the guys to keep me relaxing a little. So thank you so much, guy. See you later, right? See you. energy I am the force I am the opportunity breaking down the door yeah I am the life energy I am the force I am the opportunity breaking down the door I I, I am the end to the means I am the final touch you need I am the means that proceed reputation tation tation I stay high when they wanna go low no switch is sweet I just get up and roll no AI I'm the OG me lol to the ones trying to rip for free yeah I stay high when they wanna go low no switch is sweet I just get up and roll no AI I'm the OG me lol to the ones trying to rip for free yeah ain't nothing in this world that's stopping me ain't nothing in this world that's stopping me ain't nothing in this world that's stopping me ain't nothing
The Snapdragon Pro Series powered by Samsung Galaxy is brought to you by Snapdragon Elite Gaming, Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, Monster Energy, and DHL. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Snapdragon Pro Series, where we are in the middle of day one of our mobile masters for Call of Duty Mobile, which means both of our groups have now played their opening matches. Both of our groups have almost completely solidified everybody. We're waiting on one more match on Group B, B stream to find out the last winner of those opening matches for our groups. Right now, we're focusing back on Group A. You might have seen that in the schedule before we went to our break. Next match around the corner is with the winners of those opening matches in Group A. So that's Galaris and Q9. Now, we got to watch Galaris to start off the day. We didn't get to see what Q9 did up against Inko, but it was a 3 0. So both of these winners had strong performances out of the game here ton yeah really really strong performances I, I think to be fair kind of expected as well you know we looked in terms of the roster and how they've been both looking and who they were going up against opposition definitely stronger uh, so coming in with three to zeros is going to put them both in a good stead but now going up against each other i doubt we'll get the three to zero we had in their first game yeah this should be a little bit closer this time around and we saw gallers go up against EU's best in Kings, and they knocked them down pretty easily, but now they have to go up against Q9, which is the region that currently holds the title right now, Brody. So is that going to be a difficult job for them to do? Yeah, I don't think uh, Q9 should be underestimated whatsoever. I think while it's easy to focus just on Wolves, who, of course, are technically speaking the best team from mm -hmm. China, as it were, because they won uh, champs back in December, Q9 got to top four at that event as well. And it is important to note that China as a whole did very, very well back in that region. I think Standpoint, which was the other Chinese representatives, also made it into the championship bracket. So uh, being three of the eight teams there, uh, it was a pretty impressive feat for the region. Q9 are a very, very, very good team. There is a reason they are one of the most... Was most feared rosters uh, in international Call of Duty Mobile. Uh, they've looked so, so good for the longest time. And you've got some insane players on the roster as well. You can see some of the kind of the, the stats here. I think this is the stats so far in the tournament, I want to say. Um, and you look to players like, I, I'm, I'm going to get the pronunciation wrong here, I presume. So I apologize for any Q9 fans out there ahead of time. But I believe it's uh, Owling. Uh, he uh, is just an incredible player. And I think for me, that's the story going into this matchup. You've got a player like Owling on one side and AR here for Q9 alongside Lucasin on the other, who is also, of course, an AR for Galaris. And that's just going to be, I think, an incredible matchup to hold. Yeah, and we, we saw after uh, that first matchup, at least on the Galore side of things, Ton, that Lucasine ended up with that mini MVP for that round. So, And we also saw during the break there was that interview specifically around whether or not he felt like there was any added pressure as a lot of players are keeping their eyes on him. And he seemed really comfortable with what had happened so far and doesn't look too afraid or intimidated whatsoever. Yeah, he's got a better mental than me in front of your home crowd <laughs> playing like that. You're now going into a really big game. The, I would say, you know, in terms of the Ladam region, that's who their hopes are on. Not just him as a player, but for the team, of course. So the pressure has got to, he's got to be feeling it, but it's what he does with that pressure. Does it, I mean, look, we, we sometimes say the same, it's very corny, but pressure makes diamonds. And at this sense, is he really being able to step up to that next level for his team? Is he able to actually convert what he can do? onto the slant stage so far so good but it's hard to say like based on his performance against kings yeah great but are kings arguably one of the weakest teams yeah yes probably now you're going in a much different game it's about the games against the opposition who you know are going to really really challenge you if you can have a good game here that will set him on his way to have a good performance over the entire tournament you would like to think yeah absolutely not to mention if i will whichever team out of these two ends up winning uh this first Winner's match, if you will, of the day means that they will move forward in the competition onto the next stage, which is tomorrow. So it'll be done for today, but then they'll at least secure a spot in semifinals and be that much closer to making their way through to grand finals, which is obviously where everybody wants to be trying to take home that $90,000 prize pool, as well as the title of literally the best in the world. Will it swap regions? We've seen, we've got a couple redemption arcs in the works. We just watched the second match of the day which was between amigos and seminal and seminal also 3-0 nice and clean brody and there's somebody that mm -hmm. potentially one of these teams could see in a grand final situation 
Yeah, definitely. I think it's a weird one, right? Because our expectations of who we're going to be in that grand final have changed quite significantly over the time mm. which we've kind of run up to this tournament, right? A lot of our expectations were on maybe if Wolves make it, and they didn't. Uh, maybe they're the team that we'll be looking at, right? Uh, you know, godlike, and unfortunately, you know, they weren't able to attend the tournament, so we're not going to be looking at them now. And even Seminole here are a team that I think have kind of overcome a lot of our initial impressions with our expectations of what things would like without Tectonic. They still look very, very good in that matchup versus Amigos. Uh, even that is still, uh, do Seminole look the same versus these Titanic rosters like Q9 uh, and Galarus? I think it's just going to be a very different situation without Tectonic on side. That being said, I, I do I do want to say Seminole look really, really good as a team. Like The teamwork hasn't gone anywhere uh, with that roster, with Cartels joining in place of Tectonic for now. So um, I still think they're a threat. I still think they're kind of not to be underestimated. But my opinion, I think, going into this matchup is I think Q9 and Galarus I had to pick two teams that I thought would be in the grand finals. I thought it would be these guys. We could probably get a preview here of what our grand finals would be. Oh, I like that. I like that, Brody. Uh, it's definitely going to be an exciting match for sure. Before we get into that match, I think we're just waiting a little bit for that last final uh, B stream match to conclude it was between rejects and stalwart esports stalwart was ahead and rejects have started to kind of mount a comeback here potential reverse sweep within their grasp they're in the last map right now of their series it's currently 2-2 overall and they're down to their s and d 6-5 stalwart up by one round right now so i i mean we mentioned it before we went to the break, they had a close SND the first time around. It went to overtime, and now we're getting a chance to take a look at it here. Could potentially go into overtime yet again. I mean, Rejects, the second they made it past that first hard point, that was like really their biggest stumbling block. And now we've made it the first time for the full series ton. And could we see potential NA versus NA? I mean, that would be fun, right? If these two could go up against each other. I think it makes it, I don't want to say easier, but you know who you're going up against, right? You know how they play. You kind of can have that somewhat feeling about the game of what you want to do with your videos. Because I think, especially for some of these teams coming in against other regions that you know what they're great at. Well, if you've done your research, you should. But at the same time, you sometimes might just throw a haymaker in there. It might work, it might not work. You don't have that problem up against uh, another team from your region. At least you shouldn't if you're doing your research again. But sometimes teams don't, Brody. And we know that for a fact because we see some veto processes <laughs> and then we are then pulling our hair out. Yeah, uh, definitely. I think it's going to be interesting, I think, in particular between Rejects and Seminole because the amount of times they face one another and I think the amount of improvements that we over the course of Season 4 saw Rejects make if they do end up facing Seminole, they were a roster that were playing on par, if not better than Seminole at times. And I think that's the interesting thing here. It's not so much a... Seminole are definitely going to win in that scenario. It's Rejects are a very competitive roster. They've also made the change of being a blur on side as well in place of S Thug. So if they survive this round, which I think they did just do, and they're going to force the overtime, um, I do think Rejects have a real strong chance of actually beating out Seminole as well. Oh, wow. All right. Well, we said it was possible. It got more and more likely as they made it through, and now it's happening. It's now overtime 6 6 in the last game of the series. I, I, I don't even I don't even know what to do at this point. I, I, I guess we're we are we were watch we're gonna go through this and see what happens with the overtime because it's too close to not keep up to date with what we've got going on here, Brody. I don't necessarily think mm -hmm. after uh, the first hard point, I think Stalwart might have thought they were gonna be able to squeeze this one out, especially after taking home the first overtime when they moved into S and D. But Rejects have just absolutely turned a corner after the control. Yeah, I mean, Rejects are a really good squad. Again, I was kind of curious to see what this roster would look like with Blur on side, because if everyone remember kind of what, I think it was Mayhem that Blur was playing for previously, and Blur got benched late into the season because of the fact that he wasn't melding very well with the rest of Team Mayhem's playstyle. Kings, I think, came back to the roster, and it helped Team Mayhem make it to uh, Mobile Masters before they didn't make it to Mobile Masters. Um, so I was curious to see what that change would look like, but uh, it looks like he's been a really good addition to the roster. It feels like Rejects have uh, kind of got that ability to perform under pressure so bringing this all the way to a, towards a game number five it's not uncharacteristic for rejects um just really excited to see kind of how the rest of this game goes because again rejects are a very very good team but there's, there's so many unknowns i think when they're going against a roster from another region 
Well, and we're going home. We're going to be hanging out here just kind of watching to see how this final uh, group stage, I guess, if you will, match unfolds so that we have the fourth and final winners team before we move on to the next stage of the competition. So we're going to be keeping on this until we move into game number three. And right now you see that Stalwart takes home that first overtime round, making it 7-6. They could potentially close this one out here, Ton. Yeah, looking like, I, I mean, look, they've been in this position a couple of times from what we've seen so far between these two teams. It has mostly been Stalwart in the lead. I mean, look, they would have to get reverse swept if they were to lose this one, be in the lead, be in a good position in the search and destroys on multiple occasions. So it feels like, even though I've seen three rounds of search and destroy, it feels like it could potentially be a throw here. <laughs> like, maybe it's a reach for me. Maybe I'm being dramatic. But you know what? We're all about the storylines here. And if I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's a throw if they lose it. You know what? If that's what happens, it's it's you. It's official. Like it, this is now your cast of this matchup, so it's on record. Well, that they might have thrown. It's looking like they're throwing this yeah. round as well. Yeah. Like, they had the bomb down. They've lost. <laughs> hey, look, they're throwing. I can't believe it. Oh man, I like it. I like the boldness, time, mate. I appreciate that a lot. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, still aren't a bad team, to be fair. So like, I expected a close match like this one um but like at the same time i think uh, how we got to this point in the series white with rejects um basically reverse well they have reverse swept them or they're going to if they win this game um i think the arsenal hard point was a big shot for me because that was the the first round the first uh, map of this best of five that's a really strong one for rejects i, I mean i'm sure you remember the amount of times that we saw arsenal hard point back in season four ton especially in north america and uh reach for rejects it was a it was a fan favorite right so i think for them to lose that one like they probably should have pre won this series to be honest still what taking that one away i think was was good enough as it was got a good start of this round though they're not throwing this round brody so there you go you might just find Thanks, something I, no, it's, it's brilliant mate you, you you're doing stellar god's work good job it's, it's it's just the back and forth between these two teams though which i mean for every one that one team throws i feel like they just kind of flip-flop and then it goes to the other one and then that's why they've just been so dead even right now in this overtime so we're back yeah, up by one could get you tied next rounds. though yeah it's defensive rounds coming through every single time for both these two teams and i mean look what was it the second map went 10-8 right so mm -hmm. i mean this this has got the potential You've just got to be particularly careful here if you're rejects that you don't allow this rotation over towards B. If Incendio finds one of these frags, it could be pretty dangerous. And that looks like the game plan here, at least from Stillwater. I'm very surprised that there hasn't been an adaptation from rejects whatsoever here. They've, they've kind of pushed themselves in towards wood, but they're relying very heavily on Envy finding something with the sniper rifle, which, to be fair, Envy's been pretty successful with the sniper rifle in the past. But still, this is a lot to gamble on one player. bomb down now and it's just for rejects you're always finding yourself in that situation where you're finding yourself behind you now having to find the retake of the bomb site but they'll find the first blood they just won't go away and be now trying to make the push through the middle of the map a big round here for rejects you get to go on and try and find a fight up against Another North American team to find yourself in a good spot or do you lose it yeah big kill gonna come on through solos there to answer back They'll start to come through though for Stalwart. Oh, and they've all started to come on through. They're not throwing anymore. It's seemingly gonna go their way. Unless Rejects can bring this one back. Blur couldn't surely find three. No, he will eventually go down. And there you go, Stalwart. Eventually. Go the long way about it, but get the job done. Mm. Yeah. And they that was look, crazy. Uh... It's like, a, like I said in the final round, Lauren. It was just a bit like it, it, too much, too much control given away, I think, to Stalwart there. It, it, honestly, they look very happy about it, too. I think that uh, Rejects made that a lot harder than Stalwart would have liked to get to that final win. Uh, that definitely went the distance, though. Very, very well played on behalf of both of those teams. Whoever ends up facing off against Rejects after a performance like that, that's not going to be an easy elimination match, and it will be Amigos because obviously they lost to Seminole. We're in that group. That's where we're keeping track of everything here. So that could be another really, really solid matchup. But now all of the opening matches, those group stage matches, are 100% officially done. That was the last one we were waiting on. And 
it's as if production knew how it was going to go because we called it a little bit too early, but it will actually be Seminal versus Stalwart for game number four. So what we showed you guys originally was 100% correct. That's what you can now be looking forward to when it comes to our next uh, step in the tournament when it comes to those matches. It's very exciting. And now probably going to have to wait a little bit to get our players off the stage to allow the next group to come back on and get set up you can now see that visually reflected here in our bracket and how this looks we've got seminal and stalwart in that upper bracket for group b amigos and rejects down there at the bottom so this is honestly even the elimination matches are still going to be really exciting um and now we look forward to match number three we talked about it a lot before we kind of got into waiting on that B stream final match and we can go back to talking about that because now we're back on group A and we're in the winners matches if you forgot already it's Galaris and Q9 another really solid matchup and uh I think we might be waiting on some walk-ins for these teams as well. So while that's happening, if I'm not mistaken, we saw it a little bit during the break. Galaris was able to chat with our team of amazing talent in Brazil. We got to hear a little bit about Lucazine and just the overall vibes on the team. Well, I think they did the same thing with Q9. They're able to chat a little bit. So I want to see what the players had to say. So let's check out the video. I think some players of tonight are ready to some interview. Let's go. Hi. How are you feeling? This is my first time to Bahasi. I feel like Bahasi's people are very excited. I really like this place. Let me ask for you. There is some player that you thinking a lot about it to, oh my god, I um, really want to come from with this player. 实际上，我挺希望能在巴西看到高德莱克的，但是这回没有看到他们，确实很可惜。也。How are you feeling? 呃，我是群友战队的教练，Shine。我感觉很棒，因为来到这里，感受了这里的风情，我们也很快融入到这里。And your team is very strong. So there is something that you feeling ooh about it? 我觉得每一个队伍都很强吧，因为他们都代表着每一个赛区的头部。谢谢， right? Wow. Oh, I I like it. Obrigado. How how how? Uh, what? How how how? What? Obli. Gada. Obli Gada. Oh, good. Thank you. Man, everybody's learning new languages down there in Brazil. Get a chance to go get to know the players a little bit. They they are. Uh, I mean that that was adorable, Tom. Adorable. Yep. Uh, honestly, I um, it, it, it's nice to see though that all the inter interactions because we're we're so used to all these events. It's all all English for all these different teams from different mm. regions to come all over the place. I think you know at least. Uh, for ourselves, we're so used to it just being that sort of UK, US atmosphere. So it's nice to see all these different regions coming through with COD Mobile. It's, it is truly a global esport. There's not many of them. <laughs> it's been a, a really exciting day here so far. We're not even halfway through all of our matches on the day. We've only completed two out of five. So we're about to head into the third match if you're just joining us here in the A stream on the English side of things, which means we've mentioned it a couple times, but it's time for us to start looking at the winners of the matches that we've already seen. Kicking things off with Q9 versus Galars. Just got to hear a little bit from Q9, just how they were feeling about the competition in general and kind of get to see them in a lighter, more fun atmosphere as opposed to locked in and set and ready on that stage. And speaking of that stage, I believe we're going to be getting our players set up and ready on there soon so we're just hanging out for a little while while we get them set up and ready to go which means we've got a bit of time for us to just be chatting here about the competition i guess we could deep dive the teams i don't want to jump too far ahead of what we're going of what we've got coming around the corner with our squads but generally uh this is the top of two respective regions going up against each other right now so i think regardless of 
stats and numbers which obviously brody is the numbers guy we don't have as many as we want right now though i think when you get the champions of any regions going head to head you are always in for just a really solid matchup ton oh yeah i i think especially when you get those uh, first rounds out the way whenever you're in any sort of uh, gsl style group you come in into that second game both two teams have won their first game in a group of four you're feeling good about it being a nice series so yeah everything going forward i'd like to think is going to be like a pretty close game um you you would like to think at least anyway both of them uh, across the board should be fantastic i mean all four of these teams now in this winner's bracket side of the winner's bracket side of things but you know what i mean the winner's round <laughs> are the teams we were expecting to be here right they, they are the probably the top four teams i don't think anyone would really dispute that so it's it's going to be interesting to see which way it actually plays out between them because then we only have so many other teams that are going to be there we're going to head to elimination rounds tonight as well there, there's a lot going on there's still a lot of call of duty mobile to be played as well yeah and chat we want to hear from you as well while we're waiting uh you obviously know who's going to be playing in this next match so tell us your thoughts in chat on who you think is going to be taking it home Will it be Q9 that moves on to the next stage of competition and solidifies a spot in the semifinals? Or will it be Galaris who is the squad that is able to do that? And if you have those score lines in mind, I want to hear those as well too because we've had quite a few people in chat who have been really on top of their guesses so far. I mean, if we had, you know, shout out to Bobby Plays. If we had him here, I'd ask for a prediction and he wouldn't give it because he's afraid <laughs> of the forever caster curse that he had. Uh, but I, I, I like picking people's brains on how they think this is going to go, Brody. I'm going to have to do the same for you. Oh, you were going to do it. I knew you were going to. Like, as soon as you talked about Bobby, I knew it was going to come to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just I knew it was going to happen. Uh, honestly, I think it's just, it's so tough to gauge, right? Because again, Galarus are effectively, they're not a brand new roster, but they are so new mm. with the fact that they've got Lucas in on side now that it's very difficult to say, all right, here were their strengths back in season four and here's what their strengths are right now because we've seen so little of them with this new roster composition. Um, I think it's also very difficult because their strengths for the most part, pre Lucas in, we'll say, are pretty similar. Like they, these are two of the best hardpoint teams in their respective regions. So I can't imagine, like, I have no idea who's going to win that one. Um, for the rest of the series, though, I mean, it's just, it's so tough. I've i have been on the side of, I think, Galarus are going to win the entire thing uh, before we got into this, so I still think they will. I'm going to go Ooh. ahead and say that we are going to go to a game five with the series, and I think Galarus take it there. That's that's. I'm not going to sit on the fence. Like, I know Tun will sit on the fence. I'm not going to be doing that. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll say game five to Galarus. That's what I'm going with. You're also going for the regional title change, swap, change over, mm -hmm. passing yeah. of the guard. Okay. I like it. I like it. I'm here for it. I want to see if uh, if chat agrees with you as well. And I think that we're actually starting to get close to the moment where we can start seeing our players making their way in on the stage and preparing for match number three. We appreciate all of you in chat for being patient with us while we wait for our gameplay to kick off. We've got lots of things in store for all of you at home and I'm very excited to get into it when we can and all of our players are ready to go. While we are waiting for all of that to happen though, we're gonna send it to one more short break and give you a little bit of time before we dive into the, all of the actions. So don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. The players are practicing a lot, a lot. Yes, I say a lot, but exactly. I am the force. I am the opportunity breaking down the door. Yeah, I am the life energy. I am the force. I am the opportunity breaking down the door. I, I, I am the end to the means. I am the final touch you need. I am the means that precede reputation, tation, tation. I stay high when they wanna go low. No switch to sweet, I just get up and roll. No AI, I'm the OG me. LOL to the ones trying to rip for free. Yeah, I stay high when they wanna go low. No switch to sweet, I just get up and roll. No AI, I'm the OG me. LOL to the ones trying to rip for free. Yeah, ain't nothing in this world that's stopping me. Ain't nothing in this world that's stopping me. Ain't nothing in this world that's stopping me. Ain't nothing.
flows, switch the sweet, I just get up and roll. No AI, I'm not OG, me, LOL to the ones trying to rip for free. Yeah, I stay high when they wanna go low. No switch the sweet, I just get up and roll. No AI, I'm not OG, me, LOL to the ones trying to rip for free. Yeah. Luna, no te voy a perder, solo quiero ascender y te busco hasta la lluvia. Corazón de mujer tiene su mal y su bien. Ternura, no te oculto. Nada en Wiren, los secretos son absurdos. En God Time for them, y no me luzo. Desde que me enteré, se volvió en lujo. Desde que me enteré de que ella, yeah. este mundo se mueve con puro poder. Desde que me enteré de que ella, yeah. este mundo se mueve con puro poder. Mami, mami, mami chula. Eres suficiente, quítate la duda. Mami, mami, mami chula. Tú sabes que ese error nunca no dura. Nunca dura, ni su asura. Ella lo jura, pero de no puto bomb. En I'm beefing, no peleo. Dejo que pase las cosas, más bien la veo. Y analizo desde lejos. Gracias a Dios me entero y me sale bello. Me enteré del juda lo perro. Movimiento limpio, espíritu en espejo. Desde que me enteré de que ella. Yeah. Este mundo se mueve con puro poder. Desde que me enteré de que ella, yeah. este mundo se mueve con puro poder. Mami, mami, mami chula, eres suficiente, quítate la duda. Mami, mami, mami chula, tú sabes que ese error nunca no dura. Nunca dura, ni su asura, ella lo jura, me den a puta bomb. En I'm beefing, no peleo, dejo que pase las cosas, más bien la veo. Nunca dura, ni su asura, ella lo jura, me den a puta bomb. En I'm beefing, no peleo. Las cosas más bien la veo Desde que me enteré de que yeah. Este mundo se mueve con puro poder Desde que me enteré de que yeah. Este mundo se mueve con puro poder Desde que me enteré de que yeah. Este mundo se mueve con puro poder Desde que me enteré de que yeah. Este mundo se mueve con puro poder The celebrations we saw in that video on behalf of Wolves will be what we see yet again here in Mobile Masters for Call of Duty Mobile, this time by a completely different team, but will it be a completely different region? Potentially the match that we are gearing up and waiting to see could be what determines that very question as we are waiting on Q9 and Galaris to go head to head in match number three. I appreciate you all in chat for hanging out with us while we wait to get into all of that action. But our teams are just getting themselves ready to get out on the stage so that we can continue on with the tournament. It's going to be 
an epic battle here for Group A. And then not shortly after that, after we made it through the match that we just saw on the B stream, we now have things lined up for match number four on the day as well. We did a little bit of not guesswork. Uh, we were we were pre, pre premonitions. We were seeing the future. Okay, it's seminal versus stalwart. Listen, listen. Don't don't make those faces at me, Tom. We're doing our best here <laughs> right now while we prepare <laughs> for these matches. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, I am very excited for when we can get into the action, but it's not oh, happening yeah. yet. So <laughs> it you isn't. have to be patient. No. We are getting there. We are at the at the mercy of uh, of what's going on in brazil obviously waiting for the games to get started we are we, ju we just want to jump into the games that's what that's what we're here for i am sure you guys at home don't want to see us three talking heads all night long we <laughs> want to be in the games as much as you are i know we get we, i we keep getting accused of yapping but we have to say something in between these <laughs> whether it be yapping or not but irrelevant of that i i think you know you look at these two teams it's going to be an absolute banger when we get into it i think that's why we're, we're just the anticipation's killing me lauren i want to get into this game which which already rightly pointed out could realistically still be our grand final tomorrow night how would that work how how does that so one of them it wins and then has to survive yes have to survive the decider match they have to beat yeah. whoever is in the decider match to mm -hmm. then get through on the other half of semifinals, and then yeah. they have to yeah. meet up again in grand finals but would they yeah. not have to fight each other in the semifinals uh, we'll figure it out no I don't. I don't think. I don't think they put. I don't think they put two teams from the same group in the semi-finals, Lauren. Ah, uh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> no, they wouldn't. Yeah, okay, no, they would be yeah. the opposite. I like yeah, how Tom yeah, was that, going, okay. going through the motions for that. Yeah. I was just checking. No, this, I was checking. I have. A, I have a sheet. This is why There's Brody's here. Where'd you get that sheet from, mate? I don't know where. No idea. Uh, it's not yours, actually. If you want to. Is it no? Oh, oh, no. I'm sorry, mate. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's 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 Brody with all of the the stats and the info and all of the correct answers that's why we have to keep him around here for these streams because otherwise we would all be absolutely lost on what was going on and you've got the fresh haircut today too so yeah it, it, i mean not I, I feel, today, yeah. yeah i was gonna i was gonna say i feel like that was that was down to us actually wasn't it if anything was, what was down to you the haircut was it no yeah actually to be fair yeah my hair was like yeah it was it, my hair was getting super mm -hmm. long and the, the makeup lady was just like yeah you need to you need to sort that because uh I, I was looking like uh, i was being dragged backwards for a bush um <laughs> yeah it wasn't good <laughs> so so we're fresh that. now <laughs> we're ready to go <laughs> disheveled no longer brody as we finally have our player walk-ins ready to go here on the main stage live from sao paulo brazil as our stage host starts to get that audience hyped up yet again for the next match and i love the energy we've been hearing from the crowd here so far it's on oh yeah absolutely it's uh it's it's been fantastic to see the home crowd just getting in and amongst it they absolutely love their brazilian teams and they are very excited to see how they do and they will be fully supporting them and it's 100 percent a benefit it's an advantage for the home teams yet I love that we're seeing uh, the, the, the country pride as well. We've seen quite a few players coming out with those flags representing their region. Um, and that's just another element brought to the table. We have to remember that the Latin American teams are on their home turf. They've got the support of the home crowd, Brody. And that's definitely going to motivate them here. Yeah, for sure. I, I just think, you know, in... In general, I think it's high time that Latin America came out to perform, and this is the time to do it when you've got that home crowd advantage. You've got your fans cheering you on. I mean, you saw it during the first game, right? Where every time Galaris made a huge play, you could hear the crowd roaring. Every single time that Galaris won a map versus Kings, which happened three times over in very quick succession, uh, you know, the crowd were there. They were hyping up their team. And if that's there during this matchup versus Q9, honestly, I think Q9, they're not going to be a roster that's going to crumble under pressure, let's be honest. But that's a big, big thing to have on your side. If you're Galaris. Well, we've got all four of our teams for the next stage of competition now up on stage, getting themselves at least mentally ready before they settle into their stations and start getting themselves technically, physically ready to go. Now you see 
a few teams up here right now. Obviously, you can see that that's Kings in the back. They'll be facing off against Inco. So that is also the elimination match. We'll be keeping our eyes at least on those updates and letting you guys know how that's going because that is an equally important match. Whichever team loses between Kings and Inco is out of the competition. That is one of those teams' last opportunities right now. They're both of those teams' last opportunities right now in the tournament so while we are focusing mainly on this winner's match between q9 and galoris because that will be whoever makes it through to semifinals don't forget the match going on behind them and we'll see how close that ends up being as both of those teams did go down in a 3-0 fashion so it's about that mental reset for them as well are they able to recover and bounce back and not let that bother them heading into the next match ton yeah, they can't let it bother them whatsoever. They've got to just keep their heads down, play whatever game you have in front of you, and go from there. That's all you have to be able to do when it comes to these tournament settings. You absolutely just have to concentrate on the game in hand. And that's the, the best course of action at all times. It doesn't matter what eSport you're in or anything. You've just got to get your head down and play your own game. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We saw a little bit of a poll pop up there on the bottom as well. Almost even in the prediction for who's going to be taking this home. Q9 slightly in favor of taking that home, according to the audience that we're voting, at least here, Brody. So that's uh, interesting to see as we get that team huddle that we saw the first time around repeated yet again with some chance here on behalf of Galoris getting hyped up for the next match. Yeah, definitely. I think it's just going to be very difficult to split the difference between these two teams at this point, just given the fact that obviously we've got a hyped up, a re-energized Galaris roster with uh, Lucasin joining the side. And then on the other side, you've got a Q9 roster that's been at the top of the game for the longest time. Really not much to split the difference between these two teams. The vetoes, however, I'm curious to see, I was, well, I was curious to see uh, what we would get before we got into this one, having a little cheeky look over towards this then. It feels at the very least like... Uh, Q9 have avoided Galaris' strongest hardpoint maps. We've not seen a Hacienda here. We're not seeing a takeoff going into this one. So that's good news, at least. And, uh, you know, that's always kind of half the battle, right? We discuss it all the time. When it comes down to those vetoes, who can come out on top? Because if you get those correct, you can have a massive advantage going into the series. All right, we're starting to get a little peek into our players as they are all officially sat down. Headsets are on, phones in hand. And we can see them starting to prep themselves for this upcoming match. Players starting to get comfortable, making sure that the mic's at the right spot so they can hear each other. Those comms are wildly important when the audience can sometimes start to get a little bit loud. Things get rowdy, so love seeing that support too. And we said you've got, you've got these flags here in the crowd for Galaris, but that home advantage is very real love to see that we've got that fan support and they'll probably have lots of uh relatives family friends of our players as we got to hear that in one of our videos earlier on even some of our na family members going to support the players here and uh that's just something we love to see here in the Snapdragon dragon pro series ton oh yeah absolutely we look at any time we're watching anything and you get the family involved because you know we can sometimes be like that it can still sometimes be oh you're still playing that video game at times but then when they see that their, uh, their family are still going out to these tournaments or overseas going over to brazil great to see the support still there fantastic all right it's looking like q9 look mostly ready to go it's possible we're just waiting on a couple players from Galaris to get themselves set up you see those admins walking around checking to make sure that everything's copacetic here for our players as we take a look at the audience who also are ready to go with this next match to get things underway and find out who will be one of the first squads through to the semi-finals only a few more minutes everyone in chat we appreciate you bearing with us while we get everyone here set up and ready to go we're just as anxious to get into the games as you are and i feel like uh we might even see some of these people hanging out in chat here brody see them on their phones yeah for sure i mean look, we've seen it in the past we've seen uh players when we're, we're casting the snapdragon pro series right we've seen it, uh the, the players just pop in the chat and uh, talk mad trash after the game after they three oh somebody say maybe from somebody from galaris just pops in the chat afterwards and just be like yeah you know what q9 easy peasy lemon squeezy 
Well, looks like it's finally ready to go. Let's dive into match number three, boys. Oh, I don't believe it, Brody. We're in. Here we go. Match number three is going to be Q9 taking on Galoris. And this should be an absolute banger. Heading into the hard points. We don't know which way they're going. The same with the Surge of the Story. The same with the Control. This game could go either way. Yeah, for sure. We just have no idea. And again, a reminder that these two are two of the best hardpoint teams, if not the best hardpoint teams in their respective regions. So we expect a banger coming into this first map of the series of this best of five. And as ever, when it comes down to Arsenal hardpoint ton, we expect P1 to be super mixy. It always is. Especially off the rip. Looking into some further rotations further down the line, though. It can be one where you can pick up a decent amount of time as far as P1s go. It is... Not necessarily completely rare, but rare enough. Thinking about the rotation over towards P2 very, very shortly, but 10 seconds left to go. Fighting over every single scrap in second. Galoris are going to be the first ones here over towards P2, but Q9 with some decent time over towards P1. Yeah, this is a lot of time to give away if you're a Galaris, but I think they're kind of bargaining on the idea here that they do manage to get control of P2 and an R9 up top. I mean, that's the best way to go about it. Fokke was in just incredible uh, earlier on versus kings of that weapon only going to find one though to pick off this particular rotation uh, Shinan already able to find his way through and now he's looking for more kills he's had a little help by sun and all of a sudden that help just completely dissipates as a full kill feed comes through for Galaris they hold on for the Ooh. moment good shots coming in with the R9 holding it down so far back spawn starting to come in though from Q9 you have to make sure that they make these count, though, because if you're thinking about the rotation that's coming up in 30 seconds, it's not where you want to be. Bit of a split over towards the cannons, though. Gunfight going to go down over there. It's looking like Galoris just about going to hold on. They're going to pin Q9 back in the spawn as well. Rotation should be looking good, as is the last 25 seconds for Q9. So, yes, okay, they get the spawns, but they will get the time. They will not get the rotation. Loris will be more than happy with that. Yes, okay, they will find themselves behind by the time we get over towards the next hill, but they got a good amount of opportunity to set up. Yeah, big kills already being made on the rotation as well. This is the right choice. If you're a Galaris, just don't push too heavily in towards scrap time. We see teams do it often, and it's a rookie error. But I don't think we're going to see any of those here in Mobile Masters. Fokke doing wow. a really good job at keeping these guys at bay. Nicely red there, and that's an advanced position. I don't think either Xenon or Sun expected in that moment. So Galaris will have first touch here. Streak already coming down from Fokke as well. An investment I didn't necessarily expect to see. Nonetheless, though, it does keep a couple of players away, as is now the R9 of Fokke sitting inside that connector. You can hear the crowd getting behind Galaris. Some good time. Coming on through here over towards this P3 hold. Annihilator out here as well. Shots starting to come on through, but the kill feed looking all a Brazilian right now. Galoris getting the job done. Every single gunfight going their way. It's a 20-point lead and starting to rise. That rotation helping them out and not really much of an answer here from Q9. Galoris a really good hold so far. Yeah, Stella, but in from behind. Maoshi comes and he picks up a couple of kills. Yang Wan also going to find one as well. So Q9 at the moment. Able to find the back 15 seconds. But again, you're not too miffed about that if you're a Galarus here. You know, you take the rotation towards new because you've just managed to get 40 to 45 seconds off the back of that clean rotation towards P3. If you can garner control of P4 as well, you might well put this game a little bit far out of depth for Q9 early on. But they're now looking for the first wave of gunfights here. Yang Wan trying to penetrate through the middle of the map. He's going to get cut short. You have to imagine by a player such as the one on the screen, Mihawk and... Lucas in looking for those kills. Fokke also trying to keep them away. The first wave of gunfights looking pretty good if you're Galarus. Yeah, looking nice. The next wave's the important ones, though. Can you continue to find them? Howling now from the window. Can't find any more. It just feels like the guns from Galarus are that little bit hotter. More kills coming on through. They're holding it down. Really good job from Galarus. Every single time we're on board with somebody from them, they're finding the kills. If you're on board with Q9, they're dying very quickly. Continue to lock this down. It's been a solid hold so far. 40 seconds. I don't think Q9 have touched the hill. Yeah, it's just been so hard for them to do so. They just cannot get through all these close choke points that Galaris are doing such a stellar job at keeping at bay. And now you're starting to see Lucas in pick up like a double kill. You can't just keep on pushing this. If a Q9, yes, I know you're getting those close spawns, but still you have to rotate. And that's three more kills now. That'll be a little bit of time. Make it yet another one from Mihawk. A full wipe in the feed here for Galaris as they now have a real opportunity to swing this from that last still in towards the next one as well. Q9 are not well set up for this just yet. Can they get some decent time though? Bit of a pinch being set up here. If you lose the gunfights over towards plant pots, you gotta win them from the backside as well. Ao Ling now. Annihilator out. He's made it work as well. It looks like Q9 have just about held on, but the spawns might still be a little bit funky. 
Just about locking it down so far here, Brody. But the kill's starting to come in now from Galoris. Make it three. Predator missile in as well. I don't think you're going to find anyone. The pistol comes out. And as does the kill. Yang one inside the point with the purifier, though. That's an issue. And they aren't able to deal with this issue. Does find one. Can't find another. Galoris can just about find a breakthrough. 20 seconds still to play for here, Brody. Yeah, I think you're relatively content with this. If you're Galaris, if you get the remainder of this time, that would be huge. Now you're going to see Maoshi, though, coming through with the equalizers again. One of the most powerful operators we have here in Cobb Mobile. And he's tearing the entire opposition away from the hard point. Yang Wan also going to find a double of his own. And that means Q9 now should be spawning Galaris towards the backline. An investment coming out from Mihawk here. Bit of a suspect one, I think, especially losing your teammates. You now need to produce some more value with this one. And unfortunately, it's going to go down. Now the remainder of your team also starting to fall. And that claw that was an attempt to garner control in the middle of the map goes all right it's all about the investment though isn't it when you come in these top teams these close games the operators have to be clean q9 now showing off that p1 can be a little bit of a money hill of its own if you can't find that initial break kills though starting to come the way of caloris once again lucas opens things up Two kills coming in with the Annihilator will just about break open the hold. Coming in from Q9. More kills to follow. They find the break once again. Galoris have been in the lead for the majority of this game. In every single step that they take, it's feeling like it's deserved. Lucas finding more. 32 kills to his name already. Yeah, I'm just not surprised at this point. I think this is just yeah. standard uh, Lucas in things. If anyone was ever wondering if you're maybe newer to Call of Duty Mobile, who this Lucas in fella is and why he's so well renowned in the scene. This is why, right here, 35 kills and we're only halfway through the game. Galaris in a stellar spot to maybe extend this lead here. They've already got a 50-point advantage and they already have control of P2 as well. They've got players pushed up towards the AA cannons too. So the positioning is pretty good from Galaris. Lucasin decides now's the time to use the Predator Missile to create some space between themselves and Q9. But Fokke goes down and that's the first player you need to take down. Sun now decides now's the time to bring the Sparrow out as well to try and break this hill. Q9, they need it. They absolutely need it. They can get rid of one. But look at him continuing his reign of terror. There's another three to add to the 35. Now sitting around 39 after the first two hills on the second rotation. He's having a hell of a game as our Galoris. 70 points in the lead now. I thought this game was supposed to be close. Lucas is running the show. 41 kills above and beyond everybody else in the lobby right now. Starting to pin them in over towards the backside. 15 seconds to go on this hill. It's a perfect flip coming in from Galoris. They will more than happily take that one. Heading over towards the next hill, they'll be in prime position. And this is where they started to really extend that lead on P3 and P4. Can they do it once more? Find themselves now, Brody, still 60 points in the lead. Yeah, you talk about these key rotations, right? The fundamentals of hardpoint. Galaris have it down to a T. Now you're starting to see investment coming out as well. Pabzera with the war machine. What can he do? Lucasin's going to bring one of his Predator wow. missiles down. His umpteenth here in this game. And the kill's being made uh, along the walkway as well. Yuling decides this is the time for the Annihilator. Can he get anything for it? Only one frag. Fokke's going to fight back with the equalizers here. Back and forth we go. Q9. They're on the way. Can Sun do anything inside? He's going to get shut down. Now next up is going to be Yang One. They go. There's Yuling as well. Everybody from Q9 is falling. Nobody can touch the hill here. Galaris are holding on. Look at Zen. Oh, he's just fighting him. Oh. How does he snap <laughs> onto players like this? My word. There's the fourth. The fifth isn't going to follow with the Annihilator, but it's absurd from Lucasin. Time and time again in this game, he is taking over. And there's nothing that Q9 can do about it. 51 kills, and Galoris is still 30 points away. Yeah, Galaris have just blown this game wide open. That's two consecutive P3 hard points now over the last couple of rotations, where Galaris have basically got 50 to 60 points away from the hard point. And last time around, remember what happened on this hill as well, Tunt? Q9 just could not get through. Every single engagement was going Galaris' way. Another streak down from the heavens from Pabzera. Galaris now just 30 points away from victory. Q9, can they make the siege happen? I mean, we talked about Lucas in plenty, but the holds from Galaris have just been so clean. There's another three. 20 seconds away now from Galaris. Q9. They've had absolutely no answer. The Brazilian crowd behind their team, they're going to walk away with this game. It will take some comeback. Everything having to be invested here now from Q9. One last ditch, one last effort. You've got to make it count. 
Oh, Yang One's in. He's already found one kill. Can he have a support from his teammates as well? Now she might be fine something. Yes, he does. Yang One's gonna bring up Purifier. That's three kills for him. Q9 in momentarily. Lucasin's already found a double though and finds a third posthumously with the Hunter Killer drone. Galaris not giving this one up just yet. They can still find the seven seconds on this hill. It's absolute carnage inside the hill as the smoke's gonna be down. Q9 desperately trying to hold on for this time. Mihawk now in for the double with the claw. He's gonna find it, but that's not enough time anymore for Galaris to finish on this hill no we go to another rotation but the game may well not last that much longer one point away from galaris who have just been absolutely phenomenal at 60 on the board for lucas in we'll have one more opportunity to add to it the crowd in brazil with beta breath as the kill start to fall but not quite enough in their favor q9 still just about holding up i mean it needs to be perfect i know that's a cliche phrase right but it does really need to be perfect half point from here on out q9 know exactly where Galarus are going to be spawning. There's a couple of rogue spawns coming on through, so as long as they read them correctly, they should be fine, unless Galarus just straight out ungun them. And that might be Lucasin's plan here. Just go straight on in towards the hill. The Annihilate is ready to go. He's already found one. There's the double. Three is going to be denied as G9 inside the hard point finds number two. Q9 continue to hold on by their thing. And perhaps Henry Shots. can do something inside as well. There it is. Just a couple more kills. And that's going to be all she wrote here from map number one. Galarus are feeling the hype, and I think we are too. My word. Galaris, crazy map number one from them. Luke is in letting everyone know him. Yeah, 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 I am him. Remember that. Incredible performance from him in map number one against one of the other tournament favorites. They blew them out of the water on Arsenal. Just insane. Just an insane performance there from Galaris. And honestly, I think at the start of the game, it felt like maybe we were going to have a much more intense, a much closer affair between the two teams, right? But I think as soon as we got from that P3 to P4 rotation where Galaris really started to walk away with the game, as soon as they started to take time away on hills like P5 on that first set as well, where it felt like Q9 should have had a better go of things, Ton, that's when I think we kind of knew how the rest of that game was going to go. Yeah, I think <coughs> it was... You know, it's relatively close the first couple of hills. You're like, okay, they're exchanging. It was at P4, the first rotation around that you thought, okay, yeah, no, this is getting a little bit dangerous now when the, the full hold came in. We will talk about Lucasin consistently throughout this. I mean, he literally nearly doubled everybody else's kills. Like The best other <laughs> kill stat was coming in from Hawkeye, 37, and Lucasin dropped 64. Dude, I can't. That is insane. I'm I'm very sure that's a record break. I'm I'm like very sure. I mean, Bobby would know. Uh, I'll have to ask Bobby if that's a record break. But I'm I'm pretty sure. See the other. Demoralizing. Uh, uh, loss for the <laughs> side of kings. Yeah, it was absolutely horrible. But then again, you know, you can't let these things get to your head. You have to be able to start fresh every single yep. game, especially if you're in a situation that bad, because we are actually going to be heading into search and destroy slums after this. Wait, this is and losers you bracket. Need to be able to have On point off. They're just taking their time. Fantastic work. Coming in. I am back the side of, I, I mean I, i'm actually speechless at this stage that was an insane performance I, lucas in that is ridiculous ridiculous numbers to be dropping at this stage really really good job coming in though from, from the squad I, I mean it's a fantastic performance and not just the numbers and i was going to try and make this point before i seen 64 kills which has obviously had <laughs> an insane insane bearing on how the game did work out but the holds were absolutely phenomenal each and every single time really good job map number one going over towards galoris and that is a statement map number one as well brody completely blew them out of the water i think q9 did a great job at least of holding on towards the end right with their final uh -huh. break on towards p4 and then of course their hold for what was it 40 seconds i want to say uh, on P5 before finally Garrus managed to find their way through. But still, Garrus, I mean, it is just a P4 for me. I think that was the, the real difference. Like, you do that. that the fact that they managed to get a full, a full uh, 45, excuse me, on P3 on the first set, and then the second set, they always managed to get a full 60. I don't think they get anything away to Q9 And then successfully made that rotation to P4 twice. You can't let that happen uh, if you're a Q9. And, and that's fundamentals. I think we've always talked about hard point. We've always talked about these COD mobile maps as like, 
Arsenal Hardpoint and Hacienda Hardpoint are the two most fundamentally yes. designed hardpoint maps in Call of Duty Mobile because of the way that the hardpoints are so well spread out across the map, right? You literally have to consciously rotate. You can't just mess up a rotation, and Q9 mm -hmm. just didn't do that twice in that game, and I think that's probably what makes them it. Yeah, it's, it's a difference maker, isn't it? You know, you think back to and as you say it's all about the fundamentals immediately you've seen that though over towards p2 the first time that we got there it was just galora starting to spawn q9 way into the back immediately when they needed to p3 to four was just as perfect as you could possibly want for the most part look they picked up some serious time at p3 they picked up nearly every single second at p4 and I'm most on fire nine, for their match you, rightly say, you cannot let that happen but search and destroy is a very different game mode explosion this number of lives and be alongside of it holy shit they still have three an opportunity other. here need to find a few kills on very well we've seen sin getting out of the probably like won't end here over oh, towards p2 it can be so scrappy but if one team can get a decent hold maybe 45 you look at the Eesh, that was close. Things, if anything it was a slight out slayer coming in from amigos but not able to make it count the yes. and and i mean they they had their moments they reinforcements come to this region by amigos it's in we'll back on down doesn't want advancing through to the next round two to the good here is it's fantastic they kept trying with everything that's going on but that will be the opening matches for both of our groups case whenever it was necessarily and of course taking amigos by uh, they ended up losing, I want to say, to Godlike. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, it would have been uh, Wolves, excuse me. Uh, so Wolves beat them back there. Um, you know, and, and... They started. Still the early half of the game, no predicting what's going to happen next. But look at this. We're going to see a huge double Damn. here. Do a sniper shot straight to the head here. I'm trying to go in for a third one, but that's going to be huge for the side of King's Flag. As long as they're able to maintain the numbers. Damn, three piece from Neil. Yeah, two versus one now. Neil, nice shots coming through. Six kills already his name. See the Neil zero. And the one versus two. My quality is that player so bad. He's not always gonna be any spot that player. He's not always gonna be there. Saze trying to find him. Neil Zara just needs to get the bomb, spots him, but the R9 shuts him down. Two to one, Neil sealed the deal there with a collateral and then gets a third one as well. Nice shots coming in from the Philippine sniper. Yep, definitely representing and helping the team a lot. I mean, look at that. He has six kills already, and it's only the third round, while the rest of the team, yeah. they have their respective kills, and Marvel seems to be struggling here once again, hopefully able to step up soon, because if not, it's going to be costing Ooh. them a huge, huge amount of trouble. <clears throat> On the side of Inco Gaming, they're struggling as well. Rafa, as well as Linz, on zero kills right now. Yep, on zero kills, you're right. Now we do see bombs gonna Ooh. go down, crows in, but Nail Neil's on with the god nade gets to no trophies for Inco. Here comes King's Clan on the on the back end, but Rafa with that R9 and gets a sniper as well, the switcheroo. And just oh like my that, god, Rafa, Rafa. What was Rafa what just took hell? out all three? absolutely crazy comeback i mean a in the start of the round had no kills but he made up for it he got those kills secured and he wants to be able to win this search and destroy match but it's seeming to be a very very close match here both of the teams tied at two points tied at two points right here comes the fight lens gets one grizz trades back and forth now it's down to a two versus two just like that oh my goodness mom's gonna go down, down now Let's see what's gonna happen next mom has been planted <coughs> Leo Zero and Lens versus Neil and Marv. Things slow down right now. But oh. we see Neil He's not ten. two pieces once again with that sniper so so deadly. Blur is playing now, second map. Three arounds to the side of K. Those first couple of kills pretty much immediately. What's the plan for that? I like the aggression coming out here well, from Gallery right off the rip. Yeah, Mihawk just coming out with a couple of kills through the middle of the map. Uh, a bit of a, a weird oh, one for chokes. me. I don't normally see teams fly through the middle of the map like that. Eulin's though going to answer back with a really good play, killing Foke. Got to be careful where you're taking this bomb. If you're Galaris, uh, you're very lucky that you do get away with those kills. Oh, he chokes. I mean, they found a few kills early toes, and now all of a sudden, Son is left all on his own. They found what was it, two or three? 
think it was two oh, kills shit. came on through. Oh, that's the shot into me, Hawk. <laughs> Get the back on down, but the bomb will go down. So now we need to try and find the one versus two. Give the angle up, expecting the push to come in from the left hand side, potentially. Needs a child, not gonna find it because this Luke is in. Dude, the Once crowd again, is high. Two Holy kills shit. in the round. One to zero to Galoris. That's an attack underneath their belt. And you know what's funny, right? We always talk about momentum as we go between maps from hard point to search and destroy. I think you can definitely tell the way that Galoris played that first round. They are feeding off some of that momentum back into that round. Regardless, Galaris win round number one with that aggressant Q9. Now on the defense, playing this one somewhat more scared. But look how aggressive they're actually getting up towards through B. They're anticipating a B push. This is a big gamble from them. <clears throat> and they've gambled correctly. Gina now going to find the push in from behind. Look us in. Is he going to get any of these audio cues? Is he going to be in a position to stop something happening? No, he isn't. Yeah. Really good retake coming in from Q9. Couple of kills coming through over towards the winery, though, and all of a sudden there's a three versus three here, Brody. Yeah, and Q9 pushed all the way in towards the winery as well. So Galaris have full control over this site. And I love this read coming up from Galaris as well. well. Why not? If you know the players are positioned over towards A, just get the bomb down over towards B. It draws more of the round off when that bomb does eventually go down. Q9 also, because they're in a two versus three, forced to play this one together. They can't approach this from multiple angles, and that's exactly the play here. Shinan and Yang won, the latter of which is already gone. Now just yeah, down to Shinan here. One versus three. Runs out towards the site, looking for the kill. Oh, Pabzera is going to tag the feet, and Fokke is going to finish him off. I think Damn. it does not matter where you find yourself in a round here for Galoris. Every single time that they seem even backs against the wall, they are finding the rounds. Oh, can I get smoked row, right now? First blood. They've been down at least one or two bodies. The tundra was banned. No, it's not banned. It was banned for a little the because it was. Inside on Chinese, yeah, it's very impressive so far. Q9 need to turn this around very, very quickly. It's another first blood that's going to go their way, but for people will find himself a way through. And it's here as well, and they will continue to find these kills. First bloods be damned at this moment in time for Q9. And you've already got control of the site as well. But yeah, you're in a three versus three here, so you could well retake it for your Q9. But Galaris have gotten to site three <coughs> times now out of three rounds. 100% success rate. And now off the back of it, they're looking to stop the retake as well. Now she's able to pick up one, but he's now the last one left alive as his teammates go down. Goodness me, Tun Tunisia is a defensively sided map for heaven's sake. Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> no, it is. You know, we've been talking about it in the, in the previous series that we, that we had it on. It's... If you're going into your defensive side, if you're winning four rounds on the defense, that's okay. Uh, so far, uh, Q9 don't have any out of the first three. It's not a good look so far. Dolores now setting themselves up for a push over towards this B side. It's going to be down to Sun to try and defend this shots from N already. Very, very solid. Sun's going to have to back on down. The reinforcements are on their way, but that bomb may well be down before that. Yeah, again, same kind of story. Q9 bullied out of the site, wow. and well, <laughs> how about those for post plant kills, right? Galaris just doing such a good job at oppressing them. Q9 down to the last couple of players. It's once again Yang one and yeah. immediately four. Seven zero. Seven zero. With the R9, ton. What is happening? Seven zero. Q9 are not locked right now. It's as simple as that. They look yeah, deflated. Q9 they look defeated the already. Smoked in map number one. Getting bodied in map number two. Four rounds of defense on Tunisia. They yet to sniff a win. And now what's the plan here for Galoris? Hey, look, all credit to Galoris though. I mean, you want to give Q9. You want to say, right, okay, how have they not won a defensive round? But Galoris are running through them at every opportunity. Finally, I think Q9 starting to feel a little bit more overbearing on the A site this time around. This is the better way to go about this one. Galaris, though, reactive as ever, decide, hey, look, mm -hmm. I think they're all on A, so we're going to go over towards B. The only problem is that Sun's over here. Hasn't been that effective so far with the sniper rifle. As we know from Galaris bullying their way under the site a couple of times so far in this game. And he's going to back away thanks to the utility. There's no trophy system down to stop that utility onto a site. So Galaris, they're already here. Keep an eye as well on the other side of the map. It looks like a potential gunfight could go on there. And that will have bearing. 
As they push through the middle of the map, the gunfight start to come in through. Lucasin will find two. And it just continues to fall for Galoris. Yeah, find on the other side of the map. Which way is it going to go? Not quite the way that Galoris wanted it. Yang one will find it. Makes it a two versus three. Attainable, but still difficult. <laughs> two versus two. <laughs> Well, at least Q9 have brought this down to a two versus two, but nonetheless, you've got to cross lines of sight right now. Hen, maybe you're going to pull off a clat roll. No, going to miss the sniper. As a matter of fact, Dan's going to take him down. Got there it. goes Pabzera as well. And that is a big round for Q9. I mean, look, losing yeah. four defensive rounds is egregious enough. Losing a fifth one. Oh, boy. But that's maybe one that can get some momentum back for you. You're already in a difficult position. 2-4 down, heading into the attack inside on Tunisia. It's not a position you want to be in. They could be 5-1 down. Galoris now. We're going to try and find another round here. If anything, they threw that one away a little bit with how efficient they have been. They'll be disappointed to lose that one. I think with a really, really good child coming through. Not much that Galoris can do about that. Great shots coming in. We'll have to back on down two players over towards the B side. So a slight readjustment coming in from Q9 on the defensive side of things for what will be the final round of defense for them. Two players over towards B. Three players remaining over towards the A side. Loris trying to think of a plan to break this defense somehow. To be fair, the reactions from Q9 have been pretty good. Big on off fight coming up. Now Sheep able to cut a couple of players off guard, but nice reaction from Fokke. He picks up two of his own. Immediately numbers now in favor of Fuck he is on Oh my fire. god, bro. Galaris Dude, his R9 is crazy. Phenomenal <laughs> works with the R9. At times you think you don't want the shotgun on this map with some of the long sight lines, but if you're finding the push through the middle of the map every single time, that's the gun you want. Fuck will now get this one down. 11 kills to his name. Yang Wan trying to do something about this from the boxes side. He's got some support coming in here as well. The first kill could be absolutely crucial. They can't find it. The push starting to come on through now, getting aggressive and getting themselves back to the respawn queue. Another attacking around to Galoris, who are heading over towards the defensive side. They only need to. Honestly, mate, we've never seen this. We've seen a lot of games where maybe a team that's very much obviously better than the other winning I'm these offensive the rounds but not like this not to this extent Galaris are throwing q9 around like a rag doll and q9 now need his response pretty quickly here on the offense they might well have found it they've already picked up a couple of kills here so the b site should be theirs Galaris are also relatively splintered here on the retake going to be clean with it they have plenty of rounds to be able to solidify this two to zero lead that is looking like it's going to fall their way. So on the back line from the outside. Looking like a first attacking round is going to fall their way. Son. With another. Was that the collateral to end it? I'm not too sure. But rolling of that. They do find the round. Thanks, like SKS. Which way they do like, it. They will not yeah. care. Like opposite. Q9. Now find themselves still 2-5 down. Laura still need two more rounds. But it's a good way to start your attack inside. Galaris, we saw them stay in that little pre-match interview that we saw. People should be scared of them. Q9 yeah, yeah, yeah. at the moment, looking absolutely petrified. Now they're towards the site. Maybe they can regain some of that courage. Yang One's already drawn that first blood here up top. A couple of players looking to keep control of Winery. This is a big one to take down. If you can remove some from this position, there's one from Meekork. Nicely done, but they have given up the site time. Not ideal. Aren't able to find a back. Now, all of a sudden, Foki can't do anything about this either. He's left all on his own and will get taken down. Really, really good start here. The, the attacking rounds from Q9. That's Which two attacking rounds in a row. And all of a sudden, Which team? Between these two? This game is a lot closer Galoris. than it was, especially heading into what would be a defensive side for Galoris. And the fact that they <laughs> haven't found a single one of them yet could get a little bit concerning if this one goes the wrong way. Now, unfortunately, there are no streaks here in Search and Destroy. So we don't have to worry about that if you're a Galaris. <laughs> you yeah. know, I know they are starting to build momentum, and I think that's undeniable. I will say this is a bit of a weird positioning. Maybe that some of those pre nades the set have already happened over towards B, and that's why we see Lucas in lead the site like he has. But this is the second time now on these contested B hits that Q9 have had a free bomb site to themselves. But look at this potential rotation. They did have B. Now going right into the and they're very good at timing. Oh my god, it's like... 
era. No oh, one guy is Mike, bro. Look, is in now. You're gonna have to try and find something here. That bomb not down yet. You're gonna have to back on down if you Q9. What's the plan now? Do you stick or you, do you twist? Q9 have found a way through over towards the B side. You can see one player in Sun setting himself up on the transition. He needs to find at least one. Where's As the dog bark? Dolores players find their way over. Sun's not going to see anything, so that's information in itself. Push through the back. It's going to be coming through. The flank will be coming in. That's why Yang Won now find himself in this position. <laughs> when trying to survive can he find anything you can find absolutely nothing all of a sudden now it's down to sun left in a one versus three can hit the first shot doesn't hit the second could deal with the second bite of the cherry coming on through sun can't find anything time running out a bomb diffused yeah. find themselves now one round away from going two to zero up in this series i will say q9 have been very successful on these hits towards sites. Galaris there finally able to retake one though, and that's splitting the difference right now. Galaris one more round away. <clears throat> Going 2-0 up against the behemoths that are Q9. And this aggression coming out from Q9. They're running right head first. And the Galaris though, they're ready for him. Look at Zayn, three in the rounds. And that might just put the final nail in the coffin of this search and destroy. The shots are crispy once again. Sun left on his own. One versus four. And very yeah, much dead to right. Yeah. Oh my god, good. look at me hard. Running through Q9 oh god, right period. now. What about this game? Wait, this game is still well, going we'll on. Oh, wait, no, this is highlights. Right now. We'll have to wait and see. But right now, highlights from that search and destroy match. I mean, you can just see how dominant the players on the side of Inco Gaming were. A few, uh, uh, a few rounds dominant. for the side of Kings as well. Especially thanks to... Uh, uh, Neil, but it was just not consistent enough and they weren't really able to clutch up rounds in situations where they were left at a maybe 1v2, 1v3 situations. That is true. And now final rounds four to five so far. I mean, this were this was like the close game. We saw them really go all the way to the end here, Kosabi, but just the small mistakes here just you know costing like right here. They were up it matched, but the nades flamed through, the, the easy kills came through for them, the flank came through, the ninja defuse happened, and just like that, towards the last two OTs, the last two rounds in OT, it was just all Inko. Yeah, it was a little bit of a slip up from the side of King's Clan, you're absolutely right. They had the lead at one point, they had the opportunity to close up the game, but they weren't really able to do it or execute their plan properly, which obviously led to the players on the side of Inco Gaming taking that away from them and taking the win away from them. Yep, that is true. And don't forget, guys, this is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Check out the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra today to play like the pros you see here today. And yeah, with that being said, I mean, game number three, Wasabi Control. It's going to be one. <laughs> is this the end of the series or are we going to get in game? You and I need to find an answer very, very quickly. Right now, Galoris are looking like the best team in the game. This has oh been an incredible, faster. incredible performance from them. Dude, I have no idea. Because then, once again, a catalyst. But they should have like their names at the bottom. Of these players getting their job done when they need to. Bro, looks so dead. And just so many of these early rounds. I think they just managed to get those first bloods. Just basically barged their way in towards the sites, and then Q9 just Watch did the replay, not have I a guess. response. Time and time again, it it is honestly <laughs> bewildering looking at this and seeing the way in which Galaris are just able to kind of waltz their way on towards the sites and so much of it is kind of the the, the split pressure i want to say between the r9 of Foke, who was able to kind of seamlessly every time he says, transition his way in towards the sites comparatively to the sniper rifles also on the roster right you know the likes of pabzero and lucas and hugh are able to provide that coverage so that he can do that Galaris are just different great oh, uh, to use a british phrase mate that, that is a very british phrase for this time that of is. night but it actually was a call out that came through from Sun. And what I think was that third round or so. I didn't quite realize it at the time. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter, does it? Collateral or not. They are currently getting smoked off the hometown favorites who are looking so good. 
as being the first team to solidify a spot in the semi-finals things looking solid for them so far i mean control again i i tried to make this excuse for q9 after the hard point that s and is a very different game mode control is again but <coughs> at this moment in time they just look to be massively outclassed yeah for sure and look i will say this much i mean we go back to that king's clan versus gallerist uh, control and that was the one where king's clan actually did find a footing they just still fell apart uh, versus Galaris, if only because of the pure slaying power of Galaris. So maybe if there is a game mode in this best of five, it is going to be this one uh, that uh, we see Q9 come back on. But at this point, uh, I'm I'm not sure. I mean, I will say, generally speaking, Control is Galaris's weakest game mode across the board. So as long as Q9 have vetoed correctly, maybe they'll be all right. But I don't know at this point. I will say this much. Um, I don't know what the vetoes are because they were on screen so quickly that I actually missed them. So yeah. I don't know what map we're playing here. Um, so if no. we could... You, you don't know? Okay. I was no, hoping you knew. I didn't see them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Really hoping you had me there, Tom, mate, but you didn't. So. Uh, no, no, I didn't. Real? I didn't check. Uh, you know, commenting and stuff. Um, Control is not but trying. Is this the rubric? Yes, okay. There's this potential for Q9, but they haven't offered me anything over the, these first two maps that would offer me any reason as to why that might potentially happen. But we will be finding out what's going to happen in the rest of the series very, very shortly. We're going to go for a quick break, but the conclusion of this series will be coming up right after this. Uh... No, not anyone can play like a pro. Like, you can't even play like a pro with your skill level. Look at your skill. And yeah, for like, for like, getting into comp, like, yeah, you could just say. Playing aggressive, play passive. There's different, there's. <clears throat> More like mid adapt. <clears throat> you get cutting off mid sentence. Oh, I need to swallow my mic. I can't talk. Oh, three, two. Oh, three, two. Holy crap, that was close. Oh, they almost reverse swept them. <clears throat> two members left for the first 20 seconds. One. Just now pushed up on that second floor. I think they heard him. Jez ran away with his life now. Just trying to find something here. Just trying to get one kill. But just nothing so far. But he's been pushed up so far away. Push it up and there you go. Spot as well. Incendio <laughs> on that left side. You see him. He's in that cubby. I think. 
Damn, that was a close game. It won oh, yeah, in sure. one day, but for now, I think we're stuck on the desk. Yeah, we are stuck on the desk. But before that, we just want to say thank you to our to our presenting partner, Samsung Galaxy, for providing Dividus with a game-changing combination of speed, power, and mobile AI. We're reading Make the sure script. Make sure you can be yours with the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, powered by the new Snapdragon yeah. 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy. Graphic strength in real time and ray tracing for hyper-realistic shadows and reflections. A bigger vapor chamber it keeps it nice and cool for a smooth game experience. And not only that, it also has... It also has all day battery and the brightest adaptive mobile display. It comes Bro, with the my rounds are garbage. Galaxy AI features and epic mobile gaming experiences. <laughs> so don't forget to check out the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra today to play like the pros you see here in this tournament. So if you want to beam like Rebalo or you want to be like Klo, you got to get the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra today. So thank you again to Samsung for for being our presenting partner. So I'm back now to our task at hand, Wasabi. I mean, here we go. In Her name is Wasabi, I Kings. think. Game number three, it's gonna be Control on a Crossroads Strike. Inco on the verge of dethroning, I'm not, dethroning oh, I the Kings start. and sending them home back to Europe. And for Kings, the start Bro, of the reverse. That'd be so ironic. Yeah, definitely. If their uh, names are Kings is, and they uh, the lose first. the last chance for Kings to hold on to this tournament because if they give it to the side of Inco Gaming, then of course that means Kings will be sent out of the tournament. But guys, we're not going to keep you waiting any longer into the match we go. And you can see already the first couple of kills going to the side of Kings where they're actually going to take Whoa. the life advantage here. And Cross and popping <laughs> up. What, was the, what were those two shots? Absolutely crazy. I mean, that's why he has the, S, the Samsung S24 Ultra. That's what happens. Performance with 120 FPS. He's ready. Oh, the Crossing gets taken down. Yeah, that's why I, I assume. Very slow here. I like the approach that they're taking here, uh, Wasabi. Not getting too overconfident. Oh. Just holding it I was down, like, why did he say Wasabi? Sector <laughs> sector, and then from there, we'll be able to move up. Rafa with the R9. Misses that shot, but Grizz is a better R9 coming through. 20-21. And now we are going to see a little bit of the players on the side of Kings starting to get more and more King kills. Finally, some action from their side. This is what we've been waiting for. And they are finally giving it to us. But look at Inco Gaming. They are struggling to stay alive here. Down to 16 lives left. Trying to defend that A side and B side. But Kings Clan going in for the capture right now. They're going in for the capture. Grizz going to take it down. Rafa, Sazi gets taken down as well. And now... Now you see Enko, three life lead. They have control of whatever's of the map as well. King's clan slowing it down. Grizz is trying to push up already. So far, not the best. Neil gets two in a row. <clears throat> big big plays coming through right here. Only 20 seconds left on the clock. Capture a far. Let from me see if the other game started. Two teams are going to be down to a single. Oh wait, Glory started. Remaining. Last respawn, we got a Lucas in clinic. Almost he nearly 30 kills above anybody else. In I assume lobby. you guys would rather watch this one, right? Take over games that you think of in your, in your time. Mm -hmm. That will be one of them that lives up there for a very, very long time. Galaris with a very, very good start. Five lives lost, but on the other side of things, 9 q Good hold so far coming through from the side of Galar Galaris, and can we continue to do so? Yeah, Q9 trying to get something going. Sorry, Galaris, Galaris on the attacking side. Q9 trying to defend. Mm -hmm. Made that mistake before, Brody. Jesus. <laughs> Gallerist though, Buzz. at the moment, looking for the first blood, first tick of progression over by B. Q9 not really offering much in the way of resistance, not just on B, but also on AI as well. They're being careful to clear out their own base before moving across the map, and I don't know if that's the right decision at the moment. Finally though, you see Erling pick up a couple of kills there, Mihawk going to go down. Pinstripe kill feed here for the moment. Galaris still looking to put one foot on towards A. And I think with that couple of kills coming through from Fokke and Lucasin, respectively, I think this now might be the opportunity to do exactly that. Control can ebb and flow that way. You're pushing one side, it opens the door on the other. But all of a sudden, the door's being opened for Q9 to walk in and just absolutely slay out. Well, it's going to be shoved back here. 25 seconds to go. They still need to get a control point underneath their belts. The shot's coming in solid. That should get them out. 12v7, still attainable here for Q9. You just got to keep them off one of the points. Easier said than done. 15 seconds. Still looking to defend these points. Galaris, I think, really do need to start focusing on putting extra 60 seconds on the clock here. But Q9 down to their last pitches. few sets of lives. Now down to just three versus 10 as Pabzera and Lukashin 
really want to bring this one home. They're stopping the clock as well, and that just makes things so awkward. Mao Shi Ho wow. turns and burns on towards Mihawk. Damn, it's look nice at them level 12 already. To end the round for Q9, but it's not a nice way to end the round for Q9. As look, they didn't do it by ticks, they did it by kills, but it's a round win nonetheless here for Galaris. Yeah, well, Cat. Yeah, the attack around underneath their belts, always a good way to start to control into the second round now. Can Q9 manage to find themselves in the second round? It's a fantastic start. Three kills falling their way. Jinan finding himself two, and all of a sudden, the doors have opened. Kills coming through, though. Look, he's in finding a couple of his own. Oh, oh, my word. The third shot's absurd. And starting to line them up now with the Annihilator. Spawn close. That's going to cut him off, but already 16 kills to his name. And for me, I, look, you get those flashy plays from... We checked the score for the other the game. Just a little <laughs> bit. 16 kills. I'm looking around thinking, where on earth has he found these from? Uh, yeah, it, it's just funny, right? Just oh, this is a close. 7-7. Seven, seven. 14 Zena seconds. Up on Galoris towards the spawn here. Galoris, excuse me, is a couple of kills. Are gonna oh, come through. before. Gonna away from the spawn. And you're already seeing more kills starting to come through as Galoris. Again, a great utilization of the streak there. They knew they were under pressure of... Go in for the capture. Oh. In Kingsland, down to two lives left. A side has Why you drop? Only one player remains. Wow. What the hell? <laughs> okay. They've got more kills now. They're really starting to put the pressure on here towards Galaris. I mean, Galaris have never really got out of their spawn here. Have they really, really struggled? But we know how quickly it can change in control. For all that Q9 of spawn trap Galaris. They can be spawn trapped themselves, but with only six lives remaining, Galaris need to be pretty much perfect from here. It's just been the aggression coming on through. Not going to win that gunfight if you're a young one, and now all of a sudden you're in a dangerous spot. Galaris finally removing these guys from that spawn trap. Q9, though. No. They want to add an extra 60 seconds to the clock here by capturing A. Uh, Shinan going to go for the reload, but ends up getting the kill against Honokat uh, anyway. Galaris have a lot of utility on side. I don't know if they actually opt to use it here, though. Again, Shinan's been such a nuisance over by this area. The spawn trap has been so frustrating for Galaris, and now they're down to the last couple of players. Henry Cat and Lukashin here. I don't really know if there's that much that you can actually do. Lukashin's picked up one kill against Uling at the very least, but you have to be perfect from here on out. A couple of kills, though. They're still in it. <laughs> Keeping them away, it's just time that's not yeah. on their side. If you're on that moment with 10 seconds to go, you can maybe make it work, but a whole minute they can just pick you off. And for what feels like one of the first times, some life coming through from Q9. Now the rest need to concentrate here. They want the 3 to 0. They rightfully so kept a hold of their operators. With a couple invested there from Q9. So if Galoris can make this count yeah. this time around, then it's going to potentially be the difference maker. And it is for the first couple of engagements. Three coming through from Foki immediately with the equalizer. And then he's going to be on set back pretty much immediately by Malkri as well. Is he going to be able to find any more? Not quite. Pretty much an even trade across the board. Galoris just about the better off. Oh, some of a sniper rifle in the respawn as well. That thing's deadly. It's showing why in the hands of a player on Q9. I'm getting ground meta. Frick that meta. Out the purifier here to try and create some space for Galaris. HG meta. That by putting a player on towards B and starting to put a capture together. But in behind, it's going to be Aling <laughs> here with the Annihilator. He's already found one. Burns and burns on towards Foki for the second as well. And these players are going to continue to spawn in and around him. He can be such a nuisance, but finally he will go down. But in itself there, Aling's play creates a lot of space for Q9 to move up the map. Galaris just couldn't find themselves out the spawn quick enough. Now all of a sudden... You can start to get yourself pinned in just a little bit. Loris trying to find some work, <coughs> trying to get themselves oh, on the way out. A couple of shaky shots, though, are going to open the door. 13 versus 13. B, plenty of capture time. Left to try and get a hold of that. The clock has been stopped. 12 versus 12. Progressive B. It could be on the cards very, very shortly. Hen just trying to lock this one down. Just trying to stay alive. He's got his teammates there to help and cover, but not cover that one. Yang Wan. Finds his way through. <laughs> SMG in hand. He's going to absolutely shred from these angles. Looks in. It's going to fall. Really good defensive hold so far from Q9. And yeah, they're just stopping that third tick coming through. But as Pabs are for double, <laughs> Henry Cat going to follow up with number three now. That should be all she wrote for this point, unless Sun can do something about my it. God. And Henry Cat is simply oh not allowing Oh my God. Him. They're getting the smoked. Here from Galaris towards the end of the this Lord's round. with the crazy now triple. Q9 down to their final. <laughs> 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 Lucas in. We're on towards Q9. I think that should be all she wrote here for this round. And yeah, that's going to be it as the B goes down. Shinan, have you got yeah. one versus seven in your back pocket? No, you don't, buddy. Uh, what about the other game? Oh, it's over? Oh my god, Inko.
Wait, I think Coco did. See the operator skills coming in handy as Wait, they didn't have mana advantage though. How the hell? Remains on top with 13 lives remaining in co game down to 10. No captures have been brought in by King Scan just yet. They are going in for the kills and only the kills. King Grizz is going to be able to get a couple lined and streaked up for his side, but that doesn't build up his operator skill just yet. Only 19 seconds remain here. Both of the teams on the brink of extinction here and it's just a matter of seeing who will go down first that is true six to seven you get there now we're running out of lives now kings neil did get one it might be another 5v5 and yes it is here we go clutch time coming through rafa has an equalizer to work but if he wants to use it Lost go out. rafa has equalizer oh they choked a minute left grizz gets one as well wasabi it's coming down to this four versus four and now we are just in a waiting game here stalemate which among these two teams are going to push in first as you said we get that one minute time extension but down to four players left on each side none of them wanting to make sudden movement but grizz sneaking around spots one neil pulls out how they lose this round get those last two kills confirmed but unfortunately gets knocked down rafa does the same but gets shot from behind and it's just a matter of people here but garrett has one. one and it's all down to inferno on the side of king's clan the clutch is up with rafa's on the front out. Yeah. Yeah. Confirms it. But they do send kings out. Yeah, I want to see Stal Stalwart against the uh, Seminole. That'd be a good match. Get shut down. Fokke on the point now. Can he do anything with the R9? No is the answer. And all two, that two. Is he walking a one versus five. He goes oh, nah. as well. An offensive victory here for Q9. Around five we go. It was looking good when the purifier was invested, but then everybody dropping around the B side. The defensive holds not looking too Wait, who's great. on defense? Q9. From Galoris, who are now back on Yo, Mihawk's on 9, bro. He's trolling. Kind Lukinson on 35. One. And well, okay, everything invested. Oh my god, so teams. many pretty much, initially, pretty much an even start from both these two teams, but Sun Yang one getting the job done. They can find the pushover towards the A side. Annihilator's out, and the Annihilator's hitting. Everybody dropping every single operator they have. And Galorius backs against the wall pretty much immediately. These oh shit, he choked his Annie. Solid enough. And it is worth Wait, saying, what? I think this is probably the first time we've ever seen a team here in Call of Duty Mobile and Crossroads Strike actually utilize that very spawn trap that was so deadly early doors on Black Ops Cold War. Q9. They get a... They might well put themselves in that position once more. Right now, though, they've got a small life advantage. They are starting to capture that A point, as I said. <clears> and most of the kills are going in their favor. Galaris need a game plan right about now, and I think most of it at the moment is maybe just giving up A and focusing on what they can do over towards B. Wait, no, Galaris is Q9 on defense. Starting to weigh their options on what they want to do. They're already starting to make their way over towards B. A is gone. The transition to B. It's got to be that. And I let a pop down from Lucas and can find one on our link. We're going to try and force the issue here with the spawn trap. You can just see Q9. They don't want anything <laughs> to do with this. Annihilator out for a man who has 42 kills in this lobby. It's a dangerous position to be in. Mihawk can find one. Luke is in now from behind. Ooh, we'll find one. We'll find double. two. Easy shots going to be coming in from the vet. Fantastic shots if that. Predator Missile now in as well. Oh shit, he He's missed it. To find. Well, absolutely nothing with that. If you are Q9, you have a potential mm. opportunity to get out here. But now you've been forced back. There's only one player who's out. But finding progress, 13 versus 13. Yeah, and you've already got players, I think, pushed up as well. Look at number five on the minimap. You can see Yang Wan being an annoyance inside the spawn of Galaris. Oh, they got to get no on it. Put the out on the open here. Mihawk and Luke Shin, though, going to pick up some kills. Oh, Henry Cat towards I the point. going to find Jinan. Oh, Dude, this is actually here. crazy. Q9 removed from the point. The pressure towards the spawn is also gone. So Galaris can breathe for a moment. But they still need to deal with Q9. They still need to get players oh, into the spawn. Mihawk going to open up seating for that first kill. Oh, G9, shit. 5v6. Sun, all finding kills. Galaris down to the final set alive. It's 5 versus 4. Now make it a 4 versus 4. What is happening? The game will slow down. A minute and 22 seconds. They attacking team and they go aggressive. Times where will find one. It's a 4 versus 3 in favor of Galort. Make it now a 3 versus 3. So we'll answer. We'll be coming back through from the side of Q9. Oh, Can they find trade. a good fight? 2v2. 2 versus 2, Brody. Holy shit. The remainder of the series relying on a two versus two. Chinana Maoshi versus Pabzella and Lucasin. 
as perhaps Eridus You heard him. Yes, he has. He knows now there's somebody trying to climb up the cliffs. You have to imagine, at the very least, they've spotted it out. That should be communicated over towards <laughs> Lucasin. Now's the time to get on towards the point, it would seem. Lucasin forced out in towards the open here. Player watching from Ooh. up top as well. It's going to be the war machine. Yep, from oh, Tabzera. Now down to a one versus oh, he's one. It's going to be the equalizers versus what the, the fuck war is machine. happening? more accurate with their operators. Oh, shit. Run. And the pre-fire is good enough here. Pabzera is just Wait, why are they lagging? To make his move around. You see him? 30 seconds on the clock. Zazaz. And Mousy's just spotting him out. He's just spotting him out in from behind. Surely Pabzera oh, is Oh, my God. Oh, my Mousy God. Mousy is going to keep Q9 oh, alive God. in this game. Comes down to a one versus the one. QXR is pretty good right now, bro. What a crazy game. What the fuck three. just happened, bro? Dude, like even the even yet. the players are stressed. Really good performance in the control there. And honestly, they're attacking rounds. They were so relentless. What's happening here? Out of the competition. Alpha, the two versus two, and then the final plays. They're just great teamwork coming through from Inko. Yeah, I think the timing of the investments of the operator skills in. <laughs> Q9. I mean, look, <laughs> when they won that round of three, I honestly thought it was done and dusted. I was gonna say, dude, that was crazy. Hey, but prior to that round of a three, even early on in that one, where it felt like the defense of Q9 was pretty strong, <laughs> I was gonna say, look, you know, this is gonna come down to who gets the ticks, who can get the most progression on these points, so they can guarantee a defense for round number nine. And at the time, it felt like Q9's defenses were ultimately stronger. But in the end, it comes down to a round number five after back-to-back -back offensive victories for both sides. And it is going to be Q9 that managed to survive. And this is, again, off the back of... I know we'll talk about Q9 and how solid they looked in that one. But again, off the back of this slaying performance from Lucasin. 48. What? <laughs> like, <laughs> dude. Like, what? Nobody can actually what? save Lucasin, bro. If you want to play a devil's advocate, how is he dropping 48 and they're losing the game? That's facts. See, I think that's a fair point. I just hate admitting that's a fair point. It's not always about the kills. They do help, but they didn't this time. 3-2 in the end to Q9 to make this series a little bit more interesting. I'm up number four will be coming up, but it may just give them that confidence. It felt like, I mean, what, from the third or fourth hill on map number one, they lost that confidence. Can they get it back now? And can we see something from Q9 on map number four? We kind of tipped this as a potential grand final. Q9, well, hadn't showed any of that potential in the first two maps. But we're getting to see it a little bit more now. Map number four could be very interesting. Yeah, I'm just going to quickly check actually what the next map is going to be here. But yeah, I mean, we, we go back towards the replays here and you can see just kind of how that entire map went down. I've got to say it as well. I am somewhat curious because i'm surprised in a way and i said this all the way back in uh sps season four the rare times that we did get to see a crossroad strike control we never saw that spawn trap and to a certain extent i, I often wondered like does that spawn trap actually exist here in cod mobile because we just never see it and i was always surprised that no team ever went for it i now i know it does exist and uh i think q9 are just really damn good at it i think so just a really, really good performance. And again, it was those attacking rounds they were so good at. <laughs> so many different times that we were sort of saying, all right, okay, close rounds, but it always felt like they were maybe a step ahead. And it is a difference maker. Just played the... I want to say they were proactive in their attacking rounds. I still think Q9's going to lose, form, like 3-1. It's just being a pain in the ass, and that is what can sometimes make a bit of a difference. Just trying to keep people at bay, get those lives down. Lucas End can only do so much when he is left on his own, right? You can only shoot in one direction at one time. Big map win coming in from Q9. And now all of a sudden, a series potentially on our hands. Map number four, you, any ideas yet? I think it's Summit. But my memory is terrible, which you know. It is Summit. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> my memory is not as bad as I thought it was. So yeah, Summit's going to be interesting. Again, I mentioned this before Limited we w map. the series. But it is interesting to say that... Uh... What's happening here? Oh, that's a good matchup. Okay, we'll switch to this stream after. I don't know. Well, we'll see how it plays out, whatever happens. We'll be heading into map number four very, very shortly, but I don't know. I, I still feel like a prediction for Q9 will be bold. It'll be very bold this day based on what we've seen in map number one. It was the fundamentals that, <laughs> that were just so much better from, from the side of, of Garrus. I, I mean, I think you'd be hard-pressed to pick many people who think that this is going to go to a map number five. 
yes, okay, control looks like maybe a shaky spot for Galaris to, uh, to maybe have to work on throughout the rest of the tournament to maybe look at maybe some different maps to come through because it's not really working for them right now. We said against Kings that they weren't necessarily great. Uh, Kings actually, uh, for the European fans who are still awake, shout out you guys. Uh, yeah, Kings are out, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, yes, they've just been knocked out. Uh, and that, That's a shame for them, but they always knew coming into this tournament was going to be super difficult. Europe, but still with some, some ways to go. Irrelevant of that, though, it's still been an incredible performance from Galaris in the maps that they did win, but they lose that control. Definitely some work still to be done there. Yeah, for sure. I think, like, it is important to note on the whole, right, if we're talking about Galaris here on control, um, it, it does feel like Galaris is weakest in control, um, at least yeah. from the couple of maps we've seen so far and obviously what I saw of, uh, of Latin America SPS Season 4. So that's not really a surprise to see them struggling in that game mode. It is also important to note that, as we said before, Kings were very good at control. It was their best game mode. So I, I don't think... Uh, it was really surprised to see that being the, the biggest resistance they came up against in that prior series. In this one, though, you know, we, we've talked a lot about Q9 and where their strengths lie, and, and they're one of the best hardpoint teams in their region. They're also very, very good at search and destroy. It's what they're mostly known for. So uh, to, for Control to be the map in which they find a way in towards the series, I think it's going to be somewhat surprising right now uh, for Galoris. But you know what? I don't think they'll be that perturbed by it. They're still 2-1 up in this series, and they're a very, very good team. Let's see if they can close things out here on Summit. It's time to lean forward again for Lucasin and the boys. Can they find something here in the map number four on Summit? It's a very, very mixy map. It's going to be about the R9s who's performing well with them, who's finding the breaks with them, who's using their utility the best at the right moments. It's a great start for Galaris. Some good time over towards P1. The shot's a little bit shaky. Don't say that very often when we're here at the Mobile Masters. Some good time over towards P1 for all Galaris and a rotation over towards P2 imminent in 25 seconds. Yeah, again, going back towards the matchup between Galaris and King's Clan. This was the map in which uh, they let King's Clan have, I'll say, 68 points. Uh, they destroyed them uh, back in that one. So uh, Galaris Ooh, looking for that same Galaris kind of performance here. And they garnered a lot of time off P1 on both sets of rotations that we saw back in this map. Feels like the same kind of thing happening here once again. Q9 cannot find a way through. Most of the gunfights going in their favor. Q9 will find the back five seconds here, Tunt. But can they actually make a rotation over towards next happen? The vast majority of gunfights go in their favor. There's one more player hanging about, and it's going to be Foke. He was able to cause some serious disruptions down low. He finds a double. That might have opened the door. Can they find a way in? 50 seconds. Yeah, left on P2. Q9 will get themselves some sort of control. Spawns there, though, for the side of Goloris. As you mentioned, that's what you want to keep an eye on. It's about this P3 rotation. Keep a mixy of P2, which is what they're doing successfully so far. Sun just sitting in the corner in the smoke, finding the kills, and all of a sudden that's going to break the spawns. You're going to be able to find a route through. Foki is here. He's going to have to find a kill or two to hold these spawns down for the side of Galaris, but they are leaking time at P2 still. Yeah, I like this jump down coming through. A nice little challenge there from uh, Hen in towards the hard point. Yep, Foki is going to pick up a couple of kills. Surely not on a three yet. Sheena not going to allow that one. Trades galore here, but ultimately it is going to be Galaris that hold on towards the rotation for now. That's a lot of time, though, for Q9. They'll take that. Even Stevens basically here with Galaris, just they got the noses out in front of their opposition. But now Galaris do have control of the rotation. All it takes is one bad timing for a player to get in from behind. Maoshi tries to exploit said bad timing, does get shut down. Galaris for the first couple of kills. Looking pretty good here. They've got every single lane being watched. I should hold this down. A couple of kills going to start <laughs> coming on through, though. The investment of the Sparrow coming out from Sun. He's managed to find at least two, make it three. Fantastic work from Sun. It will now find that break, and it's a hard break back from Galaris because they got cleanly wiped from the back, and now they're going to try and find a push on through. The smokes are going to work out in both teams' favor. Our link finding two. It's a wonderful break coming in from Q9. Have to come with the investment here from Foki. Can find a couple. Oh. Equalizer out. A lot of investment coming in from Galaris, and they want to try and spawn them over towards the backhand side so they can get the spawns coming in for the next hill, which is coming up in 20. So they're just going to get the scrap time. Small lead will be theirs too, but rotation has to be important. It's actually being won by Galaris as well. They lose the scrap, but get the rotation. Works out in their yeah. favor. Yeah, that, I'll, I'll be honest. I, thought, I think the street just came down there from Sun, and that was really poor. That that was just totally not what you want to see <clears throat> out of Q9 because they've lost the rotation now, and now's the kind of time that you want to see a Predator miss out. Galaris get the better look out of that hard point as well. But they are currently down 13 seconds overall. 
Claw up top, trying to provide some coverage. Oh, goodness gracious me. Mihawk snaps onto what Sheenan and Fokke going to follow up with another kill. There's Henry Cat to completely wipe away Q9, but they do spawn close here. They'll continue to knock at the door of the hard point, and one player's managed to make his way all the way through. He brought the purifier momentarily there. That was Yang one. He does get shut down. I think Mao Shi also utilized their specialist too. So Q9 here. They're being batted away for the moment, but this is very mm. far from convincing for Galarus. It's not quite being the start that they had to map number one. Oh. It was electric. It was unrelenting. Maybe knocked some of the wind from their sails. That loss on the control, but still they are finding also themselves in the lead. And that's all they will care about so far. They stand on really 19. Hold over towards the people side, and then all of a sudden heading into another rotation <laughs> of hills. Galaris are going to be in the lead. Irrelevant what happens to the final ten, but it's looking like it will be theirs. Really, really nice hold. Oh, that's the, the kind of hold that can win you games. In a scrappy close one that this one is, that can be the difference maker. Now thinking about the rotation over towards P1. Some time can be had here and over towards P2, but it's all about those P3 spawns when we get there in about two minutes time. Galaris, that was a big hill coming up from them. They now hold a 35 point advantage or so over Q9. This was the hill last time, as you said, that Galaris managed to get a lot of time away from. Q9 though, they're going to be the first ones in for the moment. Maoshi also providing some coverage to kick this one off. But he's going to go down. There goes the rest of the squad as well as Focky picks up two. Henry Cat now looking to find his way through as well. He's already picked up one. Hits the reload momentarily, but Xenon is getting the better of him in that situation. Enables Q9 to be back on through. As we hit the 25 second point in this hill, Galaris should now be focusing on making sure they get the rotation, but Q9 already starting to poke holes in said rotation. So well on that rotation over towards P3. They won't want to be in that position again. They would love to actually just have that rotation, I would imagine. Close game here, though. Q9 picking up some decent time over towards P1. They'll close that gap ever so slightly. Maybe just can't close it entirely. One point game now. As we head over towards P2, a much closer game number four than we've seen in game number one. Galaris starting to find a couple of kills. It's all about the spawns over towards P3, though. Keep an eye on them over the 55 seconds that are remaining here at P2. And this game could not be any closer at this point. Galaris again wanted an opportunity to split the difference. Sun going to momentarily use the Sparrow, but the not so great effect. He takes him out of himself out of the equation as well. And now Galaris starting to earn some more time on this hill. They're getting the kills, but they're still annoying Q9 players that find their way around. A couple of kills do come through from Maoshi, but he does get removed from the situation as Lukashin picks up three. Make it four in a row there. Galaris with a big wave of gunfights and again ton. There's 25 seconds left here. They can get the remainder of this time. They're starting to utilize some of the specialists as well to make sure that happens. It's Mihawk up top with the claw to do exactly that. And they can get the rotation towards new. This could be a pivotal moment here in the game. That was a lot of investment though. They do get a hold of the spawns, but Lucas you need to make 31. sure they lock them Bro, down, how? unlike last time. This man's even better on land? What the He's hell? going to be hitting in around 10 seconds or so. Q9 have found themselves back in a bit of a better spot, but a bit of a preemptive investment coming in here from Galaris, and all of a sudden... Lucas Jin. Oh, we can try and do something there. I thought that was the kills coming up for Ao Ling. Not quite through the window, Ooh. but Lucas Jin finding a couple. It was three in a row before he did fall. Alan finds some of his own, and all of a sudden, Kaloris are being batted back just a little bit more. 47 seconds remaining. Tight push oh. coming in here from Q9. Big players coming in from Foki once again. It's looking like they're going to hold on this time around over towards P2. Yeah, Q9 will give this one last hit because there's still a wealth of time to go for. Lukashin going to get a couple of kills off the back of uh, one Hunter Killer drone. One bird, two stones. Now Q9 in this situation how much more do you actually want to put into this one because now you're spawning around the back line you've got to be very very careful about how this one goes you do not want to give the rotation away to Galaris like you did last time around because now they've got a somewhat comfortable lead one more player to contend with in this rotation i don't know if they actually know that sheenan is here yeah they don't he does find one but mihawk's going to trade things out for that second hill stunt so we'll have a moment to breathe here as we get towards the second set about 10 seconds before q9 land on this next hard point Galaris with a small lead a small but significant one based on what we've seen so far. Look at Jen finding two there with the Hunter Killer. It's a good way to kick off this rotation. And if you remember the last rotation of Hills here, Brody <laughs> Galaris had such a good time. Over has Lucas ever been P4. accused of hacking? I don't from think Yang so. Because like good enough to clear it open. That is a pretty much a clean wipe, but one more player. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, he's playing land right now. He's popping off, so I don't think he's hacking. Decimated immediately. Just wiped off the face of it. Fantastic stuff from Galaris so far. 30 seconds to go. They've held nearly every single second. 
Galaris are doing a stellar job at keeping Q9 away, but now they're getting those close spawns through. Three so coming down here from Foke, who I don't think it's landed just yet, so it's not getting any kills. But again, Q9, they're banging at the door here. They're demanding entry in towards the hard point. They're being removed from it pretty much every single time. It's Galaris coming out on top. Foki now decides the time to use the equalizers in towards this hard point, and he picks up a crucial double that keeps Q9 away. Ton, the last couple of hard points have been all Galaris, and they have really started to run away with this game. It feels just like P1 oh. once again. And Foki now with the equalizers, he is doing serious damage in towards P1. This might well be Galaris. Yeah, this is unfortunate. Well. They stepped on the pedal now, Foki. Finding more and more kills, equalizer in his hand, and that might have just solidified the game for Galaris. They're 25 seconds away. Q9 had a fantastic start, but I don't think they've found a kill in about 30 seconds. Incredible play from Galaris. They're 20 away now. Predator Missile coming through. Everything being invested. If you're Q9, you've got to find something fast. Q9 getting clapped. 18 seconds away from victory. Q9, they're in the hard point. Couple of players left to talk about. It's Maoshi and Jinan, the former. Now the last one left alive, and he's going to get quickly shut down here. Turn it streaks galore. Galoris, they want to find their way in towards the championship bracket, in towards the next day of play. And Q9 trying desperately to break their way on through. Maoshi and Yang won. Couple of kills. Couple of operators <laughs> now coming out from Q9 as well. They do not want to go down yet. They've got to send it. That's the problem. They've got to invest everything over towards P1. So what have you got left to fight with over the rest of the game? You need to blow them out of the water. Maoshi can do a really good job of doing that, but it's starting to be answered back now from Galoris as the operator starting to run out. The real guns are out, and who's better at fire on them? So far, so good from Galoris, but it's going to be back inside the point for Q9. They still need to be nearly perfect throughout this game. They can allow Galoris only six more points. Ah, and there's the kills! Lukashin! What? Lukashin! Dude, what the what hell? Is that? Four kills for Lukashin! And Aoling's Bro. the last one left. Nah, he's actually he's cheating. Get shut down. And I think Lukashin, I mean, it would just be him, wouldn't it? Might well what? Have set out this game just like that. Galaris shut out Q9 and they book their place in the day number two. Oh, this kid is different. Bro, Galoris better freaking win now. There's no way. Insane scenes in Brazil. The, the hometown hell? team. Lighting up their main stage. <laughs> That's Lucas Jin's main stage. Let's see if the other game started. I want to do. How about you? What's happening here? Tudo bem, pessoal. Todo mundo treinando. Ó, todos estão treinando aqui com seus celulares. Vão deixar. What's happening here? Como é que você está se sentindo? A gente está se sentindo. Eu especialmente estou me sentindo muito bem. Meu time também. É, foram vários meses de preparação. É, para esse momento e eu acredito que a gente vai fazer um bom campeonato é, a gente está se preparando muito bem é, sem, Wait, sem there was an interview. criar muitas was an interview you galories is look isn't using witchcraft i don't even doubt it bro i believe you the fuck here. At Wales was not that strong because we were missing our main sniper at the X. For now, our esports we are way stronger than before because we have our main sniper here with us. We have another ad uh, additional player, which is Claw, which is one of the best SMG in our region. I could say my team performance is really good because we haven't lost a single match. So for us, the qualifiers will basically practice, and we hope that some teams here are, can give us some fights. It means a lot to represent East because we only have two Eastern team against six Western team and we are really, really excited to prove ourselves that we are capable to represent the entire huh. Eastern team to fight against the majority Western teams. The rivalry uh, between East and West is really mean a lot to me because last year we proved that East is the best. The, uh, I believe no, at that no, moment the... we're going to be Marina. Really happy and like almost tears is definitely gonna come out from the happiness that we have because we have came so far. So and defeating six Western team is gonna be a good moment. If I'm the one who lifting the trophy, maybe I will break to the tears because I have played so long and I never win a single big tournament. I would like to tell those players who talk trash online to watch their mouth because we are a very different team right now and you better watch out. Shit. Yo, they're coming in hot, bro. They said, watch your mouth, buddy.
exactly what to do and when to do it at the right time. Eu já tive um, uma experiência com ele e deu para perceber que ele chama muito o time, ele sempre tá fazendo o time falar. Ele dentro e fora de jogo faz total diferença dentro da equipe. Dentro de jogo é sem palavras, o cara mata muito boneco, então tipo, facilita bastante o jogo da galera. Fora do jogo também, tem uma personalidade muito forte. And on top of that, the way he plays, it's a mix of being passive and aggressive. O que eu espero do meu legado é conseguir marcar a vida das pessoas e dos meus teammates, das pessoas que eu joguei contra como um jogador excepcional. So what Dude, why is he rapping? Freedom is a lot of coordination. I feel like um, since the uh, thing that we want to do on our time, not his. Cara, Lucas se adaptou muito bem no time. Oh, everyone gasped and looked at him. Ele veio o agregou muita coisa do jogador que ele é. Só trouxe somar, só trouxe a agregar para nossa equipe. Muita gente fala de ser o melhor jogador do mundo e não ter um título nacional pesa bastante. Então é isso que a gente vai correr atrás, mas não é algo que, que vai manchar. Então não não vejo como assim. Uh, I think they're gonna do really good in this tournament. When we found out Lucasen was joining them, we said the Avengers picked up Thanos. That was how we equated it. So I think they're definitely gonna be a strong team. I feel like um, since the uh, event is hosted in Brazil, Lucasen is like the fan favorite. Everyone wants him to do well. He's like a hero of Brazil. Him having the home crowd, oh, most definitely but i still have my teammates next to me and that's <laughs> pretty much all i need and the avengers that, picked up thanos to, to come and support me i don't really fear anyone <laughs> if it's me and lucas and me or anyone i don't really care i'm just i'm just here to shoot people if it's just me and lucas in i feel real confident Bro. i would quero ganhar de todo mundo passar everyone's o like não consigo ter essa visão de, de camaradagem everyone's talking about lucas me dá assim tipo pra gente trocar ideia ser amigo e tudo mais mas acho que aqui no campeonato não tem como ter esse tipo de visão é o foco em ganhar de qualquer time que seja only someone had tectonic fuck what do you mean 258s? What? Still not quite confident enough to say Seminole are out of the conversation. The way in which they handily dealt with Amigos, um, mm -hmm. apart from the hard which was really close. And it is worth saying, again, we go back towards the Latin America Grand Finals, and Amigos almost reverse swept uh, Galarist. So we know that Amigos are a very competitive roster, we know they're a very like-minded roster, comparatively to Galarist. Again, no, that, that was without use. So there's a bit of an asterisk on that. Uh, but nonetheless, I think there is still competition in this one for, for Galarist. I don't want to say they are 100% going to win, but right now, man, dealing with Q9 like that, that is... That's bad. crazy. I mean, we said it in the, in the game, and mate, that's, that's different gravy. Yeah, it's definitely something different. I mean, they're now done for the day, <laughs> Gallers, having secured the first spot in the semifinals on day two of our mobile Masters, which means it's time for us to start talking about match number four and how that's going to go. Before we do that, though, it's time for a short break, so don't well, go anywhere you you're watching the Snapdragon Pro Series. Why is there breaks everywhere, bro? Be so for real. Chegando no Snapdragon Pro Series. Vamos lá. Ok, I'm not gonna lie, the trophy is so mid. The reason that. Criar muitas pessoas. Trophy is shit, not gonna lie. Pé no chão. E a gente vai fazer um belíssimo campeonato e representar muito bem nosso país. Gostei, eles vão representar muito bem. Mas the only one that thinks that it literally looks like a fucking like, dollar store silver cup. Aqui o enquadramento da nossa câmera. Tem algum time que vocês estão ansiosos para competir? Olha, hum, ah. a gente estava ansioso, a gente estava bastante ansioso para jogar contra a Godlike, pena que eles não Godlike. Pena que eles não puderam vir. Mas dentre esses que estão no outro grupo, a gente a gente vai jogar contra eles, a gente passar para a fase 2, pro pro oh. dia 2. Ah, I don't know, bro. É, tá Kings It's all goofy. Da Kings da Europa. Tá um pouquinho nervosinho, aquele nervosinho gostoso, né? Um nervosinho gostoso, mas na hora ali do game vai, vai passar, <risos> vai ficar tranquila, certamente. E tá gostoso o ambiente? Tá, a gente tá curtindo bastante, uma experiência nova pra, pra todo mundo. Eu não tenho ideia do que eles estão dizendo, mas por isso que dá aquela ansiedade, o um nervosismo, mas depois que tá acostumado assim, passa um tempinho, a gente vai relaxando aos poucos e vai criando intimidade com o clima. Boa sorte pra vocês, tem muito chão pela frente ainda, né? De Mobile Masters Snapdragon. É isso aí, pessoal. A gente falou aqui com os amigos. They, we told with amigos from Brazil. And let's check another rose, right? I think uh, the reason that Lucasin is made out to be the greatest player and one of the best players actually as of right now is definitely due to the only the thing you can like, get whatever in his hands and like Lucasin just needs to win some so tournaments. Small, That's all he needs to do, bro. As long as he wins some tournaments and then he certified the goat. Cause like he hasn't won any tournaments. That's the issue. Everything he does, and I think that's one of the reasons why he's able to do it. minutes. What to do and when to do it at the right time. 
Earls, give me drinks. I want to party, don't want to think. I want to do. How about you? What do you say? What is this music? Give me bottles, give me a buzz, give me the. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite goofy, cannot lie. I said, give me bottles. Wait, why Washi look like that? That don't look like Washi. Also, why are they so pale? They got whitewashed. Holy shit, they got whitewashed. It's like they're it's like they're in the Chinese comp. Jesus. I think some players tonight are ready to some interview. Let's go. Hi. How are you feeling? Let me ask for you. There is some player that you. I was gonna say, why is she asking in English? How are you feeling? Uh, they're coach. I was going to say, why is she asking in English? Oh, they like the they like the weather strong. there. So there is something that you feeling ooh, about <laughs> it. Yeah. What the fuck? Oh, I, I like it. How how how? Uh, what? How how how? What? Obligada. Obligada. Oh, good. What the fuck did he say? <laughs> I think it's. Oh. What's happening? No, we don't have this in the US. No. I'm gonna have a taste. I'm gonna it's taste the best now. one. It's good. Yes. Ma Ma what is Kit Kat? Yeah. Is Kit Kat? Is our first time eating it? Oh, first time eating Kit Kat. We love it. Hey, this is this is better. Way better than the regular one. <laughs> what? Thank what you is bro eating? Okay, perfect. Special Brazilian oh, Kit Kat, bro. What the fuck? I want some. Brazil? Brazil is really nice. Everyone's really nice. It's a little hot though. But it reminds me of the Philippines where I'm from. So yeah. And how are you feeling about the tournament? The tournament? You know, we're, we they don't give a fuck. They so don't I give a fuck. I'm pretty confident. But yeah, we'll see what happens. Oh, perfect. And did, did you prove the chocolate? Oh yeah, I absolutely approve it. 100%. I think it's the best one that yeah, we've had so far. Have another try. Have another try. Have another try. Have another try. This chocolate is like darker than the the regular. Oh. US has got nothing on this. Yeah. You guys do it better in Brazil. 100%. Oh, you see guys, you need to taste it, right? Taste good, right? They say US snacks are garbage. Yeah. And how do you feel in here about the tournament, about the media day? <laughs> what are you doing here on the media day? You know, for us, we're just trying to present ourselves the best that we can. We prepare ourselves the best that we can. And everybody here are our equals. We're just trying to be, you know, just have a good day in the tournament day. So. Oh, Very thank good. you. And about the photo shots? Uh, the photos are nice. Oh, They're nice. Awesome. So, everybody's ready for the tournament? Dude, Semino looks like a bunch of homeless idiots, bro. These are the people representing us. This is embarrassing. We are making some makeup <laughs> and with her style, so just check it. Oh, hello, everyone. Wait, they're getting their makeup done? Oh, period. Uh, better hide with more emotion and energy. more energy. So let's go. Hi. Oh, my God. We love the Garinas. I'm good. Thank you. She seems so fake. I don't think she seems fake. I think it's just that her English isn't fluent. So she's trying to like... She's trying to like... You know, make up for it with energy. Which I completely understand. When you don't speak a language fluently and you're a caster, it's chalked. I bet... Oh, wait. It's shut up. Shut up. Hi <laughs> What's your name? Shut up. <laughs> What's your name? Shut Dude. up. Oh. Is that Chloe? Come on. Hello. Oh, bros. Hola. My bro wearing so much concealer. Hello in your language. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Are you on a princess day? You know I want that, Garina. Sorry. Are you in a princess day? <laughs> Are you in a princess day? Okay, um, sorry about the the joke, but we are Brazilian. We are talking, yeah, just relaxing, yeah. because I think 
It's very hard Bro, I'd be so you. fucking embarrassed, I'm not gonna lie. It's very, yeah. it's very awesome, Ram. Yeah, I'm shy people. Oh, you're a little shy? Oh, there's no problem. What is your name? Uh, Skirt. Skirt? Yeah. And what are you thinking about your makeup? Uh, I can't see yet. Oh, <laughs> like, he's like blind. Together? Okay. Oh? Uh, it, lo it looks good. Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Nah, this Let is actually hilarious. Bro, I'm not what gonna lie. Feeling, what you if I'm getting my makeup yourself? done and uh, homegirl pulls up with these questions, I'd cry. Everyone's just talking, <laughs> okay, it's fun. Just fun? fun. Uh, it's like uh, Philippines. Oh, good. Uh, Philippines. Oh, thank you so much. This is so much. crazy. Thank Why are they all so awkward? They were not, they were so not PR trained. Let's find more players to interview. So, come on. Wait. No, bro, let's interview and make them feel awkward more and more, please. <laughs> Dude, that's so crazy. 18 minutes, you're lying. What the hell? Why are they all so awkward? I don't know. First, it was like... Like, chocolate. <coughs> See, did I miss any interviews? Oh, let's see the walkouts. I missed it. I fell asleep. Uma salva calorosa de palmas à equipe da Seminal versus Amigos. Period. Yo, she's so pretty. Holy fuck. Y'all notice that? Or just me? Like, I, I was like listening to what she was saying and then I really looked at her. I was like, damn, she's so pretty. All the Brazilian ladies are pretty. So like... I feel awkward and I'm Brazilian. <laughs> No, it's just because she it's just because her english isn't that great right so like it and then and then the player's english isn't that good so it's like super awkward um no idea what she said but yeah oh my god now imagine going to play cod mobile and you get your makeup done I think these pro player nerds have never dated a woman. Nah, it's not even that that it's it's just they've never been in the situation where they get interviewed, you know? Like I was like that when I first got my interview. When I first did a interview, I was fucking awkward. But I, I would like to think that I've gotten better, you know? It's like the more you do it, the better you get. So it's like they don't they're not in these land situations all the time. My God, no, no, I think, no, no. I think it's a 3 0. Nope. <laughs> Take 40 seconds for the rejects to try to make this rotation work and keep that lead. Is there any other interviews or something? Yep, that's true. FDX on your screen. Nah, that was funny down. as fuck, though. I mean, Let me Marshall. watch that shit again. My energy. Comes to how everyone. Fear that you. The tournament day, so. Are you everyone feeling? Wait, I want to watch the clove Are princess you? part. That was funny as shit. Your language. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Are you on a princess day? Uh, sorry. Are you in a princess oh. day? <laughs> nah. No. <laughs> okay. Um, he said, "Are you on a princess day?" Joke, but we are Brazilian, we are talking, yeah, just so relaxing. Yeah. Brazilian, we are talking, yeah, just so relaxing. <laughs> because I think... I'm gonna say that, bro. Anytime I'm not streaming, I'm having a princess day. Don't bother me. <laughs> I'm having princess day. First nobody night. nobody Aww. talk to me. Uh, it's fun. It's fun? Everyone's just talking. Okay, it's fun. Uh, just fun. fun. Uh, it's like uh, Philippines. Oh, you say hello in your language, bro. Goes hello. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you. So 
Let's That's so funny. More players to interview. So come on. Did I see this interview? Oh, I, I think it's. Yeah, I'm not gonna understand it. Fuck. Yo, Eduardo, translate. Translate. Okay, let me guess what they're saying. Um, are you excited for the opportunity that you got to play because you weren't supposed to be here? Are you confused, shaking? <laughs> I think translate directly. Yeah, the, the, the they oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm a guess he said I got that dog in me and I knew we were gonna play. Olha que beleza, gostei. E como é que tá sendo esse Media Day para vocês? I feel like I've seen her necklace somewhere. Ah, o Media Day a gente vai fazer agora. It's like this hella expensive necklace that looks just like hers. Mas a gente vai fazer o Media Day agora. Like a sneak thing. I don't know if it's that one, but I'm I'm fucking tweaking now. Elite Gaming. They start. Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, Monster Energy. Oh, period. Black screen. Oh, here. Oh my god. Oh my god, I was there. I was there, guys. I was there. No, she asked him what toothpaste he uses. Who the fuck is Wait, actually? Yeah, wolves! Long way. We are at the final stretch of day one of the Snapdragon Mobile Masters 2024 Call of Duty Mobile live at Sao Paulo, Brazil. I've never been to Brazil. They should have invited me. Be the first team to be eliminated out of the tournament. Maybe I wouldn't be sick. At our last two series. But enough of that painful thought because... It's like a misfortune for them and no one believes them. Damn. And stalwarts esports at the winner's match. Let's get it. And the victor takes a spot at the playoffs. What about this? Also an early out to prepare for the big one at the playoffs yep so it's just a matter of finding out which among these two teams seminal or stalwart esports will go in predictions the next stages of this tournament i don't even sound like oh, a motherfucker i'm I sick i'm so I excited break. to see this game because we have actually been talking Brazil? about this quite no, a lot no, no, no. because it's another east versus Arcs. west uh, game that's going I don't know to be what that means, but here, facts. Where we'll find out which one's going to be better. Is it going to be stalwart esports for the side of the east or Seminoles on the side of the west? It will not be looking good if stalwart esports fall prey into the hands of Seminole here because we just saw their last game up against the rejects and they had to go down to a map number five just to secure that victory. Now that's the second best team. Now they're going up against <clears throat> the best team in the North American region in Seminole, where obviously we saw. A team just dismantled Amigos on their opening match. A 3-0 absolute massacre down there. And uh, they got that momentum ready up to take the challenge head on up against All Wars Esports on this best of five. Yeah, definitely. So we'll have to see how it goes down. And, you know, um, it's going to be a matter of how what what maps are going to be chosen out what maps are going what are to be you sick of and your bullshit these players are going to make those adjustments when we had go into the game but right now we're gonna take a look at the head-to-head -head between these two how much teams. coughing yeah i'm drinking water right yeah man all what right guys got, again, hot take stalwart no, wins this in, wins this in the region well, itself, three one two America, three two looking at their past hats right i mean Seminole definitely had I think I don't know. These are really good teams, but I think Stalwart takes and, uh, it. Much, much lesser debts compared to STE with 27.21. Like I'm an A, but these Garena motherfuckers are a different breed. A bit of an edge up Seminole, okay, but, but what is this KD, bro? KD I mean, the is this average? Is it can't be average. A 42.82 app. Wait, how, what is this calculated? Overall average? Now we take a look at the lineup that we got prepared in Latam, everyone guys, says that Lucas is the best in the world. Do you agree? I think he just needs to win a tournament. Once he wins a big LAN tournament, he's undisputably the best player right now. But right now, in terms of skill, I think he is. 
Yep, these are going to be the players representing Seminoles in this match. We did see a couple. Of Why is Washi like squinting? Ago, um, I mean, like this. The Brazilian girls interviewing some other team in English. Media day of of the the teams. Funny and, oh. you know, they seem to just uh, want to. Why am I getting smoke around? <laughs> and, of course, uh, when it brings home the, cha the trophy. Dude, I swear they got whitewashed. They even get. Uh, get the prize money to kind their of. side but of course they have to go up they look pale the players on the side of stalwart before they do so and am i tweaking are going to be your players incendio irfan j fdx curd and clove representing stalwart esports yeah incendio said at the interview that they are one of the only two teams coming in and representing the eastern region at the snapdragon mobile masters 2024 and they want to make the most of it and become you know a big giant dominant force and obviously for Incendio, uh, he is the Video ideal lighting? that led Stalwarts Esports mm. to achieve three greener, greener regional champions. Okay, but lighting shouldn't make you like heading into the world white. champ. So <laughs> this team is tasty. capable in just pulling a lot of you know great. They got the K-pop treatment. In <laughs> to break the mental that that is not what FDX looks. Like. Wait, that's what FDX looks like. I guess I've never seen him before. Incendio, okay, so Earth and Jay, right? Gerd, Club. Yeah, everyone else I've seen before. And they kept taunting, right? Only up until the rejects managed to taunt back a bit there and just force that map number five. Who looks like Rebolo? Fox? Yeah, definitely. We'll have to see Fox. how this one plays out. I mean, you know, Stalwart Esports, they're relatively new to the scene. Um, The organization is new to the Call of Duty mobile scene, but these players are... Oh, yeah, we know that for sure. Players. They have a lot, of, um, <laughs> a lot of achievements under their belt, and they are here to uh, try and prove that they deserve to be in this tournament and of course that east um they're going to be representing east in this tournament as well yeah i can agree more with that right but once again a big shout out to our amazing sponsor right our presenting partner samsung galaxy providing devices with game changing combination of speed power mobile and ai victory can be yours with the samsung galaxy s24 ultra powered by the new snapdragon 8 gen 3 4 galaxy graphics render in real time with ray tracing for hyper realistic shadows and reflection a bigger vapor chamber keeps it nice and cool for a smooth gaming experience Yep, and it also has all the battery and the brightest adaptive mobile display. It comes with new Galaxy AI features and an epic mobile gaming experience. So, don't okay. forget to check out the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra to play like the pros that you see here in this tournament. Yo, I, I want to see more of the highlights that we're gonna see from FDX, right? That guy can just clutch it with the Samsung galaxy s24 ultra and I, I want to see more of these attacks to go through from seminal as well right being the number one team they got the la number one team in the NA, na they really have to live up to that hype and uh, unfortunately though tectonic won't be able to join us on this competition but they do add in cartels that will provide them that substantial approach and comes to that slaying power right one thing for sure there's going to be two filipinos on each of these squads so i'm gonna oh say oh my god it will go the down Filipinos heavier. are goaded. It might just be another game. Oh yeah, it's Ban and Washi. Cooked up between these two teams. Yeah, I mean, you know, with Filipinos being on both teams, I mean, if Seminal wins, they still have two players from the East. So I guess it works either way. <laughs> but you know, we'll have to. But either you know, we still want to find out which among these teams are the better one. And of course, they want to fight for their spot into the playoffs. Yeah, I can't agree with more with that, right? I mean. Uh... There's just a lot more to unravel here, right? We got two more series that will be up ahead, two more, and one that will be coming right up next. This will be between your boys from um, Seminole and Stalwarts Esports, but on Group A, just... Oh, it's going to be Q9 against Galori. What just happened? We just saw King's Clan get eliminated at the lower bracket, being the first team to go out of the tournament, with Anko Gaming going in for that 3-0. and zero. The third best team in Latam able to take away the number one team in EU speaks a lot on how competitive the Latin American region is. But all the more, Kenju Club and Galoris will be playing right up next. And that right there is obviously interesting. Now we take a look at Group B and see what happens up next, right? Because we just see ourselves another amazing battle for the first two matches of the opening with Samuel taking down Amigos, then Star Wars Esports taking that 3-2 challenge up against the rejects we got two games 
coming up ahead, right? Seminal and Star Wars Esports at the upper bracket three. Yo, what if I, I want Seminal right to now. lose that they play and the rejects? Bracket, amigos, and the rejects. Again, no one has to go. I need to see that happen. Here today, Sabi. Yep, and guys, just a recap, guys. If you want to see the match between Amigos and the Rejects, go ahead over to Stream A. But if you want to see Seminal and Stalwart Esports, then stick on over here at Stream B because we'll be covering that as soon as the yeah, match. This is the better starts. matchup. Q nine's gonna be in the start, I want <clears> to <throat> get your opinions on the game. Do you think Seminal has a good chance here, or will it be Stalwart Esports dominating, or will it be a close match between the two? As time in Seminole has more than a, a huge chance, right? I mean, they managed to just take away a great battle up against Amigos, and with Star Wars Esports struggling up against the Rejects, <laughs> obviously Seminole might have a great favor in there. Now, let's take a look at the, the, the land stage and see what we got right there. Semifinalista que vai para os playoffs agora aqui nesse palco. Teremos então duas equipes. Which one are we watching? Seminole against Stalwart. Vou chamar então aqui ao palco. Quero saber se vocês estão preparados para receber mais brasileiros por aqui. Com vocês a equipe da Amigos versus a equipe da The Rejects. Wait, what? Amigos against Rejects? Oh, wait, yeah. That makes sense, I'm thinking. Norte-Americanas que lutam para se manter na competição. Esse jogo aqui é valendo a vida. Quem vencer vai jogar o próximo confronto The Sider e quem perder está fora. Volta para casa. E do outro lado teremos a equipe da Seminal versus Stalwart. Pode vir pra cá! Simplesmente a equipe campeã do qualificatório norte-americano versus a campeã da região do APAC. Duas equipes de peso. E agora vão buscar a classificação para os playoffs. Quem vencer nesse segundo confronto vai direto para os playoffs. E quem perder não tá fora ainda. Vai jogar o decide. Have you had any topo lately? Yeah. Entendido? Os meninos estão posicionados. Two weeks ago. De volta para nossa mesa de análise. Contigo, Brenda. Now we are we are all no. set. If you guys want to see the rejects go up against amigos, gotta watch stream A. But we are focusing on stream B. That means we are gonna have to cover. The number one team in the North American region in Seminole as they go up against the awards esports. Amigo is gonna lose. This grueling best of five series winner takes this spot at the playoffs and an early out in today's tournament. With Stalwart, Stalwart is uh, like a uh, shut up, yep, uh, FDX, you know, we're Clove. Just talking about how seminal they are a known team here they are very established we've seen them time and time in major tournaments but the same thing goes for the players in stalwart mm -hmm. esports now the organization stalwart esports is new to the call of duty mobile scene but the players that are that composes this team that makes up this team they are not new at all and we've seen some of them play in worlds we've seen them play in major tournaments time and time again and they're always able to prove themselves but this roster is new so they are going through some adjustments here but it doesn't. But I think they do still chance of uh, stand a very good chance uh, up against the players on Seminole. It's going to be quite hard, especially if the maps will be favoring the team for Seminole, right? Because obviously we saw tons of weakness when so we saw the, the players of Stalwart Esports go up against the Rejects when they're playing at their control, especially that standoff where they got uh, obliterated three and <laughs> one. And at the hard point takeoff, Rivalo had to put up 53 kills in order for the rejects to force a map number five at that note. And so I, I, I feel like if we do want to see the Stalwart Esports team rise to the occasion, they need to tighten up their control because that's where we almost started to see that reverse sweep in action for the rejects. And for Seminole, <sighs> this is an even better squad compared to the last time the, the last team that they met, right? So 
you're gonna need more than 110 percent just to be able to get along with the talents that comprise the you use earphone and headphones Oh, yeah, they definitely they need to make a one is for in game, one is for like movement, but white they noise also and have to mic. be able to adjust on the go on the fly <sighs> during the game. They need to be able to communicate with one another and make those changes that are needed to keep up with the gameplay of Seminole. Now, Seminole, on the other hand, um, you were already saying that they are likely to be the ones with the advantage here, um, just because of how much knowledge, how much, um, how much they've they've experienced already so far and they definitely have a lot of the strategies uh lined up for this tournament mm. specifically to beat out the rest of the competition but i do think you're also right when you said that it's all going to go down to the maps that are chosen which hopefully we'll find out soon because that is going to determine which among these teams are going to have an easier time in the game and there's a great tendency for star Wars esports to just ban the enemy's uh, strength rather than their own weakness. So there's a high chance that the Tisha cannot be brought out here by Seminole, uh, oh. SND map where they really love to play the most when Brock, they were playing at the Snapdragon Pro Series Season 4. And uh, yeah, I think Arsenal needs to get out of the way. <laughs> Especially at the hard point, knowing that the dominance we just saw from Star Wars Esports when they're going up against the rejects at the opening match was just kind of too big rather than the skill gap. The right. map rotation was just too timely there and was just on point for the squad of the team. So, of course, we take a look at our match results and also our match predictions here and taking a look at the, the games and the results, wow. man, 50%. That's how divided our community is at our Twitch chat. So don't forget to make sure to cast your votes every time we have something going on. I mean, uh, what to say? I, I feel like this is as... Uh, middle as it can get yeah i mean you know paul's 50 50 uh us casters we're 50 50 as well and so it's <laughs> down to the players to decide which among them is going to come out on top but the one thing's for sure we are in for a really really close game if these two teams are able to put up um the expectations of the viewers or the expectations that the supporters have for each of these teams so Kali, you know, since we are still waiting here, I want to go through these teams with you. Seminal, let's start with them first. Who should we watch out for? Well, for of course, has to be Vague here. This guy can just create tons of plays for the team. And uh, obviously, is a very insane close range specialist, right? So, rocking that SMG, he'll be playing great. But now, let's take a look at our maps. It will be defined. This is the session never ends. Up map Whoa. number one. Map two, we're heading into Express. Take off. And map three, we're going to Crossroads. Strike oh shit, SND meltdown. Oh my distance. god, oh my god. Arsenal flashbacks, and flashbacks. Played respectively, and you can see that uh, Seminole will Why are you looking at the me? At <laughs> the camera like that. A map, especially at this hard point. It's funny. Where Stalwart Esports lost up against Rejects, right? So this is going to be them playing to their enemy's weakness rather than their own strength. But again, it is an understatement <laughs> because we know Seminole, they love to play their long range in there as too. Yeah, they definitely are going to have quite an in uh, quite an interesting match here in takeoff considering that stalwart esports loss. Um, I'm not quite sure if we have any data of uh seminoles playing in takeoff but they are definitely the type of team that would really They're work well start. with the characteristics found in takeoff allowing them to rack up come on now more points and hopefully get that rotation down and dealt with when it's needed but of course uh, after that it's going to be search and destroy and express and it's just going to be a sm sniper's match once again there to see which among them is going to come out on top which among the snipers are going to be able to get those opening picks of first it's also a very wise we go. choice for Star Wars Sports to ban out the Tunisia SND, where we saw Seminole just Wait, no, we didn't. destroy Amigo 7 and 4 in the opening match, and also have been the map that they've been playing so so much in the Snapdragon Pro Series Season 4. So that definitely speaks a lot on how much VOD reviews that the team have been preparing, all for them to have a higher odds of winning the map here so far. Now, again, I think it will have to go down to whoever will take that control, right? I, I think that this takeoff is going to be very close, but I feel like it is going to be a map pick for Samuel. What do you think? 
big off. Mm, and that's that's really yeah. Hard, I think Seminole wins. I, I have to agree. With Actually, you. it's I a it's AR map. Seminole winning out this one. Uh, I think Star Wars course, wins you know, this. Anything can happen. Um, it seems that we are having some lobby issues, so players are just reconnecting. But hopefully, that's solved soon, so that we can finally see the match go down and take place here. And where we'll find out, you know, the answers to our questions right now. We are trying to guess which among <laughs> these teams are gonna make it out, but only they can really decide that. Yeah, I mean, that's how what a match happens. That's, how, that's, that's really like the definition of a match, right? Always a winner, always a loser. And for Seminole, you know, last time I saw them play at Majors was back in 2023 COD M World Champs where they got taken down by Godlike at <laughs> the playoffs. In a way where they got sweep 7-0, and zero, right? That is a painful memory for them. But one thing for sure, this team have been grinding, trying to work their way up and trying to redeem back the title of being the champion and just giving and putting that trophy back to the NA's throne. But, you know, some of these teams that is coming in from the East and uh, a newly formed team in Galoris with Lucasin in there is just, you know, trying to mess up their odds a little bit here. But one thing for sure, the Seminole squad is ready to get to the battle right now. Yeah, I think I think everyone's ready to start the match right now. Hopefully, um, the connection issues that we're having solve soon. And of course, you know they are definitely taking their time to solve this because we don't want to start a match with an unfair advantage to one team or an unfair disadvantage to the other. So they're just making sure that the game is working properly <laughs> before we see exactly how this is going to go down. Yeah, most definitely. And uh, before we hop into this hardpoint takeoff, right? I mean, Seminole did not play this map whatsoever in today's opening match up against Amigos. But Stalwart Esports did play it up against Rejax and they lost 149 to 250. And uh, yeah, Seminole looking to try to start off the game with a high odds of winning. Here we go. Seminole Stalwart Esports winners match. Map number one, hardpoint takeoff. It will be Step Stalwart Esports that will be starting oh, shit. on. The bad side, so they gotta have to fight for that flip of that spawn just to have the P2 in their control. And you can already tell that this game is gonna be a very, very close one because it's only the first hill, and yet it's constantly being contested. But look at this FDX with a huge three piece here, going to open up the area, but Ban does the same thing and brings it right back into the clutches of Seminole. And it's just a back and forth between these two teams. But of course, Ooh. Seminole putting a little bit of a lead here, ever so slightly over Stalwart Esports. They're going to try to maintain that as we oh start my God, our rotation into P number two. Yeah, shout out again one of the better slayers down there that Stalwart Esports can provide to you. And uh, yeah, he's going to be in charge of just taking the damage up close along with Clove, who was absolutely frying when they went up against the rejects a little bit earlier on their opening match. P1 is going to expire. We're heading on to new early rotation. Goes to Seminole. That will be your boy Marshy holding down the anchor spawn. Hardpoint opening up, and we got. A flip of spawns happening with Incendo trying to flip that over to carry at Star Wars Esports. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a bloodbath as we open up P2. Yep, definitely going to be a very, very interesting um, hill here. We are going to see the players on the side of Stalwart Esports holding it down for the first couple of seconds. And it looks like they have the scaffoldings as well as the entrances blocked off. And as long as they're, able to actually this, cooks. they're going to be able to Apparently, everyone's using it. The, uh, out of the hill here. I'm about and to start using Odin. What is this? Now, look at this. It is neck and neck with one another. Only a difference of six points between the teams and Seminole. They are trying to contest into the hill, but they don't take it they're not able to get it from stalwart esports just yet and stalwart catches up yeah but Seminole will be getting uh, themselves back inside a point while also trying to maintain a hardpoint rotation marshy number one holding down generators as there's only going to be a few more points in this crap time on p2 <laughs> this is where you want to take most of your attention right now gotta secure that spawn also securing the early level gunfights which marshy does quit. so well Competitive. And Mount Hill is going to be on the line here with Seminole on early on rotation. This first of the gunfights, they will be able oh, to choked. win. And Star Wars Esports spawning on only one side needs to get that brick before Seminole tries to oh, pull away with the lead. 
yeah definitely they can't let it go away from them too far they have to be able to play catch up as soon as possible and right now we can see marshy pulling out the uh, the sparrow but unfortunately doesn't get that many kills or use out of it ban that says what was the only so good clear out the area going to be successful in doing so allowing seminal to get the hill to their side now they go into that 70 point area making a double what stalwart wow. is at right now and they are looking to maintain it but look at marshy just popping off right now can kill after kill after kill maintaining this hill all alone while the rest of the team start the rotation yeah, but the thing here is, FDX, they just started, they just started to rotate on the final 20 seconds, giving away so much time for Semin on that P3. Now they're gonna have to have a big one here, but Washi and Marshy just team roll the competition, scared, we cannot win that gunfight. And they will be flushed away from the point. We got two operators invested, a war machine going to be coming from cartels, and that will read off Stalwart Esports for now. Getting inside a control <laughs> building in this B4. Wait, Seminole is kind of clapping him. And Stalwart Esports, despite having the spawns in their favor, cannot get inside the point. The hold for Seminole is too strong. I don't think there's necessarily a better spawn on this hill. It's just who gets in the hill first. Every single entrance, every power position to keep the players out of that hill. But Stalwart Esports right now, they're going to go for a split push here. Unfortunately, it's not going to be successful. And Seminole holds down the hill continuously, going on to that 100 point mark already. And finally, we see Stalwart Esports break in for just a second before they oh. lose it right back to the hands of Seminole. Yeah, ban on the four piece here, by the way. And yeah, the first hardpoint rotation will be won over by Seminal. And Stalwart just struggling on this hardpoint takeoff. Red cannot get anything within their control. And the spawns, again, all of these streaks has been invested up pretty nicely. That will give info for Seminal to spot down where exactly Stalwart Esports is going to be spawning from. For now, they will be staying inside of that point. One thing for sure. Seminole Washi has already got that second floor in control. That will be the high ground that they need to flush away Stalwart inside of the hill. And now we're going to see both of these teams trying to fight for that first hill in the center of the, hill of the map. You know, this one's always a scrappy one, always hard to capture. But we saw in the early half of the game that Seminole has a, quite a good strategy to hold down this hill to at least rack up a couple more points over their opponents. But look at this, stalwart esports, they are falling behind about the one third of what Seminole has right now and i'm not quite sure if they're going to be able to play catch up at this point considering that's over a hundred point gap right now i mean uh i, I saw a hundred point lead right that we got for Seminole. but the more interesting thing here for Seminole is that uh, i just uh, love out slaying their uh, i think we saw them play with the i take it back Seminole's gonna one, win right? the what the fuck is this uh, being a menace there, not letting Stalwart Esports get too much time inside of that P1. As we head into P2 right now, shut up. We'll be trying to play in that flank. Washi still wins that gunfight, even despite going on the reload action. So, this is just total masterclass that we're seeing for Seminole as they try to push this team to the edge. Yep. They are definitely pushing the limit right now, but look at this, Marshy has a sparrow at hand, trying to go on the search for the players of SCE, but not able to find anyone yet. The investment might just go to waste, finally able to secure a kill right before it expires. But nonetheless, they remain on top. They have the points on their side and they are able to get closer and closer towards that 200 point mark without even allowing Stalwart to get close to the 100 point mark. Now, so far, Seminole, they are dominating by a lot. Uh, this is uh, the, the quality that we are expecting Seminole to have, right? And they're totally living up to the hype. There's a reason why they were able to 3-0 Amigos on the opening match and why they are the number one, re number one team in the North American region. This dominance up against the Star Wars Esports <laughs> one, where we consider to be the Avengers of uh, the, the East, Avengers, right? It's just getting bodied at this hard point takeoff. And it's not just one player doing the work here for Seminole, right? Everybody is sharing the load of offense. And Vague providing that initial output with 35. Break coming through now for Scared as he finds himself at two P's. One push coming from the front and shot up. Even despite the flood, cannot get inside. 
Look at this, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, you know, Seminoles and Stalwart, if you look at the number of kills that they have, um, it's not quite different. There's only about a 10 point gap between each player, but it's really in those objective plays and those rotations and timing that there's a huge, huge difference between the players and Seminole. They are 250, uh, they're 25 points Dude, that's away wild. from getting to that 250 point mark. Look at that lead, and bro. it looks like they are going to try to close it up now. Cartel is trying to go in for a solo push, but unfortunately, gets knocked down by FBX and they are trying to hold down the hill but will it be enough looks like Vague's going to be able to break into the hill and occupy the space 20 points away from the win. Yo, yo, Seminole can just end it here right now. Salwart Esports spawning on the Medicare Center. Cardos brings out the War Machine. It's just 10 more points for the win. And they're going to be able to stop the second wave of gunfight. Flank going to happen here. Salwart Esports just try to contest inside the hill and prevent Seminole from taking any more. But that will come to an end as Seminole Dude, takes map number one at the winner's smoke. match. Taking it to a 250. And I'm just kidding. I had no doubts in the ending goats. Stalwart Esports. A hundred point club membership access. You know, it's not looking good for Stalwart Esports at all. I mean, not even close to that hundred point mark. They're not really able to put up too much damage on to the players of Seminole. It's not looking like they're going to be able to uh, maybe even win a couple maps to their side but i think you know their best chance in doing so would probably be in search and destroy it's a change of pace change of game mode and a little bit of a different uh gameplay in this type of game mode so they have to be able to use that to their advantage and hopefully win out that uh, search and destroy match later on but looking at the statistics right now look at the difference between the players absolutely crazy yeah, I mean, most of the players from Star Wars just went negative, right? Seminole. Yeah, they got bopped. Everybody went positive, and uh, this dominance right here <laughs> was not because of the ARs, right? Yes, I, I mean, Ban definitely showed up with 35 kills in there, but you gotta highlight the they way play they shot the map. Yeah, it facts. down. If God, like, Wars we're there. Esports up close. They were not using I those SMGs, it. they were yeah. using the r oh, Seminole to dismantle those players and vague. Taking yeah. the highest impact on the team with 39 kills and 22 deaths. A minute and Wait, let me check the rejects game. On... Oh shit. Oh, rejects won. W. Their quality, their quality as well as you said in ND almost getting to the 50 kills more that's close now job by all of them and i would say on the top of that really the usage of the operators was almost perfect mm -hmm. by rejects not allowing amigos to breathe and i see many Mio's occasions tweet, amigos no. lost these special abilities very fastly so that was not interesting for them let's see how they're gonna get ready for map number two as i don't know any confident zeus looking at the audience and we're gonna see some of the best moments beginning with a very even start maybe which then uh, became more to the hands of rejects yeah, and this is much more what we expect out of rejects here on arsenal comparatively to what we saw earlier on versus still what on this very map made combination in which still what put them i away like destroying them in world championship there they're the best there where uh, i guess they just took away some crucial I about the best because uh wolves won but they uh definitely cut seminal we got into the second set that's where it really started to feel like rejects managed to walk away with the game somewhat this was that big hard point where rejects got pretty much every single second away from amigos then we moved to the rotation amigos also got contested over there and it just started to feel like again rejects were taking more time away from every single hard point they got control of than amigos did and you did mention yeah they're not the best second best the operator utilization from rejects did feel just slightly <laughs> better than what we saw from Amigos. And I questioned the Gravity Vortex gun. I was like, this is something we don't often see. Is it the best? Yeah, we'll pull out, out the Gravity Vortex. Using it. Honestly, to be fair, pretty good operator usage. Now, it's looking like um, having this information is a huge... Yeah, all that trash talk from Stalwart. Just to get poo pooed on. It's looking like... Um, We'll have to wait till that search and destroy match. I'm excited to see how it will go huh. down. A couple highlights right now from the hardpoint match. And as you can see, it's just the investments of those operator skills that really are timed perfectly for the side of Seminoles. Yeah, that I gotta agree off, right? Because every time Star Wars tried to take a hit, they're obviously shot down either by a war machine or an equalizer. And that was the detriment there, right? That 
that's what separated uh, the Seminole squad in terms of the gunfights up against Stalwart who were just trying to find themselves those early rotations but even that wasn't successful because they always got broken up by Seminole either through a multi-platform push or through their operator skills right so map number one will be going in the hands of Seminole right up next we got Express as our next map going to be long range this is where you want your snipers to be that bigger factor right FDX we already know is able to clutch things up <laughs> against rejects earlier but how well is he going to be able to pair up up against the sniper of Seminole in Washi who has been one of the the best snipers in the world yeah that's a huge question to be answered it's going to be down to how well they're able to maximize those angles and of course the support of the rest of their team because they can't play it solo i mean if they are faced with a close range engagement they have to have some sort of backup here um to help them out in that situation but we can't really predict what will happen here so we'll have to wait and see but kali I want to know, do you think there's an opportunity to go overtime in this game? Uh, there there has to be uh, some way uh, for them wouldn't be to surprised be able go, to get themselves agree. to force overtime, right? I mean, Stalwart Esports, at least under SNDs, they know how to play. It's crappy. It had to force 18 rounds on Meltdown up against Rejects and 15 rounds on Firing Range Search and Destroy. And uh, yeah, I feel like on this Express map, might just gonna end up looking at that way, right? With how incredibly versatile and adept this team is in overcoming those 2v4s, those number seats advantage. And, you know, we are really excited to see the game. So we are going straight into it and Clove opening it up with a huge, huge two piece here and bringing the players on the side <laughs> of Seminole down to two players left. Numbers advantage in favor of Solward Esports. Yeah, already off the bat, that's uh, going to be nice place from Clove getting those hit on the lockers and now they try to hit them with the rotate over towards B. Now this will be favoring cartels a bit because once it's able to line up all one shot with that R9, he might just be able to do get another one right after that, right? But it's great that Insane will provide an oversight for the team. Looks like they really want to put that bomb down. They got their clearance already. A 2v4. We are going to see a skirt attempting to go in for the plant right now. Oh. Cartel's too far. Oh, but look I didn't at even that. see what happened. Just as the bomb was going to be planted, Cartel's able to... One of the players on the side of Seminole's going to be able to get that shot landed. And it looks like Cartel's going to be right around the corner. Doesn't spot Clove. And it oh, looks good like shot holding hands. going to go through. Washi last one v two alive on the side of Seminoles. Nowhere to be found. Plant going to um. go through perfectly. Incendio pulls out the tundra, takes him down, and there you have it. The next, the first round going to the side of Stalwart Esports. Yeah, numbers advantage was just played there very well by Stalwart Esports. They immediately took three players down in the first 15 seconds of the lockers. Then right oh, when trade. they saw that there are going to be players rotating over at the. The B side, they immediately went in there, cleared it off, and just put that bomb down. But it was very close. Washi could have had that if Cartels came in and just put the player planting that bomb to one end first. But that's the explosion. Now we're going huh? to see. Ooh, a kill after kill. What do you mean, in cop? It happens we're often. We're going to have four players left on each of these teams. Heavy stacked on the A side. Incendio going to attempt to plant, but the timing is not in his favor. Veil takes him down. Skirt goes in for the trade. And now. It's a 3v3 situation. Uh, Cartels off the back with an R9. Oh boy, he can get a big sucker punch in here, but Scare will be able to sleep him out. Cartels out, 3v2. Bomb needs to be picked up. That's being safeguarded by Marshy right now on the trains. Also got Ban in there on the long range. FTX already spots him. FTX here with a sniper. Trying to peek out, not going to be able to find anyone yet, but Marshy keeping the silence. Th two people peek out, he gets taken down, but the trade comes right in time for him to secure a kill. We and we are now going to be down to a 2v1 situation ban. Last player alive here goes in at the perfect time to get that kill to his side. Smokes to cover him up wow. and secures the last oh, nice double. Well. There you have it. A one and one standing between these two teams. They even up the board. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ban saw that way 
way back to the way back to the, to the future, right? I mean, uh, he was just prepared to take it over and just utilize that head glitch at the A site just to provide him that cover. And that's the end of Just able to get that covered footprints and just managed to get the 1v2. They Shit, are no balls. swinging by at the second floor very fast here. Yo, they're pushed There's up. No information, Football. though. Yeah, no information just yet, no contact between the players and they are just waiting for where exactly the players on the side of Stalwart Esports are going to head towards. Looks like FDX gets spotted, but but Skur is going to be able to get that bomb Ooh, big kill. planted right on the kills. side. Of Washi on the oh my god, Not okay, Marshy. Spot them out. Marshy, huge, huge play with uh, the pistol. He's going to be able to knock down one player. 3v3 situation once again. 25 seconds before the clock expires and the bomb det detonates and Marshy is wrapping his way around the back card tells us not fat any members in Sendio pull the trigger he will not get spotted at the moment he needs to play it safe takes the guy around the back it's a 1v1 situation it's a race to the bomb side cartels decides to defuse the bomb but instead you will be there in time to take an elimination it's not over yet two and one now on the round scoreboard Damn. Oof, this is a close match. I mean, these two teams, they just keep going back and forth between each other. And even in the rounds individually, it's just such a close round every single time. Now, let's see which among them is going to be able to come up with a strategy first to make a little bit of gap between one another. It looks like Clove's going to get that open and kill, but Washi gets taken down as well. And it looks like Seminal is going to have a huge Disadvantage when it comes to the numbers here. Bomb going to be down at the B site. It's a 3v4 situation right now. Seminal, I guess they they, they want to take this in two ways. Send out band to push out the mid on the mid map while also having number four in blue and vague, along with cartels mid up along with you on this mid map as well. Shut up, needs to survive here. Yep, definitely needs to survive, and he does. He gets a kill. FDX gets a one, two, and there, <coughs> Stalwart Esports. They have the lead now. Three points. Not and looking Seminole good. Stuck at one. Or Seminole. This is their opportunity to pull away. They just need to continue being consistent like they are right now, winning round after round and playing for those trades just as they were. I'm not sure the idea there for Seminole why they did decided to stack that mid map if they were given the chance to have a multi-angle platform push at the arrivals and departure. Yes, tiny lapses on that. Definitely creates all those difference. Cartel spots the guy. Cast the first blood, converted. Shot up, eliminated now. A 4v5 situation. Still in a position to make a play here, but Incendio shuts him down. Yep, seems like we're gonna have a 1v3 situation here. Marshy. Oh, he hears that sound of the bomb nearby. Does he wanna make that push? Yes, he does, but Incendo was able to cut him off. Four points to the side of Stalwart Esports now, and they are closer and closer towards that win for search and destroy now i'm not quite sure what's happening to seminal but they're struggling to win their gunfights here and this is the opportunity for stalwart esports to actually push for a game they're pushing and they don't have a shot for this map we'll see uh, this map is very weird Ooh, looks like marsh is going to be getting that opening pick but gets traded off as well and it's going to be four <clears> before <throat> here with most of the players on the side of <laughs> seminal stack on towards that b site waiting for more information on where stalwart esports is headed towards uh seminal's just giving away the a side open wide open and they're looking to just filter out the the, the rotation from stalwart to come from that side of the map but both teams just waiting around with each other but you see number five in two and for stalwart esports just trying to take some more information by covering more grounds all the way to ticketing and they are sending down FDX way behind enemy lines this time on an off angle just to get some of those players anticipated but little did they know Washi and Cartels are already around the flank Big flank? Oh, they saw him These players are going to be a huge, huge advantage if they're able to land their shards Cartel is going to be able to get one 
but unfortunately washi Ooh. does go down third oh. takes one down the trade um, through dude st is looking good on s and d bro and that is another round to the side of stall is s and d is just like their weakest game mode points and we have the switch of sides now stalwart esports going to be the defending team while seminal is forced to go onto the attacking side but two points away from winning it's going to be stalwart esports with the lead it can't be too easy though because now we switch the sides right the attackers especially in the first half had so much advantage as they were able to flood most of the points right but one thing for sure those first blocks definitely favored stalwart in the first half this time starting on the second half banned it's an elimination along with cartels to open up the b site and yeah they have created already so much pace here they can put that bomb down and force ste to make that rotation here play for that retake it's going to be a quick quick round and there and the players on the side of seminoles finally getting another score to their side now i'm not quite sure if they were really planning for it to go down like that but luckily enough they're still able to secure it at that point and hopefully that breaks the momentum of stalwart esports giving them an opportunity to open up their chances of getting another yet again another round to their side but the smokes going to go through right now all over that a side the players of seminal rush in to try and hold down the area yeah shut up cannot get that rotation early Washu was able to intercept him bomb is going to be down now Cartels with the help of that smoke will be able to survive, but Incendio pushing out. He is too aggressive with Tab, but still maintaining his life out there. Even despite having a sniper and only a pistol in hand, he's able to make that play for his team. Get that first blood traded. 30 seconds left. Clove wants to get in the locker. Oh, shit. Down with no pun intended. It is a 3v2, though. Oh. 3v2, 1v2 situation now as Band is going to be the last and final player. Get spotted by yeah. MDX, but the shots don't connect. And Clove ends the life of Band here as we get the easy uh, defuse. A lot of time to spare and Stalwart Lots Esports now at match yet. point, Ready trying up. to push for that game number four. Yeah, definitely interesting here because uh, we were kind of expecting an overtime to happen, right? They're but yeah, getting so completely the other way around with the dominance that we're seeing from Star Wars. Even despite <laughs> seeing some of the first bloods to favor Seminole, they could not really convert it into round wins, which has uh, proven difficult for them to secure any rounds here at all. Because again, you, you already had that numbers advantage, just could not close out that round, right? Such a big miss for them there. Because also you can command Star Wars Esport because of how mentally resilient they have been ever since they matched up with Ejex at the opening match. Yeah, definitely. And oh, well, we'll have to see how Star Wars Esports plays this one out because there's a lot of things riding on it. And it seems that they just have to try and gather as much information as possible they've left fdx all alone to defend that a site while the rest of them hold down yeah, the they got first blood too just to gather information and of course backup will go there to support whichever site needs it the most but on the side of seminal you can see they are trying to perhaps distract or confuse the players on the side of stalwart esports as they go in for a split on both a side and b side oh that's a good name in the open areas making sure to not be too obvious to the players no on way the side of stalwart oh my esports. god imagine yeah multi-angle push here made by seminal by the way they got the arrivals and departures locked down uh, this player is currently caught in that mid map we'll have to survive Damn. but ftx just lit in there too fast that was very smooth to get that two working Marshy shot down and we got map two taken by Star Wars Esports. That was very fast, if you ask me. There was not much tension happening in this map number two. That was yeah, crazy. Aside from that, you know, it, it's whispering. also the fact that I'm sick. these players they love to rush, they love to go in for the action, not really taking. Wow, what a game! The time, but Let me see. I think the other one should be going on. So. Yeah. Oh shit, Amigos is winning? What the fuck? He finds some value to kill him towards Zeus, but <laughs> nonetheless, it's difficult for Valak popping his head up from the bomb plot. Shots into towards one. Is he just enough to make the push out? Is he listening to some good timing, or is he being super cautious here? I think he thought about it for a moment there. Still looking for the timing, decides to go back towards the bomb. Spooker so and GTO, they're there. Yeah, they're watching this door. They're watching for some kind of egregious push towards it. There's the double charge coming through. Rabalo gets the better of both players. He snaps. Dude, NA is terrible SD. Yeah. Dude, where is he going? Oh my what the god, fuck? that's such a great play. 
What? Well, he occupied the right position in that uh, moment. Being at the train, Where's bro alone, going? it's a uh, very close space, so he's got a chance of looking uh, to all the potential entry points. And again, Amigos <laughs> are letting this one, you know, skip away from their fingers. That's just unbelievable. And that comes to show the quality of the American players as well. As we see now, the next <laughs> round rolling on and Illusion trying to aim for the tower. You can see that there's a VGX player over there. It's Jess. He's at this very privileged spot to try to have a broader view over the map. And Illusion is not satisfied. He's gonna try to take him down there. It's like, hey, hey, mate, get down. We need you on the ground. I need to face you face by face. Such a great work on both sides. Such a, an even match so far, Brody. Rejects still kind of look stunted as to how to approach Amigos more often than not yep. on these offensive rounds. But. Yeah, I don't even know why NA is bad at S and D. Like, just found the perfect route in from behind. He's being watched by illusion. Though. Seminoles Satinside. just fucking not Seminoles. Saying, Sentinels. Me, just trailer. Yeah, one whatever one recent now tournament. To a bomb so why are we buns? Now down to a two versus <laughs> three. You gotta be careful about this one if you're Jez. He is playing some aggressive gunfights. Because they don't kill, practice it. Why? He's already why? In this round looking for a one v two. Maybe because I'm a fucking S and D and like no life, but I love playing search. Vibe Love it more than ranked SD. SD ranked is garbage. Follow up on his uh, first pick, I would say, coming from the tower down to the ground, but alive, standing up and facing the Brazilians. And now we're gonna this is a sure round, right? No shadows. way. Try to play this one alone. It's very. It's very oh my god, bro, it's trolling. To take Blur again. We're gonna see now he's gonna try to. All their pushes and plays are always the same. Oh, period. We'll see that Amigos fall to a very strong point on the <sighs> of Ajax, uh, Brody, I would say, which is. There's the no creativity, so it's readable. Fake it till you make it, I guess. On multiple places at the you same just time. keep pushing till it works. It's gonna work one of these days. Yeah, again, it's Rejects. It's a roster that when they're well put together, they can really start to get themselves some momentum in these games. Ooh, big kills, big Blur. kills. Oh my goodness me, Blur is Blur. on one at the moment. That is a double right off the rip here. Amigos wow. thought they could entry in towards Wood. Big and kills. Rejected. Now Jez starting to work up that momentum for the kill versus GTO as well. Amigos have been fully ousted from A. Out you go, you've got your eviction notice. See ya. Never again. And now Rejects is playing, playing Picks or Rush. Honestly, I don't mind playing Picks on this map though. Rejects momentum. Carried away or carried out if your enemies are pushing you like that, bro, fuck it. Play momentum. picks every so single that's round. That's for all I care. Jazz momentum as well. So the whole team is operating as a machine. That's just great to see. They're searching for the game. I mean, they were behind. They were suffering with two rounds versus five against Amigos. And now they are managing to equalize this one. As oh my God, come back. Player alive being taken down by Envy. So the draw is happening. And perhaps <laughs> it's time for Amigos to... Focus more on the game. Brody, try to fix this mindset and reset. Three rounds on the bounce now from Rejects. It felt like Amigos were out of the conversation, or Rejects, excuse me, were out of the conversation. Amigos had been responsible for that. Now we're all even Stevens here. A chance for Rejects to stop this before it goes to overtime as well if they win the next two. And they've once again got themselves in towards a long range snipe from uh, the jump up inside American as well from GTO. It's going to make it for a difficult exit for the bomb planter. Nonetheless, Rejects are going to get this bomb down. They've got one player out of position. I'm unsure if maybe that's going to be the key to winning this round for Rejects. That is Jez, who is well removed from this bomb site and might get some good timing. Oh. Oh. Yep. They are all stacked Jez up. Jez got, just like, the best fucking position if he just pushes. A, but there it is. Amigos are going to respawn. It's going to be a very, a very heavy hit. Sapuka coming out. GTO takes the rebel. Oh, please. Down. GTO again for a pair of kills. Oh, my God, this trolling. Is such a magisterial player. Like, 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 oh, oh my blur. god, imagine. The side, uh, and we see Fucking blur the shitter. Bravo. As Illusion comes to the defuse of the C4, 6 5 and Amigos manage to keep on the edge. Oh, damn. What a game by the Brazilians, putting rejects down at this one. I'll tell you what, mate. You'd be no, wait, not a 6 5, bro. I mean, 5 5. Amigos, because they are effectively carrying the Rolls. entire team with the plays that they're pulling off. I'll also say rejects. I talked about Jez in that play, or Solo in the play, excuse me, and he kind of shot way too early in that situation. 
You can see it on the mini map, yeah. him taking shots against a lone player instead of waiting and being patient with the trigger discipline. It's not going to end up being the downfall of rejects in that round. But once again, they've managed to get control of A. This time around, it is not going to be GTO picking up that first player. It's a different positioning from rejects. So they go into a post plant with all five players still on the board. Yes. <coughs> Everybody's alive. No one dead yet, but GTO disagrees with me and takes Blur down. GTO, come on. He's playing so well today. Perhaps or rounds in a row, really yeah. Deserving a stat roll. They did all that just, just to lose at the... Oh my uh, god, oh my god, they're trolling. Why is the quality some buns? Jess trying his luck. Sapuka oh yeah, it's chalked, it's done. And Illusion's gonna help him out. Oh, Robolo! Oh my god, Robolo! Whoa, nobody spectated that? Nobody spectated that? Nobody fucking spectated that? Oh my god. Bro, fire the spectators, bro. Fire that you saw him in third person going crazy, bro. That's so disappointing. Apparently, if I'm watching back the stream and that trailer. was me, it's the second time he's made a crucial play. You showed me that bullshit. I'm gonna kill myself. At the very least, he's got a pretty heavy deposit down. In this economy, I don't think you can That's buy that. That's crazy. Kind of Where's the vague? Oh, wrong, wrong player, bro. I mean, Force the overtime versus Amigo. So, reminder, folks, if you're new to Call of Duty Mobile, which to be fair, you're probably not if you're watching uh, Mobile Masters, got to win by two. And we'll be switching rounds every single round this time. So Rejects now on their first defensive effort here in overtime. Haven't given anything away for free just yet. Amigos, they are playing this one super patiently. Yes, the third overtime for Reject so far in the championship. When it comes to certain destroy modes, and Amigos are definitely up, stepping though. up comparatively, comparatively to their first exhibition on the bomb mode earlier today against Seminole, where they could not get this far. And it's already... A better job thus for both sides we see illusion at the area at the gravel trying to be strong and be solid as jess is moving trying to change his positioning this one's gonna be hard for reject if amigos decide to oh my god way, what are we doing be the case sapuka taking solon down on the middle of the map and zeus is down Rebalo doing again this oh, nice. kind of damage that the fan expect. Bloody shot. Oh my god. That was just <laughs> crazy to see. We gonna be watching Amigos with the numbers to their side and the C4 is down to the ground. And Jazz is gonna have to step up and make magic happen here. Oh, Jazz not able to get through the door in that situation. So I have to hit the ground for a moment. That's information for Amigos. They know what side of the map he's on now. He knows he's not making any crazy flank happen. I think he's just been watched on that push across the middle as well. So I imagine they're either going to play this one patiently or go for a cheeky double chow. It's not Rabalo, so you don't have to worry about it inside the trailer. Jez exiting <laughs> towards the site. Gets shut down pretty easily there. Amigos get control of A. They get the bomb down and they're able to take that round. 1-0 up in overtime. You were just cirurgical now, not Rebalo. Jess tried his best, but he also was not happy to stay inside of the trailer. Perhaps that totally shaped the rest of the play for him on this last round. As we see Amigos now stepping up for a match point, eventually taking the map to their side. If they manage to dominate rejects on these positionings and bullets. Um. We see Zeus coming up. Oh, wow. Nice job by them. It's going to be just Blur. Blur, on the other hand, brings a pack of kills. Using the Tundra, what a guy, what a player, ladies and gentlemen. He's gonna have to do that two more times to keep rejects into fiery range. Yeah, this would be a one versus four, I believe, for Blur. Yeah. <laughs> Amigos aren't gonna give this one away for free. It is worth saying that they are separated though. So there wouldn't be an immediate trade from either of these players if they went down and they're in very different positions as well. You can see. Spring. Just being careful now. Just trying to get a feel for one another. Blair's well, got both weapons as well. A DRH and a sniper rifle in the back pocket. A DRH he's picked off the ground. So I don't think Amigos will necessarily know about this. The change in weaponry. And they won't know about him transferring towards the bomb as well. He's going for a very wide plant here. This is a risky play from Blur in the 1v2. <gasps> Extremely risky. Oh my god. Run. Oh my god. He clutched these. Where are you going? Why did he do that? Amigos, oh the my map. god. Fantastic ending. And as we could see, Blur trying his best. It was oh my god. Impossible, let's say Where the fuck was Bro going? Specifically, Brody bro went in trailer, trailer's clear, Bro walks out. Equalizing this game. 
Yeah, and it felt like early on, it definitely yeah, should no have been. Yeah, no comment. Uh, we just keep that one the moving. They played that first half on their offenses. They were 100% in the Fuck, bro. Seat, that was... And they were driving pretty oh, that's a really know if, sad, uh, sad ending. Rejects. It was such a good game. Holy shit, that was bad. That was really bad. Settings. Okay, let's watch this. Even out on the playing field here, both of the teams at 24 alive. Just started, and so. we're only starting to capture on that east side now. They need to be back to show if you're going to front of the attack side. Cool. Uh, able to work on it. The flog will be made by Seminole on the A side, and they will be able to flush down all the remaining attackers that will be there. Only one tick will be progressed by by uh, Stalwart Esports on uh, the attack side here so far towards A, but they do reinforce and have uh, scared X10 out and score himself a four piece to buy the team more time at just claiming more tick progress at the A side. Yep, A side almost captured right oh, now. Oh, choke. I don't know. I don't know what the really play was there, but. To get that one minute it's the Odin Nugget, apparently. Going to get Bro, you're acting like I played this game. And with that, they have a lot of time to play with as well as a lot I played of once in the last month. Seminole, and they might just be able to take this round to their side with uh, that. Uh, yeah, band. Uh, they need to make sure that they get themselves that solid par position where we're currently seeing number three in yellow and Incendio is holding at right now. That's going to be how you want to counter that B side push that Stalwart Esports is just about to prepare to set up into the B side hit. 10 to 11 on the uh -huh. line department, still very close. This might just end up a TDM if STE decides to just push up over towards top five. It's a refreshing not be on Yeah, Angel definitely facts. something possible that could happen here. But look at this. We are a really neck and neck when it comes to the response. Both of the teams at nine lives left and a stalwart esports struggling to go in for the capture as the players on the side of Seminole hold a down that B side. But here. We can see Ban going in for the rotation, trying to find a couple of players by those spawns, by those boxes, to get a couple kills on Incendio with a sniper. It's gonna scope out the area as well. Yeah, well, STE is just taking their time here. Don't want to waste around any more players, but Incendio did not check the corner, so it's going to get taken down. And uh, yeah, three players standing for STE. How do they want to turn back? Shut up is able to win one. It's a 2v5 situation now. Still possible though, but they got to hop into the objective. Yep. Two players remaining on the side of Solward Esports, despite having the advantage a while ago, it's not looking very good for them anymore. And look at the way Stalwart Esports are stacked up. They are all in one area and they are playing for those trades. One player remains. Clove, it's down to you. He gets the kill and he's looking for to secure even more, but unfortunately he gets knocked Damn. down and the first round goes to the side of Seminole. Very important round there, especially when you're starting on the defensive side, right, as much as possible, you want yourself to have a bit more advantage. But uh, you know, that one was pretty, pretty close. If not for that, uh, you know, fumble from Star Wars Esports is controlling uh, uh, the, the top floors in this area on the map. It could have uh, gone the other way, right? But right now, starting it off, Cartels gets himself a double, immediately gets access through Dude, the control is just like, who gets their ops first and pop it the next round early? Down. Like, it's crazy. Yep, and Ban's going to pull out the Purifier, but gets taken uh, off of it right away. And now, Solward Esports, they are just trying to hold the down the A-side. That was so awkward. At least the A-side to stop the players on the side <laughs> of Seminole. So far, oh my they have maintained the number of lives they have. And Clove here, going to get a huge double piece as the players on the side of Seminole going for the <laughs> path, going for to capture onto that B site. Oh, nice defense being made there by Shot Up along with his teammate Clove. FDX operating with an Alliter finds himself a four piece, makes it a five. Yep, look at the live department up top, seven to 20. The spawn drop is initiated, and FDX is cooking once again. Holy shit, they're getting, getting fried. That rhythm to give Star Wars Esports a lot more advantage in the live count. Yeah, definitely. Look at the Seminole down to five left and Stalwart Esports still at 16. They are going to have a huge, huge advantage just going around looking for those skills. They have a lot of lives to play with as well. And so it, there's not too much risk if they decide to go in for a more aggressive approach. But look at this. FDX going to be able to spot one. Pulls out the boxing gloves, gets him knocked out. And we are going to have one last player remaining on the side of Sem Sem Seminoles. Is Seminole. Seminole. <laughs> And he's just trying to stay hidden and away from Solward Esports. 
Yo, uh, uh, this uh, cartel went at ways. This one minute seventeen, they just tried to dismantle, or not really dismantle, but uh, just tried to mess around the rhythm of <laughs> STE a bit. I mean, uh, that can be a great mind game for him, right? But he decides to hop on A. All right, it's a uh, uh, one man up against a huge island. Look at this. Look at this. They're all using their melees. The players on the side of Stalwart Esports, they just want to have some fun with Clove here. <laughs> uh, Clove, uh, Clove, however, is going to pull out the Fennec here, but it looks like the rest of them Bro, this is toxic. their melees here. Trying to get this is so toxic. They're fucking yeah, with them. But that was a nice counter for Ready Cartels up. to not get beaten up by <laughs> Stalwart, right? <laughs> that was just a, this is a huge margin on the life count. Yeah, just play that objective. Let them take you down to the long range. Pressure them with the, the amount of objective time that you get there. But yeah, most team, most of these two squads able to make up and uh, do better on their defensive side. But I gotta say, Star Wars did a lot better with a lot more gunfights. One over that around number two. Now we switch sides back once uh -huh. again. SD on the attack. Incendio hiding like a cheeky cheeky devil. Yep, his teammates able to get on by. But Vague gets himself very dangerous spot and he gets himself knocked down. Uh, to do a response remaining on the side of some we are on a roll here, getting kill after kill, and, and then kill building himself? up those streaky plays to help them get those four streaks and operate Ooh. their skills. They have a really good momentum this is a really built good here matchup. so far, so hopefully they're able to maintain this and hopefully win out of this round as well. But for now, not a too much happening in terms of objective capture as SDE tries to go in for a split capture on A side and B side, not really securing any of these segments. Yeah, War Machine being dropped in by Cartels. This is top any players from taking any good The casters are so bad. And, uh, the tanks. You're not fluent they in English, that's why. Eliminations with it as well. But yeah, they're doing a great job just by stopping stalwart esports from taking any Nah, earlier they had the Brazilian. Uh, 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 what's it called? MC. Choosing A. And she was like interviewing the, the, the Garena players. And, now, and they could just go both, in for a both the Brazilian here. MC, she couldn't read speak read English fluently, and the Garena players here. couldn't speak English fluently, so it was a shit show. Like, how do you interview and, like, that's so crazy. They should just got, like, translators. They are trying to get a one-minute extension, but Clove with the equalizer, showing no mercy towards Seminoles. Seminoles down to four lives remaining, and it looks like they are just trying to stay hidden, trying to stay away. They're so badly run. And that B-side while doing so, but stalwart esports, they have a lot of lives to play with, still 10 on that number, and they have operator skills to save for the next round as well. It's not a looking good for the side of Seminoles. What was that? How, like, how many operators were invested here by Stalwart? I think there were three? Three? Yeah, they were taking their chances at taking this attack side because they know that they're going to be the ones on the defensive side at the next round. And Cartels, you don't want to wander around too closely on this, guys. They are infamous for going in for some executions, right? And right now for him... Oh my god, oh my god, we're just winning. You don't want to get flagged here. Oh no! Oh, 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 what the fuck is happening? You. Okay, nice shot. Oh my god, oh. that's a punch. Imagine. Shot up to knock That'd be disrespectful. At a K point. The boxing gloves to get that last and final kill, the disrespect being shown, and they are just showing that they out? are the dominant no, team here in control. But you know, they have to continue the streak, they have to continue winning out to close up the match. They are at match point right now, so they have the opportunity to do so. And as you said, they are going to be the defending team. Stalwart Esports is going to be the defending team here. Oh no. No, SDX has already activated the spawn trap here. They know where these players are spawning <laughs> at the moment. He is just Ooh. on a tear. A five piece plus the Haunter Killer deployed out. Does he get one elimination with it? It is still flying out around the map. Whoopie doopie. Hum diddly D. Oh my god. This guy is now, whoopie tearing doopie. it apart. Finally gets shot down, but look at the damage he has done. That's about seven live count difference between them and Seminole. 
Yep, a huge, huge disadvantage to the side of Seminole. But look at this. They have their operator skills ready. They have to start using those because yeah. if they wait any longer, there's going to be no more opportunity to do so. And right now, Vig is the one doing exactly that. He pulls out the equalizer. Goes oh, around, big push. Trying to kill uh, everyone and he's attempting the spawn trap here, but unfortunately gets knocked very unfortunate. down. And, un and luckily enough, he's able to even out the playing field a little bit here. Seminole, Seminole looks weak without... Pull, push for that one minute extension. And they are also going into the capture on that A side. Wait, they're kind of yeah, coming back. I mean, this is great because now with just one operator that leaves them with three more available uh -huh. operator skills that can be used. And that might just increase their odds right again in just winning everything up right now. And just forcing on overtime. Marshy finds a double. Uh, a 2v9. SDE having it rough. I mean, and this is how you want to win it, right? Map number four. Map number three. Definitely up along boards. This time it's a 1v8. Oh no, Seminal want to go for that execution right now. And we are going to just see if it's possible back and forth. <laughs> That's they messed go, up. But, uh, and does not connect. I mean, they still have a lot of lives to play with. So I think they what have the fuck? some time to what try the... and get that. <laughs> but it looks like Cloves is going to get the boxing gloves of his own as well. Knocking down one of the players. But he can't play that risky. He has to use a weapon and let... Un Oh, because if he doesn't, he is going to get knocked oh, no. down. But right now, Clove, he is on the hunt for mm -hmm. Vague. He smells Vague's blood and he's <laughs> after it right now. Running and running for it. But does not spot anyone out. He sees all four. It's not going to look very good, but he gets eight. Unfortunate. He's still going to be able to get the punch before getting knocked down. And it's pretty, pretty good run for him despite, you know, um, getting knocked yeah. down. Two, two. Will be on match point for both of the teams now. Holy shit, two, two. Seminal, they are all streaked up. I, I wasn't sure if I was watching competitive or, you know, <laughs> a, a scrimmage for fun at that last round, but Seminal managed to convert that, right? And they still have three operators, four operators fills available for usage. They bring out hey. the purifier and the war machine here off the start. Clove will decide to bring out the predator as soon as possible just to get more information. He does take down the guy that took him out. So, still going to be equal, 25-24. Again, the, it's crucial to take this map number three that oh, gives shit. you the match point advantage. It kills. Yeah, definitely. They need uh, the players in Solward specifically needs this a lot because you know they have quite a struggle in hard points. So this is where they have to take their opportunity. But look at this, Seminal. They have the numbers advantage after using their operator skills and score streaks here. They have. Oh, Seminal got is, this. A uh, very good position for them. So Solward Esports has to find a way to turn things around. But luckily, and I lied. Apparently, skills become ready right in the time oh, of no. need. Clove pulls out the equalizer right now and it's just a matter of just chokes. see this lives number even oh never mind the two teams. there's hope yeah the, the problem here is that seminal have already wasted all their operators at the early yeah. game right so yeah. now stalwart c sports their operator just activated right in time but it's a matter fuck? of converting it properly but they could not get any of that and seminal Ooh. will be able to win their raw gunfights in there it's 30 to 9 on the gunfight and the kill department yeah and he just dipped his teammate to close out map bro said fend for yourself that was not a good investment on the side of yeah. Solward Esports. I mean, their operator skills, there were three of them wasted here. And they're not able to take the advantage. But look at this. We see Vague with the Equalizer and Shut Up. And just in time, pulls out the Spyro. Four lives remaining on the side of Stalwart Esports. And Seminoles at seven. This is going down to the line right now. And it's just a matter of time before we see which one of these teams are going to be the ones claiming that map advantage in Sendio with the war machine of his own going for the longer range distance he is going to be able to knock one player down bro they got to for them to push this one up we did say no taking the uh, uh, off the back but they still got to worry about Mwashi uh, just trying to guard that a side but overextends now it's a four oh shit three. what number one is Kurt just wandering around yo yo oh, seven might actually choke this like a 12v5 oh, bro now. they don't want to Get taken down by it. Trooper system is able to cancel that down. 54 seconds for Stalwart to be able to take a crack on this B side. Notice how Seminole is just waiting around Ooh. the back. They don't want to extend. He's making so much noise. Oh, fuck. 
this is a close one i mean uh, for a v2 definitely a clutchable situation but they have to play it absolutely perfectly but look at this seminoles they are holding back just as you said they don't want to overextend oh Shut yeah you're, another you're hand, a huge huge mistake on his hand i don't know what that was but period gets taken down instead and send the last player alive yeah there's no clutching this hidden, <laughs> trying to look for those trades not wanting to go too far now the question is who's gonna break first will incendio go in for the push or will sem9 reveal themselves and get picked off one by one yeah one before old oh boy oh, the, the flood oh. goes through it's over it is going to be your boys from samuel taking that map number okay let's watch this one I'm gonna go get some food. To respond, things like. looking pretty much at the same level on both sides. And we jacks totally trenched up on A. The end of the round, as Brody is having some kind of muffled sound things, uh, uh, we see that the A is still open and Rejax has. They have one man more now. Things looking equal as we're gonna move to the end of this round number two illusion coming to the middle of the map and amigos trying to also bring the claw very bold by them to try to push them this they don't want to lose this one that's that's the mindset on the brazilian that's side crazy. and they managed to do, do such a fantastic job phenomenal one brody as i was trying to say the emotion are taking over my tongue here man and i cannot have words to express how strong amigos are looking at the end of this round number two Again, a crucial round coming out from Amigos, and that's why you saw those operators coming out. They knew that, hey, look, if we use these operators now, we can effectively win the round and maybe even win this game. 2-0 up, winning an offensive round like that is huge for Amigos. Envy, though, did not use his, and that is crucial. He's going to use it right away in towards this round. That annihilates you. You have to find some value out of it. It's a true kill construct kill feed excuse me coming out from the gate here and the only able to find one with the annihilator is not what you wanted to see out of that weapon and already the answer back from migos is very very strong they've got a kill feed that is entirely theirs and they've got rejects trapped in their spawn rejects again dropped and i mean amigos trying to do whatever they could not do on round number one meaning to be extremely aggressive to the point of being able to set up a, a nice spawn trap they've tried again but that had consequences since reject they managed to get out of there and now they are spreading over to B and heading over to that flag as Zeus is spending his hunter killer to try to come and take solo down a nice movement but rejects are gonna step over B let's see if Amigos are gonna be able to respond to this yeah indeed they are they're doing a really good job at the moment a couple of kills here they're trying to cut rejects off at the source before they can do some serious damage spawn trap them while also dealing with them on the point it's now just going to be one on the point it's going to be rebalo who only finds one kill with the war machine removed from the point are rejects but they do get two ticks before going down and amigo such such pressure in towards the point that now they're not no pressure over towards a they've got nobody on the defense to deal with it so amigos now Looking to try and regarner A. We actually have a player name on the screen right now for some reason. There we go. Finally, we do. We know who we're watching now. Insane looking to go towards the point. He and his team doing a good job at keeping them away from the point, but they still can't get everybody off. And finally, Solo is going to go down. But that's not before, again, two ticks go the way of rejects. And it goes five kills ahead. It comes to looking at the numbers from rejects and consolidated at the map dominating the core the back line see they mount up a line that it's almost unresponsible by rejects and the americans are trying to pierce that same line i don't know if it's gonna be possible they are looking behind they're gonna eventually lose this map amigos again doing such a fantastic exhibition here managing to hold the pressure rejects are not able to steal to convert any flag no flag at all so far they have stepped and that's gonna be over that's gonna be it solo the last one alive and insane finishes him for another round and there it is we're gonna see amigos 2-1 on maps such a great reverse by them totally totally energized now uh, my friend brody that's that's mm -hmm. the kind of game we were expecting to see today as we have talked before the potential five map series absolutely and it was that second round that won it for them we'll talk about that in just a second but you can feel the hype of the crowd at the moment behind amigos just like they were behind them 
in Galaris because, uh, yeah, I mean, it is, of course, a home crowd for Amigos. And I think they're just, again, like we talked about back in Rat number one, they're trying to draw off the energy of the crowd somewhat here, Amigos. They're trying to get them uh, kind of in sync with one another to feel uh, that energy. And it is working uh, so far based off what we've seen from the last couple of maps where Amigos just really coming out to play. But as I said there, Igor, we go back to that round number two, and I think that was the key difference maker for both of these two teams. Rejects, they played that extremely close. I don't think the scoreline does justice how close that game actually was for Rejects, but still, that operator utilization coming out from Amigos towards the end of round number two, that choice to bring them out to play and win the round was everything, and it is the reason that Amigos win that game. Yes, Amigos very confident and doing what they were needing to do to be fair in this series as a whole and illusion moving from the search and destroy mode to control keeping quality keeping pacing and keeping the numbers on his side being the mvp on both occasions out of the three maps we already had so far as we see some of the best moments of this standoff control which was totally one-sided we have seen this from second one brody and Rejax not finding their pacing, not finding their way to respond properly or not in a long standing basis at least, uh, and then being a victim against Amigos. Yeah, and here's a look back towards that end play uh, from Amigos that was basically everything illusion who has been a playmaker yes. the last couple of games really. Uh, he was the one that brought out that claw, got the double, and uh, I, there wasn't the response from Envy. He was still alive in that situation that we expected. I was kind of maybe expecting the operator to come out of him. Instead, he chose to reserve it for the beginning of round number three and only found one kill. And it is really, I think it goes to show, right, just how crucial these small in-the-moment decisions can be to winning these games here in Call of Duty Mobile as uh, game number two. Uh, go game number three, excuse me, uh, goes the way uh, of Amigos. They now go 2-1 up in this series, Eagle. And we go into a rather daunting situation here for Rejects. As we discussed it, we're back into the vetoes. We talked about Arsenal Hardpoint being a map that will be positive for Rejects. How about we talk about Apocalypse Hardpoint being a positive map for Amigos? Man, that's just a thrilling for the Brazilian fans. Uh, let's see what's going to happen. But Amigos are going to try to take or keep the driver's seat that they already have uh, so far in this series. So I'm assuming they're gonna be fighting uh, on a potential 50-50 basis on P1. They're gonna uh, try to sense what Rejects are gonna be able to bring to the case and to the table. But then uh, the P2 is gonna deserve all of our attentions because Amigos, they are so strong at this spot. And usually we know that teams like a lot the P2 on Apocalypse because it allows you, allows you uh, excuse me, uh, in a less complicated way, to set a line between the spawn and the and the objective itself. So it's kind of, kind of easier, let's say, but of course it's not going to be easy against Rejax. Rejax is going to be eventually trying to do the same, dominating the uh, the whole right flank and square of the map. And of course, trying to battle in the middle as well as they're going to need also to rotate to P3. So all these elements, all these factors are going to come into play in some seconds and minutes. And I'm very, very excited to see what's going to happen because as we know, Brody, Rejects, they won the first hard point, but Amigos, they are winning uh, since the last two maps. Yeah, for sure. And again, it is just going back to the fact that this is such a strong map mode combination for Amigos. You can absolutely tell that this was their pick in the best of five. Um, and, you know, I think for sure the last couple of maps have just been so crucial uh, for Amigos on the whole to take away the search and destroy in the fashion that they did, to make sure they took away uh, that control and that crucial round number two that really did split the difference between the two teams. It does make things so much more positive if you're a Brazilian fan looking towards this Amigos roster, looking towards the prospects of them surviving this lower bracket elimination as we go into this apocalypse hard point um, it's a map i think that we see a lot of teams i think trying to avoid uh, for whatever reason in the snapdragon pro series we didn't see it that much uh, in the north american and european challenge season or the uh, challenge finals either um, but we did see it a couple of times i believe uh, from rejects and they won it both times but i think the, the asterisk i would put onto that even though they won it both times they played it neither of those matchups are against top teams uh, in north america truly was the best team that they played on that and it was a very close victory so I, I don't know if we can really take too much away from that other than to say hey look rejects they played this a couple of times they've won it a couple of times but does it really matter when those teams were not amigos quality teams yes and surely is a map that requires a lot of patience requires coordination when it comes to knowing the timing to give up on points it's ideally a map on hard point mode where uh, Brody, you don't want to stay from the beginning to the end. You cannot 
a, a search for a back-to-back -back domination on the heels. You got to understand that you got to give up uh, some of them uh, in order to make a rotation, in order, in order to head the next objective spot. So all of that, all these elements are going to be in play in a bit since we're going to be seeing all these uh, talented and fantastic players coming into action again. Let's see what's going to happen. Let's see how Amigos managed to keep their level over time on the combination Apocalypse Hardpoint. For sure. Well, let's not waste any more time, folks. This could well be the final map in this best of five. Amigos, one map away from sealing away. Rejects in seventh to eighth place here in the Mobile Masters 2024. And Amigos marching on to face the loser of Seminole and Stalwart. All still to play for, though. And off the start of this one, we know how mixy P1 can be. But Igor, there is a favorite side of this map, and it is currently going to be Amigos that spawn on it. Yes, they're going to be spawning, as you said, eventually trying to set already a nice, uh, I would say, a buffer zone uh, surrounding the P1. And we just are trying to not allow that to happen as Envy was trying his luck. We have Blur as well, making an effort to deliver the bullets. Amigos so far doing a great job. Such a stellar stock by them. Uh, not only winning in the kills, but at the same time dominating the spots, dominating the geography of Apocalypse. Solo is going to be working solo. Let's see how he does. He was taken down by Zeus. And again, Amigos uh, doing the best beginning that you could expect in this map, in, in this mode, Brody. Winning a lot of points and rotating to their favorite spot. Yeah, you got to be careful if, if you're rejects, to be honest with you. you got one player yes. in towards new rotation. He's hiding towards the very back of the map. That's going to be Jez, who actually has managed to play his oh, life yeah. perfectly here. Influencer spawns enough now that Rejects will be spawning in towards the next Ooh. hard point. Sapphire was the only player over here, and Jez is going to remove him from the scenario. So now Amigo's going to have this one, fight this one through Letterbox. Wow. Deuce has already picked up a couple of kills, make that three in a row. GTO going to find number four as well. Blur's going to answer back with a couple of his own here. Rejects, though, almost fully wiped from this hill. Insane in Sapphire with three follow up kills as well. And now Zeus feels it's time to bring the War Machine down onto Rejects as well. But look at this response from Rejects somehow facing down the War Machine. There's a break back three. Fantastic response by Rejects, not feeling rejected from the P2 and of course reorganizing their backline to get back on action and uh, applying the same level, the same concept that Amigos used it themselves, meaning they moved as a block, they got in with a 4 or 5 man hit into this P2 and Rejects just some seconds after that did precisely the same thing and now we're gonna be seeing Rejects already moving to the next hill since Amigos decided to stay a little longer so that's precisely what we were talking about before Brody uh, you have to decide you have to make fast decisions are you gonna go are you gonna roll to the next hill uh, or are you gonna stay a little more and Amigos this time they decided for points Rejects really do need to stop putting some time away on this hill they cannot afford to give this one away now the gravity vortex gun coming out to play of course that was the decision made by blur at the start of this game to try and get some value out of it unfortunately it's not going to provide any value here for the rejects as they do not get control kills now starting to come through from amigos and i said this needed to be a hill where the rejects get a lot of time and they've been completely usurped from it insane now going to follow up with a double to make it a triple but he is going to be denied there by envy rejects they're fighting for the back 30 here igor but nonetheless the fact that amigos are even able to get anywhere close to the hard point is pretty damning here for the rejects Yes, and Rejects are on the heel, but Amigos already know that they got, at this point, 30, 40 points to use as a margin against Rejects, and use precisely these points, trying to head to the next spot. So, that's gonna begin to be troublesome somewhat for Rejects, since Amigos are stepping up, and I would say more than that, they are totally confident on their bullets. We can see that they stay longer and they fight longer. They do not avoid the 1v1 situations that, as we've just seen from Sapuka. And that's going to mean that they're going to be escalating their damage over time. Rejax is going to need to stop this train. Otherwise, it's going to be a train eventually back to home. Oh, no. But we see now the combination between War Machine and the Claw right now. Let's see how that's going to last, buddy. Illusion trying to break out of this back spawn. They've already flipped it in favor of Amigo. He's got to be careful about a wayward spawn coming through from Sapika here. Solo towards the hard point. He's going to get shut down. And yes, yeah, Sapika surprises Envy towards the other side of the hill. Just like that, Amigos, they collapse on through. Again, this is time you did not want to give away if you're the rejects. Now they look to hold the back 30 seconds. Rejects have no choice but to give this one last shake. And Zeus is where waiting. He's already one kill. 
with the War Machine. Can Solo do anything on the entry? No, he's going to get shut down. Blur and Envy are going to combine for a double. It does remove Amigos on the back. 10 seconds, but look at Illusion. He snaps wow. on towards two. Number three on the cards, Ooh. and Zeus will steal away that yeah. kill. It doesn't really matter which player gets it, though, on Amigos. They're going to get it regardless, and it's giving them a slight advantage here as we move into the second set. Rejax playing so well. I mean, countering the level of comfort that Amigos were expecting to find in this map since Amigos, right now, they would love to have like 50, 60 points uh, as a cushion, but that has n just not been possible because Rejax, they have been fighting to the end. They have been get closing against the Brazilians, not making the Brazilians' lives easier. Uh, and we see now a more of a, a busier or more packed core of the map as Amigos uh, keep escalating their points as well Rebelo uh, totally adjusting his bullets and his scope so doing a good job and Rejax are not gonna fly away from this hill we see the second rotation of spots and that's gonna mean that both sides are gonna have to fight for this one to uh, eventually create an edge from now on buddy let me go hit looking to go on a control of this p1 hard point rejects now Got to be careful about how aggressive they are with this one because to be honest with you, there's only five, to, what, 10 seconds left before the next hill pops. You don't really want to go too aggressive. You also want to be careful you don't give away the rotation towards new. Solo in the middle map is going to get shut down by Illusion, who's going to find a double. Nice gravity vortex usage coming out from Boer. He is going to find two kills. He's still got it ready to go as well. That last gravity vortex gun is going to do a really good job at zoning these spawns away for Amigos, who are continuing to spawn in the back line. Rebalo now with a war machine as well. Amigos, they are, or rejects, excuse me, are keeping Amigos away from the kill for now. But those back spawns, they're going to be so frustrating to deal with, and GTO has already picked up a double. Yeah, Rejects massive on the hands of Rebelo doing such a great job today as a team player, more than individually speaking. But again, this is such a great job. Uh, it's such a great player doing a great job, to be fair, today uh, in all the modes as we have seen so far. And P2 totally dominated by Rejects, but Amigos, they try their luck. They cannot spare to lose points. They know this. And Brody, to this point, Amigos would love to have a better, more comfortable, more expanded slaying as we see in the Brazilian scene. I would call it even a Brazilian concept to play Apocalypse Hardpoint. Try to expand your marking zone to will not allow the, uh, the foe, the opponent, to get closer. But again, that has not been possible because Rejects, they are playing tightly. They are searching this one. They are hunting the players from Amigos who now are forced to use this war machine. Is it going to last? That's going to be the question as Zeus is not giving up. He gets close to eliminations. And precisely against Rebelo. Jazz up top now. He's got the claw ready to go. Annihilator and Equalizer is coming out as well. This is a massive investment from Rejects to try and make sure they get control of P4. Something that didn't happen last time around. And it feels like that might be the case here. Rejects starting to get the gunfights in their favor. Yep, it was a good investment from Rejects. And it should guarantee them the back 30 seconds here. Unless Amigos do something silly and push aggressively. Nobody actually in the heal though for the rejects at the moment here. Illusion's able to knock at the door and pick a couple of players off. And rejects are unearthed, usurped from the hard point. It's time that does not go their way. And for that push, I mean, Amigos don't lose spawns for new. They are still here first. Yeah. Yes. So apparently the pair heals are the best ones for Amigos, right? The P2, the P4. Usually they are there before, as I said, trying to set up these spawn positions, locking up the entries and rejects. Even though they got like 10 points now, they're going to have to keep playing toughly. They're going to have to uh, keep this level of organization that you are showcasing now. I like it. I like how they reorganize their mindset and their bullets uh, as well. Since Amigos are also stepping into the hill and uh, eventually moving ahead on points but again such a tough battle right brody we, we cannot we cannot at all predict who's gonna be the winner on this one yeah this is so 50 50 at the moment these guys are so back and forth it is the rejects now in control of what could be a valuable 30 seconds that might well split the difference between these two teams Amigos, though, well on their way. Zeus is going to find a double. Zeus is going to find three. Insane also following up with another one. And Amigos, now they are the ones in control of this valuable amount of time. Rejects, I think at this point, you might as well just chalk this time. There's no real reason to go for it. Just make sure nobody from Amigos overextends in towards that rotation towards P2. Because there is still a path to win this game. Still a path to force this one to a game number five. Yes, and Rejects playing so safely, right? But in just one minute ahead, he's gonna be, like I like to say, the iron, the steel chest 
and that was the case of Rebalo going ahead, uh, kind of isolated or playing as a lurker if you want to be very conceptual here uh, when compared to his mates. But again, Illusion killing a lot and trying to make his team step up to 200 points as this is looking pretty much as an even, a very, very balanced ending off map. Amigos though, they managed to push Rejax away almost to their spawn and that's what just happened. Sepulka trying to stay close, trying to help the team. Amigos clean more. I would say the kill feed is leaning to their side and that's gonna keep being very dangerous for Rejax. Amigos here looking for the back 20 seconds. There is a big gunfight going down on the rotation. That's solo to take out Sapika. Still got a lot more work to do because the God Spawn comes through from Amigos. So Amigos in a stellar spot here. Not only do they get control of this scrap time here, Igor, but they've got control of the rotation to new. The ticket towards the next round of play is theirs. It is in their hands. Now they just cannot let it slip. Yes, and they already put two players in the objective to win their spawn. You know what? The rest doesn't matter anymore. That's what Amigos are talking between themselves. They are just blocking the rotation like you predicted. And thus, Rejax is not able to easily uh, come to this way. They're not easily uh, eventually stealing this one as we see. The attempt was done, but Amigos, they were solid. They just stand, <laughs> stand it here. Fantastic work. Oh my god, insane again oh, insane. with the equalizer. GTO, insane. And Zeus also bringing the operators, the operators out. That's the moment. That's what they should do. Only five seconds for now. Ari Jack's gonna be able to take this one back. It's over. Amigos from Brazil. Such a great performance to win this one finally. And uh, taking Rejects out of the championship, Brody. That's just massive other team from Brazil performing well. You're basking that if you're Amigos, you survive your brush with death. The home crowd once again proving a real buff here for the Brazilians as they walk away victors of that game. They walk away victors of that series. And Amigos just made the right decisions towards the end. There were a couple of moments where maybe it felt as if we could have saw more value out of the hard points being drawn by Rejects. A couple of moments where Rejects did just get outplayed on key rotations. Amigos, though, they made sure they were the ones on the better side of it towards the end as we look towards our scoreboard here. Uh, Zeus, I want to say, has been I'm relatively back. quiet this entire series thus far. Wait, they Eagle. lost. What a time to show up. 44 and 25, almost what? double positive at the end of that lost. game was completely sweating and <laughs> making the Brazilian national flag totally, That's totally tough. bad, as we could see in the previous footage. And you are right, he was a more of a colder player, not being so out there, but again, also looking at the audience and trying to soak up any energy he could. And all that played out very well for them, as we see the selfie moment. <laughs> they are celebrating as they <laughs> should. And there it is. That's gonna be the photo for the next days. They're gonna have to keep fighting, of course. There it is. It's another step. At least they're not out of the competition yet. And rejects. We are out of this one, Brody. Yeah, indeed they are. And, and they're all smiles at the moment, I think. Just you looking more back towards the series. I think at the end of the day, Rejects will be happy with how they perform for the most part. I, I will say, I, I do think that Rejects still yeah. do have a fair bit to work on uh, before Season 5 now, because now they know what the road to Champs 2024 looks like. I, I do think they should be putting a lot of effort in into making sure they fix a few of the mistakes that maybe led them to a loss here in this game. Because I think, unlike the last two, where it did just feel like, hey, in those crucial moments, they were getting outplayed, and albeit they were still here in this apocalypse hard point there were still moments where at the end of the day amigos did take control of their own destiny there were also moments where rejects yeah. did just kind of chuckle i was looking over towards their control of p4 they gave away crucial time that might well have split the difference towards the end of the game and um, there were moments there where i'm gonna watch this game <clears throat> i'm dying oh what is wrong with my youtube bro Function. The nations they get this crap time like cartels will be able to shut them down, and Seminole will be able to secure a money hill on Big Two, scoring big, and trying to step closer to that 200 point mark. 180 to 140 now on the scoreboard. The Seminole in a position to close this series now. But look at Tower right there, taking their time. They do have an early setup, but for them to be able to maintain that, they need to go through Ban, who finds a double and just completely flushes out. The early positions taken by Stalwart on the jet decks. Scared, needs to make a play, but the Smokes is there to cover his ground. 
We have to see an operator pulled out here by STE just to get some control in there. And now we got scared. Bully through, finds himself a double number five in Cologne, gets the flank to work, and Stalwart Esports is right back into the hard point. Then we got your boys from Seminole spawning all across the map. That was a timely operator investment by Stalwart Esports to put themselves in striking distance. Last 16 seconds going to be in their favor on that P3. Now the tricky oh, shit, part wait, here Seminole is how are you going to try to break into P4 because that oh, wait, yeah, is they won control. where we see a better setup coming in for Seminole. We've got number three in blue in band just playing out of his mind able to intercept not two but three players in there before getting taken down and also wasting the this power that was invested initially there by shot up so that's going to be a good value and nice Ooh. trades back in port for them and taking away the first 15 seconds of this hill scoring it and just being inside of the point is huge for seminal to finally close the game now sde Slowing things down, trying to push with the help of that smoke. Clove with the nade, finds bland. FDX with that purifier, pulls it through. <laughs> Vague, last guy standing inside. <laughs> the playmaker does not spot the guy. Just going in for the prone, but he has dealt most of the damage here to pull this one through. Stalwart Esports again, forced back, and Vague is still slaying. Put an end to this misery. A Predator missile. In Holy shit. And he will gotta go new, though. the score. I believe is a crucial hard point hold for Seminole to finally end things through Vague. The playmaker with 41 kills just solely holding that P4 on the artilleries by himself. And now they're only needing 12 more points to finally finish things off. Marshy enters inside. Just 10 more points for them to win. Clock is running out. Star Wars Esports needs to enter inside the hill. No reinforcements coming through from them. Operator investment for Van, but he gets taken down. Incendio, last team of contest. They don't want to lose control of the moment. Still going to make the contest consistent, but Vague able to spot down Incendio once again. Vague stepping up big time for Seminole as they try to put an end on the misery of Star Wars Esports. Still going to be... Dude, they're still, like, holding on. How the hell? Scared will be able to make there in time. But he's gonna get taken down by Vic. He is him, and he puts an end to this. The first team to go to the playoffs goes to Seminole as they take down Star Wars Esports four maps. And there's the signature emote for Ban. <clears throat> get that wave going because they get an early out to the tournament, prepare for the next day. And Big was tough on that, man. He was pulling it through at the last two hard points. And for them to take down the Avengers squad of Star Wars Esports says a lot. Seminole, even without Tectonic, man, still a big threat. Now we'll take a look at our post game breakdown and see what up, man. 250 to 187. Big MVP. 45. 27 and 13 assists with two minutes and eight seconds on the time inside the objective 198 impact rating for him i mean it was very close but every time star wars esports is in striking distance <laughs> vague was the fire extinguisher able to stop all the pushes by himself at the last two hard points heading on to that p4 he had that equalizer in hand and just obliterated every player he sees. And at the end, getting all those shots to finally put an end to this. Sam, vague, 22 kills Damn. inside of the hard point. The most that we got on the series. They got highest so far on the day, I believe, was 31 kills by Ribalo up against Stalwart he's for <laughs> on takeoff math. And the Lori still win it all. Great. They're looking, looking good like on this map, right? Unstoppable. Off this uh, matchup with Stalwart having uh, that huh. early lead, right? So on this hard point number one, they were doing well with their SMGs. It's Sanjo securing most of the anchor position. 
but one thing more than likely that we saw here was the involvement of band and yeah he rocked in that r9 and was able to shut down every player he sees with that right and uh, yeah the first two sets of hard point was definitely back and forth it's just uh the late game that just truck stalwart esports right I mean, uh, they tried to throw all their bodies inside the hill, but could not just really take it. And uh, this brings to the point and uh, the, the key here for Seminole in getting all of the respawns to favor them. It's just about timing those operators, right? Vague did that pretty well at the hard point takeoff, along with his teammates with that war machine. Now, at the control, they were able to slow the look like spaces down to the T. And oh, that's facts. Number four, it all had to go down again to an equalizer to put an end to this amazing battle that we got at the winner's match. Stalwart Esports thought they could handle it, but no, they couldn't handle Vague, right? He only had 28 kills, but by that time, heading into the next hardpoint rotation, right? Especially at B4, that's where he was able to deal most of that damage. He scored and erupted for at least... 12 plus kills on that altercation <laughs> and uh, what's the difference maker once again he was on a 6 spree then he was finding a lot of kills with the equalizer and just topping every player that decides to push from stalwarts esports 40 on him plus the predator missile to get that information even finds a predator missile kill onto that and he was also able to deliver the final shot that will go through to put this game to the end and Seminole will be able to pull it through 250 to 187 and uh, we got your boy Kelly Gaming down here alone and yeah Wasabi Gaming get EMP yep it happens she will be right back what matters is that she is safe I'll be amigos against STE Have a team then. Let me watch the hard point. Patiently in wait. They do not want to be the ones to make the first. Got themselves in towards. Fan expect. Elements are gonna be in play in a bit since we're gonna be seeing all these uh, talented and fantastic players coming into action again. Let's see what's gonna happen. Let's see how Amigos managed to keep their level over time on the combination Apocalypse Hardpoint. Sure, well, let's not waste any more time, folks. This could well be the final map in this best of five Amigos. One map away from sealing away. Rejects in seventh to eighth place here in the Mobile Masters 2024. And Amigos marching on to face the loser of Seminole and Stalwart. All still to play for, though. And off the start of this one, we know how mixy P1 can be. But Igor, there is a favorite side of this map, and it is currently going to be Amigos that spawn on it. Yes, they're going to be spawning, as you said, eventually trying to set already a nice, uh, I would say, a buffer zone uh, surrounding the P1. And we just are trying to not allow that to happen as MV was trying his luck. We have Blur as well, making an effort to deliver the bullets. Amigos so far doing a great job. Such a stellar stock by them. Uh, not only winning the kills, but at the same time dominating the spots, dominating the geography of Apocalypse. Solo is going to be working solo. Let's see how he does. He was taken down by Zeus. And again, Amigos uh, doing the best beginning they could expect in this map in, in this mode, Brody. Winning a lot of Amigos take over P3. And rotating to their favorite spot. Presentation? Yeah, you got to be careful if, if you're rejects, to be honest with you. You're Why is it lagging? One player in towards new rotation. He's hiding towards the very back of the map. That's going to be Jez, who actually has managed to play his oh, life yeah. perfectly here. Influencer spawns enough. Why is it lagging? Spawning in towards the next Ooh. hard point. When Sapt was the only player over what here, the and remove him from the scenario. So now Amigo's gonna have to spawn, fight this one through letterbox. Yo, my shit is lagging. Gonna like a couple of kills, make that three in a row. What? DCO gonna find number four as well. It's actually possessed. Back with a couple of his own here. Rejects though, almost fully wiped from this hill. Uh. Insane in Sapphica with three follow-up kills as well, and now Zeus feels it's time to bring the war machine down onto Rejects as well. But look. Uh, His response from Rejects somehow facing down the war machine. There was a break. 
fantastic response by reject not feeling rejected from the p2 and, and of course reorganizing their back line to get that connection and uh, applying the same level what the, the same hell? concept that amigos used it themselves meaning they moved as a block they got in with the four or five men we restart yeah two and reject what is this lag fest some time away on this hill they cannot afford to give this one away now the gravity vortex gun coming out to play of course that was a decision made by blur at the start of this game to try and get some value out of it unfortunately it's not going to provide any value here for the rejects as they do not get control kills now starting to come through from amigos and i said this needed to be a heal with the rejects get a lot of time and they've been completely usurped from it insane now going to follow up with a double not going to make it a triple but he is going to be denied there by envy rejects they're fighting for the back 30 here igor but nonetheless the fact that amigos are even able to get anywhere close to the hard point is pretty damning here for the rejects Yes, and rejects are on the heal, but Amigos already know that they got, at this point, 30, 40 points to use as a margin against rejects, and use precisely these points, trying to head to the next spot. So, that's gonna begin to be troublesome <clears throat> somewhat for rejects, since Amigos are stepping up, and I would say more than that, they are totally confident on their bullets. We can see that they stay longer and oh, they shit. fight longer. They do not avoid the 1v1 situations that we, huh. as we've just seen from Sapuka, and that's gonna mean that oh. they're gonna be escalating their damage over time. Rejects is gonna need to stop this train. Otherwise, it's gonna be a train eventually what the fuck? back to home. Oh, but no. we see now combination oh my between God, what was that? and the claw right now. Let's see how that's gonna last, buddy. Illusion trying to break out of this back spawn. They've already flipped it in favor of Amigo. He's gonna be careful about a wayward spawn coming through from Sapika here, solo towards the hard point. He's gonna get shut down. And yes, yeah, Sapika surprises Envy towards the other side of the hill, just like that. Amigos, they collapse on through. Again, this is time you did not want to give away if you're the Rejects. Now they look to hold the back 30 seconds. Rejects have no choice but to give this one last shake. And Zeus is where waiting. He's already hit one kill with the War Machine. Can Solo do anything on the entry? No, he's going to get shut down. Blur and Envy are going to combine for a double. It does remove Amigos on the back 10 seconds. But look at Illusion. He snaps wow. on towards two. Number three on the cards. Ooh. And Zeus will steal away that yeah. kill. It doesn't really matter which player gets it. Though, a terrible Amigos, secondary. They're going to get it regardless. Because you could one-tap headshot. Advantage here as we move into the second set. Rejects playing so well. I mean, countering the level of comfort that Amigos were expecting to find in this map. Bro, Since solo's Amigos, on two kills? Right now, they would love to have like what the fuck? points uh, as a cushion, but that has just not been possible mm -hmm. because Rejects, they have been fighting to the end. They have been get closing against the Brazilians, not making the Brazilians' lives easier. Uh, and we see now a more of a, a busier or more packed core of the Pulling map for all. as Amigos uh, keep escalating your points as well Rebelo uh, totally like Rebelo. adjusting his bullets and his scope so doing a good job and rejects are not gonna fly away from this hill we see the second rotation of spots and that's gonna mean that both sides are gonna have to fight for this one to uh, eventually create an edge from now on buddy well, amigos hit looking to go on a control of this p1 hard point rejects now Got to be careful about how aggressive they are with this one because to be honest with you there's only five well solo was actually calling bro bro had two pops. kills in a full really rotation you also want to be careful you don't give away the rotation towards the solo in the middle map's going to get shut down by illusion who's going to find a double nice gravity vortex usage coming out from boa he is going to find two kills he's still got it ready to go as well that last gravity vortex gun is going to do a really good job at zoning these spawns away for amigos who are continuing to spawn in the back line Rebalo, now with the war machine as well this is amigos, good they're holding this hill they are, down or rejects excuse me are keeping amigos away from the kill for now but those back spawns they're going to be so frustrating to deal with and gto's already picked up a double yeah rejects massive on the hands of rebelo doing such a great job today as a team player more than individually speaking but again such a great job uh, such a great player doing a great job to be fair <laughs> today uh, in all the modes as we have seen so far and <laughs> b2 totally dominated by rejects but amigos they try their luck they cannot spare to lose points they know this and Brody, to this point, Amigos would love to oh. have 
a better, more comfortable, more expensive. Wow, this is a close game, huh? In the Brazilian scene, I would call it even a Brazilian Rebelo. concept to play Apocalypse Hardpoint. Try to expand your marking zone to uh, not allow the uh, the fold your opponent to get closer. But again, that has not been possible because Rejects they are playing tightly. They are searching this one. They are hunting the players from Amigos who now are forced to use this war machine. Is it gonna last? That's gonna be the question. As Zeus is not giving Ooh. up, he gets you got two? two eliminations. Yep. And precisely against Rebelo. Rebelo. Jazz up top now. He's got the claw ready to go. Annihilator and Equalizer is coming out as well. This is a massive investment from Rejects to try and make sure they get control of P4. Something that didn't happen last time around. And it feels like that might be the case here. Rejects starting to get the gunfights in their favor. Yep, it was a good investment from Rejects. And it should guarantee them the back 30 seconds here. Unless Amigos... Do something silly and push aggressively. Nobody actually in the heal though for the rejects at the moment here. Illusion's able to knock at the door and pick a couple of players off. And rejects are unearthed, usurped from the hard point. It's time that does not go their way. And for that push, I mean, amigos don't lose spawns for new. They are still here first. Yeah. Yes. So apparently the pair heals are the best ones for amigos, right? The P2, the P4. Usually they are there before, as you said trying to set up these spawn positions locking up the entries and rejects even though they got like 10 points now they're gonna have to keep playing toughly they're gonna have to uh, keep this level of organization that you're showcasing now i like it i like how they reorganize their mindset and their bullets uh, as well since amigos are also stepping into the hill and uh, eventually moving ahead on points but again such a tough battle right brody we, we cannot we cannot at all predict who's gonna be the winner on this one yeah this is so 50 50 at the moment these guys are so back and forth it is the rejects now in control of what could be a valuable 30 seconds that might well split the difference between these two teams Amigos, though, <coughs> well on their way. Zeus is going to find a double. Zeus is going to find three. Insane also oh, following up with another one. And Amigos, now they are the ones in control of this valuable amount of time. Rejects, I think at this point, you might as well just chalk this time. There's no real reason to go for it. Just make sure nobody from Amigos overextends in towards that rotation towards P2. Because there is still a path to win this game. Still a path to force this one to a gain of a five. Yes, and Rejects playing so safely, right? But in just one minute ahead, he's gonna be, like I like to say, the iron, the steel chest. And that was the case of Rebalo going ahead. Uh, kind of isolated. Bro, I genuinely don't know what the casters are saying at times, bro. Here, uh, when compared to his I just zoned them out. Illusion killing a lot and trying to make his team step up to 200 points as this is looking pretty much as an even, a very, very balanced ending off map. Amigos, though, they managed to push rejects away almost to their spawn and that's what just happened so Puka trying to stay close trying to help the team amigos clean more i would say the kill feed is leaning to their side and that's gonna keep being very dangerous for rejects yeah, amigos here looking for the back 20 seconds there is a big gunfight going down on the rotation that's solo to take out sapica still got a lot more work to do because the god spawn comes through from amigos so amigos in a stellar spot here not only do they get control of this scrap time here Igor, but they've got control yeah. of the rotation to new the ticket towards the next round of play is theirs it is in their hands now they just cannot let it slip yes and they already put two players in the objective to win their spawn you know what? The rest doesn't matter anymore. That's what Amigos are talking between themselves. They're just blocking the rotation like you predicted. And thus, Rejax is not able to easily uh, come to this way. They're not easily uh, eventually stealing this one as we see. The attempt was done, but Amigos, they were solid. They just stand, stand it here. Oh, yeah, it's done. Oh my god, insane. They oh, can't insane. break it. Oh, holy shit, they can't break it. Insane. And Zeus also bringing the operators, the operators out. That's the moment. That's what they should do. Yeah, Only they can't break it. This whole. Four now. Ari Jack's gonna be able to take this one back. It's over. Amigos from Brazil. Such a great performance. <laughs> to win this one, finally. And, uh, Look at them. They're waving. That's the funny. Brody. That's just massive. Yeah, that was a really good match. Control to kick this round off. Yes, and see what amigos are doing. We're Try to put five minutes. on the B because that's not expected by Reject. So amigos, and this is a very today. 
uh, I would say on their first match when <laughs> what kind of goofy font is that to collect the operators to already use them on the second round combining this usage with a potential spawn trap so that's gonna depend on how rejects are gonna readjust their positionings how they're gonna not be predictable by amigos who are gonna be trying to push their opponents to the base to the spawn i'm expecting a lot of this and also from zeus i'm expecting a lot of talent since he's very strong with the war machine in this map so there it is brody let's hop in because round number one is gonna mean amigos on the defensive side Sure. Rejects looking for the first wave of gunfights because as we always know with uh, standoff control, you do not want to get stuck in a spawn trap early on. It can be quite deadly and you can look very deep into spawn. Rejects are washed. Very little repercussion without the worry of spawning people out into the alley. You tell them. I think that's the idea from Amigos right off the start here. Only one player got in from behind, but they were very swiftly dealt with. A couple of kills now starting to come through. Make that three between rejects. So they do break the spawn trap that Amigos did momentarily put together. Now though, they do need to start translating this into some map control into making their way over towards one of these two points and we're not seeing much at all in the way of these individual efforts to make that happen so far yes rejects could try to find a solution by creating a rule to be that would mess with the mindset from amigos who are not protecting that area properly and just as i say they're they are trying to go for that spot the support is not letting anyone pass let me see if so, the other stream is so on. far we Bro, what is this? We'll be right back. Yikes. Meaning the trading battles. Let's see if that's gonna stack up to also having a uh, better and more increased uh, map control from now on. But both sides operating with a lot of uh, tension, I would say, but with a lot of kills on their sides as well, since the kills, since the lives uh, per se are pretty much similar to this point, Brody. Yeah, to be fair to Rejects, they haven't actually been bullied in towards their spawn just yet. And they've been relatively competitive with Amigos, but the time is really the biggest problem here. And yeah, it's going to run out before Rejects even get a chance to touch either of these two points. That is a massive round coming out from Amigos. Again, this is one of those control maps where defense is so crucial. So to not give a single tick of progression away on either A nor B, that's big if you're an Amigos fan. What the hell? So now we move into the next one. I have happened. no idea what's happening right now. There we go. <laughs> Amigos <laughs> uh, looking to start things strong on the offense. And they do get a couple of kills here by way of Zeus. So they have got a lot of map control to kick this round off. Yes, and see what Amigos are doing. Try to put Sapoka on the B because that's not expected by Reject. So Amigos were setting the pace, setting the profile, the default uh, on the round number one. Uh, pushing Rejects back. And now Rejects are trying to do almost the same, but then Amigos are like moving with separate pieces. Not always together, avoiding to be caught as a squad. As we see both sides again fighting for the lives, they're pretty much similar. And that's very interesting to see since these teams are applying a lot of quality here. Trying to move ahead, trying to control the middle portion of the map as well. But Amigos again going for the objective on both heels, on both flags uh -huh. at the same time. Yeah, these ticks, this kind of dual approach that Amigos are putting together at the moment can be so beneficial. Of course, it can befall you if you're not careful because it ends up making uh, weaker pushes on towards the point. And there you go, exactly why Jez comes down with the core, picks up a crucial double. Solo also part of the play that removes Amigos from the point, but they'll still be happy with what they've done so far here in this round. They've got a four life advantage now as GTO picks up a couple of kills. They've got three ticks between both of the two control zones. And rejects, I mean, you can tell with the operate utilization here, they do not want to lose this round. They are being very careful not to do yeah. so. Yes, we see Amigos pulling out two operators. Nice combination. Let's see how that's going to play out. Annihilate what? That was so weird. Go, not lasting as much as he would like to. And Sapuka bringing the Sparrow as well to uh, totally open this way into B. Now, I would say Illusion is uh, lasting longer there to try to kill more players <laughs> from rejects. And things are getting uh, uh, sour here for Rejects in this end of round. Let's see how much they can resist. B is down. A is the next stoppage point for Amigos. But we have Solo eliminating two at the same play with the Equalizer. Such a great job. Zeus trying to respond. Things looking pretty much at the same level on both sides. And Rejects totally trenched up on A. 6v6. Look at that, like, pistol skin. What the heck is that iron sight? The one that would in the entire one 
We see the end of the round as Brody is having some kind of muffled sound things. Uh, we see that the A is still open and Rejax has, they have one man more now. Things looking equal as we're going to move to the end of this round number two. Illusion coming to the middle of the map and Amigos trying to also bring the claw. Very bold by them to try to push them. This, they don't want to oh. lose this one. That's, that's the mindset Ooh. on the Brazilian that's side crazy. and they managed to do oh, it a fantastic job. Phenomenal one, Brody. As I was trying to say, <laughs> the emotions are taking over my oh, tongue here, man. And I cannot have words to express how strong Amigos are looking at the end of the round number two. Again, a crucial round coming up from Amigos, and that's why you saw those operators coming out. They knew that, hey, look, if we use these operators now, we can effectively win the round and maybe even win this game. 2-0 up, winning an offensive round like that is huge for Amigos. Envy, though, did not use his, and that is crucial. He's going to use it right away in towards this round. That annihilator, you have to find some value out of it. It's a true kill... Construct kill feed, excuse me, coming out from the gate here. Envy only able to find one with the Annihilator is not what you wanted to see out of that weapon. And already the answer back from Migos is very, very strong. They've got a kill feed that is entirely theirs, and they've got rejects trapped in their spawn. Rejects again trapped, and I mean, Amigos trying to do whatever they could not do on round number one, meaning to be extremely aggressive to the point of uh, being able to set up uh, a nice spawn trap. They've tried again, but that had consequences since Reject. They managed to get out of there, and now they're spreading over to B and heading over to that flag as Zeus is spending his Hunter Killer to try to come and take Solo down. A nice movement by Reject. They get three here. Over B. Let's see if Amigos are going to be able to respond. Amigos, map control and standoff of playing control coded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed they are. They're doing a really good job at the moment. A couple of kills here. They're trying to cut. Whoa, those gloves. Off gloves look so cool. Do some serious damage. Spawn trap them while also dealing with them on the point. It's now just going to be one on the point. It's going to be uh, Rebalo who only finds one kill with the Rebalo. machine removed from the point. Are rejects, but they do get two ticks before going down. And Amigos took such pressure in towards the point that now they're not no pressure over towards A. They've got nobody on the defense to deal with it. So Amigos now. Oh. Looking to try and re on A. We don't actually have a player name on the screen right now for some reason. There we go. Finally, we do. We know who we're watching now. Insane looking to go towards the point. He and his team doing a good job at keeping them away from the point. But they still can't get everybody off. And finally, Solo is going to go down. But that's not before, again, two ticks go the way of rejects. And it goes five kills ahead. It comes to looking at the numbers from rejects and consolidated at the map dominating the core the back line see they mount up a line that it's almost unspawnable by rejects and the americans are trying to pierce that same line i don't know if it's gonna be possible they are looking behind they're gonna eventually lose this map amigos again doing such a fantastic exhibition here managing to hold the pressure rejects oh maybe too yeah to it's done steal to convert any flag no flag at all so far they have stepped and that's gonna be over that's gonna be it Solo then can oh, we're back. much of a difference from then and now? I I'm not too sure, but look, I, I think if you've got anything for Ringo Gaming here, they will have the crowd behind them. Their last opportunity to get through. They've got a bit of, in fairness, they have the momentum coming from a 3 to 0 win against Kings. Whereas Q9 just got trail absolutely smoked. So, where are their heads at? How are Inko feeling? It's about that momentum. We talk about it quite often. That could make a huge difference. Well, also, Lanix, you're saying that the that some of those uh, vetoes were pretty interesting the first time they played against each other. Other. They did do a Hacienda hard point to kick things off, and Q9 pretty handily took that one. We saw them now swapping it up with the summit. I didn't remember the la the rest of those picks and bands, but do you think that these newer choices, if you remember them, will favor Inko at all and try to maybe help them get a little bit of a leg up here in the competition? I think uh, Inko, they're going to have to fight against themselves. I mean, the players are going to have to... Uh, keep I don't think Inko can beat Q9. Um, why didn't they need and they want to keep uh, on this competition? You know, some of them, as I said before, were already retired from the scene some days ago and they got mm. called up uh, on the last second. So to some of them, that's going to mean, you know, keeping their activity as professional players to so some others that may just well mean like uh, leaving a nice note uh, to their careers. So I honest, honestly don't know how that's going to play out because uh judging by their faces they are not so confident and some of them looking kind of far away but let's see because inside of the map that's what matters i don't know how they are talking about these this, this game against q9 let's see what they're gonna be, be able to play uh here to bring to us they are experienced players 
but I don't know how uh, is their confidence level right now. You know, that that's a good point to make though, Lanex, because we mentioned it obviously at the beginning of the stream. Inco were the team that came in when Godlike weren't unable to attend the land. So originally they weren't planning on being here and already they've knocked Kings who were the top dogs in EU out of the competition. So even, you know, they've probably at least done a little bit better than they would have ever really hoped for Tom because they weren't even supposed to be here to begin with. So that's already well, kind of a win. Yeah, yeah you, look, you've been- Rejects lost, yeah. yeah. Somebody else Are there more matches? Yeah, June, it's Inko. Is, yeah, okay, it's one of those things. Against Q9. You've taken it to a certain degree, showing that you deserve to be there at least. Uh, so now it's kind of, they don't have anything, they've got nothing to lose, right? Like yeah. if they're going to lose this, they, they've lost against one of the tournament favorites twice to knock them out, which is tough. That's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. You get a bad run, but yeah, look, I, I think, you know, they've got to go into this with no pressure on themselves. See how it goes. If you win, you take some maps, you make it a close series, then great. Maybe you can start making some moves in ladder. Maybe start trying to start moving yourself into rosters or start doing a little bit better there, getting better practice. And as I, I've said, like, throughout the entire EU and NA season, if these teams are going over there and they're getting beat by some of these better teams, it, it's about learning to be better. I, I mean, I always use the example of, of traditional- Isn't there choking hard? Who cute, uh, the rejects? European teams, I'm talking six, seven, eight years ago, were terrible. They, they couldn't, well, even further than that, like 10 years ago, couldn't win a series in NA all the time. And then they eventually kept coming over, getting better and better and better because you're playing against good teams all the time. And then all of a sudden, you are at the stage where you're winning events. This is how things can turn with international competition. Is it an opportunity now for Inco to try and make that step once more? Well, it's definitely going to be interesting to see as we can tell that all of our players are looking pretty comfortable, ready to go. And as I say that, the match is underway. So the final match of the day, Tan, Lanex has closed the day out. Thank you very much, Lauren. And it's second to say ten years ago, time yeah. charm for Inco Gaming. Maybe I'm not too sure. It should be difficult for them. Q9 need the bounce back though here, you got I mean, they absolutely need to come out flying after what was a devastating defeat in their previous game. Can they manage to do it here against Inko once again? Yes, Q9 already dominated the P1. And as you said, Inko needing to bounce back into the championship. It's gonna be tough, it's gonna be hard, I would say. When it comes to weapons choices, they bring almost the same layout with Bigodero playing with the R9 and Mao Chi doing the same. Of course, a majority of submachines on the player's hands and Inko are coming to try this retake. Let's see if that's going to be possible because uh, Q9 looking pretty much solid here to already <laughs> begin rotating to P2. So it's going to be the match of their lives. These 10 players needing to step up and show more, stay alive in the competition and Inko felt this first point we can already tell that they're not totally uh jacked up to try to fight for this one so they're gonna have to rotate <laughs> already and that's exactly what big odera and leo zera yeah, are just already doing to p2 without otm yeah, yeah good job managed to get a couple of kills for that rotation over towards p2 Ooh, big uh, just another small comment on the map set actually they managed to get slums in there which they won up against kings and take off the hard point in there as well which they also won up against kings so Trying to come in on some maps that they have some confidence on, but they do actually have to take one of the first three if they want do want to see takeoff. So it should be interesting to see if they can take that confidence, take that experience, take that winning feeling into a series here up against Q9. Rafa now towards the point. Thinking about this rotation over towards P3. Right now though, Q9 trying to get some. Sir, it was your birthday. You're happy for me to pick up some decent time here. That will be good enough for them. Yes. So Q9. Definitely escalating in points, trying to go for the first 50 points as they are uh, the dominant side so far against Inko. And Inko on their side, their synergy, their combination of efforts is going to be their biggest challenge. We can already see that they are way, way too spread apart to play against. It's a late rotation, yeah. Q9, but there it is. They're going to have to fight for this. If they ever want to keep competitive in the international scene, they're going to have to fight for this now. And we see Rafa dominating the main what the? area, rotating to the next wow. spot. Nice work by him. Oh, he didn't Morita see the third. Getting close to the truck. And Sun is gonna, just like that, use also the Sparrow to try to uh, barricade this positioning, avoid okay. Inko from regaining spots inside of the objective. Nice Damn, work going crazy. Him. Such a Chinese wall, if we could say, against Such Inko a what? at this moment, uh, my friend. Tan. Fantastic work from Q9 really really just at the wall. chinese wall 
And that kind of uh -huh. thing is just knowing when is the best time to use the operator. Sometimes players use them to try and make a, a ridiculous play or, you know, try and find a, a massive break. For them there, it was about just making sure you could solidify that initial push that's coming in from Inko on the transition. They get it done absolutely no problem. Enko though will manage to pick up this rotation, although partially spawning out by the looks of things. So a potential push coming in from Q9 over towards the next hill. If they can find these next couple of kills, that would be massive for them. Leo Zero will find it though for Enko. So some potential time on the board as they do start getting the spawns over towards the back of P4 now. Q9 is starting to find kills though at the wrong time for Enko Gaming, who may well now start to get spawned. Yeah, Enko kind of getting violated. Nice combination of Equalizer Ooh. with the Fury Fire on the hand of the Chinese players as they manage to uh, own the P4. Even though we have just seen a kind of a break by Inco Gaming trying to come from the back lines to the uh, flag itself to the hill. Nice work to try to retake this one, but Q9 looking pretty much solid on the fiery side, on the trading side. We see that they're going to manage to put almost 100 points ahead of the Brazilians who are not looking that confident so far. Clearly, the absence of Lucas in uh, has changed the team identity. And more than that, it wouldn't even be fair to make this kind of comparison because uh, this roster is a combination from players from other organizations from Brazil uh, since, the, since the last year, to be more precise. So uh, it's kind of a new team that didn't have the time to uh, put up a strategy for this level they, of competition. Um... But Q9 has absolutely nothing to do with this done. And they are doing whatever they need to do to walk fast. Where's DYG? To... Only one Chinese team. Dominant lead so far. It's about 120. Also, yeah, points. Type 19. I tried in rank. It's not bad. Of these two going up against each other in the first game of the day on Hasiyan, No DRH, no HPK, but so still decent. Ingo Gaming very much are able to hang. Not horrible. Right now, they're struggling to get kills, even with the Annihilate. That big kills coming on through now for Q9. Operators completely available across the board. You can see the claw, the war machine, both out. Here with the side of Q9, just trying to solidify some more time. And they're using these operators just to extend their advantage every single time they possibly can do. It's about 130, 120 point lead now for the side of Q9. Picking up some decent time oh, over towards P1. Oh. P2 going to be coming up in only 25 seconds. If you're in Code Gaming, you need to pick up some decent time over towards Rails. And then when we get to go over towards P3, you need to see a full 60 to get yourself back into this game. Yes, and that's how Q9 is uh, profiting from this uh, style that they bring to the table here <laughs> by using the operators on a very interesting and wide way. Uh, definitely denying space to Inco, who are suffering here in this smaller map for Hardpoint when compared to Hacienda, where these two teams faced each other earlier today. In Hacienda, to be uh, more precise here, Q9 managed to, uh, of course, uh, bring the victory. But Inco, they produced more. They got to 182 points earlier this day in this duel but now they do not look to be the same team as before also after a whole day of work and a whole day of matches it's eventually complicated town but we see q9 again having nothing to do with this and managing to step to the 200s as i said and dominating this p2 with a nice uh, control over the kill feed q9 is stepping on business right now nothing to do with the miraculous story for inco gaming Q9 making sure they get this one done cleanly. Yang with a couple of good kills. Can he find the third as well? Not quite. Crescent is there to just about slow him down. Rotation is not quite locked in. There is going to be one kill coming on through there from Inco Gaming. Over towards the flank. Not going to happen though. That gets traded out. So rotation is now in for Q9. Inco will find themselves another few seconds of the scrap time. Can they manage to find a break this time around? Last time around it was Q9. It was completely dominant. And it started that very same way. Good shots coming in from Crozen. No potential break could be coming on through. Not quite. War Machine is out. Spawn's a little bit funky, though. This could be difficult for Q9. And Inco managing to steal the spawn. They are there. But I don't know if that's going to automatically get translated into an objective control since some Q9 players managed to walk in this P3. Let's see how that's going to play out. Q9 very looking very, very comfy with this nice cushion. They're gonna make it roll against Inco for sure. And I say this because we already see some Chinese players trying to begin a dialogue with the next P4. Let's see how that's gonna play out. Q9 with now 31. invading, trying uh, to keep Inco Bro, Machi with 37, bro, what? Keep Inco locked in this P3. Yeah, just wanna keep them in. You can see a couple of players have retreated over towards the P4 side. I didn't watch the FI now. Which is allowed. 
Q9 to make sure they solidify those spawns. And we're just trying to put the pressure on the players in Inco over towards the backside. Couple of big gunfights coming on through those. Yang will get dropped already. The kill coming in from the Annihilator and from Crozen, who does get taken down with the claw himself. So both operators coming in from either side of things. Purifier now out from Yang. Make it one, two, three. Everybody on fire. Fantastic work coming in from Q9. Three wow. big kills. Can that be followed up from Kurzen? Not quite. Ooh. Son is there to get the Sparrow out to do as much damage as possible. Just yep, keep they him broke away it. as long as they can. But looking at the potential break could be coming through from Inko. Spawn still towards the back for Q9. Oh, while wow. Ling. Fantastic work. 205 and rising. 30 seconds to play for here over towards P4. But Inko Gaming find a breakthrough from the cliff side. Managed to get in. 25 seconds to play for here, Ego. This is good time. In a way, Inco makes a comeback. They're yeah, probably not. On this one. Uh, almost Difference uh, is too big. Up, but again, Q9 could just go point, for scrap and still again, win. Fighting once more. As we see that some they very just got like Brazilian players what, like like from back in the day. Crossing, 12 points off scrap. Zero, Bigo, they're, they're trying their best. Leams as well. Rafa is more of a defensive guy. But again, it's not the same team. Without Lucas in, and at these conditions, having few days to uh, prep for this competition, they are lacking a uh, collective mindset, perhaps done, trying to go for the Ooh. individuality. Let's see how that's going to play out, because Rafa huh. is already with the equalizer. Did a good job, Lim's uh, bringing his Sparrow out, and of course, working in the smoke, such a nice job by him, but is that going to be enough? Because the margin is just yeah, giant. Yeah, big double from Sun. Q9. Uh, we said it's giant, but it has... It has been reduced quite significantly. Q9 slowed down. What is happening P3 there? P3 and P4 was a really good job coming in from Enco Gaming. They got it to about 70, but that's the thing. It was about 120. You've closed the gap about 50. You need to do that all over wow. again and then some. And now Q9 picking up many points, but the wall machine is in. They're picking up three points here over towards P1 and just chipping away at that 250 point mark. Shots coming in from Wild Link once again. Just trying to lock it down as quickly as he can. Three kills now for Owling. The rest of the Q9 team now starting to put 47 for Malti. Holy. In three more seconds, Q9 have made that gap. Let's see him drop 50. A little 50. bit closer to the 90 mark now. This is so difficult for Inco yep. Gaming, and I'm not sure they'll be able to bring this one back. Yeah. You can see, almost see some sparkles of aggressiveness. They eventually here, there, try pocket uh, place pocket situations but again i totally second what you said right now i don't know if they're gonna be able mentally to get back to this even though we're seeing such nice backup numbers on the side of the brazilian players with crossing almost reaching the 40 kills all of them to be fair are pretty much equalized on that but as we look into the numbers from q9 we see such a great effort and they are almost getting to the 50s as Crozin is annihilating literally every single Chinese player he sees ahead of him. And they're going to wrap this map. It's a oh my God. strong combination of operators. Only four yeah, points, dead. three now, two. Inko are not going to be able to break this one. It's too late. And that's going to mean one new for them. <coughs> Touch your eyes. Mine's already fine. To summit. Dominating performance coming in from Q9. A little bit more like what we expected from them. Really, really good job. But this is a team they went up against already today. We'll be feeling very confident about their ability to find the job. It's S and D. It, it might be over. One to zero up now. Here in this series, and a knockout one at that. Can they keep this one going after a really disappointing defeat in their previous? Can they bounce back and find their way to Saturday? Yes, let's see what is going to happen next. Uh, again, I think Inco players, they kind of took too much time to finally wake up and try to produce something inside of the map. You can almost tell that from mid game on, they began having chances, but then was a little too late, not even managing to get to 200 points. So almost repeating the performance they had earlier today against Q9, uh, as I said before. With nice numbers, to be fair, of course, on the Chinese side, almost three, four OBJs, so a team playing very uh, tightly when it comes to the objective and the spawns. The Brazilian players were playing, I would say, in a more of a, a more of an automatic style, freestyle, uh, searching for the kills, searching for chances, uh, but again, relying too much upon individuality time. Yeah, it was tough. It was really tough. When they started to string some hills together, so you think of the second time we went to P3 and P4, that's when things did start going a little bit better, but 
as you said, it's kind of a little bit difficult when you're finding yourself 120 points behind before that. Really, really good start coming out from Q9, and that was the difference maker. They'd be looking for 3-0 to zero here once again. Really, really nicely done. And they were just so clean throughout. Now, nah, some of these guns like will the cook and pop. I mean, in ranks. Like, well the Fennec cooks, the type cooks, DRH. To just the absolute maximum every Obviously, time. it's Efficiency better to have the OTM the mag, but it's not, like, really good the worst thing in the world. They're a good player. Everyone, a phenomenal, phenomenal use of the purifier. And it felt like they were using them proactively, not waiting for something to happen. It's like, oh, I should probably get my operator out. It was like, right, I'm going to get it out. This is what we're going to do. Very, very aggressive. Q9 will be feeling good. But the families of the team who are on the other side of things in Inco will not be feeling too hot about this right now. 1-0 to zero to Q9. <laughs> deservedly so. Yes. And you cannot say it's disappointing performance on the Brazilian side. Because also the Chinese players, they were very fast to make decisions and dominate uh, the setup before. Just like as they love to do a ton. Getting there before and setting up against the opponents uh, is their game style. And then Inco, once more, they didn't have the intensity on a gameplay level to get back there, to try again, to regain uh, the mental uh, condition of uh, trying to get back into the game. And that's precisely, again, not everything is about Lucasin, but that's when Lucasin stepped up all over the last year being the regain guy, as we began to call him in the Brazilian community. He was the guy on hard occasions that, you know, stepped up and talked to the team and said, hey guys, you know, let's lift it up. Of course, he's not here. He's from Galleries now, of course, but like not into uh, Inco's roster anymore. So you could tell it's a different team. And I don't know if they're gonna be able to um, uh, utilize this window in search and destroy mode to get back into the series town, because that's gonna be a huge chance they're gonna have I mean, against Kings, uh, Inco played very well in the bomb mode, producing uh, eight against six rounds. Let's see how they're going to play this one. And once more, Slans was, once upon a day, uh, a, a very nice map for Inco, but then it was Lucasin's Inco, not this Inco. <laughs> that is well, true. I mean, look, let's have a look at the previous search and destroy between these two teams. It was an express and a 7-2 win for Q9. So they're going to be feeling nice about that. And that is, I, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> not quite similar to slums in any sort of stretch it's it's very very different so let's see how they play slums and see, see if it does work out for them but based on the records that we have so far it's not feeling too great for the side of inco they made some sort of comeback there on the hard point they're trying to bring it back into contention but not quite close enough do you see them taking oh my god if, well sorry I, I should rephrase if you see them taking a map which map would it be the control or the search the search definitely Again, this next map's gonna be their biggest chance to get back to the series. I, I would say that um, they, they're gonna need to play tighter. They're gonna need to uh, make better dual decisions. And uh, I know it's easier said than done, but again, on hard point, they did not do this. They were almost playing, uh, uh, I would say, a freestyle Cody M and not being able to uh, bug the opponent. Uh, to 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 a reasonable level, so that's going to be their biggest challenge. Trying to play as a team, trying to be, bring this team play um, to the screen and try to do better because they can. They have done this before today, but now Q9 is not Kings, and um. we're going to have to see how that's going to play out. Let's see if slums will be any different. On the side of Enco Gaming. Q9 find themselves on the attack to kick things off. Inco Gaming need to find at least four rounds, band, yeah. say, on the defensive oh, they side. Started. Let's see how they do. I'm already down from Q9. Inco set right back to kick things off. We'll go for the retake. And well, it will succeed. Limbs will find one. G9 will find one to answer back. There's Zero then coming in with the trade again. So trade's working in the favor of Inco Gaming. But they're still the ones that have to make the moves. Can he find anything here? Rafa, not quite. Sun will answer back. Two versus three. Nick keeping off the bomb. Manji's done well. Comes Ooh. in with a second. Wow. Now left in the one versus one. Are they expecting the char to come through? Ooh. Three in the round for Manji. Fantastic work from Q9. Mauchi, brutal. Being the guy, being the name of this first round. And of course, being able to get closer, use the prize fighters, also using a primary weapon. Q9 playing, uh, I would say, in a smarter way, waiting for Inko to 
step in the core of the map and then surrounding them, making the flanks their own uh, regions against the Brazilians. And now we're gonna have to see how King, uh, sorry, <laughs> K9 are gonna be using the map at this point because Mauchi, okay, obtaining three eliminations on the last round, he's gonna begin thinking about A, but it's a region defended by Rafa with the R9, so not very advisable oh, to oh, get oh, in there, but across here. What a bullet against Sun! That's a nice pick by them. And there it is, Inko suddenly opening the conditions of rotations, eventually pulling Q9 apart, but that's not what they feel. They move onwards and they push to the B. Or if I leave it cut out. Here, but the C4 is going to be brought to the to the ground uh, done that's gonna be complicated for q9 from now on oh it looks like some really good timing for mauchi over towards the other side the shots coming in <coughs> fantastic really nice play from q9 once again and that's just having the numbers on the first round you didn't have them in the second but you make it count it feels like it feels like Ingo Gaming are giving up too much of the mid map. They're allowing the presence to go over towards that B side. They're allowing them to get the bomb down. Uh, yes, not a very, I would say, solid uh, defensive system so far against the Chinese. We have Sun opening the scope against Rafa. He managed to bring him down. my round is garbage too. Like so that. that's a nice development for Q9 and Inko not managing to be fast enough. The game is being pushed up by Q9. We have Mauchi getting to the back line. He's gonna almost surprise the less alive Brazilian player Berlims. Managed to eliminate him. Young, even though was close enough to also help on the trade. So Q9 with a 3-0 over here doing a fantastic job in the first half, Stan. Yeah, really, really good job. This is a disaster for Inko. You're on the defensive side. You would be expected to have an advantage heading into your attacking side, but this moment in time, the best they can hope for is that they're going to be tied up. Howling going to have to back on down. A little bit more aggressive from Inko this time around. Does it work out in their favor, though? Yeah, let's see how that's going to play out. Because usually Q9, they suffer a lot on searching this try mode against very precise snipers. And that's the case of crossing today with the Tundra. But we see a lot of nice plays in a row from the Brazilians trying to uh, use the moment, trying to grow back again into the game. Mauchi moving, Rafa with the <laughs> R9, and crossing with three eliminations, proving my point on the side of Leo Sierra and also Limbs. So the guys are trying to put the bullets away, but the Chinese team is having a better team play so far. Olin against the three now is going to be very hard for him because he's far away. He does not have the information. But even so, we could say that he could get close to the C4 done since it's not, it's not totally protected. It's outside of graveyard. It's not protected. You're right. Still, it's one of those situations where you'd love to push and just grab it, but you will presume that it is being washed. Can't seem to find anyone though. And we'll go for the free pickup. And I think Inko no. Even if he gets this bomb down, they are going to be able to retake in a one versus three. Ulang is now going to get that bomb down and oh, this is so risky. He's going to get caught out here. Three of them spread around the corner. Oh my god, imagine. So well to find more than one. Great shot under the first. He nearly collided, but I think he still would have got traded. Inko with that first round of the game. Yes, he surely could have gone for eventually a pair of kills, but that would be, uh, uh, regardless, very hard for him to uh, get the kills and then evade at the following seconds. So, yeah, considering the circumstances, he actually have done a very nice job. Inko with one round, not looking very bright here because Q9 is managing to read the Brazilians better and their patience level is also paying off as they are not going totally full on. What am I going to play? I'm not Rafa playing. Picking this one up, Lizera does the same. Why did he do that? Well, he Q9 didn't have info. Now, it's a 1v3. Uh, he rather pushed to Mauchi get from from the back. That's gonna a pick mean, <laughs> rather than answer. wait. Because oh, if he waits, happening? he's a sitting Mauchi, duck. You are bizarre. You are so good. And Ali helped him out uh, to reverse. If I was him, I would have pushed here. too. These it's either I push front or push back. Oh, I wouldn't Lizera just stay. His luck. Let's see how he's gonna play this one. He's gonna have to be at a more because we're also watching from a perspective where we could see where the enemies are. Again, they don't. It's another very situational enemy of Brown. Oh, <laughs> um, he couldn't play time. Zero. That's uh, 
There's not really a playing yeah. time when it's a 1v3 and you just got the bomb down. One versus one. We'll find the gun fight. Leo's Zero gets some bad timing. Q9. Themselves you want to make really, it really as easier for you as possible. Fantastic attacking, huh? You want to make it not a 1v3. A 1v2 Four is better. The good. They've got one more opportunity to make it five. But you Thank can you, take 4-2 on the attacking side. No problem whatsoever. Yep. Uh, pretty much pretty right map so far, right? If we have to make a very <laughs> fast and broad assessment, well, this is Lams over here with a lot of smokes to try to, of course, push the Chinese away. But I don't know if that's going to diminish their confidence. Like you are just to, unbothered. Uh, make the pushes. They Sinan, don't give a nice fuck. Pick against Rafa. So Winko, very dependent on. Hey, the free trip to Brazil, right? With the better polished plan as a group, as a squad. As they just have to be to the best faster. in their region. On to the A, but Mauchi again. He's just a beast. Bringing a lot of bullets. He's going to begin selling bullets. Yeah, you should have one slot for major apparently. tournaments. And then kills. give a slot to like... Rounds. And Crozin is going to leave a nightmare against three players. Because the C4 is going to come to the ground. Uh, as Oli is managing to complete the play. And it's going to be a very daunting, complicated... Rough done with only three kills. Well, more. his teammate has 11. Bro doesn't need to do anything. Nicely done. 5-1. It's nice and clean from Q9 so far. Pretty comfortable in map number one. Very comfortable now in map number two. On to the defensive side for Q9. Expect some aggression. Oh. They want to get this one done. Crozen gets the snipe kill. The snipe Whoa, shot he just through, but I think it was the grenade that found the kill. And Inko will find themselves a really good first attacking round. No answer back from Q9 so far. Yep, now Q9 low on numbers, having to play with patience. Let's see if they're going to reverse this. They have already done this before. Not that it is impossible when you have Mauchi in the team. But now looking less possible, Mauchi against four. Elzira going for the middle of the map. It's going to be complicated anyways. He's got but let's see. Oh my god, <laughs> Mauchi is the man of the match. That's Definitely crazy. Taking down a second one in a row. And he comes to try his luck again. He's not hes not being shy or anything, but there it is. Rafa was well positioned. And the team suddenly gains traction over here, Tan. Yeah. Yeah, I know he's like the, um, the side of YouTuber type player. I think he'll gaming. That was a good attacking round. But the problem is for them, they need to continue to catch up. Frozen will find another first blood, though. He's found one in the previous round as well, but all the kills now starting to go over towards Q9. And that could spell disaster. Limbs yeah. left on his own. That round is done very, very quickly. One round away now for Q9 to go 2-0 to zero up. Yep. Brazilians from Inco smashed against the wall here in a very, very fast-paced round for the Chinese. Already tasting this match point moment. 6-2. And apparently looking like a rub of a map, but let's see. Eventually, yeah, they're up six too. Through they're fine. a lot of kills, and we open this conversation. But Chinese, uh, the Chinese players, excuse me, already in the core of the map, searching for the kills and not wow. slowing down. No way, that's such oh a massive God. combination. Mauchi, double elimination for him. Fantastic play once more, decisive. He doesn't fly Ooh. away from the combat. And Zinan puts a final dot on Zlan's search and destroy as we have a 7 2 score for them, managing to open this lead on maps. Such a convincing performance again. And I would say even more one sided than Hardpoint. Very comfortable. I would call that very, very comfortable. <laughs> Q9 looking the real deal in this. Go watch this. And in Far, nothing yet. It's good. Don't know if he's gonna try to go for the plan. Yes, he's gonna go for the plan. Here comes the plan. It's good. Planting the bomb down. Bomb is down. There's a very close retake for the side of Amigos, but they decide not to go for it. They want to wait for, wait for their teammates. So far, nothing yet happening. Number one and scared. He has to back away. Oh, oh. no way. Um, why am I asking for a donation? Because I'm poor. Gets the first one. Scared gets taken Bro, and finally, Incendio gets beamed and. Amigos, two to three, great retake coming through for the side of the Amigos. Yeah, I mean, how would you, why would, how would, why will you allow a J35A to take your head off? It's a question. America's son doesn't look the, as dominant as he was. They just won seven to two. Right?
What do you want him to do, bro? Kind of unfortunate for him to go out there that way because he had the best chance of winning that because he had an SMG okay, I'm sure. in I love hand. Men. Oh, okay, period. Two, three on the score. One more round before we switch the sides. AMG holding down the A sites. Again, they win the first blood. They can convert it into a round when we saw that in the last round. Yep, that's true. You know, see what's gonna happen here. Slow, slows it down. FDX trying to get a wall back. Will not get anyone. It's buying a lot of time here. Shut up, Marty. All pushed up all the way to the middle already. Clove takes down Zeus, boo. Let's give you the first one. Gito spots shut up as well. Shut up gets away with his life. Now they're Grenade making out. their way over at A Cali. They okay. should be a, a execute for the side and, and Sagan trying to find something. Unfortunately, oh. finds himself in the next round. <laughs> Unfortunate for him, Illusion will be able to get that information. But number four in yellow and shut up. That's How perfect. did he just go way behind enemy lines? He will be able to find one. He will be this able to perfect. find two. Sapuka down. Just one more <laughs> member to take away in this round. Number six. To get the 4 2 split as we head into the next half of the game. Uh, he just ran in there and, like, it felt like they had another teammate behind him. Just got illusioned. Should have threw one support? Yeah. An illusion, right? And also insane. Insane illusion. We just got there. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. 10 hours, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I want to see an insane versus an insane deal 1v1 in this SND. It's true. Now I do see illusion on your screen. Aggressively taking mid once again. Gotta find something. Number four, though. And shut up again. This look at how aggressive a shut up is. He's trying <laughs> getting so much information. Hope we can switch over him. Shut up. Spots one. Gets the what? first kill. And just like that. And an over over Charles at and gets taken down, but it gets that trade immediately. Yeah, so I mean, four versus four. yeah, I mean, this is so weird. I just don't understand what's happening <laughs> with the defense. Shut up is just too aggressive. He's feeling too confident that he can take those gunfights because he was able to flank two players yeah, into the last true. round. Cool. Now, Suzbu takes down Sanyo for middle. That's going to be another kill. Illusion has a spot over at mid, just waiting for someone to pop out if he decides to. So far, nothing yet. This is looking like they're just well, wasting a lot of time here. If you're, uh, if you're the side of the amigos, securing A, the time is going to be so unreal as he takes down Skurd, two versus four. Nice gameplay now for Illusion to get that kill. Makes this uh, even tougher round for Star Wars to come back into. Still need to worry about Glove hiding around the shadows. Mm -hmm. Zeus should be able to spot him down with that scope. See if it, oh. if it does help. It's insane. Back and forth. Clove gets the first one. Fortune will get will get traded away. FDX, FDX stuck in a one versus two. 15 seconds left. He just has to run away because bomb is down. Can't they try to find something? He's just running away. 10 seconds left. Do they have enough time? FDX. I don't think they have enough time. They have Bruh. no time. To get the they bomb have down. no time. Listen, you don't have to peek anymore. No. FDX gets another kill. <laughs> and there you go. Star Wars. Two more. Why'd they do Star that? Wars. Four more for match sport. They have time to get a two and only. Yeah, just for the stats there, FDX. You know, just to tie up in terms of the amount of kills, along with his teammate Shut Up, who's got nine with the SMG. All right, for Amigos, I mean, uh, they kind of took too long at just figuring out what kind of attempt they're doing. Right, it's a one. They did have time. At the end, but they realized they had no much time left. IMG now this time pushing towards the B. Smoke covering down Incendio's site that will allow them to cover more distance as they try to put that bomb down at the B site. Yep, it's true. Bomb's gonna go down. They're gonna be a little bit more aggressive here. Bomb here we go. Bomb is down. 5v5 full retake. Let's see what's gonna happen. The nades are gonna fly. The flashes are gonna flash. And here comes the nades. <laughs> Trophies are out. And here comes Star Wars. Gonna grab go for it. Shut up. Gets one. Illusion gets one. Insane gets a trade. Incendio gets a trade on Insane. Back and forth. Gito gets skirt as well. One player's coming through. Gito gets Incendio as well. It's gonna be one versus three now. FDX stuck to himself. Gets oh. another one. Get it. Get the clutch. Holy yes, shit. FDX what the gets three in a row. Bro. Match point for Star Wars. Oh my Amigos God. and shambles. How many times will he be able to How clutch many? up? How many? Mr. Big Shot FDX 
I think we just give him a nickname that fits him directly. This guy knows when to step up for the team. Now he's got 12, the highest in the lobby. Highest in the lobby. One more round for Stalwart to end it and make it a 2 0. Stalwart not moving. Don't know what is happening. But so far, the match continues. No word whatsoever from the admins or from the referees, Kali. No way. Kind of unfortunate ref for Amigos. Wait, what? That they had to take a quick pause here for now. SDE still looking good. Six and two on the scoreboard. And yeah, we're going to be back at the player screen and uh, looking at the side of relief there for for this team, right? Stalwart Esports up by four rounds. That's very great for them because Win this map, you're up two and zero, man. Oh, I think we do have a reset, or is this a replay? We had to reset the last two rounds. What? I think so. Is it a reset? I believe so too. So, doesn't count. Uh, oh, gets... dang. Damn. Oh, know, that's fucked. Yeah. We'll, we'll wait for the confirmation on the on production, but for now, we move on two to four. Man, FDX's clutch going to ways. But hey, more chances of him to clutch up, right? Sapuka getting that double doors in their control. Shot up once again, knocked down. Only one more player to hold down the B side, and that will be it. FDX holding down the upper ground. That's true. Bombs gonna go down. That's all to Bro, they reset the rounds, bro. What the hell? Yeah, two versus five. FDX. Did the other game start? Peek. Everyone's gonna try to peek. There you go. That's the first one. Yeah, we got to go. Okay. FDX lost it. Oh, the time is good. Dark Nyx. Oh, oh, unfortunate. Oh. It's all up to Clover. The one versus four. It doesn't matter. Amigo that's fucked up, bro. All right. That's nice. Amigo was able to get the quick read. They knew that Shut Up always pops out into the double doors. Heading into the B side, so they teamed up there, gets that shot, makes it a 4v5 situation. Now here we go. Round number 8 coming right up. It's still going to be Amigos on the attack side. Still figuring out, uh, on the defense, I mean on the attack side, right? They're still trying to figure out where they want to take this hit. Looks like they're going to send out Zeus Boo at the mid-map. Gito is able to take down FDX, now making this I hate the thermo round, facts. Yep, you're right, Incendio. On the flank here. Shut up, does he spot that player? I believe he does. And just, oh, unfortunately, gets a hit marker through the wall. Bro, this is actually trolling. It, yeah. Now, all the, <laughs> luck, all the luck going to the side of Amigos <laughs> now. Stalwart gives up on B, and we'll play the retake on that B side. That's going to be tough. Because right now, you don't have a you know, big shot FDX in there to just to create a monstrous kill streak just to turn the tides around i mean you're gonna have to worry about not only the bomb here digging down as time passes but also this five angles that you need to take care of right they do eliminate illusion makes this a 3v4 makes it a bit more doable for them to clutch up yep, that is true three versus four now insane might be able to flank this does he have the timing here Oh my god, go to timing. Does anyone look at the back? Incendio gets the first one. Gets the call out. 17 seconds. Has to go for it. 17 seconds though. Insane gets another one. Skirt in a 1v1 now. Has to defuse the bomb here. Timing's gonna be everything. He's gonna try to stick it. Damn. Unfortunately, it's the movement's not gonna work this time. Unfortunately, Kali, the shotgun, to down. Almost. Nice. And yeah, it's just within the range of the R9, right? Sometimes this R9 can hit out of nowhere and look like a sniper, but definitely within its striking distance there insane with a clutch eight kills to his name now this is essential amigos wins this next round they take that lead and they might just be able to turn the tides around and uh, let this <coughs> game just lead to a snowball everybody's just been able to perform ever since the start of the reset nope, that is true scared gets that first one no 
four versus five so far. Look, look how close, look how close shut up is. If you look at the map, Kakali, if he takes out Sapuka, bomb is down. Yeah. <laughs> Just need to find that player, right? But it's hard. Since they don't got that aerial view, view but if one thing that we know, shut up loves to overextend and he loves to challenge on this 1v1s because he know he's got one insane. Uh, dude, this is go. actually a troll but, for Stalwart. Yeah, kind of playing it patient here is Sapuka. Stalwart just letting Amigos dictate where the wind will blow. A site is where we're going to. There we go. Shut up gets one. Never mind. Gets idea down. still boggles my mind. Agreed. Insane. Three versus three. No, three versus like, two. Who came now. up with that yeah, shit? FDX on that snipe. Holding it down. This is the good. same dude who made NA. Everything you need. And here comes the mid push though. Do they find anything here? Incendio. We'll, not, we'll only just tag him up number five. Who has to challenge him. Clove. Place that corner. Oh, this he plays perfectly. Yes, he does place it perfectly. He gets one. But it's going to be one more player. It's going to be a 1v1 now. Oh. Gito, one shot as well. FDX is trying to run. <laughs> Try to spot right. him. It's gonna be a one v one now, Kelly. Mr. Big Shot. Let's see what he you choked. Got. Misses the oh, easiest no. of all. And oh now my God. By Gito with the slide nice kill. Round. Amigos Amigo. now up by one. The easiest. No kill. way. The hardest one, Kelly. <laughs> I couldn't relate because I can't hit those two shots. Right? I can't hit the easiest <laughs> shots. I can't hit those hard shots. <laughs> now five four, Kelly. Stalwarts. After that reset, struggling. To maintain some kind of lead here in this series. Needing more appearance for Clove while they're defending oh, no. this A site because Amigo is getting away with too much easy gunfights. Teaming it up is the way to go. Holy Keeping shit. Bomb down. But uh, yeah, threats are going to be happening. Still going to be your Amigos in uh, the kill department. Two for one three favoring uh, Amigos here. Yep, that is true. Gito. Here comes the push from FD FDA. It's gonna try to get this kill right here. The double child coming through. FDA is gonna be one shot. It's gonna get taken down. And there you go. Match point for Amigos. Dude, how's now, that fair? I think it's time for Star Wars Esports to wake up, right? Good. Like, that's not fair. They reset two rounds. started yet struggling to win their gunfights cannot get any first bloods and that's been the the, the the key for amigos to win the last three rounds straight uh, yeah that's last a troll three straight. here we go and they find something solid stacking over it a eh? amigos looking for a place so far Sendio trying to as well as that sniper. Can he find anything? Answer is no at the moment. Still waiting. Now I love that route for Amigos, not directly exposing themselves to the line of sight of Incendio and just get that information at a long range. That's true. Nay, does it go in? It does go in. But you will not get anyone. Gito, trying to find something. Plus a Ooh, player. big kill. Nice shot from Skirt. Number two in Illusion. Damn, they went back eight. Have to be the They're running guy. into a four stack, bro. Holy shit. Man because the push is about to be created at the A site with 37 seconds left. That's true. I don't know about this, y'all. I'm just pre aiming. Shut up, so they get tagged up. Here comes more players. There's guys to trades that they need. With the fly from the back. Spot as well. Insane. He gets what? taken down. Sapuka gets taken down. Sapuka got Pupu done. Finally yeah. gets around six to five. It took them a while to be able to get a round win at the reset. But yeah, nice defense that they managed to pull through at the A side. Just heavily stacking it. They knew that Clove cannot handle so much gunfight, especially when there's three players just ganging up on him with the help of the smoke and an R9 on top of that. So now this time more of an aggressive approach. Stack heavily at the A site. They want to let Amigos actually put that bomb over at the B side. They still do have control over mid. With your boy number four and shut up just holding that at the moment. Yep, that is true. 
Let's see if they can find Shotham gets two kills, two big kills coming through. And it's looking like we're gonna go to overtime right here in Cali. Oh Low. shit. Swans to push it. Swans that first player. Great info coming through, but this is gonna be number three incendio. FTX gets another one. Gito wanna spray. <laughs> we get straight out by FTX. It's all up to number five, Sapuka, in a one versus four. It's tough. With a minute to five seconds left, you need to be able to maintain the double doors within your hands. Play perfect at the moment and relocate, but FDS with the snap. <laughs> Success, OT. Gone in an instant. We are forcing overtime. Yep, overtime again, Cali. Again, overtime. Here we go. Stalwart, Amigo, switch of sides. Bomb carrier. None yet looking for a pick first. All right, see what's going to be the line of play here. Yep, grenades will be heard by Stalwart Esports. Definitely some players at the B side, but the initial pick going in from Zeus. So, 4v5 now. <laughs> Favor Stalwart Esports. Wow. Uh, 5v3, uh, the snipers, these long range attacks have been working for Amigos. This round number 13. Let's see what's gonna happen here. Gito got that kill now. Inside of Stalwart, everyone's scrambling mm. from them on this offensive side, not looking at not finding anything. Let's see what happens. How do you? You need to see FDX create the player with that scope because these two players, right, cannot get any visuals. On this long range attacker, so it needs to be able to move into the mid map carefully, though, because he got illusion there eyeing out on the connectors. SDE with right. only 45 seconds left here. We need to make a move here. Here comes the push. Shotgun is gonna come out. FDS gets shut down. Scare with a great heady there to try to help him. Glove gets that kill. So now. Two versus three here. Skirt and Clove, they don't have time to rotate. They need to fight for this already, Kali, unless they're gonna try to run to mid. I think they're gonna oh. try to run to mid. Oh my goodness. This might be the play of the century right here, Kali. 30 and seconds. They, they are gonna, they have enough time. They have enough time to get this bomb down as fast as they can. Skirt gonna get this bomb down, and here we go. All right, number five in Clove needs to win that oh, double doors. Fight. They need to stand their ground at the tarps as well. High ground in control for Amigos right now. 2v3, 39 seconds left. Oh, fortunate. And 1v3, it's all up to Clove. One guy's gonna try to hop on it. Clove gonna try to go for it as well. Unfortunately, too Aww, many pain. players. And there you go. That's gonna be it. Amigos gets the this round That's match bad. point for them. <clears throat> A step closer into <laughs> getting themselves the first victory on this series, right? Amigos couldn't get any win up against Seminole, but they did manage to score a 3-1 up against Rejects on their elimination match. So, definitely going to be a great one to finally have a point on the board. Put the team in a position where they can take that 2-1 lead if they can play that control later on very well. But the game is far from over. Incendio responds back with a big two-piece. Yep, with a big two piece, Kelly, you're right. Here comes Insane pushing through a little bit too over. Oh, five oh my god, OT, OT. Now, it's gonna be a five versus two, four versus one. The only last player alive, and it doesn't matter. It's, it's gonna be another OT. Yeah, four kills from Incendio on that round number 14. Enemy Definitely a needed one for them to be able to tie it up again, force another exactly. round to be bomb. played here. And, uh, now as the switch of sides, right? Attack side has been kind of very problematic for Star Wars Esports all this time. Now, the, the problem here is that they either get taken down by a nade or one of their members just extends too forward at the winery and just get themselves eliminated. This time though, sending down shot up all the way towards mid map. Very cautious at the winery here is Star Wars Esports. You can see that the nades, they know how to line it up. They were expecting at least a player to show up there, but not entirely. Yeah, not entirely. You are right. No one's want to make a move again. Look at Shut Up. Look how, look how deep he is into the spawn. Does he get a call out? Yes, he does. Shut Up gonna get away with his life. Back away. He's just trying to be the game, the the playmaker for the side of Stalwart. Now, 
Arsenio trying to get some wall bands. Will not hit anyone. Gito looking for something as well. Can they find something? So far, the answer is no. <laughs> Difficult to find a play. Let me check the other and game no real quick. Moving. Someone has. Wait, they won? Boy, this game was so fast. Oh, they won 3 0. Ah, hell. I need the players to be there. Yep, there you go. Here comes the push. They finished their control before they even finished their SD. Oh my god, why is Sapuka's face like close, so close? Skirt. Nice movement from him. But he gets two there. Three versus three now. Skirt has to get away with his life. You play right above him. He's not gonna he's not gonna get any help from his teammate. It's all up to Cole. Cole trying to go around Holy and crap. unfortunately Stalwart not being able to clear the side. Just you know, that's the that's the problem with wasting too much time there, Kali. You're just not gonna find anything and they're gonna expect where you're going. Not sure of the idea as well why yeah. Stalwart Esports force the, the bomb plat if they needed to actually play per fix, right? I mean uh, difficult for them to get away with elimination if the team that they're going up against with had the height advantage on that amg in a position finally score the map by taking this one over insane finds one at the shadows he hides but shot will be there to go in for the elimination yeah, that's true why didn't the teammate try to protect the defuse he did he was watching underpass go for the side of a uh, of a uh... Of Amigos. It was a gamble, I guess. So far, nothing gets spots a player. He's gonna get taken now, and it's all up to Gito. And look where it's free. It's free on B. But unfortunately, the bomb is dropped at A. Gito's got 30 kills to his name. I mean, he's the highest fragger on the team. But <laughs> up against four. You know, we saw SDX able to pull up a 1v3 earlier. Up against uh, Rejects, and a one <laughs> up against Amigos on their own. But was not counted because... We have to go through that reset, right? But Gito can isolate one oh. player. That's FDX. He took down. But Stalwart Esports, quick to know. Um. They don't want to go and contest this individually. They want to play close to proximity to play for those raids. Yep, trying to hit that wall band. Gito will not get anyone. And now they're just all just waiting. 30 seconds left. Skirt Incendio. I mean, if I'm shot up, I would try to get near here just in case I get some trades. Here comes uh, Gito, has to move now. 20 seconds left to go. Gito spots one, and Skirt is there. Now we move on to another overtime. Not over yet. All right. Another OT. Adjustments being left. made by Star Wars Esports at that, right? I mean, once they got the kill, they knew where the bomb was dropped. Barely moved an inch. Amigos had to pick it up, but the numbers just too much. This time, we're switching the sides. Attack side has been kind of problematic again for STE, but an open plant can be possible here if they smoke down the line of sight of player number three in blue and Gito, who's holding the scope on the opposing end. Grenades will be thrown out. It will not connect to oh. anybody. Almost. Now here we go. Bomb is down, Kali. 5v5, full team retake for both teams here. No one has been taken down. Here we go. 40 seconds. Number four and shut up is just playing a very aggressive spot there. But Amigos deciding to only flood at one point. They could not make it in time to get a multi-attack to happen here. So they're gonna barge their way in with the numbers on their favor. Yep, insane gets one, shot up gets taken down. FDX has to trade on Zeus move. Insane almost gets scared here. Okay. Both one shot as well. Nate. Oh yeah, it's cool. Insane gets one, Clove gets taken down. I've never down. seen that actually get someone though. Two versus three now. Scared has a big gunfight to go. Gets taken down. It's all up. To Incendio, the captain. Two people are gonna be one shot actually. He's gonna try to go for one player. Yes, he gets one, but time. yes, they have oh. enough time to get it. Incendio tried to go for the bomb bomb diffuser. Unfortunately, there's two guys that were one shot, Kelly, unfortunately. Yeah, if we could have dashed in, slide in a bit there, create a just that one more distraction. Could have been a round win for Star Wars Esports, but the keyword there is could have. Right, amigos. Great. You know, adjustment there just to know how much time is left at the bomb as soon as one of their members that's trying to defuse the bomb get eliminated oh, they quickly hop into uh -huh. it play for those trades and then yo no just one second difference 
in order for them to secure that game point once again. 9 and 8 on the scoreboard, a potential way for them to end it here. Now with them with the numbers disadvantage, Bomb will be down at the B site. It's a 4v5 retake for Star Wars Esports. Here we go. Bomb is down, full retake. We'll commence now, Kelly. 2 to 6 before reset. 2 to 4. What's gonna happen so far? Shotgun! Uh, four, 4 to 6, I think. Out. The Clove gets the trade as well. 3 versus 3, equal. No trophies for the other side. Incendio gets taken down. Skurd has to push up. Has no help. Ooh, has spots out. Player. It's gonna be a 1v1 now. It's only Clove versus Jito. Jito, this is always. Oh, he's laughing! Wow! Down Clove! Whoa. Oh, keeping it alive. <laughs> That's he just crazy! <laughs> he was unfazed, dude! As soon as he heard uh -huh. the Q, yeah, he swinged on and just... Jito was not expecting for that push to happen so quickly. And we got another tie game. Now we are at 18 rounds heading into our 19th. This is the highest that we got so far, you know. This is all going down. Winner gets this map, of course. But for Star Wars Esports, to getting this Tunisia map, Gives them 2-0 in the overall series, just oh. one map away from advancing to day two. Yep, that is true. Now, I see the nades coming through. Insane with that shotgun. Here they come. This might be it. Oh, don't push. Go back away. Utility is not going to be used. All utilities actually have been used for both sides. And it's very unfortunate. So far, illusion. Timing is very essential here. You get bored with watching that side. As shutups has seen that side already. You guys already in. Insane gets the first one. Beautiful R9 shots. Almost gets the second one. The movement is on him. He gets a help from his teammate. Instead, he gets two in a row, actually. Can he get the third one? He almost gets it as well. But oh insane. Oh my god. It's the third one as well. It's off to FTX. FDX 1v3. Bomb down in the very, Their match very after this time. Position. Position. No, no match after this. Tomorrow. seconds left. What can Mr. Big <laughs> Shot do? <laughs> Peak. 13 kills for him. Oh, this group might have been spotted. I have already been spotted him already. FDX kind of in the open. You don't want Insane to get close to you. First shot in. FDX just goes down. The first insane. Oh. Gets him. Amigo oh. survives. That onslaught maintains that lead. Just one more point again to finally bring it home and take their first round, their first map win the in the best of five. Mm -hmm. got their the first map win, you are right, Kali, but can they do it? Or are we going to see oh. another? The nade's going to fly through and hits the Imagine. wall again. But here comes uh, here comes Amigos. They're br they're bursting in. They're flying in. Oh, it might Insane be over. gets one. They're not gonna fly through. Shut up. Oh, Incendio gets taken down. Go. This might be it. This might be the end of game number two, unless a miracle can happen. Number two, that's gonna be FDX playing that corner. Does they, do they know he's on a corner? Yes, he does, but it's gonna be oh, one more. That's FDX unlucky. with a hit marker as well. Very unfortunate. But oh, it's Stern, a 2v3. As well as, as, well as uh, Clove, they're running through. It's gonna be one player at the back. Do they check behind him? Skirt oh, gets up player. gets one. Clove gets taken out, it's off the skirt in a one versus two. Bomb is down. He dipped. Skirt ran away from his life, gonna wrap all the way back again. If there's anyone you want alive, it's him. The enemy has the bomb. 17 kills. Jito and Sapuka versus Skirt. Oh man, the timing is gonna be so... Oh no, they just wrapped around again, Kali. <laughs> I see what Skirt is made of, right, mister? I think, I think, yeah, he knows, he knows, he knows. Yeah, 2020, 2021 bro? Easter Finals MVP. He needs to make this play. Oh, he pulls the trigger too early. Uh, Shots coming for Jito to oh. end it finally. Amigos on a <laughs> grueling round survives, takes it 11 to 9 on the scoreboard. Emotions flying through. And Amigos, who is fighting for a spot at the playoffs, oh, secures a crucial win. Did not give Stalwart. That 2 0 lead on the overall series. Yep, that is. Aiding true. on Kadem. And now, here we go. Now, game number two will go to the side. Yeah, I think people don't realize. Like, content creators, like, see. 
just because they play a game and a game is the reason they grew their community doesn't mean they're obligated to be in that community for the rest of their lives. <laughs> They didn't sign but, a contract to be like, yeah, yeah if I play Kadem and Kadem grows my following for like however much, I have to play Kadem for the rest of my life. Like, no. Refusing to lose also, people don't realize. The match, like, right? there can only be one winner. Like, and for this map number two, it is Amigos taking This is a lot of our jobs, you know? Kills, like, it's obviously all fun and games to make content, but this is our jobs. But you can't just shit on the game. Well, I think you shit on a game depending on the game. And it's like, <clears throat> if the game has something worth shitting on, then fair enough. But at the end of the day, shitting on a game is an opinion, right? I shit on Kadem for what it's bad, in my opinion. But I also applaud Kadem for what it's deserving of, which is the game's mechanics, the graphics. It's smooth, it's beautiful. It's debatably the number one mobile FPS game. At the same time, Kadem has many flaws. Rank system, garbage. Uh, um, the buffs and nerfs, garbage. Lucky draws, garbage. Right? So, like, there's there's both good and bad. And, you know, it's, it's just people's opinions. Obviously, as a content creator, you have a following in the community. But... Looks like it's the, it's you're also obligated like to have your own opinion as a viewer and as a creator you know battles. just because you like a creator don't mean you have to like agree with them like you guys don't have to agree with me just like how i don't have to agree with like someone i look up to right but yeah i think there's good things about kadam and then there's just shit that's like won the next three rounds like weird and bad. esports a bit of a lag in terms of the decision making allowing amigos to secure even a two round lead at some point they did force an overtime and it all had to go down to an 11 to 9 finish we played especially for someone who played the game for years amigos took the delivering blow and seeing the, the game not progress through, had to go down to illusion it's tragic who was Sick. scoring big time in a long range engage yep that is right take a look at the final moments here well, it's not like I don't badmouth caught him. I badmouth caught him to an extent. Most of the most of the plays are just through that shotgun. <laughs> and that was certain things. On certain things. And you can see the emotions. I think they deserve the shit. GTO and the gang of amigos one and one. We're tied at one and one, Kali, as we move on to game number three. Not entirely sure what the, the map coming right up next is, but one thing for sure, Star Wars has been struggling playing their control match so far. And that's been a fact proven when they played up against Rejects and uh, Seminole today. Now that's an opportunity oh, yeah, for sure hating on game. like Amigos. I don't know if they're hating on the game. Again, remember, I think they're just tired of the game. Earlier, like remember, these are content creators that play the game every day for four years. Now, of course, stand up uh, uh, play here. Raid will be the map that will be coming right up next. But looking at the, the performance for this team so far, we can say that Amigos will have the upper hand heading on to the coming game that we got. Yep, I think Amigos might really have that momentum coming through. But at the same time, Stalwart, I think they're just... I mean, it's okay that they lost. I mean, it was a hard fought game. I think they're just trying to... Just when shoe house was removed bobby looks like they did good oh game yeah game no game i agree fuck shoe house it's not a good comp map another bad comp map nuketown nuketown should be removed too into our map number three we will be taking it's a, a quick good when we are you serious it's a good like fun map but like it's not a competitive map like and ranked is supposed to be competitive right uh, if you want to play casual play pub right it's like rust <laughs> Two house is just not a good competitive map. Uh, the hills are very bad. Yeah. I don't know why they removed Alcatraz though. I love Alcatraz. Alcatraz is so fun. Bruh. Let me see what happened on that reset.
Dude, what a weird, uh, weird reset here, bro. That killed their momentum. That's fucked up. Oh my god, how many times will he be able to clutch up? How many? Mr. Big Shot, FDX. I think we just give him. Makes this uh, even tougher round for Star Wars to come back into. Still need to. Trophies are out. Here comes Star Wars. Gonna go for a shot. Gets on. Loser gets on. Insane. Gets a trade. Insane. Gets a trade. Insane. Back and forth. Gito gets scared as well. More boys coming through. Gito gets Insane as well. It's gonna be one versus three now. FDX stuck to himself. Gets oh, another one. Getting it. It's a crazy oh, clutch. Get and then they just FDX reset. Gets three in a row. Match point for Star Wars. Oh my God. How many times will he be able to How many? clutch up? How many? <laughs> Mr. Big Shot FDX. I think we just give him a nickname that fits him directly. This guy knows when to step up for the team. Now he's got 12, the highest in the lobby. Highest in the lobby. One for round for Stalwart to end it and make it a 2 0. Stalwart not moving. Don't know what is happening. But so far, the match continues. No word whatsoever from the admins. Or from the referees, Kali. Why they reset your rounds? That's so goofy. No way. Kind of unfortunate ref for amigos. Why they do that? That they had to take a quick pause here for now. <laughs> SDE still looking good. Six and two on the scoreboard. And yeah, we're going to be back at the player screen and uh, looking at the side of relief there for. For this team, right? Star Wars Esports up by four rounds. That's very great for them because win this map, you're up two and zero, what man. What the hell? Oh, I think we do have a reset. Or is reset a to 2-4, bro. Delay? We had to reset the last two rounds. That's so weird. So, is it a reset? I believe so, too. So, doesn't count. Uh, oh, gets... dang. Damn, I don't That's know if it's dumb. We'll, we'll wait for the. <clears throat>、oh, why'd they reset? Yeah, they were winning. They were literally one round away from that point. I mean, not that point. One round away from winning. Why is there a five next to, inside a schedule? What the heck? Bruh. That's fucked up. You imagine you're 2 6 and then they reset you down to 2 4 and then the enemy team comebacks. I personally would not take that. It is what it is. they started 20 rounds we just witnessed in that battle between stalwart esports and amigos in that search and destroy tunisia now we're heading into their map number three winner takes that match point on the overall series a step closer into earning their ticket to the playoffs and advancing to day two yeah, advancing day two you are right cali and uh I mean, it was a crazy, crazy game number two, Callie, and we're not even done with the series. We're just moving on to game number three. I'm Jericho down here with Callie, and、uh, this is going to be game number three, Callie. We thought it was going to be a 3 0 from Stalwart, but there was some technical issue that happened there. And now we're moving on to game number three. It's going to be Control, a raid, 
And uh, Kali, I think uh, Amigos might have something up their sleeve here, or, or unless Stalwart might just take over the respawn, just like how they played that game number one. Yeah, the, the problem here that we can talk about for Stalwart Esports is that they cannot win their control game mode so far. <laughs> Every response, uh, they have been pretty inconsistent. And uh, the most dependable game of which is <laughs> and Destroy, which they have been 100% in terms of their win rate, have been absolutely crushed by Amigos as they win uh, that current series, that current match that they had in the Search and Destroy Tunisia. Now heading into this coming map up ahead, right? Parade is obviously a map that has been around the scene for so long, but if you take a look at the stats for these two squads right here. Oh, Raid? Raid's good. For the start, to start it all off, right? For Star Wars Esports, they have played Raid two times in the SBS season four, and they won it up against Black Sheep World and Elevate, both being 3-0 so that speaks a lot on uh, the, the cap capability of this team when it comes to winning but amigos looking at the recent performance right they did lose up against seminole but they did 3-0 rejects in the standoff control that they've played at the elimination match so we could say in terms of playing this control respawn game amigos will have a running start as they had that win fresh just before this game started yeah, before this game started you were right but it's all gonna come down to this one the last uh the last three the last two games or will it go to a game number five amigos versus stalwart again if you look at the score 252 13 and the sd 11 and 9. plenty of stuff to go through right man and for this final battle that we got, right? Whoever this wins this map wins the whole thing. The last Trust me. Game of the day because so uh, Q9 has already defeated Inco Gaming in Stream A, and they have finally concluded their series today. So that means we have successfully eliminated three squads. Already. This is the last that game I watch. Kings we can't sit here any longer. Inco I need a rest. At Group A, then rejects at Group B. The last team Why are they taking off their headphones, bro? Will just be, you know, a couple of steps away from advancing to the playoffs, which will be pretty rough because Stalwart and Amigos have proved their work on the first two maps. They definitely <laughs> have the capability, they got the talents. It's just all about the mental game that's going to be heading into this final match because they just finish, you know, a very mentally taxing map number two. 20 rounds is no joke, Coach Jay. 20 rounds is no joke. You know, you are going to be drained. But at the same time, this is Call of Duty. This is how Call of Duty Mobile is. You know, the, the new rules in, over, in SD, the overtime rules, it's going to apply to that <sighs> one. Now let's see who has that mental fortitude. That Why are they zooming in on his ear, bro? And energy in this game number three. What the heck is this? Well, again, the they random, is like right, random right zoom now, in on right, his we ear. Have to always bring it up. And for Star Wars Esports, you know, they've been uh, here before. They are not foreign to this kind of situation. Remember, again, Star Wars is at the same scenario as they had back in the 2022 Codem World Championship down at the decider match. Yeah, what was that Latin zoom, bro? American They're team. like, we violated them. Do they repeat history or will they find an answer in advance to the playoffs and represent the East? into the day two of this competition this final showdown is going to be a great one with that amigos refuse to back down at that map number two which is finished yep, that is true so now we as we are as we wait for the countdown or <coughs> or uh or uh you know whatever's happening i think i think they're just waiting for the crew to get ready kelly i mean Control Raid, haven't seen it for a while. And uh, I think, you know, we've always seen the crossroads from the side of Stalwart, but I but I, but I, feel like they are gonna be much more comfortable with this pick. And especially after what happened with that uh, game number one, I think they're gonna be more confident in that respawn. And just let go of that, uh, let go of that uh, s and We've seen most of, uh, you know, our games at the control played at Crossroads and Standoff. We haven't seen Raid yet, but for Amigos, they are not foreign to this map no longer because this was the map that they played up against Seminole during the opening match where they lost 3-2-1. So this is 
and an intent for Stalwarts Esports to play through the weakness of Amigos heading into this control map that we got. And that's going to be great because that somehow adds up a little bit more chance for them to increase their odds of winning the game and definitely wrap it up and get that 2-1 lead on the overall series. But knowing Amigos and their resiliency, they refuse to back down in Tunisia. Now they're going to refuse to back down in this raid itself. But before we even head to our match here, let's take a look at the, the update on Group A and what just happened because it finally concluded. Galorius and Q9 Club will be your team that will be advancing to the playoffs. They will be meeting whoever will be advancing at the end of this Group B. We already have one seminal. We'll be going up against King Ju We're uh, to start the game. And uh, whoever wins at this decider match will go up against Galoris. Yep, that is true. Q9 and, and Galoris. I mean, look at that, Kyle. It's all been 3 0s except for that upper bracket. It's 3 1. Yeah, and here I we mean... are. The Group B matches we got either has overtime or we had to go down to a <laughs> map number five. <laughs> Take a look at this Group B bracket, Kali. And let's just see what we're go looking at. I mean, started off with 3-0, oh, 7-0 oh, Amigos. And then Star Wars rejects are with a 3-2. Amigos rejects 3-1. 7-0 oh, Star Wars 3-1. And then now, <laughs> right now, lower bracket 2. It's Star Wars Amigos 1-1. One one. Yeah, Seminole finally able to claim the first ticket to the playoffs there. And uh, the second <laughs> slot will still be decided between Star Wars Esports and Amigos. It's like what you said, all three ones except for that seminal Amigos 3-0, which is still technically casted by Tun, Infinity, and Eager Lanex at the A stream. So yeah, we're getting all of the close games. Uh, yeah, this is putting a test on our endurance and it has been a testing day for us, but we're loving it. Call of Duty Mobile action is always a great one. Yeah, going on 11 hours. Let's get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, yeah, like control rate going back to it again. I think it's it's been a staple in Garena. We have it, and you know, in Latum, I'm pretty sure they've also been it's also been up there. So expect some uh, some some typical stuff that we see. Bro, but before can that, they we start? Have to take a quick short break. Are we'll you right serious? Back. All right, fuck this. I'm going. Bruh. Fucking breaks after breaks after breaks. All right, bro. I'm literally falling asleep on my Dude, they literally gave me a break just so I could come back to them talking just to get another. Oh my god. All right, bro. Good night, y'all. I'm gonna come back and watch the playoffs or whatever semifinals tomorrow. <laughs> 